Hello, Hi. everybody, and welcome. Welcome to this podcasting's night of nights. Yes, the daytime stupid old podfest. That's right, now, stupid you... old pod podfest, streaming from 11 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Yes, but it won't be an Eastern Standard Time. It'll be an Australian Eastern very good time. Mm, it's going to be an absolute riot time here. Uh, at the uh, the stupid old studios in um, in beautiful Brunswick, beautiful mm. sunny Brunswick today, mm. coming and, to you. And I'm really proud of um, what you're about to see here today and everything that the uh, the people working so hard here at the studio have achieved. Mm. Because of course you think about all the things that are that that make podcasting so great. That's right, Alistair. Uh, uh, it's audio only. It's audio only. Mm. It's, it's it's portable. You That's know, right. it's, you can listen to it while you're doing other things. Exactly. You know, you don't have to worry about the distractions of the visual medium. Of course, mm. you can listen to it anytime. That's right. Anywhere. It doesn't take very much technology. No, you don't need a whole lot of equipment and mm. you know, there's sort of garbage around you. You don't need all these people and That's that right. sort of thing. And um, yeah, the, the the boffins here at Stupid Old Studios have been uh, in our R and D department have been working very hard and to fuck all of that up. Absolutely, strip to every single part of that out of the podcasting experience and create what you see here today which is an appointment viewing um, mm. enormous uh, televisual spectacle yes the golden age of podcasting starts today <laughs> I was gonna say it ends well here <laughs> why should we leave these people waiting for podcasts any longer. I'm sure that that's what they're here for. Well, I've got a lot of stilted banter I had <laughs> planned, but um, oh, sure. Save it up for the rest of the day. <laughs> okay, because we're going to be here for a... Uh, we're here for a long time, not a good time, Alistair. That's right, exactly. No, sorry, we already claimed it's going to be a good time. It's going to be terrific. Well, you've got, you can look forward to uh, upwards of eight hours of that's podcasting right. excellence. Long time, not a good time. That's actually my philosophy on life, mm. right? All Indeed. right, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Are you ready for your first podcast? Please welcome to the uh, to the mat to the podcasting mat and to the podcasting Jess and to the <laughs> podcasting Dave. Please welcome. Do go, go on. on. Yes. Thank you. Rapturous applause. Single applause. Can we fix that in post? There is no post. <laughs> This is it, baby. Thank you, Alistair and Andy. Thank you so much for that beautiful uh, introduction and welcome. Hello, Matt. Hey, Dave. How's it going? It's weird the headliners are on first, but um, <laughs> hopefully, you know, we're, it all goes downhill from You're here. You're going to claim so. that? Okay. Um, well, I don't know. The post, <laughs> post that might have been alphabetical order, I'm not yeah. sure. <laughs> I think it was in order of appearance and we are first <laughs> appearance. <laughs> Jess, hello. Hello, Dave. Hello, Matt. Hey Jess, hey I, Dave. No, I was talking to Matt oh. behind the camera there, actually, sorry. <laughs> um, and Matt. also, hello, Matt Stewart. Okay. Um, that was yeah. weird that I was the second Matt you'd say hi to. Surprised you didn't say hi to Matt, as in Andy Matthews, first as well. I did before. I gave him a smooch on the mouth, as is our what? traditional custom. <laughs> sorry, what? <laughs> it's a thing Andy and I have. Don't worry about it. Um, for anybody who has no idea who we are, <laughs> where have you been? But also, Dave, do you want to explain just a bit of context of what Do Go On is? I oh, feel I weird not holding a microphone. <laughs> like, I feel like, yeah, like, you did request that, though. So. I know, and I regret it because they are like... <laughs> You're hands-free. I know, but I feel quite... I feel less portable. But did you actually request? I was no, making no, no. you sound like a diva. No. <laughs> you actually are a diva. I am a diva. Anyway, Dave, explain what this show is. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, what we do here at Do Go On is we take it in turns usually to report on a topic that's often been suggested to us by one of the listeners. We go away. We've done a bit of research on it, and um, that's been the format for about seven years now. <laughs> so. And we refuse yeah. to change it. Yeah. That was beautifully succinct. Thank you. Why did I choose that word? I can't yeah. say it. Why did you choose a word? You're so close. I don't know why I chose a word. I can't say it. I'm panicking up it's here. Like, oh, what a beautiful, abominable story. <laughs> yeah, like it's a word I can't yeah, say. Yeah, so let's uh, all enjoy next February. <laughs> <laughs> can't say it. Can't say it. Anyway, um, you don't have to say some complicated words today because I have prepared uh, a little mini report on a topic that has been suggested by a couple of listeners. And we always start with a question. It's true. My question is, how long is the flight time between San Francisco and New York City? Oh, six hours. Ooh, four and a half. Fifteen minutes. Four and a half hours? Ooh, you're, and fifteen minutes. You're like, you're kind of close. It's like, should be about five and a half hours. 
<laughs> I've done I've done that flight done before, it. but that I did it because I had to go. I I fucked up my tour, uh, my uh, travel plans, uh, and I like you. I'd been so I'd already gone from San Francisco to New York, but then realised I wanted to see a concert in San Francisco, so I had to fly back for the night and then back to New York. No. So I should know that I didn't know the actual time, but I should. You said about six hours, didn't I? I did say because Americans were like, "What are you crazy, man? <laughs> You're flying over for one night across <laughs> all of America?" Lars Ulrich was talking to me. <laughs> it is unfortunate that this is set in America, so that does give him plenty of opportunity. Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> man, that I'm was, excited, man. That? Anyway, so it should be about five and a half hours, but this not report. this report. Okay, uh, the flight, but not. For one particular Boeing 314 Clipper. Ooh, a fast plane. This is a story that happened on the... Well, it began on the 2nd of December 1941. Our story takes place on board a Boeing 314 Clipper, one of the largest aircraft of its time. The Clipper was a large seaplane built for one-class luxury you air... Don't say tra- the word. It's a cunt plane. <laughs> feel good about that? No. It's a long report God, and we have an yeah, hour. Damn it. Yeah, there's no way to dig this one. Um, so it's it's luxury travel <laughs> and the seats could be converted into bunks like it was – there was a, there was a galley kitchen where meals were prepared in a, and they served in a dining room. It was like fancy air travel in the 40s. Um, and that was a necessity back in the day, given these planes were used – they were used to deliver passengers across oceans and these were not short journeys. With a cruising speed of 188 miles per hour or 300 k's an hour, they, but they typically flew a bit slower than that, Pan Am's schedule San Francisco to Honolulu was 19 hours. 19. It took 19 hours. You say it's a seaplane. Does it literally float there? <laughs> Just about. It's huge. Like oh, it's a seaplane. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 19 hours to get from where to Honolulu? San Francisco to Honolulu. Whoa. That's too long. And also, I'm worried about the the, the fact the plane is called the Clipper. Like, Why is that a concern? Does it clip shit on the way? Uh, no. Clip shit on the way. Now, clip explain shit. what that means. Does it like clip the water as it <laughs> bounces as it goes? It takes 19 hours to get anywhere. Yeah. I suppose... If you're having a meal in a dining room, yeah, you're having a good time. We, because we did, we talked about a an air race from San or from Oakland to Honolulu or something like that, a similar sort of distance, not too long ago, and that took more than a day. But that was the first people to ever do it. Yeah, this is like a commercial flight, and they've clipped off what five hours yeah. from the journey. So they called it the Clipper. Oh, but they've sounds- incorporated a dining room. That's cool. And a bunk bed. Yeah, the problem is that it's full of like 25 full-size chandeliers. <laughs> There's 28 it's grand pianos. It's very heavy. It's so heavy. <laughs> so, yeah, this, this sort of service was designed to connect the US West Coast to destinations like Hawaii, China and New Zealand. And while... Um, oh, we're right there. They're going to New Zealand? Just pop it a little bit further. Fucking hell. Matt, you're going to love later in this report. Oh, great. I love it when we're mentioned. <laughs> so they were the only aircraft that could make that range, but even they couldn't do it nonstop. So Pan Am had built a huge network of refueling stations and bases on islands across the Pacific and along the coast of the Atlantic. So you'd buy a ticket to New Zealand, but you'd like it would take several days to get there and you'd stop at a few different places along the way. Um, and tickets were like the equivalent of about 15 grand now and like it was luxury travel. Oh, so you wanted to take some time. That's right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're, I paid for this. Worth. I want to I want to pay a lot of money and I want it to take ages. <laughs> Captain Bob Ford was a veteran pilot for Pan Am and he was prepared for a normal day, a day like any other, commanding his crew on board a Boeing 314 Clipper, this one called California Clipper. Uh, It was over 100 foot long and with a a wingspan of over 150 feet. Um, The Boeing 314 was and still is one of the largest aircraft ever to take to the sky. They're big planes. It could carry up to 74 passengers and a crew of 11. (laughs) It's massive, but it could carry 74 people. (laughs) Everyone's got their own master bedroom suite. (laughs) And a dining room. Got your own table at the dining room. Is this why the... The LA basketball team's called the Clippers? I knew you'd ask and I forgot to check. Okay. So let's say, yep, <laughs> okay. and move on, I reckon. Um, 
Uh, yeah, so um, like I was saying, it was one of the few planes with enough range to fly those long trips required to island hop from San Francisco all the way to Auckland. Um, this was a usual crew for this flight with one exception, and you will love this name as much as I did. Okay. The radio officer, Jack Poindexter. <laughs> That's so real. <laughs> it's so good. His name's Poindexter. Hey, Poindexter. Hey, Poindexter. He was actually chief flight radio officer for Pan Am's Pacific Division. So he was more of like a of, a, of an office kind of guy now. Um, but pencil the ca- pusher. He was a pencil pusher, thank He's you. He's a nerd. Bit yeah. of a nerdlinger. Bit of a yeah. Poindexter, if you will. I don't understand the reference. <laughs> But the California Clipper had been fitted with some new radio equipment and Poindexter wanted to give it a bit of a spin. (laughs) He wanted to, like, test it out. Um, It wasn't planned that he would be part of this trip, but when he heard that the plane was short a second radio man for the first leg of the trip, so just just a trip to LA, he volunteered. He's like, I'll come, I'll I'll be the radio guy just for that bit and then I'll pop home. So he called his wife, let her know he'd be home later than normal, but said, save me some dinner. He would not be home for dinner. Oh, that oh, meal he on. was going to go cold. <laughs> I can picture her sliding it into the bin, yeah. <laughs> putting the candles out. They didn't have fridges. <laughs> I was hoping she would just leave it there. Leave it fine. I Four really weeks. hope this Let isn't because he dies. No. No. But, well, okay. Maybe. Oh, fuck. Nah. Um, I decided not to do a really morbid story for this live one, which could be an introduction to a lot of uh, new people who don't know us. I thought, let's not. let's not. Make yeah, it really right. death heavy, you know? Yeah, ease them in. So the California Clipper took off from San Francisco on the 2nd of December and headed for LA. Once there, Poindexter called his wife again to let her know that he was heading back to San Fran shortly. But then, bad news. The second radio man meant to join the California Clipper in LA had been taken to hospital with suspected appendicitis. Pan American regulations were that no Clipper flight could go ahead without two radio men. <laughs> A necessity given the 15 to 18 hour flights. So it was, you know, they weren't like, we won't make one guy do that. Yeah, I should have got like Hamish and Andy or someone to recover and fill yeah. in for American Rotho. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And give us a third. For a third example. Oh. What else you got? Radio men. There's always a woman. How, <laughs> give me another duo that's just men. I dare you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't. All right, <laughs> Martin Malloy. I found one. Yeah, you found one bravely. Well Just done. Just got him. I think they're the only three. <laughs> the only three. <laughs> no, no other one exists. Um, with no relief crew available at LA, it meant that Poindexter was the only man who could take his place. And despite having brought no spare clothes or money or anything, he was going to have to go all the way with them to New Zealand. And his wife's got his favourite meal on the table. He's like, God. He's forgotten it's also their anniversary. Oh, Poindexter. <laughs> Poindexter. So the California Clipper arrived at the Pan Am Marine facility at Pearl Harbor on the 3rd of December, completing the longest leg of its outbound flight. They had a day off there, so the crew, they chilled out. The captain, Bob Ford, keen surfer. He kept a surfboard at the Pan Am facility. In, in the cockpit. In the cockpit. With him. <laughs> They're very big planes. <laughs> now, he kept a surfboard there, so he's like, I'm going to go for a surf. Others are like just sunbathing. They're chilling out. They're having a good time. Except Poindexter, he's off trying to find a spare pair of clothes. <laughs> There's no way that... He has nothing. Poindexter's not going to the beach. Not he's not guy. going to the beach. How sti- was it a, a movie character or someone who was called Poindexter that turned it into a euphemism for a nerd? Yeah, I don't know where it came from. I reckon it's this guy. You reckon it's this guy? Surely. Yeah, so far he sounds like a badass. He's out shopping. (laughs) (laughs) He knows how to use a radio. He's got a wife. He's got a wife. nerds can get wives? Yeah, well, Dave's married. Thank you. Thank you. That's right. The exception to the rule. (laughs) Congrats, Dave. This is Poindexter. And condolences to your wife. (laughs) Um, so they left on December 4th, stopping at uh, stopping in Fiji and New Caledonia, and were currently on their way to their final destination in New Zealand. Sounds like a dream trip, though, doesn't it? It sounds really fun. Beautiful places. It's about oh, to no, not get I've got to work extra long at the beach. Is that Mostly much in the it? air. Oh, yeah. Which is fun. Yeah, it's a bit of fun. Well, not for me. I get motion sickness. <laughs> so this is a nightmare for me. Oh, yeah. How many takeoff and landings are there? It's too many. Oh, too many. Yeah, imagine, like, the chandeliers jingling around. <laughs> I'm like, can you turn them off? I'm going to be sick. The grand piano is rolling from one yeah. side to the other. Yeah. There's a piano strapped to it just rolling. <laughs> so they're, they're in the air. They're heading for New Zealand. It was the 7th of December, 1941, and the radio operator, Eugene Leach, uh, he was on board the California Clipper, was scanning through local signals when he heard some harrowing news. What did you say the date was? 
7th of December 1941. A day which will live in infamy. For what, Dave? If I remember the intro to Hardcore History. Oh. Is that <laughs> they play a little bit. That's a, a bad day for America. It's a bad day. Japanese planes had just attacked Pearl Harbor, where they just were a few days ago. Oh, no, the Not- surfboard. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's gone. The surfboard. It was freshly waxed. <laughs> <laughs> Quickly, the crew realised what this meant. If the Pacific was no longer a friendly sea, then they were cut off. They had no safe route home and they were stuck. Oh, dear. Trying to confirm the news, they locked on to a long-range signal from the Pan Am ground station in Numea. And the station was broadcasting Morse code on a constant loop, which in itself was a bad sign. And the Morse code read, Pearl Harbour attacked. Implement plan A. (laughs) Very mysterious. Everyone's like, what does that mean? But Captain Ford knew what that meant. From his jacket pocket, he pulled out a sealed brown envelope. Oh, who's going to win? <laughs> <laughs> and the nominees are. <laughs> <laughs> he and every other Clipper captain had secretly been issued these envelopes, which contained orders on what to do if the US was attacked. The letter read, Pan American Airways, in cooperation with the Chief of Staff, United States Army, Commander-in-Chief, Pacific Fleet Operations, the Secretary of War and the Secretary of State, has agreed to place its fleet of flying boats at the disposal of the military for whatever logistical and tactical purposes they may deem necessary. In the event you are required to open and read these instructions, you may assume that hostilities have already occurred and that the aircraft under your command represents a strategic military resource which must be protected and secured from falling into enemy hands. Wow. So now they're like, we're stuck, but we have to protect this plane (laughs) at all costs. Did he get that out and read it over the... (laughs) (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, uh, just a message from the government. He read it in full. As I was writing this, I was like, there's so many opportunities for Dave to do his captain voice, and I'm so excited. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, this is your uh, <laughs> captain speaking. Uh, why do they all sound like that? I don't know, but they do. And when they don't, it's a bit unnerving. Yes. And you get like a young guy on, and they're like, hey, everybody, it's uh, <laughs> Captain Andrews here. Yeah. Delighted to be taking you to Sydney, and uh, we're going to be here. Joint- and you're like, what's going on? Yeah, I can't they- understand a thing you're saying. It literally sounds like they've got someone from FM radio. <laughs> yeah. They've got them in. <laughs> so, yeah, this means that they have to continue on to the nearest friendly pan-American base and do everything they can to avoid any contact with enemy forces. This is my favourite part. This is um, largely based on an article that was a three-part article on medium.com and this is a great part from that. It says, Ford had been a Navy pilot before joining Pan American. He knew exactly what to do. They needed to get away from their regular route, which was the first place any Japanese forces would sweep, and find a new path to Auckland. Poindexter was also getting away from his regular route. I knew it. His I wife. Knew. <laughs> I knew as, I, as soon as I said regular route, I'm like, here we go. Jeez, you're so negative. I am. You can't support me? I can't. I'm tr- this, is, this is what I want to do with my life. <laughs> I loved and it. You're over there just I loved it. bringing me down. Yeah. Well, your tactics aren't going to work, Jess. We like will never make out. <laughs> I feel like it's working. Um, Rod Brown was dispatched to the map table to do so. Got to Rod find Brown was path. dispatched. That sounds like a euphemism for taking a shit. <laughs> Uh, Rod Brown is, uh, this is your captain now speaking. To, uh, uh, p- <laughs> plan A, Rod Brown. Uh. <laughs> and Leach was ordered to shut down the radio. From now, they would continue in radio silence. What's Poindexter's role then? He's just been fired. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Throwing him out of the plane. He's, He's like, about oh. to throw to the latest tune from Flume. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, this is the part I really liked. This done, the rest of the crew were filled in on events and all the lights were extinguished. Finally, Ford unlocked his flight case and pulled out his 33, 38 revolver. Sorry? He strapped it to his hip. <laughs> The California Clippers war had begun and she was a long, long way from home. And they have, they've just got passengers. <laughs> they do have passengers. There's normal point, people yes. on there. They were normal people. They're now soldiers. <laughs> yeah, soldiers. <laughs> Everyone's given a gun. I like that he's got his pistol and he's like, well, if an enemy plane comes. It sounds I'm like he ready. was waiting for this moment. Yeah, like yeah, he's walking through the cabin now. He's got like an army helmet and war paint on. And they're like, <laughs> they're what like, is Whoa. happening? What the heck? Captain Ford, chill out. I'm going to have my three-course caviar-based <laughs> dinner in this dining room. <laughs> so they landed in Auckland, um, dropped off their passengers. That was the final destination for them anyway. Um, they parachute them out. Fact, no, they just landed the plane. Um, oh, it's, it's not full on. Um, they waited further instructions, which 
it came about a week or so later. They just sort of had to sit tight in New Zealand for a little while. And Four didn't sleep for the whole week, did Absolutely he? Absolutely not. He Clutching partied. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so eventually they get this note. It's top secret. It says, normal return route cancelled. Proceed as follows. Strip all company markings, registration numbers and identifiable insignia from exterior surfaces. Proceed westbound soonest your discretion to avoid hostilities and deliver the plane to Marine Terminal LaGuardia, New York. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. It says, figure it out yourself, go west. To set fire to the message afterwards, which was through a radio. <laughs> oh, they didn't need to set fire to it. <laughs> it self-destructed. Wait, is west, does that mean the whole, the long way around the world? Big time, yeah. Oh. Yeah, 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 yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You're taking that really seriously with those lips. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. <laughs> Again, can't edit that out. Um... In one short message, Ford and his crew had been asked to do something that no commercial flying boat had ever done before, fly west from Auckland back to the US. Not only had it never been done before, they also didn't have navigation charts beyond Auckland. Um, They needed to travel just shy of 21,000 miles without the well-placed supply stops that their usual routes had. Oh, my God. And so without navigation charts, they needed to figure it all out for themselves. You tell me, these people have a map room, a map table... But no maps. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> with where, where would you go if you needed to figure this out for yourself? Where do you go? Oh, well, you'd... Auckland Public Library. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah. Really? They yeah. didn't have an, a library on board. They did not have a library. I'm to wonder if this is as luxurious as yeah, you made out. <laughs> where are people getting their reading material? Are they going, oh, can you check out the Atlas, please? Mm. Yep. We got some work to do. I'll be, yeah, I'll bring it back. I'll bring it back in a week. <laughs> they got as many maps, atlases, geography books, marine charts as they could, and they got to work. They just set themselves up at a little table in the library. Oh, that's a great. Figured it all out. It's a montage scene in a movie. I know. I like it a lot. And there's like a sort of like a skeptical librarian. Like you want what? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Every atlas you have, please. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the first stage of the journey was relatively straightforward. They would head right across the west coast. Uh, right across to the west coast of Australia, they'd go. They'd go over the top of Australia. Thank you. Well, now we're involved. Final Here point. we go. You have to remember as well, it's a seaplane, so they fly above the sea because that's where they land. Flying above land, uh, quite scary. Right. You can't land the plane. Right. So that's fun. But you um, can see a plane. You can see a plane. So that's what they're doing. They're flying across the Australian continent. Yep. Whoa. They'll go Auckland and they'll head for the West Coast. I really hope Lake Eyre was wet at this time. (laughs) (laughs) It's December. It's getting hot. It's not the peak of hot, so maybe, yeah, maybe it might be all right. It's like when um, they're doing the safety demonstration for a flight that just goes over land and they're telling you how to put a life jacket on. You think the pilot will really have to fuck this up for me to have to put this on. Yeah, yeah. That is always concerning. You're like, do you know where Out of everywhere, going? he's like, quick, land in the river. <laughs> like, oh. Um, so they're like, okay, first step, easy. We just go West Australia. But then from there, there was they had options. Do they make a straight run for Africa or go northwest towards Java and India and then Africa from there? Oh, this sounds fun. It's like the start of a road trip. You're like, we know our destination, but how we get there is up to us. Yeah. Do you want to see some big exciting. things? Uh, it'd be great. Yeah, during the war. Can we go past the big lobster. Yeah. You know? How do we factor that into our trip? Is it worth the detour? It's half an hour, but it's big. You <laughs> 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 probably get like a vanilla slice or something while we're there. Maybe even Australia's best vanilla slice. <laughs> Every town has it. Um, <laughs> what I've learned from your road trips is that I don't want to trust you because we'll have to fly back from New York <laughs> to San Fran again. <laughs> Yeah, just go on the flow, man. It's fun. We're having fun. We're wasting yeah. money. <laughs> 13 extra hours on a plane. It's great. It's the best. So, yeah, heading straight for Africa is more direct, but it meant pushing the clipper to the very edge of its fuel limits. If one small thing went wrong or was miscalculated, they were screwed. Uh-oh. The second route would increase the chances of finding somewhere to fuel and rest up with either Dutch or British forces, but it also meant cutting through an area that was now a war zone. So in the end, they, this is what they chose to do. They had, they they just had to hope that the British and Dutch territory remained safe for their entire journey. Another urgent message came in telling them they needed to leave as soon as possible, and on their way, they needed to pick up some Pan Am staff and their families and help them evacuate New Caledonia. So they got to go back to New Caledonia, take those people to Australia, drop them off, ah, and then keep going. This is a Matt Stewart style of travel. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, this caused problems for Captain Ford. There were a number of spare engines at Auckland, which had been uh, like the, he wanted to dismantle them for parts. Um, and without them, any kind of failure en route would almost certainly mean the end of their trip. But they didn't have time to both dismantle those engines and strip them for parts and finish stripping all the markings off the plane. So he had to choose, rescue the staff of New Caledonia or increase his own crew's chances of survival by stripping everything off and the plane then being anonymous. So the next morning, laden with spare parts but still sporting the remains of a large American flag on the top of her wing, the California Clipper left Auckland and began her long journey home. This decision may prove to be very fortuitous later on. Oh. So they arrive in Gladstone. In Queensland, they make it to the east coast where they run into a problem, no fuel. There's no fuel available. They can't refuel the plane. Did you go to the library? Went to the library said, have you got any fuel? Can they, we burn some books? They need unleaded, <laughs> but there was only diesel available. They need 100 octane and in some places they can only get 90 or like 70. That's nowhere near 100 octane. Not, you need 100 octane need 100. for an automobile like this, an air automobile. That's right. That is what it is. Um, so one of the flight engineers is like, look, we either take a chance on using auto gas or try to make it to Darwin on what we have left and see if we can fuel up there. So they this fly to Darwin. route they're going on is bonkers. It's crazy. They're zigzagging. They go from Gladstone to Darwin, which took them 11 hours, um, and they're trying to learn everything they possibly can from like the bits of info they've copied from the library because they don't know. Sorry, they didn't keep the books. They kept some of them. They stole some of the books. <laughs> they for they sure. just have to like sketch. We use the photocopier for a but bit. They are like they are copying stuff out. They've taken a few books. They've borrowed them, they've, but they're oh, not going back. Oh god! No, the Late fines by can now kill you. Oh my god. And uh, Poindexter, how's he travelling? Well, they don't have, um, like, the relevant frequency guides to use the radios to speak to the ground. So they, they, they're they just flying blind. They If they strike a bit of debris or a hidden sandbar or a reef or anything that they don't know is there, at best it would rip through the hole like a tin opener. Well, that doesn't um, sound like it best, Jess. Yeah. How could it get worse than that? Well, at worst, it would flip the boat and kill everyone. Okay, that is worse. It is worse. It does sound worse. But they somehow managed to land in Darwin without ripping open like a like a like a little can. Um, and by this time, it's the seventeenth of December. They left on they left on the second. Gravy day. No, it's the 21st. How dare you? Oh, my God. (laughs) Four crew members went ashore to try and get some fuel and they quickly realised they needed to fuel up and get out of there quickly, Um, which is nothing to say about Darwin's tourism, Um, but they were having some air raids and they were a little concerned that if more air raids happened, their gigantic (laughs) boat in the water is a bit of a sitting duck. So they're like, we've got to fuel up and GTFO. Um, So they ferried fuel to the plane. It took... So long it took because it, it was a really slow task of like getting little cans and not like not beer cans but small cans of petrol. Of ta- oh, and beer cans were, were <laughs> quite large back then. Yeah. So. Fill them up. So they they uh, were they fueled up by two a.m. Um, and they wanted to leave at sunrise. So they had four hours to just go and have a little nap, and then they were taken off again. From Darwin, they headed for Indonesia, and as they approached the Royal Dutch Naval Air Station, 4th Officer Steele said, 11 o'clock, closing fast, looks like a fighter plane. Unsure if it was friend or foe, Captain Bob Ford kicked Steer out of the pilot seat and took over controls again. (laughs) Get out. He hoped it was the Dutch, but um, even if it was, without the relevant radio frequencies, they had no way of contacting them and letting them know we're friendly. So he... Uh, he had raised this with um, the harbour master in Darwin, who was like, "No worries, I'll get a message ahead to the Dutch. Let them know you're coming." He had not done that. Oh, um, he just hadn't bothered, or I was busy. Yeah, was there busy. a busy time? I actually did read that um, uh, there hadn't been any beer delivered to Darwin for a while, and some had just come in that day. What? So the, the guys in Darwin were not super reliable because they were all pissed. <laughs> And that made me so proud to be Australian. Um, Anyway, 
Meanwhile on the ground at the Dutch Naval Air Station, Colonel Conrad radioed to ground staff asking them if they could see the incoming aircraft well enough to identify it. Three more fighter, par- fighter jets are approaching the California Clipper and then suddenly Conrad's radio crackled, American flag painted on the top surface of the wing, please advise. And Conrad replied, let him proceed. Wow, so you reckon if they hadn't paint, if they had painted over, they would have been shot down. Because they were, what would they have been assuming? They were going to land and then slowly get off and start <laughs> shooting <laughs> like a Trojan horse. <laughs> yeah. But they were expecting it. <laughs> a really subtle Trojan <laughs> horse. Or they thought it might have been modified to drop bombs or something. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. So the fact that they still had an American flag on it kind of saved their butts. War is a wild time. You go, I'd recognise that plane. Blow it up. Yeah, blow it up. And how could um, the enemy couldn't possibly have painted an American flag on the wing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, let me count. Yep, all 50 stars. They're good. That's them. Even Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there's another, like, the, the, the way that this character, Colonel Conrad, is uh, written in this article is very funny and cinematic as well. Um, like, he sort of, they get off the plane and he's like, ahoy, Captain. <laughs> come aboard. And, the, and Captain Ford's like, I'm going to, I'm just, I'll, yeah, I'll come and, you know, fill out some paperwork or whatever, but I'm just going to leave the crew here. And he's like, sure, yeah, no worries. Um, and he says, you were very fortunate that the radio was working today because most of the time it is not. <laughs> like, okay. And he goes, without direct orders from me, it's highly likely that our fighters would have shot you down. That's understandable, replied Ford. <laughs> and of course, Conrad added, almost as an afterthought, we were very concerned when you landed outside the breakwater. That air air is heavily mined. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> they've landed in a minefield and they're, they've made it. It's wild. You'd start to be f- feeling a bit lucky. Yeah, you would a bit, yeah. I'm kind of unlucky in the scenario, I guess, but <laughs> had a bit of luck since then. Had a little bit of luck and there's more luck to come. <sighs> Spoilers. <laughs> and is he is Poindexter getting paid you know, overtime now? Um, I think so. Yeah. I think they're all getting paid over time. Right. Yeah. Double and a half. Double and a half. And then, I mean, we're getting close to Christmas, so there's some public holidays coming up. Fantastic. <laughs> and what about that meal? Is it still sitting <laughs> yeah. on the table? Can we get an there. update on the meal, <laughs> Jeff, yeah, please? <laughs> well, apparently Poindexter's wife was contacted um, because she, at this stage, she thinks, okay, he's had to go all the way to New, to New Zealand. She thinks that's where he is. Um, and they've told her he's alive, but she doesn't know where he is or, like, when he'll be back. So it's that's very difficult to meal plan. Yeah, <laughs> it is. And cooking for one, it's just I know. you just you know you can't just halve the ingredients. Yeah. It doesn't work. It's hard. Doesn't it? It doesn't work. It's weird. You think it would, but Why doesn't that it work? Just doesn't work. It doesn't. <laughs> the Dutch were really welcoming, very helpful. They provided them with food, supplies, parts, uh, mines for their plane to land. Mines. In. Unfortunately, they didn't have a hundred octane fuel, but they had ninety. Okay. But Just no add one an extra ten. If they can find yeah. someone with ten octane, that mix them together, out. and then you've got the full hundred. Yeah, that's how maths works. Because before you were talking, they had seventy octane and ninety. Add them together, you got heaps. You got much. Yeah. You can then just start. You it's know, a super plane. Do it in one trip. Yeah, do it quickly. Easy, just go home. Um, no one had ever tried to fly the a Clipper on ninety octane. If they put the ninety into California, she might be okay, or all the engines might overheat and blow up. Ooh. Not sure. I'm going to go with option Could be fine. One. Could be great. Me, if I can pick one of the two. Could be absolutely fine. Could blow up. No. Okay. No middle ground. No. Not really? I guess there is no middle ground there, is there? Small explosion? Yeah. Not full explosion? Yeah. I think, geez, if I had to choose, I'd go small explosion. Yeah, a small explosion that propels you fast. Oh. Yeah. Like Actually, yeah, let's use the explosions to our advantage. Yes. Well, no, we don't know anything. Um, eventually, one of the engineers suggested we we transfer all the remaining 100 octane to the inboard mains where we can reserve it for takeoff and landing, load the 90 octane into the other tanks. We'll try to use it for, like, just for cruising. Um, so the next day, that's what they did. Uh, and they departed on the longest leg of their journey so far. They had to go 2,500 miles to... Uh, Trincomalee in modern day Sri Lanka. They'd been in the air for 19 hours, carefully managing the balance of the 90 to 100 octane fuel to try and avoid constant backfiring, but there was a lot of it. Um, and they decided to lower their altitude to help them see land. They're Backfiring's flying... not what you want to hear when you're in a war. <laughs> yeah. Right, oh, yeah. Oh, so good. So, so good. Just us. That was us. <laughs> <laughs> so they fly super low because you remember they're a seaplane, so they're like 300 feet above the water at this point. They're just kind of cruising along the water, which is nice. Ahead of them in the distance. <laughs> which, lovely vista. Beautiful. 
Ahead of them in the distance, they can see an object in the water. And I think one of them at some point is like, what is it, a whale? Um, <laughs> but as they get closer, they realised it was the dumbest of all crafts, a submarine. Ooh, <laughs> sort of like a, you know, a man-made whale. Oh, my God, so true. Does that make it feel any better to you? No, I still think they're dumb. I still think submarines are silly. I, you know, I, I get, I'm get. sure they have a purpose. Otherwise, why would we still be using them? But I think they're silly. That's all. Like a little periscope. It's dumb. Anyway. I think it's fun. No, nah, it's dumb. Um, so this, the tower of the submarine was visible, as were men running towards a mounted gun. They're going to get shot at. Uh-oh. So the pilots pulled back hard, desperate to seek coverage in the clouds. They blazed directly over the submarine mid-climb, the deck gun below swinging around as it began to track them through the sky. After what seemed to the crew like an eternity, they finally broke through into the clouds. And it was just in time because a bright flash from below illuminated the clouds around them and they braced for impact. But it never came. They missed. They got shot at by a submarine. Ooh. <laughs> it's wild. I mean, that wouldn't have gained any sort of favour from you. A submarine can't even shoot a plane. Mm. A big, stupid, slow plane yeah. floating ahead, a cruising. It's a big target and they missed. <laughs> That's embarrassing. Yeah, it's a bit embarrassing. It's another tick in the con column yeah, for stupid. submarines. It also kind of seems like they shot off one shot and went, ah. Oh, well, we had a go. We again. We had a go. Okay. So they managed to land safely where British forces were incredibly welcoming and helpful. They gave them places to sleep, plenty of food and even... Hey, jolly good show, boys. Hey, very good. Well, they invited Captain Ford to a fancy dinner that night. (laughs) He's like, I've been having them on the plane. I'd just love some McDonald's or something. He even just said, like, we we just, um, just so you know, we just saw, like, not far away, we saw a, a Japanese submarine and they wouldn't take that on because unless a British soldier had seen it, yeah. it didn't exist. An American civilian's eyes sight is famously not very good compared to a British soldier's <laughs> a highest quality. Of eyes. Yeah, and they don't overstate things, yeah. stiff up a lip and all that. Right, yeah. These Americans can get a bit hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> also, they only invited the captain to the dinner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody Everyone else. else. Well, they got, they got fed, but they weren't at a fancy dinner. Yeah, you no, know, but. they only accept a certain quality of okay. people. Captain. Still don't trust his eyesight, though. So now it's Christmas Eve, and remember, yeah, they left San Francisco on the 2nd of December. They have 13,500 miles to go. The good news was that the British had been able to top up their dwindling supply of 100 octane, which is great. Um, but the bad news was there was still some regular 90 octane in the tank. So they'd hoped that, um, kind of with Matt logic, by putting in 100 <laughs> over the 90, it just sort of like dilutes the shitness of the 90. It's mostly 100. It's all good. That's what I tell myself when I fill up my tank with like half a tank of the, the yeah. good stuff of the petrol station, 98. I'm like, you do it with the 98? Out. That'll balance it out. Every now and then. I don't know. Sorry. It's it's re- every now and then. I didn't yeah. realise who I was sitting next to. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Mr. 98 over here. I also drive a Ferrari. Oh, oh okay, fair enough, yeah. <laughs> His car's actually diesel. He is fucking <laughs> Yeah, but every now and then I give it a little gift. A little 98. There you go, my little It hasn't boy. run for years. <laughs> but bloody hell, it's nice to look at and sit in for a bit. It's my house. No. <laughs> I can't afford rent anymore. I live in my Ferrari. So they took off and half an hour later there was a huge explosion. It didn't take long to work out that engine three was gone, blown by the bad fuel mixture and now streaming oil. And thankfully they'd only been in the air for half an hour. They were able to just turn around, go back to where they'd just taken off from, spend a couple of days fixing up the plane and then they'd have to take off again. If they just stayed and drained the fuel tank, it would have saved them time in the end. Probably. They were lucky they didn't have to... Used all the 90, I guess. Yeah. And it kind of worked out quite nicely, actually, because it was Christmas Day. Um, <laughs> so the RAF had insisted the crew of the seaplane would celebrate Christmas with them. <laughs> They're like, no, 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 stay. Leave on Boxing Day. The it's RAF Christmas. do much warring. <laughs> Seems like it's all dinner parties for them. Yeah. <laughs> Having a good time. <laughs> they had a beautiful Christmas together. It's nice. They're just sending the Aussie soldiers out to do the work. Am I right, fellas? <laughs> <laughs> Probably got some English people watching. Jolly good. Hey, obbly bobbly. Obbly bobbly. Sorry about that. Their next couple of destinations were relatively drama free, which is nice. They flew to Karachi, then Bahrain, before making it to Khartoum. 
It was New Year's Eve and they had 9,600 miles to go. And the English invited them to a party. <laughs> and said, well, you can't possibly fly on New Year's Eve. Best to ring in a new year, eh, chaps? Champagne for all. Jolly good. Fuck, they're fun, aren't they? They're so fun. I love the British. They know how to party. They travelled a short distance of about 1,500 miles to uh, Leopoldville where they could stock up on fuel. The problem, however, was the distance uh, the California Clipper would have to cover if it was to complete the next leg of its flight. Uh, Natal in Brazil was the nearest practical point of landing on the other side of the Atlantic, but it was 3,480 miles away and there was no possible stopping points in between. Just an awful lot of ocean. The maximum range of the Boeing 314 was about 3,600 miles. Okay. So it's... It's very close. It's very close. And um, once factors such as wind, weather and navigation issues were taken into consideration, that left them very little leeway. Um, One way to mitigate the risk was to overload on fuel, which would mean they'd definitely have enough to make it. But that would also mean it would be too heavy and they might not actually be able to get in the air. It's a fine balance. It is, isn't it? You'd find out straight away though, wouldn't you? You'd figure it out, yeah. So they decided to give it a crack. They're like, overload, let's see how we go. The old girl, she's done all right so far. She can make it. Now, the absolute maximum time it could spend at full power for takeoff was 90 seconds. At 40 seconds... The California Clipper refused to rise off the water. It just would not lift. By 70 seconds, the flight crew were more and more aware of the gorges ahead of them. I was thinking that, oh, thank goodness, they're in the water. There's this ocean. No, they're taking off from the Congo. Yeah, okay. So they're they're in a big river. They're taking off from that. So there's a gorge just approaching. Perfect. Um, 91 seconds, they still hadn't risen. That's one second longer than they can go for. Yeah. I'm starting to doubt that they're going to take off here. The plane. They end up in that gorge. That's sad. Still Same there. Way to end of the report, but <laughs> I believe. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> the plane is shuddering violently. There's a risk of explosion. The engines are redlining. 100, 110, 120, 130. They're they're flying down a canyon was about to make a pretty sharp turn and then they're like, we're not going to make that turn. <laughs> Just <laughs> Without thinking. Now, don't ask too many questions about this because I don't understand how planes work. Okay, first question. I'm saying that to you because you ask so many freaking questions. How do planes work? <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Finally, uh, so without thinking, Captain Ford lunged for the rudder pedals. No questions. He would later say it was pure instinct. Whatever it was, it almost certainly saved both plane and crew because it worked. Whoa. As in they got up or they went around the corner? They got up. Hey, Dave, in, in that... Oh, no, it didn't quite. In that scenario, what would your instinct have been? Uh, if you were going to lunge for anything, what would you have lunged for? Um, probably the door. <laughs> okay. Straight out. Yeah. Guess what about you? Uh, rudder pedals. That's good. Yeah. That will be my instinct next time. Yeah, no, you'll not. I won't be making that door mistake again. <laughs> <laughs> so it's 150, 160, 170... The plane had now been at full power for twice as long as it was supposed to be able to to hold. And finally, the California Clipper ripped free of the canyon and climbed slowly into the sky. And he, he, the captain's just yelling, rise, rise, rise damn you, beauty. rise, damn you. The Clipper had been at full speed for more than three minutes. <laughs> it's like double the amount of time. <laughs> it's crazy. Apparently one of the... One of them just like couldn't contain it and just patted the plane and said, Good girl. <laughs> oh, couldn't contain it. They've been, couldn't in, the, contain they've been it. in that plane for too long. <laughs> oh, that a girl. They all have to take uh, solo trips to the bathroom after that. Oh, yeah. So, sort Excuse of, me, boys. A, what, sorry about this. What are we talking about? <laughs> a little celebratory time? <laughs> yeah, celebratory. I'll go first. Piss your pants. <laughs> so the next landing was in Brazil. And they'd been in the air for 23 hours and 35 minutes. It was a new world record. Oh, great. For a Boeing 314. Guinness involved in that? Absolutely. Guinness were on board. (laughs) Yeah, they're always there with their clipboards, (laughs) their lab coats. Mm, They're not helping in any way. Mm. Observing. Not allowed to help. No, prime directive. 
love it. You'll love this as well, Matt. As the crew disembarked at Natal, the Pan American station manager handed them all a beer. Bob Ford swigged his down in one single gulp. Wow. That's a big gulp. Best damn beer I ever had. A very small beer. It's a shot glass. He crushed the can on his head. (laughs) Shot of beer. It is rationed. We do not have a lot of beer. But I thought you'd probably want some. Chug. A chug lug night here at the Pan Am uh, HQ. (laughs) Am I getting better? I think so. I thought I'd nailed the accent earlier, but I think it just got better. Wow. More accurate. Yeah. It's really impressive. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, they've, they've, they're, they, they've made it. They've, they've gotten to Brazil at least. They're on the home they've stretch. Ma- they've, they've made, made it. it. To Brazil. Brazil. They've made it to Brazil. <laughs> obviously, they It's t- like only one continent away. That's pretty right. good. Yeah. Obviously, they take in some of the sites. Yeah. Um, to the beach. To the beach. Surf up. Like a cabana, loving it. Didn't have a surfboard stashed there. He did have to have rent to one. Oh, oh, rent did one. A body board. In the library. We went for the library. <laughs> um, yeah, and it was a bit steep prices. It was like thirty bucks for half a day or but something. But he'd been earning double and a half for yeah, a so he was like, few you days know what? There. I deserve this. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the last two legs of the flight home passed pretty quickly. The crew on. Pa- we're on Pan Am territory now, far from the chaos of war. They've, they've cleared the most dangerous parts. The night shift air controller at LaGuardia's tower was enduring another fairly boring night shift. No planes came or went overnight, but the tower still needed to be manned. So he's just sort of having a couple. Poor woman. Chilling out. No, it's men. It's yeah. the 40s. It's men. I right. <laughs> <laughs> a feminist. So I just really had to I know, jump and in I there. appreciate that, but I, we do actually need to be historically accurate. I had to, I had to speak up. I had to lean in. I had to but speak up. You did up. have to speak over a woman to so, look, be a feminist. Look, Jess, please let me get this out. I need... To um, make it clear that I think women have a place in the workforce. Thank you. And I, I know it seems brave to say it, but just please let me finish. <laughs> I just think that women are capable of some tasks. Thank you. Just proceed. Thank you so much. Um, so in this case, the night uh, shift air controller... Was definitely a man. <laughs> Not that a woman isn't capable of that job. Thank you. That's so all I'm, I'm saying. I'm just trying to be. I'm trying to get better. So thank you for <laughs> thank you for teaching me. Um, but then a bit before six a.m., the radio crackled. Uh, Dave, do you want to do it in a, in your pilot voice? Oh, sure thing. Okay, here you go. It's all capitalized just there. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> the radio crackled. Da, LaGuardia Tower, LaGuardia Tower, over. Uh, this is... Because it's, it's, uh, it's an American pilot, remember, as well. Yeah, they all sound the same, mate. Uh, this <laughs> is... Uh, it's an international <laughs> international language. <laughs> this is uh, Pan America Clipper uh, NC uh, 18602, uh, uh, inbound uh, from Auckland uh, in New Zealand, um, over. Due to arrive uh, Pan American uh, Marine uh, Terminal uh, Guardia in uh, seven uh, minutes. Uh, this whole time, my movie is paused on the yeah, screen. Yeah. I'm furious. Yeah. Get to the point. Yeah, come on. So upset. Over. That is good stuff. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Well done. Well done, Dave. Did you get? That was so good. Jess clapped you. I think twice. Twice. <laughs> then realised I needed to. The red double. Yeah, double. double. Please don't stand. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> um, the controller was pretty baffled. Um, yeah, because he's like, that, that transmission took eight minutes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Where are, Have they landed now? Yeah. I don't know. Um, it was still before 6 a.m. There were no seaplane flights due. And then a new wave of confusion hit him. New Zealand. Yeah, this is a prank call from a local kid. Yeah, he's like, that is on the other side of the world. There are no Pan Am routes that Hang come on a from second. New Zealand. He goes to the library, checks out an atlas. Yeah. New Zealand. <laughs> There's a library a downstairs. It's very convenient. <laughs> uh, he's like, that That makes no sense. This is what's going on here. Then the internal intercom next to the radio suddenly crackled into life and uh, it said, this is flight watch at the marine terminal. Did you hear that? <laughs> so they've got that transmitter as well and they're like, wait, what? <laughs> so the controller reached for the radio and, uh, and said, I'm going to do it because they don't do the same voice. Oh, of course not. That's very different. You, you, can play, you can play Captain Ford, but I'll be the control tower. But I will have to do a deep voice because it was a man. 
okay. and I won't let Matt do and men it. Men have deep voices. Men have deeper voices sometimes. I'm not doing a deep voice. Pan American Clipper, 18602. This is LaGuardia. The seaplane channel is closed until daylight. You will have to hold for about an hour before we can clear you for landing. Over. The reply came swiftly. Uh, you are speaking uh, too fast. Uh, didn't uh, catch that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said LaGuardia. Surely they're like, I'm afraid we're coming in. Yeah. We've got exploded engines. <laughs> yeah, we're not sure about our fuel. I'm real tired. I know. I'm keen for a surf. We're landing. <laughs> They've been stuck in this plane for like huge long stretches. And this guy's like, you're going to have to wait for an yeah, hour. And they're like, we've landed in a minefield in the Congo River. Yeah. I mean, I can land anywhere. You can land anywhere. It's. I know it's dark. I'll have a stab at it. It's okay. Um, so is that what you reckon he says? Yep. Stuff you, I'm landing. Something like that, I reckon. He says, LaGuardia, Roger, no problem. Oh. We can do that. Over. <laughs> He's like, we'll just... I'm forward. I really thought we'll that just, he'd be... We'll just do a loop. Do a loop for an hour. Daylight comes up. <laughs> Bob's your uncle. And then the um, the uh, air controller says, sorry, Pan American Clipper, but say again, confirm your departure point. <laughs> <Over>. <laughs> and there's a brief pause. And then the reply came over the radio, crisp and clear, leaving no room for doubt. I say again, inbound from Auckland, New Zealand, by way of the long way round. <laughs> Over. <laughs> so they made it. Sick. They made it back to New York. So great. It's so good. As they finally approached the east coast of the US, Ford looked around the cabin. Um, and in that moment realised what they'd all done. Not only had they survived flying without navigation tools, being shot at by a submarine, successfully taking off from the Congo River, but by flying from San Francisco to Auckland and then from Auckland to New York, the California Clipper and her crew had become the first commercial plane to circumnavigate the world. Oh, wow. Guinness World Records are there again. They're Pretty knocking cool. them off. Left, right and centre. Clipping them off. They're clipping them off. Um, they had logged 209 hours in the air and travelled 31,500 miles around the globe. I don't oh, wow. really understand what that means. How many MCGs is that? How many Olympic pools would that be? 31,500 miles. <laughs> so, yeah, we've got to put that into Olympic pools for you. I'll, I'll have to do it on Take Google. That on I yeah, yeah, I'll have to. I'll do that in a sec, but... Um, even though the plane did not return to its starting point in San Francisco, historians and aviation export experts were quick to call the flight the first commercial circumnavigation of the globe since the aircraft made it back to its country of origin. So they're like, nah, it counts. It counts. Oh, okay. Yeah, pay that. Oh, okay. yeah, pay that. That's actually that. pretty sick what they've done. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually very cool. Um, so that's that's it. That's the story about the uh, the clipper, the little plane that could. Wow, Jess, little you forgot the last bit. A team of English <laughs> gentlemen were there to greet them and invite them to dinner. <laughs> oh, jolly good show, old chap. <laughs> How about we? You're not even stationed here. What are you doing here? Oh, don't oh. worry. <laughs> A gentleman appears wherever he is needed. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But there you go. Uh, you know, we've got we've got a few minutes to spare. So if you wanted to ask any questions, have you, uh, how do planes work? Uh, any other questions? Uh, do you have any idea if it had any role in the war? The plane after that, they were desperate to get it back. Isn't that amazing? They just like yeah. put it into a museum yeah, or like, something. Seaplane. We don't need those. <laughs> <laughs> they could have just have been hanging out in Gladstone in Queensland the whole time. Oh, yeah, or beautiful part of the world. Beautiful part of the beautiful, world. Gorgeous. Well, open up the the envelope. Yeah, I have no idea what it's going to say. Um, it says you're fucked. I, I didn't write it down, but they, I think, I, I, well, I read that, like, they got it back to, but it was pretty battered because it had gone yeah, quite Does anyone want, they don't want it anymore. And I think they ended up using it, like, a little bit, but it, it pretty much ended up um, being used for parts. They didn't even really preserve it. That's brutal. Oh, isn't it? Yeah. Deserves so much better. Wow. Yeah. I'm just like, oh, thanks, chuck it on the pile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got heaps. Thanks, heaps. Yeah. That can be one of our spare planes. Yeah, Did you fly this all the way from New Zealand? That was dumb. That's a waste of time. I would have just hung out waste of resources. <laughs> Um, but they bloody did it. What a story. Very cinematic. I would love to see yes. that made into a film. And did did Bob Forty obviously lived many years and did many surfs. Did many surfs. Um, he you know, he lived to surf another day. And Point Dexter, did he make it back for that meal? He really didn't get mentioned much, Point no, Dexter. He didn't have a lot to do. It was worth mentioning him. Well, the name alone. 100%. Yeah. 100%, yes. It, it must have been know. frustrating that yeah. you're the radio man and then f for most of the journey you can't use the radio. Yeah. Yeah. 
He's like, this is... Remember, they insist that two people have to be on. Yeah. There's two useless people. And they've got a new sort of radio system on there that he's wanting to test out, make sure it works, see how it works, and he can't. So it was like completely pointless that he was there. But he ended up, um, you know, a journey that should have been a few days. They were gone for five weeks. Five weeks. Incredible story. I love it. Some great stuff. Hey, um, Andy, Andy Matthews, do you want to, do you want to come over here for a second? Bring that, bring that thing though, because we got like five more minutes and see if there's any questions on there or anything. Is there any questions from right, listeners it, we could? Hello, everyone at home. Andy, where do you get get off? <laughs> <laughs> That's the only one. It's just question. that again and again it's and again. Question. They had come back again in. They were again. ready for to cross to them and just do this really slick and professionally. I thought this is what this is fun. Anything goes here. I People. Was, are, yeah, I was yeah, unfortunately no, is, too is, efficient. This doesn't go. I'm afraid. Um, <laughs> Uh, what time is it for everyone in the chat? It's five fifty-five p.m. here. Okay. You know, so that kind of that kind of um, banter. Yeah, cool. Um, <laughs> good to see Someone allyship from the feminist of the pod. Yeah, that is good to see. We mm. do appreciate that. I wonder if anyone's asked a question now, seeing now that I've sort of queued them up. <laughs> How do you sleep at night? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. It's a very, very hostile chat room we've got that's over there. No, no, that's, that's a, a genuine question. How do you sleep at night? You, you're sponsored by Sleeping Duck Mattresses, right? That's right. That's right. Um, how do you, yeah, go on, Dave. How do you sleep at night? Uh, hugging a pillow? Uh, yes, hugging a pillow and cradled like this. Yep. Um, and annoying everyone else in the bed. That's nice. Everyone, everyone else, being including my wife and my dog. <laughs> dog yeah. Everyone, everyone else in else. your bed. I know. Sounds like there's a real party going on. Yeah. Who, you uh, uh, English gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, right. Oh, jolly good. Yeah. <laughs> How about you, Andy? How do you sleep? Wearing little nightcaps. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, under under all the animals in the house, it's got to be a real issue, and it's actually destroying my relationship. <laughs> so um, I'd rather not talk about it. Okay. Um, uh, we, we have a we have a question here. Yep. Um, um, well, firstly, a request: Can we um, can we hear some plane noises from the man of a thousand? Oh, I think noises. that. Oh, what kind of plane noises are you well, thinking? Preferably a clipper, three one four. Yeah, a clipper like struggling to take off. The, he's saying, get okay, up, get yeah, up, yeah, get up. And a clipper being a seaplane. Seaplane, yes. uh, Boeing or it's a Boeing three one four on the Congo. Okay, <clears throat> so there's uh, gorge. gorges. Uh, gorge ahead. We can right, hear the gorge go. as well. That'd be good. Yeah. <laughs> get up! Get up! <laughs> <laughs> Scottish Terrier drowning in custard. Are you able to do the, the plane noise we were talking about as well? Sorry, yes. Um, sorry, I think something was lost in translation there. You wanted a plane noise. Okay, here we go. You always Speaking have to warm up with a different sound, don't yes, you? Yes, that's right. You can't just leap straight in. Here's a, pl- a plane noise. Plane taking off. Plane, okay. Struggling. So it starts in a bit of water. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. We're in the air. Oh, and everyone's like, "Good girl, (laughs) good girl." (laughs) Yeah, so much. Beautiful. Uh, And uh, another question. This is important. I think it's it's good to address this early. Um, Question for the team: Three pot plants on the table, but only one has a coaster. Yeah. Why? <laughs> that, that is one. That one is. Or fix this horrible issue. issue. That's why. I mean, we really probably need to get Evan in to explain that. But um, yeah. He's busy. Leave him alone. <laughs> wow, this is going to be a nightmare for continuity. <laughs> yeah, and also then, what if you have more people here with beverages? Fuck. More than three. They're not going to think to. <laughs> there we Hang go. On, so more people than the three chairs and. Yeah. Or one person. Anything could heavily. happen today. How about that? Andrew? Anything could happen. Are you happy with that? Established. I'm, well, I'm happy with that. Sure. Maybe it's almost time for us to yeah. finish up and throw over yeah, to thank Andy you. and Al. <laughs> thank you so thanks much. so much, Andy. Thanks, Andy. Well, hey, hey, thanks everyone for watching us and uh, tuning into this in, in the first place. And thank you to Stupid Old Studios here for having us. What a great time. Oh, what a lovely time. time. And if, I it was guess so good. We, we got escorted from. We had we were pre-briefed yep. in one room, and then we were escorted down into the green room, yep. and then we were escorted in here. No, I, they were concerned you'd steal shit. <laughs> we were. Everybody else is. They never took their eyes off me. Yeah. That's a that's a Matt Stewart thing. Right. Um, but yeah, if this was your first uh, encounter with Do Go On, <laughs> welcome. Welcome. We hey, welcome to our our crew. <laughs> now throw over the crew on.
No. Just shut up. Do Throw over to Andy. Crew, do, to, crew go on. Throw it to over to Andy now. Hey, thanks so much. That's the end of us here at Do Go On. And now I'm going to throw over to two of my favourite people in the entire world. Me it's and Jess are right here. you got to throw over to Andy and Al. Fucking hell, it's Andy and Al. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>
Yeah. Um, so that's good. Yeah. Um, and I get to look at my phone for a bit, which I didn't get to do here because I was reading. I have a question about what happened there today because during the episode, mm. Alistair and I popped out to get some coffees. Of and course. then while we were at the cafe, we got a request for a coffee from Matt Stewart, mm. who, like, and, you know, that was mind melding for us yeah. because we realised he's on the podcast right yeah. now. How could he be doing it? Alistair speculated it could be something to do with vibrating anal beads mm. that he was using ah. to communicate. Um, his order, but then I suggested that you know they really only are a one way, a one way direct you know, yeah, form yeah. of communication. So. No, he just got on his phone. Um, yeah, right. I think he okay. just forgot that we were um, live. <laughs> well, he wasn't on the radio. That's you, right. You, you can do that on a podcast. You can mm. do that on a podcast. You can't get your phone audio, out. An mm. audio medium. You mm. can Google something your friend is talking about, or you can mm. just send a text, um, mm. and that's what he did. But I think he covered it really nicely by then just saying, "Yeah, geez, it's uh, oh, it's full on, isn't it?" You know, and I think, I think oh, that's, that's that, but that's beautiful conversationmanship. That's right. Yeah, and yeah you, know, you can use that for for any time you're not paying attention. You know, somebody's oh. just broken to you the news of a, a lost loved one. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, it's full on, yeah, man, full isn't on, it? Right. Yeah, you know, or um, you know, Tough. somebody's asked you to marry them. Yeah. You know? Ooh, oh, yeah. a bit full on. Yeah. yeah. You could say. You could say. Yeah. yeah. You could say, "Will you be my wife?" <laughs> like that. And yeah. I'd say, "Oh, a bit full on." Yeah, that's hectic. <laughs> that yeah. <laughs> Bro. That one's hectic. I'd okay. love to get the statistics on how many proposals of marriage have employed the Borat My Wife. Mm. It's probably a lot now. Yeah. Because you know, it look I mean if you look at the, the year, it's been quite a few years since that movie came out. But mm. do you think it was that it was a much higher number quite soon after that movie came out? Or do you and then it's mm. dwindled, or do you think it's remained quite strong? <laughs> the thing is that I think it's getting funnier. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And so <clears throat> it's yeah. I mean, mm. it's really ex exciting to think about how funny that'll be in 100, 200 years. Yeah. You know, it might be too just... funny. Well, I mean, you could kill your wife. <laughs> <laughs> your, your wife. <laughs> potential wife. Your potential wife could. Yeah, it would be, it, be crazy, actually. Mm. I wouldn't. I, like, I actually find death quite sad. So mm. oh. I know we're laughing right now. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but this is like a real tragedy. You, you might end up giving your life. <laughs> <laughs> Is that something? Yeah, no, I'm having a good time. I think, and I think that will also improve yeah. over time. Yeah, I think that was it probably could be the one next of my one. best. Yeah, yeah. I think cool. so. Now, earlier you mentioned uh, the city of Gladstone. Yes. Yeah. Have you ever been? I have. So what would you, what'd you do there? Um, the like, did you go on, the, on a sort of a... Re while you're researching this episode? Yes, I went to research this episode. I went approximately six years ago um, for mm. research purposes, mm. so it's a tax write-off now. Um, uh, I did the, the comedy festival roadshow oh, there. Oh, right. And it's like a, well... If I'm remembering the right town, oh, I might be thinking of Rockhampton. You know, they all blend into one. Mm. Sure. But I remember mm. it being like a, a smallish town, yeah. but with a beautiful theatre. And with a synonym for a lump of stone in its name, either Rockhampton or Gladstone. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, yeah. Get, I get my... Could have been Boulder, Colorado. It could have been. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. I don't could have been Pebble Beach. It could have been. That, uh, that golf course. Could have been... Dwayne The Rock Johnson Could have been. City. Mm. Could have been. <laughs> That's not far off. No. no. We are not far off naming no, a city no, after. No. We love sure. that guy. Yeah. Oh. Oh, man. oh my God! Me and Andy, we pitched an idea for. I mean, in this episode that hasn't been uploaded, eh? we discovered oh, yes, whilst, yep, yep. whilst mm. waiting for this other podcast. You notice that they're taking longer than I thought than they would. To, to, to no, that's them? just the, the the tedious nature of Guess our conversation. Yeah, right, right, right. They got 15 minutes changeover period. Do they? Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, see, I didn't know. That. Well, see, I've been settling yeah. in for like, and here they are. Yeah, yeah right. right. You've been ramping up to that. So that's for why some I thought I'm bringing new topics every <laughs> 10 seconds, yeah, yeah. right? Thinking that I, I, I I'm, I'm happy to just burn, burn them. Burn them. But yeah, mm. no. Meander, take yeah, your time yeah, with yeah, it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Let's so, get deep. Okay, me and Andy. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I, I, you know, maybe, maybe we can give a look, uh, a little sneak brief peek, yeah. sneak peek at mm. this great movie that we've got mm. that we've pitched in our last latest episode of Two in the Think Tank. Mm -hmm. Right? If you've never seen Two in the Think Tank, this is the kind of stuff that could be even coming up later. Mm. Right? Dwayne mm -hmm. the Rock Johnson mm -hmm. is the president of the United States. Yeah, I mean, right. which it's incredible that that hasn't already been it made hasn't as a film. Happened as yeah. far as like, I've seen, mm. right? And he's I've been watched... a tooth fairy. Yes, mm. um. uh, he's played. 
um, a guy in Jumanji. That's right. Yeah. Yes, a character of Jumanji. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I wonder where the tooth fairy lies in the like the chain of command, mm. designated survivor chain of command. You know, because I think it goes vice president, obviously, and mm. then maybe <laughs> secretary of state, mm. and then maybe um, head of Federal Reserve, perhaps, oh, or something. Sort of treasury, maybe the, or the head of the con Justice. Congress, or something. Sure, like that, you're sure. Like yeah, yeah. Oh, house. Yeah, house, 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 and then yeah. and then eventually you must get down to the fairy. Yeah, yes. the fairy. So the tooth fairy can't even fly on the on Air Force One. Mm. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. Uh, you wow. don't, they don't talk about that a lot because it doesn't come up all that often. But yeah, but well, it's you know when now that nukes are on the table, yeah, uh, you know with Putin and stuff like that, this is actually a much bigger conversation. <laughs> yeah, we, we need to be talking, talking about. about this. But what if the president had young kids? Yeah, you know mm. the tooth losing age kids, mm. and they're mm. on a flight with their yeah. parent, the president, mm. and they lose a tooth. Can the tooth fairy, as I always assume the tooth fairy had wings. Yes. yes. Can the tooth fairy sort of fly up, get on, Ooh, and you yeah. have to decompress. Now, yeah, this yeah. is really yeah. exciting. <laughs> this is great. The perimeter of Air Force One has been breached. <laughs> They're there in the, in yeah. the, secur the security office. Mm. The alarms are all going off while this... I. I guess, like, sort of almost goblin-like clawed mm. creature <laughs> yeah. um, tears through the fuselage mm. to deliver the 50 cents. And wait, wait, and yeah. that is, and that is the, that's the, the tooth fairy? Oh, no, no, that's unrelated. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's yeah. the green goblin from uh, Spider-Man 1 and 2. Right. Okay, right. And then okay. will the tooth fairy fight it? Because, I mean, if that happened at the same time and they yeah, encountered right. each other, yeah. would, do you think their first instinct would be to do battle? Green Goblin versus the <laughs> Thank you. you or, saw or Hog win. Goblin is also He there, saw but. that my eyes had glazed over. Uh, so I'm, you've lost me for a second there. Yeah, yeah. But, Green Goblin but we're back three. talking we're about back, planes, back, yes. and so I'm sure yeah. I can see how you, mm. your oh, eyes lit planes? up again. <laughs> Seaplane? Not interested. Um, Green Goblin Tooth Fairy. Mm. You don't need to answer that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We'll take you through more of this idea. Yeah, this is oh, back yeah, to the course, original. Course, Air yes. Force One yep. then gets struck by lightning goes back in time mm. to the time of the dinosaur. Yes. Right? Also, Jack Black is is uh, head of state. Yeah. Uh, of course. For Secretary of State. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. So um, he's on the plane as yeah, well. He's on right. the plane as well. Yeah. 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 Uh, then they get stuck there. They crash well, land. Back, crash back land. in time. Back in yep. time. Mm -hmm. They uh, try to get the plane back in the air. It doesn't work, obviously. And in the end, they're able to climb on the back of a Hatsigopteryx, that enormous winged flying dinosaur. During and, a um, storm. During a storm. Take to the skies go back through the same time vortex, oh. back to the present day. They land in England. They're greeted by the Queen of England. She's still alive. It's a, it's a, it's, I mean, that's part of the beautiful fantasy of the that's movie. You can, you can actually... You can bring anyone back. She'll be alive forever in the, in the films. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Paddington, Paddington brings her back. Yeah. <laughs> brings her back across the River Styx. Paddling with that's that, nice. dragging her undead salt. That's, I mean, that's what they don't talk about. If he can take you down there, then he can get you back. Yeah. He's the one guy, <laughs> Liam Neeson style, who can get the, the soul, the undead soul yeah. of the Queen of England back from... Um, yeah, and then, know, he, and then he, uh, once he gets her back on the land, he mm. rides her to England. <laughs> <laughs> like that. <laughs> yes. Go, beast, come! She just died. Mm. Did she? Oh my gosh! <laughs> that seems unbelievable. Oh, this is again very bad taste all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, it'll be called something like mm. yeah. Air Force One Million Years BC. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's something good. like that. And and uh, just to, one hundred million years. Mm. Sorry, there'd obviously the... be a lot of people on Air Force One. Not just the president. Yeah, a lot of them die. So everybody dies a lot except of them. them. Die except for, every, yeah, I mean most people. <laughs> Yeah, you know, perish yeah. at the claws of velocity. Yeah, it'll, it'll, yeah. yeah. I think. I think. Yeah, The Rock. Yeah, President Rock. Yeah, mm. uh, Secretary Black. Mm. Yes. Jack Black. They're using yes. their real names. Yeah. These aren't fictional characters and we're talking about. These are actual people from the world. Yeah, yeah. and then and then one woman. <laughs> mm, <laughs> I apologise. Yeah. Mm. Uh, who I don't. We haven't casted her yet. Yeah, I'm that so sounds sorry. about right. Um, will also survive. Okay. You know, and so, um, but she... But, but she's she the love interest the, of whom? No, 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 she's just a pilot. Okay. She's a pilot. Okay, but she's a pilot who falls in um, love with which see, one of them? Did your story you tell have a female <laughs> pilot? <laughs> Um, That's a good yeah, point. Yeah, no, exactly. So I don't, no. I don't want you to talk down. No, 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 no I believe, on. I believe that she could be a pilot. My question is, 
which one out of Jack Black or Dwayne The Rock Johnson does she fall in love with at the end? Of course Jack Black. Yeah. But at yeah. first, but Jack thinks it's going to be Dwayne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Dwayne The Rock, his, his sort of manliness is interesting in the way that it's quite asexual, I think. Mm. Okay. Yeah, um, I would yeah. say so. Don't you think? You know, yeah. he's almost yeah. transcended that part of his humanity mm. to he's, become a that's more That's nice. You're getting waved at. A... You're getting waved at now. He's, he's closer to an appliance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's a fridge. A fridge, yeah. He's like a fridge. Oh, we're getting told 30, 30 seconds. seconds. Wow. Well, I mean, well, this, I feel like this conversation had a lot of legs left in it. Yeah, yeah. Suffice to say, they land in England, they embrace Her Majesty the Queen, and in the background we see Prince Andrew being eaten by the Hatsy Goblin. Right. So it's a happy ending. Um, yeah, it's very exciting. It's a family so film. Look out for that. That's the one two in the think tank idea nobody can steal. We actually mm. are going to make. That's, uh, I can't that's, wait. That's going to pay for our kids to go to university. Mm. So that movie. Mm. So uh, we better we better get on to the next podcast. I think we've somehow chewed up 15 minutes. <laughs> it's incredible. It didn't feel that long. It felt oh, a lot I mean, longer. Geez. Oh well. I guess, you know, it's sad to see you go. Jeez, yeah. you're, you're a good performer on the mic. Thank you that's so an, much. That, but that's enough chit-chat. <laughs> you know, enough of this conversation, this pointless conversation. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, this is just getting in the way of what you're here to see, yeah. which, which is, is people talking to each other and, and listening. Yeah. Um, and uh, the, obviously, the next, uh, the next podcast is one of my, my new favourites. Who knew it with Matt Stewart? Um, they've got some big guests, and I understand there's an exciting mystery guest who will also be dropping in. Um, at the last second, so uh, stay tuned <laughs> to find out who that could be. Mm. Um, uh, unrelated, I, I need to start unclipping my microphone. Okay. Yeah, great. Yep. Um, thanks All right. so much, Well, Jess. I can just stand with Al. But back, um, or I can go oh if you God. want. Jess, would you do us the honour of introducing the next podcast? I would love to. Thank yeah? you so much. Um, okay, well, folks at home, please start the applause in your living rooms, bathtubs, bedrooms, wherever you are, and welcome to the Matt, funnily enough, Who Knew It with Matt Stewart. Who Knew It with Matt Stewart, the show where the guests write the wrong answers. I'm the titular Matt Stewart. And this week, I'm joined by co-host slash second banana slash scorekeeper. It's Stupid Old Studios' own Evan Munro-Smith. Ooh. <laughs> so happy to be here. It's and so good mm. to have a second banana on this show. This is the first week I've had one. Uh, yes, that's correct. Well done. <laughs> one point? All right. <laughs> and when we say Stupid Old Studios' own, we do mean that in a very legally binding sense. We purchased him as an orphan, <laughs> much like uh, the, <laughs> the show, the Truman Show. Oh, yes. And, um, yeah, he's not allowed to leave. I'm trapped. Yes, yes. It's a nightmare. <laughs> he's the only man who can retain adoption status as an adult. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. yeah. Our first contestant this week is Sans Pants Radio's host with the most gentlest energy. It's Cass Page. Oh. <laughs> mm. That's really nice. <laughs> I do have the most. Yes. Mm. Bit of what? <laughs> Our second contestant is perhaps Stupid Old Studios' most multi-talented member. It's some sort of scientist, Andy Matthews. Hello. Thank you very much. Yes, let's broaden the definition of talents to, uh, <laughs> to you know, you know like, like when you're, um, you're, you're dredge fishing the ocean and you'll pick up any old bycatch. We'll just consider everything to be a talent. Dolphin. Yeah, sure. Get that in there. Scallops. You don't think dolphins count as a good talent? In that scenario, what a fantastic catch. No, you're right. I do have the talent dolphin. <laughs> and, I, and I write that on all of my all of my resumes when I said the bit. I write dolphin, very big text, quite close to the top. And I currently looking for work. That's you're true. in need of a dolphin. Hi, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> so first time listener and viewers, we're actually on a live stream right now. Um, first time viewers might be wondering what this show is and how it works. Well, it's pretty simple, really. I ask a question, and then the contestants have to write a convincing fake answer. Then I read their answers, as well as the real one, and then they have to guess which is the correct answer. Jeez, it sounds more convoluted than it is. Every, I, I've got to take the time to write that better. <laughs> but now is not that time. OK, are we ready to play? Yeah, well, yes. absolutely. What, what precisely is my role? Your role. So you're going to be collecting the responses. So Andy and Cass are going to message you the yes. responses. Then you're going to quite, and this is the most efficient way I've thought of. Then you're going to put in a document that I can see. Yes. So you're basically sending them to me. So you're sort of sending them around. Right. It goes around in a. So it basically goes around in a clockwise motion. I see. Mm. Right. So you um, send them back to us. 
and then I'll read them back to you. Oh, okay. Yep. So they really do arrive. It's a round trip. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Starts with you, goes to Evan, then to me, and then mm. I read them you back. Get to them you. back. Yeah. Yeah. It's right. Nice. It's, it's like the um, it's like the carbon cycle or something like that. Exactly. It's oh. very much like the carbon cycle. That was <laughs> dolphin the over title. here <laughs> with his multi talents, some kind of scientist. <laughs> carbon cycle. Mm. That's and right. uh, I didn't know what it meant, but I did believe it was a real thing. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Um, obviously, I know uh, how the scoring works. Yes, yeah, so I'm about. I will explain that as well. Uh, okay, great. But you, I'll tell you'll understand that. Obviously, because I'm going to give them the first question. That while they're working on that, I'll explain the scoring to you. Right, love that. And Do you have any advice for, for for young players about like I'm a two hand texter. So should I, is it best to grasp the microphone between my knees like that and sort of crouch over like this while I type and talk? Yeah, if you've got that sort of flexibility, then that's what I would go for, yeah. In the cook there. Some people uh, remove a oh. rib so that they can uh, <laughs> have mic take that. that. Um, are you ready for your que first question? Yeah. Here you go. The first question comes from listener Kayla Hodquitz from New Jersey in the US. Cool name. Hey. It's a fantastic name. That's good. Mm. And Kayla's question is, what is the definition of the 16th century word huff snuff? Huff snuff? Mm. Huff snuff. And that's H-U-F-F-S-N-U-F-F? That's right. Okay. The hyphen mm. twixt them. Ooh. Ooh, a hyphen. Mm. Huff snuff. Huff snuff. Ooh. Okay, so you just have to 16th give it... 16th century? Yeah, well, that was when it was most popularly used. Mm. That, you know, gives you any right. sort of guide. Uh, and while they're writing their answers, Evan, let me yes. tell you and the viewers and listeners how the scoring works. So you get one point if your fake answer is guessed by the other contestant and another point if you correctly guess the answer. By the way, I'm also playing as the house. Okay. Uh. <laughs> so you could win this? I could win this. I'm the only one that couldn't win this. You're the only one who, who certainly cannot win it. <laughs> Under no circumstances. Okay. <laughs> no, you're part of the house, Evan. We're, the, um, we're collectively the house. Oh, great. Love that. Uh, so I've put in two of my fake answers as well, two of my own fake answers for each question. And we, the house, we get one point for each of those that the guest chooses. So each of us can score up to two points per round. Seems fair, but the probability does uh, favour us. The house... Right. The house always wins. Although if you have uh, listened to the show before, you'll know that the house nearly never wins. Anyway, our questions come from our great Patreon supporters. If you want to submit a question, sign up to any level via patreon.com slash dogonepod. And uh, anyway, let's see. No answers are in yet. Evan, how, how are you feeling? Do you understand what's going on? I, um, I, I think I do. I, I, uh, I'm just seeing if I, I'm, I'm receiving some answers now. Uh, for the viewers, I should tell you that I only explained to Evan what his role was in terms of uh, sending the answers to me as Andy and Al were throwing to us from... <laughs> <laughs> like, literally seconds before the show started, I was saying, by the way, Evan, I've just shared the doc with you. Can you put their answers in here? So if, I... if he doesn't seem like he's working quickly, that's it's in some way it's because of me. I like that we're constantly exploring and finding new ways in which we can exploit Evan <laughs> and use him. Like, I mean, it's not enough that he has set up every single <laughs> yes. thing here today and overseeing <laughs> all of the technical side of the actual production. He also has to be, you know, funny on camera and then... <laughs> Well, the, he's a good mm. resource and you've got him for life, so why not yeah, see what you exactly. can, see what I mean, you can do with him? It would be crazy not to. And it feels like I don't think we've ever given him a challenge that he hasn't risen to. Mm. So it feels like we're continuously yeah. trying to find his breaking point. Yes. And we <laughs> can't find it. Um, you might Evan, find it live today. <laughs> during the course of this episode, I'd like you to solve one of the greatest unsolved mysteries in mathematics, the Ryman <laughs> hypothesis for us. Okay. And if we could get that by the end of the episode. If we could get a whiteboard wheeled up next yeah. to Evan. Yeah. All right. So question number one is, what is the definition of the word huff snuff? Here are your five options. A blowhard who likes to bully but takes offence easily. The act of using a leg to pump the covers up and down after a nocturnal fart to secretly expel the smell from the bottom of the doona like a bellows. Mm. A medicine to snort to help clear your nose when it's blocked. The rattly bit of a rattlesnake. <laughs> or a wealthy lady who spends all of her allowance on tobacco. 
Mm. It's like the rattly bit of a rattlesnake is called a rattle. Mm. Oh, that's what you would think, Evan. <laughs> yeah. No clues, though, please. But then why wouldn't the question say the rattle of a rattlesnake? Oh, no, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, really good point. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think I've ever heard a less rattly word in my <laughs> life than huff snuff. It's very... It's got no edges. It's quiet. Mm. I, that's under a blanket. Mm. So the, yeah. the fart one's really coming out stronger than yeah. rattle. Yeah, my only question about that is whether or not they had Duna technology back in the uh, right. whatever time we're talking century. about. It feels it like is for a thing that is just essentially, you know, torturing a duck for warmth, a Duna feels like a relatively modern invention. Does yours include torture? Yeah, it, it, it's, it's basically full of ducks. Wow. You sort of kick them and they squirm around okay. and the friction generates heat. Isn't that what everyone... Yeah, no, that's, that's, yeah. A, okay, that's a doona. Mm. A blanket mm. is different. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. and a duvet is a completely oh. different thing again. That's one of those cruelty-free ones. Mm. <laughs> All right. So yeah, 16th century seems very wool and pelts. Mm. Yep. So, have you got any thoughts here? Who wants to go first? Uh, I'm tempted to lock in the person who, about the taking offence and the bullying and the the being, you know, basically, you know, a real Matt Stewart type of guy. (laughs) (laughs) That is, yeah, that is me, a know-nothing, know-it-all, who who likes to uh, give but very bad at taking. Do you just call yourself a know-nothing, know-it-all? <laughs> that's really funny. <laughs> that is kind of mean in a nutshell. I, every day I'm fighting to to not be that. But mm. That is my natural state. Sure. Um, fantastic. I've locked that in for Andy. Cass, do you have any thoughts here? Oh, that I do. I agree with that because You're half gonna... is very like, and then snuff is like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's a much better explanation than I came up with. <laughs> yeah. I th- We're both locking in the blowhard. Yes, blowhard. Fantastic. All right. Well, let's go through the answers. Uh, firstly, we had a wealthy lady who spends all of her allowance on tobacco. That was written by Cass. Ah, that was a fantastic. It's a beautiful answer. answer. Thank you. Yeah. I've. I, you know, I forgot what snuff is. Uh, yeah, it's a cut. I think it's a type of snorting tobacco. I think. Oh, you're, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> you, you 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 forgot, but then out of all the things that could have been in the world, you guessed the one correct one, which is a, amazing. Is that what you put in a snuff yeah. box? Is that what that's for? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And that's I think what a snuff film is all about as well. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. all about mm. the smoking industry. Mm. Thank you for smoking as a snuff film. Mm. Wow. Right. Yeah, there you go. I've never seen it, but I should. I think yeah. that would be thank you for snorting. Oh, it would be, yeah. Mm. Just look. If you just go home and Google snuff movie, you'll be able to find it. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> if you're watching now, <laughs> this podcast festival finishes and, you know, we've got some hours left, but mm. that, that's the rest of your night sort of. Mm. <laughs> I think by the end of, of today, it will descend into a snuff movie. You reckon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a long session of podcasting. So the rattly bit of a rattlesnake was written by the house. Mm. Uh, I may or may not have been watching an episode of The X-Files that featured a lot of rattlesnakes last night while re- writing this. Uh, a medicine to snort to help clear your nose when it's blocked. That was also the house. Ooh, that was a good one. I think we're, that was a we're, really good one. we're looking okay. So no points for the house this round. Uh, the farting <laughs> pump. <laughs> that was Andy Matthews. Oh, Meaning the correct damn. answer was a blowhard who likes a bully but takes offence easily, meaning one point for Andy Matthews, one point for Cass Page, no points for the house. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh, burn this house down! Um, Not from the inside, get the mites in. My strategy of questioning the logic of my own answer in the hope of mm. throwing people off the scent <laughs> <laughs> really worked, yeah. really I mean, worked. Your answer was about throwing people off a scent, right? That is absolutely yeah. correct. <laughs> That's what I do. Mm-hmm. Mm, I was going to clap, but I, just, I don't. Mm. No, try. <laughs> You know what they say, throw people off the scent in the streets, throw people off the scent in the sheets. <laughs> it's the one thing where you do the same thing in both scenarios. <laughs> All right, so a quick score update, Evan, if you have time. <laughs> I imagine you do. Why would? What else are you doing? S- score oh, update. I'm all in. This is a score update after you just read us the scores. Yeah, I'd yeah okay. no, it'll be scorer. great. I mean, I'll just have to do it from memory. Yeah. <laughs> you guys had some Can you remember what? You had no points. Is that That's correct? right. Yeah. There we go. Great. Okay. Here is question number two. <laughs> this one oh, comes God. from Ash Dickinson from Bradford in West Yorkshire. Oh. The question is: What world record is Thomas Cleaver associated with? What world record is Thomas Cleaver associated with? Fantastic name, Ash Dickinson, I think. Mm. Evan? Um, Thomas Cleaver is also a great name. It is a great name. 
I wonder if it, yeah, if that is going to put any thoughts in their minds. <laughs> yeah, I mean, straight away I was thinking of knives. Knives. Yeah, maybe there'll be some knife knife related uh, answers. Uh, while they're writing their answers, though, Evan, do you want me to tell you a bit more about Huff Snuff? Uh, yes. Well, according to our question writer, Kayla, this word was tweeted out by Susie Dent, the linguist who sits in Dictionary Corner on the UK's countdown. Uh-huh. Andy works for the Australian countdown. No, Australian Letters and Numbers. Mm. Uh, she has several books exploring the long and strange history of English words. The Oxford English Dictionary dis- defines uh, Huff Puff as a conceited fellow who gives himself airs and is quick to take offence, a braggart, a hector. Which is all. I mean, I don't know some of those words, but I love she them She knows all. too many words. She's forgotten how to talk. <laughs> Mental Floss says the idea is that a person is huffing and snuffing in an exaggerated fashion with their nose in the air, outraged by any affront to their precious person. So I think I think you you explained that quite well, Cass. Thank you, thank you. The logic. The, the vibes were immaculate. I I really did nothing. They they flowed through me. <laughs> You're just is a it, vessel. Would that would that would that would that be what we would call a snowflake today, or is a snowflake has a more political component and more identity based component? Yeah, yeah. but it is similar, right? If someone yeah. calls you a snowflake, you're probably opinionated, or they think you're opinionated, mm. but you're also a fragile, overly sensitive. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Opinionated like a snowflake. <laughs> yeah, that's a really good um, you know word, isn't well, it? I mean, yeah. the people who are using the word snowflake are normally probably offended in themselves of something they've said, right? So it's sort of a bit of a back and forth. Yeah, I, I always thought Snowflake also had the connotation of the person who is the snowflake assumes themselves to be quite unique and special <laughs> and the person calling them a snowflake thinks that they would melt at the touch of a hand like a snowflake. Mm. It's actually now come right around. It's a great word. I'm going to start using it. I'm, hey, I'm reckon- hey, you're special and I want to treat you with care, <laughs> Snowflake. <laughs> That's really nice. Yeah. That's not yeah. what a huff snuff would do. <laughs> would not have taken that so well. <laughs> so your answers are in for question number two. What world record is Thomas Cleaver associated with? Here are your five options. He built the world's largest model Tower of Pisa out of a Tower of Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he led the biggest ever drumming circle. Uh, the most pieces of buttered toast consumed in five minutes. <laughs> he owned the world's largest horse. <laughs> or an accident on the Royal Barge in 1753 established him as the most buoyant member of the royal family. Hmm. <laughs> need to hear any well, of those There's no again. other way to check that. <laughs> You got to float them all, right? <laughs> yeah, you'd have to. It's like when you don't know if your eggs are bad. <laughs> you have the you have to put aside five minutes in the kitchen. You're like, okay, well, we should check that out. Does that mean that everyone in the royal family fell off that boat? Yeah, I do, guess. Do so, we yeah. nearly get them? Yeah. That's the inciting movement uh, uh, moment uh, event from the movie King Ralph. Is that right? Is that what happened? Yeah, I think that is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Thomas Cleaver was there, but he yeah, also <laughs> was electrocuted, mm. making Later. way for Ralph to take the throne. Correct. Um, I, uh, I've forgotten all of those. Yeah, let's have those again. Right, I'll go back um, through them. So we had the wor- uh, he built the world's largest model tower pizza <laughs> out of a tower of pizza. It's good. Just as funny the second time That's around. Good. I love yeah, it. Really I, I'm really glad we asked for these again. <laughs> uh, he led the biggest ever drumming circle. Still not, not as funny as you would have hoped it to be given the first one. <laughs> we didn't hear the circle. Uh, the That's mo- true. Yeah, it's an audio thing. <laughs> <laughs> Most pieces of buttered toast consumed in five minutes. Mm. He owned the world's largest horse. Can you ever really own the world's largest oh, horse? Oh, that's true. <laughs> Surely at that point you've just got to say, you know, you know what, you're in charge. How how big does a horse have to be before you, it, it, you know, the balance has, has tipped? I, th- I kind of feel like Evan is the living world's largest horse and we're trying to own him here mm. at Stupid Old Studios, but can we really? I mean, legally, yeah. Absolutely, <laughs> but, you know, spiritually. Why aren't I... Why can't one, I learn sorry, about cats. who the horse is? Oh, why can't you? No, but that's so sad if they're like his own... <laughs> yeah. I want to know about the horse. The horse grew. That's, that's The horse did the good thing. Sorry, continue. It's, sort of, it's like sad horse about the racing, horse. isn't it? The, the horse is never interviewed. It's always the jockeys and the owners. Mm-hmm. But it's the horse that did, I'd say, 90, 80, no, 70% of the work. Mm. You've got to bring mm. that number up. Up again? Yeah, I reckon up again. 75? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it's really sad. I mean, horses can't own themselves, Cass, so. 
<laughs> That's got to be at least twenty percent of it. Dynamic, isn't it, between the horse and the and the jockey, where the the horse tries to be as big and strong as possible, and the jockey tries to be as tiny, <laughs> tiny little thing. Meek. Yeah, and that's their work is to be, become smaller and smaller and smaller, while the horse gets bigger and bigger. It's a sort of quite a toxic relationship, I would say, between the two of them. Uh, not symbiotic. No, it's the opposite of that, isn't it? It is toxic. Mm. You were right, Anne. Parasitic, almost. Yeah, parasitic. Yeah, the, yeah. the jockey's like a little parasite. <clears throat> yeah, although you'd think that they the would swell up like a tick while the horse got smaller. I guess it doesn't really make mm. sense. It's, cl- it's really close to working. And the final option was an accident on the Royal Barge. In 1753 <laughs> established him as the most buoyant member, member of the legal family. I guess it was a prince, probably Prince Thomas Cleaver. Mm. So you've got five fantastic options there. Mm. Need to hear them uh, again, or uh, I mean, I've, I once again have forgotten what all of them are. But really uh, in terms of things horse. that feel like a, a record, I'm going to go with the pizza, the pizza made of pizza, the pizza pizza. Pizza pizza. Fantastic. Andy's locking in for the pizza. What was the first one again? The first one was pizza, the pizza. pizza. Then we had the drumming circle, yeah, yeah. buttered toast, large horse or larger horse, and. A buoyant royal family member. Cass, I feel really bad. I don't know. You might have said the the drumming circle thing, and I I said suggest that wasn't as funny as the first one. And if it turns out you did do the drumming circle thing, I'm not. I'm really. I feel really bad for for even putting out the eye there. The or who? Or maybe if I wrote the drumming circle one yeah, as maybe well, you've maybe you feel bad feelings. about that too. Don't give a shit about. <laughs> it. And also, they're not all meant to be funny. They're meant to be very believable. And uh, okay. Yes. Sure. I That'll make for great podcasting. <laughs> yeah, well, people listen to podcasts for facts. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely going to go for that horse because I want that. To okay. Be. Well, if, you, if you're right, you'll get more info on it like you desire. Yay. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go through them. I'll leave the two you guests till uh, last there. Firstly, the accident on the Royal Barge uh, with the buoyant member of the Royal Family. That was Andy Matthews. Oh, a very funny one, Andy. <laughs> Thank you. Very funny. <laughs> It's not a competition. Uh, the biggest ever drumming circle that was written by the house. Oh, you know, maybe it's maybe it's not that funny, or <laughs> believable, or maybe it was just making up the numbers, and maybe that's what some people's role in life is. Jeez. And I, as I read it out, I'm like, it's drum circle, isn't it? It's not even drumming circle. Whatever. <clears throat> Uh, the most pieces of buttered toast consumed in five minutes. That was Cass. Oh, was cool. I? Yes. Mm. So that means one of you has the correct answer here. Ooh. But it was not Andy because the pizza tower, that was the house. The oh. world's largest horse was correct. Yeah, I'm so Whoa. excited to learn more about this horse. Incredible. <laughs> uh, what I really want to know is how big is it? Mm. Uh, I'll tell you all about that. How many far laps? Um, that's harder <laughs> to say. I can tell you in hands and I don't really know what that means. Mm. <laughs> 21.5 hands. Okay. Actually, I can tell you. Seven feet, two inches. you got to see photos of this thing. Mm. Right. Now, are it's we talking chunkiest... to like to the top of its head or to its back? They measure up to the back. I think it's up they? to the back. But so the it? head's even higher than that. And it's just what? It's so chunky. Isn't it's that like, crazy? It looks, it's like got a rhino build, on, but it's a horse. Mm. It's awesome. Oh, that it's rules. I think that we should measure humans in the same way and only measure them up to the shoulders and then the head is all just bonus. Because I think that'd be great when you hear someone's like seven foot or something like that and you're like picturing all the way up and they come in and that's just to hear. And then you've got the whole head. You're like, you're looking because you look from the feet up, right? When you yes. yeah. when a big person, you look like the, like the panning up like in a in a movie. When the yeah, the male guy is only yeah, for tall the male people. guy. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it works both ways. We use the same gaze. It's a very versatile gaze. We use it for um, people we're objectifying and also um, people we're just stunned by how tall they are. <laughs> for kind of objectifying. Talking earlier. They should use the same rule for buildings, right? I'm always... Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm the sorry shoulders. to use this language. It's absolutely PO'd when they count in that <laughs> antenna bit at the top. The Rialto yeah, was knocked yeah, off. That's What's some bullshit. building with a big... Mm-hmm. Oh, they you've count got the, the antenna? antenna. Who cares? Mm. That's not the building. That's not the if building. If I take it off... That's still the building. If I take the roof off a building, yeah. that's iffy on building. If we're doing that, then we're including people's hairstyles and how tall they are. Yeah, and we can't be doing that. <laughs> yeah, that's a real unfair advantage for... Mm. Every punk wins. <laughs> and they've had it too for too long, those punks. It'd be a yeah. great loophole if you could get into the NBA by just having really high hair. <laughs> Muggsy Bogues. Mm. Trick that, well, I mean, he got in anyway. <clears throat> but he had a shaved head and was the shortest player at the time. So, you know... Doubling down, I love that. Wasn't helping himself. Short oh. king. Short King, thank you. That's a much more positive way to talk about it. All right, here's question number three. Yes. It is. A, this is a, a date in time. 
question. What happened on the 3rd of September 2013 in the Maldives that made international news? What happened on the 3rd of September 2013 in the Maldives that made international news? While they're writing those answers, Evan, let me tell you about this chonky horse. This is from Wikipedia. Its name was Samson. It was a shy horse gelding foaled in 1846 in Toddington Mills, Bedfordshire in England. He was the tallest and heaviest horse ever recorded at 21 and a half hands. Samson, the tallest and heaviest horse on record, uh, stood 2.19 metres tall, 7 foot 2 inches, uh, by the time it was four years old. Imagine, like, that's tall for a four-year-old as well. I know horses mm. do age differently, but imagine a child who's that tall. <laughs> that, that makes it's, you think, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Uh, his peak, Squid Game. It makes you think about Squid Game. Well, the, the doll thing that was very tall. and Right. I thought maybe that your um, mind was just wandering. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, his peak weight was estimated at 3,360 pounds. Wow. That's 1,524 kilos. Uh, here's a less fun fact. He was gelded at approximately one and a half years old. I think what that means... Ge- what does gelding mean? Off, I think. Oh, yeah. That is, that's an interesting thing that, like, with a lot of um, uh, animals, if you do uh, cut off their testicles, um, they grow bigger. Oh, I didn't realise that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, uh, I think that... You know, remember that huge cow? Remember when there was that really big yes. cow and that picture of that really big cow and everyone got excited about how big the cow was compared to all the other cows? Do you remember this? went viral on Twitter. The great cow. And then there were some people who were like, the cow's not really that big. And you're like, don't, just come on, don't take this away from us. Yeah. But they were like, it's only because it's uh, it's been castrated or something like that. And you're like, well, and it's that's And fine. it's a perspective trick. Yeah. 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 Why do they keep giving really... Got a jockey standing next to it. <laughs> <laughs> All the names for lopping off bits are fancy. <laughs> yeah. I hate it. I hate hearing about like, ah, gelding, uh, castration. You're like, oh, beautiful name for a girl. Mm. No, awful. Is, is cast short for castration? <laughs> <laughs> castration page. Fantastic name. Oh, I want to be a wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they. I find it strange as well because making it a gelding, I guess that's why it got bigger because it means it can't breed, right? Wouldn't you want the biggest horse? Well, I feel like that would be a selling point as a horse breeder. Mm. I guess Wanna get the offspring of this big horse? It's a real catch twenty two. Yeah. That is a catch twenty two, mm. isn't it? What you'd have to do is pretend like have some fake balls back on the horse mm. and then sort of pretend that it's boning your your horse or mm. whatever, however they do it. Yeah. And then but actually then make them look somewhere else and then have another horse <laughs> own their horse. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if that's sustainable in practice. Mm. You probably or, or or ethical? No, that's you not ethical. ethical. I mean, the first horse breeding horse? ethics are always a, you know, yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's it's, so. a, it's a grey area. Pretty no. amazing that in almost two hundred years there hasn't been a bigger horse. That is that, amazing. That's mm. crazy, right? Yeah, it feels I'm like I'm sure people would have tried. They would have tried the gelding method, and just not. It just didn't work. <laughs> oh, that's like the golden goose thing. <laughs> mm. Yes, it is like the golden goose <laughs> thing. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that poor goose. <laughs> yeah, so you got to look up a photo of this horse anyway. At some point, you know, in your own time. Here is question number three. What happened on the 3rd of September 2013 in the Maldives that made international news? Am I saying Maldives right, by the way? Don't know. Right. I've heard Maldives. Maldives. I've heard I thought Maldives. it was a bit... I thought it was wrong. Maldives. Let's say that. I don't know good. if I'm right. I feel like it's a Caribbean, Caribbean thing. I don't right. know which is the right. Split the difference. Mo- Maldivis. Oh, Maldivis. Oh, Maldivis. Maldivis. <laughs> right, here are your options. Controversy erupted after the man claiming to have the world's biggest ball of belly button lint was caught supplementing it from his tumble dryer. Mm. A species of talking stingray was discovered. <laughs> <laughs> The football team lost the match to Brazil 69 to nil. A sinkhole opened and swallowed a small hotel. Or a coconut was arrested on suspicion of vote rigging. So we've got... (laughs) So we've got five... One of these is a real thing that happened. I love love these questions that are like... So you've got controversy over... The cheating belly button, mm. belly button lint okay. world mm. record holder. Yep. Talking stingray discovered. <laughs> yeah. Ball team lost to Brazil 69 yes. nil. Yes. Sinkhole opened and swallowed a small hotel. 
or a coconut was arrested on suspicion of vote rigging. Mm. Wow. Oh. I mean, I want them all to be true. Mm. They're all my big, favourite. Big day of news and the yeah. <laughs> Um, look, I'm trying to go a bit meta here. I'm trying to think what kind of news was I into in 2013? What would I have heard about? Mm. I just what was what was the the belly button lint one? I feel uh, like I would have known about that. Yeah, <laughs> sort of. Tr- I have I have some Google alerts set up for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know I know what's happening. Yeah. So the fir- that was controversy erupted after a man claiming to have the world's biggest ball of belly button lint was caught supplementing it from his tumble dryer. I mean, that's the worst thing you can do, isn't it? It'd be like it'd be like in um. You know that drug cheat sort of thing, where they actually, you know, often will have somebody else's urine in a in a sachet and then a, f- a mm. fake penis. He probably had some sort of prosthetic belly button yes, in one there. Of those, and the piss world records. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that happened. Did you see that in the news recently? That uh, a, a guy who won a lot of fishing competitions was busted with uh, he, like planting fish in and then catching them out again. But he also put cut them open and had lead weights in them. Oh. What? And, it, and he, yeah, so we would, like, apparently been cheating for a while. Wow. There, there's this video of this guy just pulling the lead out going, what do you have to say for yourself? Mm. We trusted you. <laughs> the whole fishing industry, you were, you were one of ours. You're making a mockery of the entire idea of competitive fishing, <laughs> our sacred sport. That's so funny. What about all the kids watching today looking up to you and saying, Dad, I want to be that guy. Daddy, Daddy, where can I find some lead weights so I can be like my oh, hero? Oh, oh, it's already happening. <laughs> I heard a kid saying that just the other day because of you. Mm. Which was weird because we only just discovered you were doing it. Mm. 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 All right. What was the... So you've got the, the lint ball, talking stingray. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> the worst kind of lint ball. The football <laughs> flogging, the yes. sinkhole hotel... Or the vote ringing coconut. Mm, that talking stingray. The real sting is in his um, backhanded compliments. <laughs> 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 so you got to stay. You got to stay clear of those because they'll really get you. <laughs> Who's uh, who wants to have first crack here? I'll look. I'll have first crack. I firstly adore that two of the answers revolve around things that can't speak having a voice. Yep. Mm. I'm going to go with the coconut. Fantastic. I want to say that the coconut got arrested for vote rigging. Mm. And Beautiful in this selection. case, its voice was only a, like a like a, in a sort of a, a voice to parliament style. Yeah, yeah a voice to a, parliament. <laughs> represented. Um, it was it, it was it was enfranchised. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, I can't remember any of them, and so I'm going to go with the third one. Third one. Okay, that was the football match. Yes. Sixty nine to nil. Correct. All right. Here are answers controversy erupting over a man claiming to have the world's biggest ball of belly button lint that was andy matthews mm. Mm. that was good it's good thank start. you very believable <laughs> i'd believable. say more believable than uh, species of talking stingray was <laughs> which was written by the house ah. <laughs> uh cass wrote a sinkhole opened and swallowed a small hotel uh, football team lost a match to Brazil 69 0. That was also the house. Oh! Nice. A point to the house there, meaning Cass was right. A coconut You're was arrested <laughs> on suspicion of vote. Yes! Rigging. That was that was one where, that I instantly was like, well, that is so stupid. It's obviously not. It's that. not going to be it. So I think less of whoever wrote it. <laughs> but it was reality, and now I think less of reality. <laughs> That's right. So was, was it one of those things where it looked like someone had done voter fraud and then they tried to arrest the person it turns out that person was a coconut mm. uh it is it's sort of more baffling than that um <laughs> it's tricky because <laughs> i explain these things when you're not concentrating you're writing that's one of the real faults of this show so far yeah. but they'll never know they'll never be able to know no no this is all just a ruse to get you to listen to the podcast giving me one extra download or two. Oh, uh, yeah <laughs> you're doubling that's, that's what you very clever sucked mm. in uh Evan, I just <clears throat> shared with you a, a thing that has the scores on it if you want to give us a score um, update in a second. Uh, it's, it's sure. Before we get to that, Andy and Cass, here's question number four. Yes. This one comes from Ryan Wells from Colorado in the USA. Great names. What is the nickname for Eddie Stanky, <laughs> a baseballer in the 40s and 50s in America? Pro baseballer, Eddie Stanky. What was his... Best known nickname. He had a few. What was his main nickname? Uh, 
Evan, you say you got a score sheet there? Do you want to give us a score update? Uh, you'd, you'd think so if I knew how to use Google Sheets. Yeah. Um, so Andy um, is on two points if I was to read no, this. No, one point think, because yes. I'm reading it incorrectly. <laughs> uh, and Cass is on three points and the house is on two points. That's right. I'm sure I'll read that in a, like an ascending. Yeah. I'm new to this. <laughs> That's right. So Andy on one, House on two, Cass on three. Anyone's game at the halfway mark here. It's true, but less less Andy's game. Yeah, well, it's a little less Andy's game, but it's still anyone's game. He could get two points in this round alone. Could, what? You can get two points. Oh, he in can. He round. can. Yeah. So he could. He could jump to the equal lead in just one round. Yeah. Uh, so while they're writing their answers, uh, here's some more information about that coconut from a Guardian article written about the incident. Yes. In 2013. A coconut has been detained by Maldivian police on suspicion of vote rigging in a key presidential election. The coconut, described as young, <laughs> was found near a school that will be used as a polling station on Saturday. Though the population of the Maldives is Sunni Muslim, continuing belief in magic is widespread in rural areas. Coconuts are often used in rituals and inscribed with spells. A local minivan news website reported that police took the coconut into their possession around 7.05am on Tuesday after they received a complaint about the suspicious fruit near the school. A magician summoned by police established that the coconut was innocent uh, and local officials have said no arrests have been made. An innocent young coconut. Uh, I yeah. thought the whole point was that he it had been arrested. <laughs> no arrests have been made. I mean... <laughs> It was just taken into that custody? Wasn't that, wasn't that the, 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 the thing? A coconut was arrested. No arrests have been made. <laughs> All right, you found a little flaw there. No. Okay, so we're deducting Cass's points. Brought into custody, Andy. Ah, See sure. what you've done there? You've found a... Mm -hmm. you know what so they, you mean he was arrested but not jailed? I think you can bring a coconut into custody without arresting it, perhaps. Oh, coconut custody. I don't in know custody. Maldivian oh. rules and regulations around that, but does that sound fair that you can bring someone into custody Custody without arresting them. I thought that was yeah, being arrested. Um, I don't. I don't know. I mean, I think you can invite them down to the station to help you with your inquiries. But if you're bringing them into custody, I think they've been arrested. Yeah. And then there's the, the the additional thing of whether or not they've been charged. But I, I actually, I actually did follow this case at the time, and I hear that there was um, uh, uh, 17 hours of interrogation. He still didn't crack. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. <laughs> So your answers are in <laughs> the question. What was the nickname for baseballer Eddie Stanky? I like how Andy, you felt you were deflated before you even said it. You had to touch someone to yeah. get through no, that. I needed support. Yeah. yeah you you know, it's up. a difficult time like this. You've got to have people around you. You've got to lean on those nearby because it's not easy. <laughs> here, are, here are your options for what was baseballer Eddie Stanky's nickname? Mm. Ongos. <laughs> the San Fran Stench. Yeah. <laughs> the Brat. Mm. Mm. Public Zirconium. Zirconium, sorry. Sorry, let's go again. Okay. Pubic Zirconium. <laughs> or Take It to the Banky Stanky. <laughs> That's a longer one. That is a long nickname. Hey, Take It to the Banky Stanky. <laughs> He's really funny. <laughs> so you got the San Fran, oh, sorry, Pongos, mm -hmm. San Fran Stench, mm -hmm. the Brat, Pubic Zirconium, mm. or Take It to the Banky Stanky. Mm. Do you have any more information about Pubic Zirconium? Yeah. <laughs> Can we get um, more intel on that? Yeah, I do. So uh, I think he got that nickname uh, thanks to his bejeweled protective box he was known to wear. Ah, okay. So that was why he was known as pubic zirconium. Uh -huh. Yeah, right. Like uh, a cup that's like... Yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. Uh, Pongos was because of... The stank. Because of stanky, same as the stench. The brat, he was a um, very bratty player. Yeah. And uh, Banky, take it to the Banky, he was just a very reliable home run hitter. I don't think it's going to be um, the brat because I think then he'd, they'd call him like the brat with the bat or something like that. And like it, it feels like it's a missed opportunity. Remember, it was 40s or 50s. Yeah, that's you know, like they pretty didn't, cutting. They didn't have, like back then, they didn't have, they couldn't afford it. it was Great Depression was only recent. Let us <laughs> it was a word numbers. economy in place. 
pan by the letter. Yeah, I think I think you got to instead of being like, oh, here comes the brat. It's like here comes the brat. Mm, <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. I'm actually, actually pretty sold on brat. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've sold myself. Um, I mean, oh, yeah, there's a lot of stink based ones. I'm gonna go with the uh, uh, the the San Fran stench. Was that San Fran stench? Yeah, lock that in for Andy. Cass, mm. what are you thinking? I reckon I am going to go with the brat because I can just imagine a commentator being like, rah, 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 here comes the brat. Because <laughs> it's, it's snappy. The yeah, other ones are a bit long. I've locked it in, but can you do the same? Not to change your mind, but can you do the same for pongos? <laughs> rah, rah, here comes pongo. <laughs> yeah, it works. Just pongos. Well. Oh, it does. Yeah. Could you say take it to the banky stanky in that voice? Rah, rah, take it to the banky stanky. <laughs> and now it's starting to sound like a yeah bank robber or something, isn't it? Mm. I can yeah. picture that guy wearing it's a, a problem. striped suit. And and that would be take it from the banky stanky. Oh, take it from true. the banky stanky. <laughs> it's a very inefficient bank robber. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, they call me the depositor. <laughs> <laughs> right, so. His calling card is $1,000. <laughs> Oh, God, we've been robbed. How do you know? <laughs> Look. <laughs> I'll be eating for weeks. That is. Okay, that is the joke of the, uh, of <laughs> the episode. And there you go. Get Congratulations. So it doesn't normally get called this early, Cass. Well done. Mm. Uh, okay, so take it to the banky, Stanky. That was written by the house. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Pongos, also written by the house. Oh, oh my mm-hmm. goodness. Cubic zirconium was written by Andy, and I apologise for the butchering. In the <laughs> no, that's Andy. okay. It was it's not meant real. to be. And then I also apologise for the very clunky way in which I tried to get you to read the extra information I'd submitted with my joke, <laughs> which you which you cut out for no for no reason, as far as I can tell. Well, the probably would have been funnier. Uh, yeah, probably. I hadn't had to force it in there. I was I thought it was going to give you a chance of it being picked because it it would have stood yeah. out as being the only one that just. Dis- and when you and when you itself. stuffed up the pronunciation, did you also think that was going to give me a <laughs> I chance? Th- I of thought being maybe picked? I thought I was punching it up on the run. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Sometimes I just naturally mispronounce things in a way that helps. <laughs> did your run feel punched up? <laughs> yeah, actually, it did. Okay, good. Uh, maybe so. I mean, should I be offering you a, some sort of a, a concession point. point there? Yeah, Evan, what do you think? Concession yeah, point for the it. butchering there. All right. Thank you. So one point to Andy there for me. Give I'm it. not above, not <laughs> above taking these sort of pity <laughs> things. Uh, I'll do anything. So what have I explained so far? I've forgotten. We've got Pongos. That was the house. Mm? Mm. Uh, we've got Take It to the Banky Stanky. That was the house. <laughs> Pubic Zirconium was Andy. The San Fran Stench, which Andy picked. That was Cass. Oh, and it was me. Brat was correct. So oh! double points. <laughs> this is Cass. devastating. Two yeah. points for Cass, one point for Andy, no I points for the house. I'm going to take those to the banky. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Evan, do you want to give us a quick score update? I do. I do. I do. Um, so we have um, Andy on um, two points. Let's not talk about the score thing. It's... It's slowing down the show. <laughs> no, it's, it's crucial to the show. Oh. Um, and then, then we have the house on, on two points. And then in the lead, we have Cass on five points. Oh, five. God. It is anybody's game. Anybody's it's game with three rounds to go. All right, here's question number five. What song by country singers L.E. White and Lola Jean Dillon charted at number 90 on the U.S. country charts in 1977? Gee, that's an obscure one. <laughs> so we're doing the Wait, name of the how song. How many country songs have you got into the top 90 on the charts? None at all. None. Well, maybe once you do, then you can call things obscure. Okay. Thank you. So the song was by L.E. White and Lola Jean Dillon, charted at number 90 on the US country charts in 1977. While you're writing down your answers, here's a bit more information on Eddie Stanky, a.k.a. The Brat. Do you know, have you heard of Eddie Stanky, Evan? No. No, neither had I, but apparently it was, it was pretty good. Uh, he was born Edward Ray- Raymond Stankowitz oh. on September the 3rd, 1915, to Frank and Anna Stankowitz. In his childhood years in the blue-collar Philadelphia neighbourhood of Kensington, Eddie developed the belligerent, enthusiastic, win-at-all-costs attitude that would make him so successful and reviled later in life. 
Brooklyn fans adored him. He was given nickname upon nickname, including Stinky and Muggsy. However, the most famous nickname, the one that stuck with him, was The Brat, a reference to the snarling, clamorous, hot-headed edge to Stanky that came out in moments of high emotion and tension. According to our question writer, Ryan, one of his most famous moments was when Eddie Stanky once started a fight during a game by standing behind the pitcher and doing jumping jacks. It riled the other team up so much that a fight bro- broke out and police had to come and break it up. What? That's such an escalation. Yeah. Like anytime I feel like I hear about old-timey things, 40s is old-timey, you're like, ah, he called the brat, it's what a nickname, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, ah, he's doing jumping jacks. But then they, then they had a punch on. Yeah, because <laughs> he's doing jumping jacks. They're just like us. <laughs> Just, I guess it was because he was sort of putting off the batter. But yeah, that feels like it's an overreaction. It does feel like an overreaction. To me. And, you know. Maybe maybe, maybe the escalating things have just gotten more intense. Can I, can I, can I resubmit mine? Can I just add something in? Uh, Do yes. we have time? We have time, yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm just going to add a couple uh, of keywords. You, you want to tell me what your nickname was when you played baseball while we're just waiting for this uh, edit? Uh, when I was playing baseball... They called me the shitter hitter because <laughs> I was really good at pitching, but couldn't couldn't hit for shit. <laughs> right, I would have called you Castration Page. Ah, oh, that's my wrestling nickname. Oh, when I when I get into the ring, I'm Castration Page. I wonder why that hasn't happened yet. There's been different, you know, hybrid sports. What about wrestling, baseball, wrestle ball? Wrestle okay, ball. okay. So it is just wrestling with a bat. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I'd yeah. watch that. Mm. Home run is when you kill them. <laughs> yeah, and instead of a, a ring, it's a diamond. So you just sort of tilt it. Oh, that'll be good. Because you know it. when they jump off the corners? Yeah. That can be like, you know, you make it to first base. You have to jump off onto your opponent. Right, yes. You've got to, you've got to touch. Yeah, and base. three taps, you're out. I think the idea of a, a, a sport where the, the, the bases are constantly moving, maybe they're played by tortoises or something like that. <laughs> Be very exciting. They have the numbers on them, but like they're constantly being randomised by oh, crawling around the field. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, anyway, you probably you need to say copyright or something because this is going out live. That's right, copyright. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think legally that that stands. That stands. Yeah. Covers that. Yeah, it's a verbal contract. <laughs> All right. Everyone at home has to say uh huh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> saying uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Good. We're covered. <laughs> All right, question five. What song by Ellie White and Lola Jean Dillon charted at number 90 on the US country charts in 1977? Here are your options. I don't mind you leaving. I just wish you'd leave my heart, kidneys and spleen, open bracket, the involuntary organ donor's lament, close Mm. bracket. (laughs) Option one. (laughs) Option two. (laughs) Boop, 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 (laughs) (laughs) da-doop. Uh, then you've got "You're the reason our kids are ugly." <laughs> uh, <laughs> dancing on my old man's grave, or finally, I got my boots on my feet, whiskey in my glass, and one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars owing to the IRS. <laughs> Open bracket. Please buy this record. I'm in a lot of trouble. Close record. <laughs> okay, so that's a lot of uh-huh. that's that's Alyssa cries for help. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yes, and I think I'm a big fan of the country music's penchant for the open and close bracket. Mm. Song mm. Title. Some supplementary information. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes you need it. Yeah, yeah. No, I could put this in the song, but I think you need to know this up front. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, do you need to hear those again? Yeah. So we've got, I don't mind you leaving. I just wish you'd leave my heart, kidneys and spleen. The involuntary organ donor's lament. Mm. Boop, 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 da doop. <laughs> uh, you're the reason our kids are ugly. <laughs> dancing on my grave, uh, dancing on my old man's grave, or I've got boots on my feet, whiskey in my glass, and one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars <laughs> owing to the IRS. Please buy this record. I'm in a lot of trouble. Five great answers. I got to say, I love the song. I love the title. You're the reason my kids are ugly. I want that to be correct. Locking it in. Uh, yeah, let's lock it in, please. Fantastic. Matt Stewart. Ask. What are your thoughts? Talk I- us through. Have you got any? Any theories here? Can you rule any out straight away? You're a big country fan. I love the cunch, um, mm. as Ben Russells would say. I, I really, I'm really loving boop, 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 boop. I, it's yeah. not, it's not a common. Is that the one that Andy went back and added words to? <laughs> uh... 
<laughs> yeah, it's he really initially good. wrote boop, 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 but he's like, <laughs> does it does oh. it seem like the kind of title that has one or two extra boops? <laughs> They're not going to go for it. They're going to think it's jazz. <laughs> Big fan of that. I, it's not. It's not a classic of country. I can't imagine a boop or a doop in a country song. Mm. It's more of a shoe. But I uh, shoe. Yeah, like a shoe. Okay, I, that just sounded different in my head. Okay. I'm gonna go for the boopies. <laughs> Locking in the boops. All right. I'm going for the boops because it charted at number ninety, so it didn't do amazing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's true. Not a good country song. <laughs> no, but it was. It was catchy enough. And if I'm thinking of catchy enough to get on the charts, I'm thinking boop. All right. Well, here are the answers. I've got boots on my feet, whiskey in my glass, and $125,000 owing to the IRS. That was the house. Ooh. Uh, dancing on my old man's grave. That was Cass. I don't mind you leaving. I just wish you'd leave my heart, kidneys, and spleen. That was Andy. Mm. If I believe it. I, is that a real song? You know country music as well. Uh, Have you based that on a well, real one? I've, having listened to Who Knew It with Matt Stewart, um, big fan of the show. Uh, <laughs> I I noticed the penchant for the brackets because yes, you had a you had a, uh, a, a a brackets thing before, and I, I wanted to play in that space. And uh, the I, I originally just had I wish you'd leave my heart, and I thought oh that's a bit too straight. Like that could almost be the name of a a song. And then so I added. I guess that's kind of the point, though, isn't it? You sort of want people <laughs> to think that it could be the name of the song. Yes. I kind of shot myself in the foot there, didn't I? I added in the spleen and the kidneys. There's two ways I think you can you can win on this show: either mm. the point or a laugh. Yeah, and it's the mo- didn't really get either with that one, though, did I? The one is, <laughs> uh, and I get it every week we've played so far. <laughs> where you, you don't tick either box. <laughs> uh, okay, so that leaves the two final answers. One of you is. Got, but is correct. Unfortunately, it's not Cass. Boop, 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 da doop was the house. Yes! <laughs> the correct answer was, yes. you're the reason our kids are ugly. It's <laughs> <Yes. laughs> a great name. Yes. She deserved to chart higher. <laughs> uh, it was covered the next year by Loretta Lynn, and I think didn't maybe did a, it was on a bigger album. She didn't is it a good song? Loretta Lynn. Spotify. Um, I think you should. We should start building a... Can you make a playlist? Cause the, I think we should do There was that. a song that Matt had in a previous episode... Smoke, smoke, smoke that cigarette. Mm. Uh-huh. Great. <laughs> an exclamation after every word too, which is fun. Loretta, Loretta Lynn passed away uh, just this week. Oh, did she oh, really? I so, yeah. Anyway, um, I thought that'd get a laugh as well. I am not doing well. <laughs> uh, Evan, I don't know, is, are you happy to do a score check here? Because things have just tightened up that round. Uh, I yeah. can do it because I've got it in front of me. I'm just trying mm. to give you something to do. No, no, no. I, I have it in front I'm of me do, as well. I'm going to do, 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 do. Um... It is tightening up, so we uh, d- at the bottom we have Andy, oh, but okay. also the house. Ooh. Uh, with three points mm. a piece. Um, and then cast still in the lead at five, but no movement there. And that means I'm that do. either the house or Andy could jump into the equal lead in one single round. So two questions left to go here. Here's question number six. This one comes from Brian Nichols from Melbourne. Mm. His question is... Which of these is a real species of spider? Okay, so you've just basically got to give us a fake spider name. Uh, and uh, as you both have been on or listened to the show before, you know that they can be quite ridiculous. So you can, you can go wherever you like with this. And while you're writing out those answers, Evan, let me tell you a little bit more about the songwriter of, of uh, You're the Reason Our Kids Are Ugly, okay. uh, L.E. White. Uh, he was a, an American Grammy Award winning songwriter, singer and musician. Some of his other songs included I Love You More Today, I'm Not Through Loving You Yet, <laughs> and Jimmy Gets a Gun for Christmas. So Okay. Sort how, of, how did that song end? Which one? Jimmy Gets a Gun for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, and for Christmas was in brackets there as well. Which it doesn't seem like a happy family, does it? Well, it doesn't matter. I mean, maybe he's it's a big, maybe a gun-toting family. They like going shooting. Okay. I mean, in Melbourne, that would be a that could potentially <laughs> wouldn't be a, a happy song, um, especially if he's gone out to buy it himself. Yeah. Can you buy a gun in Melbourne? You can. Yeah, they'll gun shops. They'll let you. If you go, Do we might not let you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you probably need to be in a club or something, right? Is that how it works? Like a gang. Uh, no. What kind of club no, you are you just, talking about? you got to put on your shorter skirt and you got to get ready to party. Okay. And you got to go in and you be like, hey, babe, <laughs> I'm on the door. So he's, um, he's, 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 
getting a gun for Christmas. Yeah, well, no, he got a gun. Got a gun. Oh, for and the story is the songs about what happened after. Is this like a Boxing Day special? I mean, I really wish I'd, I'd done taken the time to listen to the song. I is just... he depressed because his dad thinks he's ugly? Oh, yeah. Do you think all of his songs are autobiographical? Yeah. I'm assuming. Maybe it's like, you're the reason our kids are ugly. I wish I didn't love you so much. I bought our son a gun. <laughs> <laughs> let's just see what happens. <laughs> uh, let's see the font. The first line is... Oh, no, hang on. That's a different song. <laughs> I found a different song that's called All I Want for Christmas and it starts, All I Want for Christmas is my Glock with the extension, bow, bow. That's a different song, so don't worry about it. America is a healthy country. <laughs> There's a lot of songs about getting a gun for Christmas. <laughs> we should write our own. Add to the genre. Mm. Oh, I saw Mummy shooting Santa Claus. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, I never... Anyway, I uh, here is question number six. Which of these is a real species of monkey? Spider. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's going to be Just really interesting yourself, Evan. <laughs> if you read the question wrong... <laughs> or if you are now, if you just made the mistake, <laughs> because... That's going <laughs> to... I've got, in my head, it's all about monkeys, you know. <laughs> I see spider, I Is think... Is this a monkey? monkey? The web-slinging tarantula. <laughs> the, um... The two-fanged footboy. <laughs> All right, here is question six. Which of these is a real species of spider? Double-headed singing spider? Mm. Curly finch muncher? <laughs> bird dung crab spider? <laughs> dancing trapeze spider? Or the iridescent, iridescent spangled bum bum spider? <laughs> Jeez, they're all in the same sort of world, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, just, a bunch of, of those could be just a bunch of words, isn't it? <laughs> They let you say anything in the encyclopedias. <laughs> yeah, they're all at least <laughs> one place a man could truly be free. <laughs> all right, once again, double-headed. That's not true. Spider, curly finch muncher, bird dung crab spider, dancing trapeze spider, or the iridescent spangled bum bum spider. Mm. Oh, I want to be an iridescent bum bum. I think. Mm -hmm. I, I like your your strategy is usually I want this to be true. Yeah. Or I want to be this thing. <laughs> it's just like so you're inserting not. yourself in. I want to be a vote rigging coconut. <laughs> <laughs> that, that I could affect a government. And I'm not having a go at all because your strategy has you two <clears throat> points in the lead. It's all uh, vibes, baby. Is that the one you want to lock in? No, I think I think the dancing trapeze spider because I think it would be very beautiful to watch a dancing trapeze spider move through the world. Because I imagine it like the way that it would swing a web would be really nice. And you know how sometimes those spiders do a little jiggle for their mates. Mm. That just seems nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I will lock in the dancing trapeze spider. I'm going to go with the bird dung spider because I imagine there is a spider that sort of disguises itself by looking like a little bit of bird dung. Oh. Maybe leaps and on. crab. What's the crab part of that then? <laughs> Hadn't thought about that bit, but you know what? Why not? Why not chuck it in there? Spider's legs can be like this, but like crab legs are like... Yeah, maybe it does. Maybe it's like that. Yeah, oh. maybe it's that. Not like this, but like that. Maybe it disguises itself as a crab that's ha been shat on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's sort Very of low specific. status, non-threatening kind of thing. Any bird's oh. going to look at me like, ugh, I don't want that. Even if I get the poo off, I'm going to have to mm. get inside the <laughs> hole. It's going to be a thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you crabs say are bird hard dung, to eat. Do you? Dung? Yeah. Who say bird dung? Is it a bird poo or something? You just said bird dung. I think dung is the more sciencey. You're a you're a man of science, Andy. Is dung the more science? Yeah, that's so correct. Term? Yeah, that's why I chose it. Okay, it's a scientific. Term. Andy, we I don't know if we've ever in all the podcasts and things we've done together and the life events we've shared. Mm. I've never asked you what kind of scientist are you. <laughs> She was some sort of science. I could have just asked you. And I'd like to keep the mystery alive, okay, Matt. I don't want to. I don't want to break your heart. It might be one of the sciences you don't believe in. <laughs> Vaccines. <laughs> Wait, hang on. Um, so the answers are double-headed singing spider. That was the house. Ooh. Oh. The curly finch muncher. That was Cass. Ah. Mm. The iridescent spangled bum bum spider, which Cass wanted to be. That was Andy. I felt so excited for a moment there. <laughs> I, was, I was on a fast train to victory. Yeah. Oh, oh. Spangled. Hmm. <clears throat> Uh, Angled. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that word. <laughs> Dancing trapeze spider that Cass went for. That was the house. Ah. Andy was correct. It was the bird dung crab spider. Hey. 
Yes. <laughs> so again, that is one point to Andy. Does one that mean point. we have another round? Are we... One final round. Wow. And it's truly it is... anyone's game from mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Uh, before I tell you a bit more about the bird, bird dung crab spider, here is your final question. Mm-hmm. This one comes from Jim Bates in Sackett's Harbour, New York. And uh, we always finish with a, normally a, a movie synopsis, but this week we're doing a failed 1990 TV pilot. So you've got to tell us what this show was about. What was this pilot about? The show title was Puchinski. Puchinski. And how do we, how do we spell Puchinski? P-O-O-C-H-I-N-S-K-I. Puchinski. What, did we know that what year it was? Or? 1990. 1990, okay. A TV failed TV pilot. All right, so while they're writing these up, normally uh, obviously a little bit more time is required to write these. Evan, do you want to hear a bit about the bird dung crab spider? Yes. Oh, thank God. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, According to NewScientist.com, this spider has gone to town in making itself look like crap. Literally. Beautifully written already. Loving this article. (laughs) Bird dung crab spiders spend a lot of time sitting motionlessly on leaves of plants waiting to attract insects such as flies for dinner. All right. So that's, it's basically looking like crap, trying to, and then a fly comes in and then just eats the fly. Don't have to worry about making a web. Just the flies will just come Makes to sense. you. Yeah. Most other creatures out in the open would be like sitting ducks, but these spiders have a trick up their sleeves. They mimic bird droppings not only in color, shape, and size, also in smell. What? And that deceives predators. When they draw their legs close to their body and stop moving, the masquerade is complete. Amazing. Uh, Isn't nature beautiful? So beautiful. Uh, Joseph Ko of the Lee Kong Chan Natural History Museum in Singapore said, Birds, almost all with good eyesight, will not go for what appears to be their own turd for food. (laughs) And that makes sense. Mm. (laughs) Why would a bird go to eat its own turd? Mm. You're unlucky if you're pretending to be bird crap mm. and you just happen to be near a bird that likes eating its own crap. One of those coprophile yeah. Yeah, freaks. And, it, you know, the odds are nature's mysterious, nature's beautiful, but it does also throw up the occasional bird that likes mm. to eat its own shit. Yeah. I mean, the, yeah, and, and, and the flip side is occasionally you're, <laughs> you're, you're reincarnated as a, as a spider that looks and smells like bird shit. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, it's not all it's not all good. Apparently most spiders can't make themselves smell like things. It's <coughs> quite a unique trait yeah. that it and other spiders related to it can do. Who's going around sniffing spiders? Uh, not me, that's for sure. Mm. I don't know why you're even asking that question. <laughs> Actually weird. Are you bringing that up? Evan, it's so strange, Evan. <laughs> <laughs> um, all our answers are in, I believe. Uh, just as, yes, yes. So here is your question once more. What was the plot of the failed 1990 TV pilot Puchinski? Here are your Mm. five options. Okay. Remembering the scores. I didn't... Did we get a score update? Yeah, we did. Yeah, Yeah, we've had several. (laughs) It's been one of the major features of the show. (laughs) Can I just quickly check in before we go? Um, Okay, so um, right now, uh, equal bottom, we have Andy and the house with four Mm. points. Uh, And Cass, just, just a little bit higher at five points. Could be, could be anybody's. Anyone's game. Anyone's I game. feel like you're, you're selling it negatively. Andy and the house are in second place, not bottom. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, all right. All right, so what is the, what is the plot of uh, TV pilot Pajinski? A talking dog who becomes a radio therapist. The show failed because it premiered the exact same day as the more plausible Frasier. <laughs> <laughs> Brutal. <laughs> that is so unlucky. <laughs> I can't believe how unlucky that is. <laughs> oh, no. Same day. <laughs> what are the odds of that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is, that is horrible luck. <laughs> and its theme song was also about tossed salad and scrambled eggs. What? Oh, no. <laughs> they put so much effort into it. Yeah, yeah, it was really hard to get the dog look like it was talking. <laughs> <laughs> the microphone was made out of beef. <laughs> mm. yep. Anyway, that could be the correct answer. Could be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, Matt. I was so close to the end. Oh. 
<laughs> uh, so that's option one. <laughs> option two. Stanley Puchinski is a detective. <laughs> After being killed in the line of duty, possesses a nearby canine uh-huh. and continues to solve crimes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Struggling ventriloquist Puchinski returns to his hometown after his dummy is destroyed in a fire at the comedy <laughs> club. He reunites with his family and old friends as he tries to find a new act. Hmm. Mark uh-huh. Puchinski is a single man struggling to find love, even though he's the only male resident of his apartment building. Oh, it's brutal. Well, the the janitor's closet at Belmont High School is a time-travelling portal, meaning Mr. Pachinski is able to give his history class a close look at their subjects. It also means the janitor, Doug, often ends up confused. (laughs) (laughs) So you've got five good options. Do you need to hear them again or are you sort of... Hmm. Especially like to hear one of them again. (laughs) Could you just read it? (laughs) I'll go. For, I'll go bottom up. Yeah. <laughs> okay. so we've got the the janitor's closet. That's a time travel portal. Mm-hmm. We've got the single man struggling to find love, even mm-hmm. though he's in a. He's the only man in his building. Doesn't make. It could be like the rest of the building could be chimpanzees or something. Doesn't say. <laughs> uh, struggling ventriloquist Puchinski returns to his hometown after his dummy is destroyed. Mm-hmm. Uh, Stanley Puchinski is a detective who, after being killed in the line of duty, possesses a nearby canine, continuing to solve crimes, or. A talking dog who becomes a radio therapist. Mm. The show failed because it premiered the exact same day as the more plausible (laughs) Frasier. It is more plausible, but does that make it better? (laughs) Is the best TV the most plausible TV? You know, what's it like in the universe where that one succeeded? I bet bet uh, things are great over there. I want to be there. (laughs) If If the janitor's closet could take me to that, don't mention. Mm. I would jump yes, in. Yes, please. Yes, please for me. Uh, uh, what do we think here? I mean, I, I think, think it's really interesting. Would have been in that universe. Mm. Another dog. Surely, right? Or a cat. <laughs> I mean, that would have been a real because they because they had that dynamic, didn't they? They did. They did they had a, a real cat, cat and dog dynamic. <laughs> That's what are you thinking, Andy? You got any thoughts? Uh, I I mean, I'm intrigued by the, the the ventriloquist dummy one. The idea that if your dummy is destroyed in a fire, you can't just get another dummy. <laughs> you got to go back to your hometown and rebuild your entire life. <laughs> but that one... I feel like the death of a friend. But yeah. Pachin, Pachinski also... I mean, I, when I first heard you say this, I thought it was a, a violinist. And I was like, that makes sense because a violinist... Vi, Pachinski, that sounds like someone... Mm. I'm amazed none of the answers are about a... A, com- a musical composer. Mm. So I'm going to go with the uh, one about the dog. Possesses the body of a nearby dog. I also possess a nearby dog. Oh, well, there's but two just ones. Just in an ownership sense. When you said the one about the dog, I sh- I, my mind went to Fraser. Ah, yeah, of course. <laughs> but you meant the other one about yeah, the yeah, dog. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, okay. And Cass, what are you thinking? Well, it's just been such a nice talk about how plausibility versus... <laughs> I'm going with the radio one. You're going with the radio one? Okay. <laughs> and in, in your mind, you're thinking, I have I put this quiz together. I'm familiar with the correct answer. And it just hit me then, which can happen. And it has before. No, in my mind, that is what deserves my point. Okay. I like to think that Matt writes these in a completely like fugue state where his <laughs> eyes become completely black and he types furiously and then comes to at like seconds before the podcast begins. It has happened before where a, one of my own has broken me. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> and maybe that happened again today. We'll see. All right. Wow. So answers are locked in. Happy yes. with your answers? Because mm. this decides it's all. dog. All. Okay. Well, let's go through the answers. The janitor's closet. That was written by the house. Ooh, it's yeah. The idea of it was a bit too much information about the janitor. The B plot. I thought every episode the B plot is the janitor's like. I was just trying to get a mop. And now I'm in that, every episode. Yeah, wow. Every episode. Well, it's a failed pilot. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it yeah. didn't work. Uh, the single man struggling to find love. That was also the house. Meaning the house can't win. Oh, Ooh. thank God. It's out of Andy and Cass. So it's 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 a happy ending. Whatever happens. <laughs> yeah. The struggling ventriloquist. That was Cass. <gasps> So, the correct answer is one of the dog ones. <laughs> <laughs> one of you two is correct here. <laughs> Unfortunately, it is not you, Cass. It is Andy. Stanley Puchinski is a detective who, after being killed in the line of duty, possesses a nearby canine mm. and continues to solve crimes. Mm. This was a failed pilot. And you know who, who was the actor? The dad from Everybody Loves Raymond. No. Oh. Not Raymond, his dad. 
I guess Raymond's he, also the dad from. And he played home. the yeah. dog. Yeah, he played the guy getting killed in the first episode, and then I guess the plan was that he was going to voice the dog. Yeah, all right. Wait, was the first Maybe episode when he, just the dog a looks death? at himself in a mirror? It's still yeah, that that's... guy down on all fours, naked. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. They do that a lot in these kinds of shows. You this... don't know what, what it was in particular that stopped it from succeeding, but I imagine the sight of him there looking at his own reflection, you could see his penis dangling down just below his head. Like a sad tail. Yeah, yeah. Unless, of course, it had been... Uh, Cast page uh, yes, rated. Sure. <laughs> uh, Evan, well, can we get a final score here? There we was can. a bit of movement okay, there. Okay, so uh, in third place, we have The House, mm. uh, which is a great effort on The House's part. Well done. Um, in second place, we have Cast Page. Oh, she was means, leading all game long. A late win from Andy Matthews. Andy. Six points. Woo! Well done. I'm insanely happy. <laughs> I am disgustingly pleased with myself. <laughs> not only did I win, as we all know now. As we all know. Of course. I also got that really big laugh at the end from Matt. <laughs> so I won twice. You've done very well. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you came from the clouds there, Andy. Mate. Oh, and I've just remembered, we gave you a pity point at the start. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's <laughs> you right. won by your pity point. You <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. Take uh, it. Oh, uh, well... Just before we dignity, finish always up, dignity. This is from the uh, Wikipedia page for the show. It says the story follows Chicago police detective Stanley Pucci, played by Peter Boyle, whose spirit is transferred into a flatulent English bulldog <laughs> after he is killed in the line of duty. The canine detective uh, then returns to solving crimes. NBC did not pick up the series, but subsequently did air the pilot on June the 9th, 1990. Uh, in recent years, Same day as Frasier. <laughs> in recent years, the show's premise has been recognised as one of the most bizarre in television <laughs> history. But then that's also the premise of the very popular kids' book series, Dogman. Oh, a series of books about a yeah a policeman who comes back as a dog, and it's really really popular. Oh right, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Was Raymond's dad involved? He he was. Yeah. Ah, oh, Frank. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us, Cass and Andy. Where can people find you? Online. Um, I'm at Cass Cass Page on everything. I've got a few podcasts out at the moment. One's called Shut Up a Second. One's d and for Nerds. And we've just dropped Being Hot is Hard, which is exceptionally fun. It's a really great podcast. I learned a lot and I laughed a lot when I listened to it. <laughs> it's so nice when people listen and they're like, we loved it. I'm like, oh, it is funny. I and thought so. People watching the live stream, as well, they can see you again later today? Yes, I'm plumbing the Death Star. Wow. And Andy, how about you? Yeah, I'll be on later today in Two in the Think Tank. Um, and, uh, and you can find me at Stupid Old Andy. You can buy my book... Gustav and Henry. Uh, How many dogs? All sorts of different. Uh, uh, one. One dog. <laughs> yeah, Henry's a dog. How many dead cops? <laughs> Thousands. <laughs> it's, yeah, we've been actually, um, the, the, the police unions actually got some, that they don't like us at all. And Evan, where can people find you? Uh, I, uh, I make a show called Gamey Gamey Game uh, on YouTube, so you can go check that out. Um, otherwise, I'll just be behind the cameras. Yeah, the he's not allowed to leave the building. Yep. Legally, no. <laughs> <Still> stuck. <laughs> Andy, I don't have a sign-off yet. Can you? I'll, I'll say goodbye, and then you want to do some sort of sign-off joke? Yep. Thanks so much for joining us, everyone. Please enjoy the rest of the live stream today. Thanks so much to Cass, Andy, and Evan for joining us. And Andy, as we always say here... And that's how you do it with Matt Stewart. Oh, that's pretty good. Cool. Hello. Can you believe we're back? Oh, my gosh. Here's Andy Matthews. How are you enjoying the, the stupid old pod fest? Cass, would you like to join us for some mid... Mid podcast, mid stuff. yeah. You want to do some mid stuff? <laughs> yeah. How is how is everyone doing? We're doing good. How about you? I'm doing great. You I've did just, so good up there. I just learned so many facts about dogs. Yeah, mm. and those are some of the most valuable facts that there are. I've heard. Yeah. Well, I've um, been hearing as well. That's right. So many things about dogs. That's right. And you can now use this kind of thing, this information, maybe in your sort of regular life. Do you have a, a life outside of podcasts? No, I unfortunately don't. Um, I only have parasocial relationships. It's the only one I have. Mm, I don't sure, sure, sure. go anywhere. I can't do anything. It, my life mm. is entirely in the audio medium. Yeah. So today's been pretty tricky. I had to build myself a body. That's true. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to have the face on today. I had to do that. I hear um, that being hot is hard. Being hot is hard. It's <laughs> yeah, quite yeah. Quite difficult yeah, yeah, yeah. perception. Yeah. What did um, you learn? What's your favorite thing you learned today? Um, well, you know, firstly that you know the dog facts are good, and also I think you know if you are living in a full podcast life, mm. then I think facts are actually more useful. 
then, you know, I think in regular life, facts kind of, you they know, muddy it. They, you know, yeah, they muddy oh. stuff. And a lot of the time people say, well, Yuck. actually, that's not true. And, you know, and they, they try to like, you know, they try to make you look like an idiot. Whereas here, you're only with people who love and protect you. Yeah. And, and then those, uh, those other voices, those, uh, those dissenting ones, they live outside of the podcast world. They're gone. You, you just see? know in your heart that if anyone disagrees with you, they're yelling at something that can never... I'm talking into the void. That's right. But they're screaming at a wall. That's right. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> and they, and they, they, can say, they can say it all, all, all they want, and I don't care. Andy, were you about to bring something in? I was just looking at what's going on in the chat. Um, but people are having a great time. They're very self-contained over there. They don't really nice. need any input from us or any responses. Uh -huh. um, the only, the the only thing that I thought I'd like to acknowledge... Well, this is quite important. I'm loving Al and Andy's style right now. Thank you. Alistair, obviously, um, he purchased the shirt version of the backgrounds for the yeah. podcast. Um, thank you. Thank you. I, I had to find the shirt that least needed to be ironed mm. and i think That's i found great. it today there you yeah. go you know if anything the crinkles add you know shading and things like that it just makes uh, it stronger yeah i'm trying to become more geometrical and uh, mm. but i don't want i don't like regular patterns you know and so so regular patterns would be something that i could predict and continue that's right i would say so yeah yeah i, I think in this i got no skin in this game this looks I like wouldn't. it fell in something and you know it's good yeah. the more i look at it the more i see i'm like I see shape and sometimes I see fruit. We also have here from Michaela, Cass looking gorgeous today, not her value. That's not your value. Yeah. Thank so you. your value could still be incredibly low. That's yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. 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 Really diving it into the ground. We shouldn't reel that, rule that out as a possibility. Um, during the podcast, there were, there were, I saw some shapes on your knees. <gasps> Are they permanent? The no. knees are there oh. for, for a long time. Is these yes. permanent knees? Oh, you mean the shapes? These aren't permanent knees. Oh, so these are, these oh, these are, are just, stockings. These are just little stockings. They're amazing. Oh, my God. I haven't seen myself on camera yet. Yeah. Do I not look like a baby who's about to have the best day at the zoo? <laughs> <laughs> my goodness. I, <laughs> I would go and show you the giraffes in a heartbeat. <laughs> Oh, I want to see the mirror. <laughs> Let's do that right now. Yeah? <laughs> Come on. Who wants a shoulder ride? One of the last... <laughs> the first time I took my kid to go see the giraffes, they, they were about, what, like one or, or almost two? And they saw, and they saw, Great like, age. One, so like one and a half giraffes then. The, no, well, there, was, there was three giraffes, but oh, there was right. one that was really brown, and mm -hmm. the kid was like, that one is old. And I was like, yeah, I think that one is old. And he's like, that one is old, and he's he going <laughs> to die. Like that, and I went, whoa, mm. like that. And then I f videoed them saying that so mm. that I could then put, post it on social media. <laughs> and then, good. only a few months later, that giraffe did die of old age. Parents love posting their realization of your own mortality reveals mm. on, on social media, yeah, yeah, don't yeah. they? Yeah. It's always special, that first moment your child realizes. You gotta be there for that, because a lot of the time they have that, yeah. that moment, you know, at, at daycare or Baby's something like that. Baby's first dread. Yeah. <laughs> I was genuinely there in the car when the kid first realized, they're like, but, so you're gonna die one day? And then I was like, yeah. And they were sitting mm. behind me. Mm. I was like, does that mean I'm gonna die one day? Two years old, two years old, and I went, yeah, but not for a long time. Wow. <laughs> That's, did it feel kind of nice to be like, oh my God, I don't have to bring this up myself. Oh uh, yeah, well, I mean, I don't know if you ever need to. I think you just like, you know, it's like, it's like climate change. You never need to tell them about it. You just. <laughs> they'll, <laughs> they'll, they'll figure they'll it out. Figure they'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah, no, but yeah, yeah they'll figure Papa, it out. Papa, why does it get so warm in the summer? <laughs> why is the water level so high? <laughs> that kind of stuff like that. And you go, doesn't matter, just swim. Mm. Like that. Climb on this you, giraffe. You've got other things to, to offer occupy you, physical activity and and whatnot. That, mm. that baby's clocked it. That's good. Yeah, yeah. The, the kid's a genius still today. Um, <laughs> still today. Yeah. Despite still. having the burden of death. Yes. A morbid still. genius. No, but you know, they, they, they have the, the gift of sight and they can see, you know, they can sort of tell when anyone's going to die within the next three months and things like that. Animal or human. Some people say humans are animals. Um, no. Some people say. Now, let me just check the time. I think it might be time for another podcast. You are I mean, kidding I don't want to preempt not. anything. Five minutes, really? Okay, we've got heaps more of this uh, quality um, conversation. Well, let's talk about life fine. now. We've talked we're, about we've that. Covered we've covered it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it that way around. Now, after this podcast, there's two in the think tank. Mm. Obviously, you know, you've been on our podcast many times. Mm. Um, Twice. But after that, you're doing Sans Pants. Can you give us a little background on what Sans Pants is? Sans Pants Radio. 
Is podcast network. No, I mean, like, podcast okay. network. So, plumbing the Death Star is coming up. Of course, yeah. um, yeah. it's it's one of the best shows on the network. I love it's it. It's pretty I think it's incredible. Great. Um, it's, and it's I can say that I'm not biased. I'm not in it. I just like listening to it. You're not in it at all, ever. Ah, uh, sometimes. Okay, you're sometimes. today. Today, yes. yeah. yeah. And sometimes, if they're like, "Do you want to come in?" I'm like, "Please let me come in." <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> and I'll do it. Yeah, and I'll have a great time. Mm. Um, it's hypotheticals in pop culture. I think yeah. some of my favorite topics have been things like. Which Super Smash Bros was going to make the best stepdad? Mm. That's an incredible. Yeah, it is a very good description of the show. Yeah. Hypotheticals in pop culture. Yeah. I, that, isn't that isn't it wonderful? Mm. The idea of having a podcast that you can describe like that very succinctly, <laughs> and it immediately makes you want to watch uh, listen to it. That's right. Yeah, and you would be so good at pitching mm. uh, podcasts if you were say in big business. Mm. Yet you're not, and this skill is wasted. <laughs> It is. You know what I mean? <laughs> my skills are wasted. That's my value. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's my value. Nobody, nobody That's wastes the... a skill yeah. like her, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> you should see her squander. <laughs> Oh. Squander a gift? Oh, yes, please. <laughs> yeah, but it just means that there's a possibility for you to go into the corporate world you one day. Mm. I'm just saying. Once you leave the audio medium mm. and, you, <laughs> and you join, join the, the physical, audio maximum. That's right, and mm. the physical realm. Ah. Once yes. I become physical in my form, mm. if you are looking at me today and you think, I do need someone for my corporate job. <laughs> <laughs> I need someone to come into the office every day. She, she's going to pitch. She's going to be succinct. Yeah. Um, I can write a manual. I know the trick to my writing a good manual. Do you want to know the secret? Yeah, to writing a good I manual? do want to know that. Any instructional, you have to assume that whoever is reading your manual is in the middle of a panic attack. Wow. And then your manual's going to be perfect because mm. if they're not stressed, they can blitz through the pages in about four seconds. Yes. And if they are, if someone's like hovering over a printer trying to print something and everyone's yelling at them, they're like, mm. <laughs> turn on the screen. <laughs> Step two, there's got to be photos. So there's going to yeah. be photos of everything. Gotta, no diagrams, yeah. literal photos. Yeah, you got to yeah, picture yeah. like one sort of paper bag in hand. I don't know if people still yeah. do this for panic attacks. That's <sighs> Maybe you could you could build that into the manual. So the first page mm. could be sort of like a paper bag that oh, you like can The ones that you like tear that, out? Yeah. And then maybe on the back, there could just be a hand there, like a human hand that somehow kept warm with technology that you can oh, hold. hold. It's oh, like yeah. a, it's literally a hand holding... Um, Manual to get you through. This is so nice. Manual already man manual already means by hand. There you go. My goodness. Is that a coincidence? <laughs> Definitely not. Yeah. Can you believe that we are now up to the part where we introduce our next podcast? Mm. I, I wouldn't believe you if you told me. I hardly can't. But if you are ready, please welcome Aurelia Aurelia St. Clair, Charlie Lewin, and Jordan Barr in Pop Gaze. <laughs> <laughs> the gays are here. Our introduction was like we were in like a new Broadway musical. Yes, <laughs> we'll take it. In the review Oat Latte, please welcome <laughs> three poofs. Yes. <laughs> we're here, we're gay, and that that's basically it. Yeah. Vibe. To prepare for this, we were like, let's dress really sexy and hot. Mm -hmm. um, so we each did our version of what that means. Yeah, which is um, pretty regular looking. <laughs> Classic <laughs> Melbourne, not a lot of colour, but just some pop. Just, just a enough. little pop. And we accidentally really complimented each other's colours as well. Because like, Did. Charlie's shirt has both my denim jacket and your gorgeous skivvy, Aurelia. Mm. I love it. Mm. Um, so we are Pop Gays. It's kind of all in the name. If you're not aware of us, great. Good for you. <laughs> Neither <laughs> are we. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you must have a really great life. Um, <laughs> all of our fans, we know who you are, you <laughs> disgusting pigs. <laughs> but we love you. <laughs> we love you so much. Um, we talk about what? Like pop culture? Yeah, pop culture, ourselves. Yeah. Sometimes other people, pull, mostly ourselves. Yeah, yeah lots yeah. of gossip. It's a gossip podcast kind of. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And one day it'll come back and bite us, but that day hasn't come yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, so and like even when it does, I'm ready to d like defend whatever we said. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, there was a reason for it at the time. I saw a TikTok <laughs> 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 that explained it and I believed it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you literally have a show right now, Aurelia, called I Said What I Said. <laughs> I do, yeah. Please go see Aurelia at the Melbourne Fringe. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, absolutely. Come. What um, if in like 10 years' time people talk about us the same way that they talk about like Perez Hilton? Yes. You yeah. know? We are the same level of toxicity. 
pink. We, <laughs> <laughs> we love pink just as much. Yeah, this is I true. remember just going on the Paris Hilton website and it was just the worst UX design you've ever seen in your life, but the juiciest gossip. Like yeah. the website yeah. was so hard and ugly to navigate, but I'm like, what? Is he still alive? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he's got like Driving. kids and stuff. Yeah. Kids? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, wow. I know he procreated. He did it. Are you serious? I'm from Syria. I <laughs> but, look. That was very 2008 of me. Yeah. Um, but that Tumblr boy. <laughs> but um, he was like, uh, he he got confronted in the New Hills. You know how they did the hills again. Mm-hmm. Um, and Misha Barton like saw him at a cafe wow. and was with someone from the hills. Um, and they were like, you have to confront him. And Misha was like, you ruined my fucking life. And he was like, I'm sorry. I'm trying to take accountability for it. I'm trying to do all that. And she was like, you can never do better. <laughs> she said something that was kind of fine. Um, but uh, good on her, you know. In that situation, would you do the same? Would you confront someone in a cafe? Absolutely. <laughs> I think that I've lived a blessed enough life to not be so wronged like that. You know, like there's no one in my life that I'm like, I need to take vengeance. Yet. Yeah. Yet. Yet. Yeah. So far. We, yeah. we remain hopeful. We remain hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> it is good. There was that one uh, old Scottish man who yelled at me for saying that I was a lesbian on stage. Maybe I'd confront oh him. Oh, my oh, God. God. That was <laughs> such a drama. It's a very niche drama. I posted it on my Instagram story <laughs> and it went off. Um, there's a Facebook group for comedians in Melbourne. Where and pe- also not comedians, and apparently. Not comedians. <laughs> <laughs> Some people who just input ho themselves into the situation. Exactly. Like, I'm a comedy promoter from WA. Okay, Scott. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever his name was. Oh, my God. May um, he rest in peace. <laughs> just went off about eject- adjective? adjective? Adjective comedians. comedians. Yeah. It's like such a weird thing to say. Um, and Basically, he- anyone who's not a cis, white, het man talking about their wife. He's like, this is a problem to me. Yeah. Yeah. And he was like, everybody there was just filling a slot. Like, there weren't actually any comedians, just everyone filling a slot, which I thought was quite funny because the show that he came and saw me in, uh, I was the only woman on the lineup. And the only <laughs> lesbian. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I was like, not many slots getting ticked here. Yeah. You know? Anyway, I digress. But I don't know. Have you ever confronted anyone like that? Um, I mean, my type of confrontation is going on my close friend's story and just going off yes. and then being like, this doesn't leave the close friends. Um, and then just only talking to people who already agree with my opinion. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You don't need someone contrasting no. what you already think. Just omit yeah. anything that counters exactly what I am already thinking. Exactly. Oh, you're so vulnerable, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, can Instagram... Please tell me is is still not notifying people when you take a screenshot of their stories, correct? Well, Ooh, I, I mean if it so. if it did, I'd be in so much. I'm trouble. in fucking trouble. <laughs> <laughs> like when you forward someone's story yes. to like a group chat and you're like, look at this. I know. I know someone who like posted something quite like a bit off on their Instagram story and then followed up with, this got shared 14 times. Why would anyone share this? And I'm like, because you sound loopy. (laughs) (laughs) You said something quite off. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. That'll be the day where, yeah, it notifies you who it's been shared to and, like, you can see into all the group chats that are roasting you. This is something, though, you should be aware of with TikTok because if you send someone a TikTok link via text message... And they're like in your contacts and you go into TikTok, you can see that they opened the link you shared them. Yeah, 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 That's yeah. kind of weird and sneaky. And I just want to warn you all out there. Wow. Mm. TikTok what? is a snake. App. Absolutely. <laughs> I, when The moment that like it, uh, Instagram and Facebook brought in red receipts, I would just love to like... Like I would love to do some kind of study where we had uh, the balance of like my heart rate on average before red receipts and my heart rate now that there are red receipts. Yeah. Do you, you know? have them on on iMessage? Absolutely not. I've turned it off. Yeah. Yeah. I, me too. But I saw this uh, TikTok. <laughs> <Yeah>. Someone <laughs> you read an article. I read an article <laughs> where where someone was explaining how to get around it because they said when somebody has like their red messages on it's kind of like a trick for them to be like oh i haven't seen this i haven't opened it but um in fact they just read whatever you said in the first you know the preview yeah Yeah. and then um this person on their tiktok was explaining to get around it to start your sentences 
in a way that will make them open the message. Yes, make it sound really dramatic. Yeah. I actually had that exact thing happen to me this week. No. <laughs> so um, I was telling you guys, but I have recently quit my job. Yeah. Um, and I have a new job that I'm moving into. And my dad's girlfriend texted me because um, he'd obviously passed on the news. Um, and what she meant, to, what she said in the message was, hey, Charlie, your dad passed on the great news about the job. I'm so happy for you. But what I saw in the top of the message was, hey, Charlie, your dad has passed on. <laughs> <laughs> my heart just stopped. I was like, I don't even know he was no, sick. <laughs> my fucking God. That is so scary. That's fucking oh, no. wild. Also hilarious imagining her manufacturing that to <laughs> like make it was obviously gonna read accident. my message yeah yeah <laughs> just the idea of her being like i'm gonna fucking make him think his dad died yeah. <laughs> oh, he replies but he finally <laughs> will stop ignoring me <laughs> <laughs> yeah i adore this yeah sneaky sneaky as um what's been going on in pop culture news oh my god it's been so much has been happening um this week i also just this is totally random and not at all like on the pulse but i watched this stupid infinity documentary on netflix it's called like in road to infinity or something like that what is it about it's about Outer space about literally infinity and it's like trying to like it's like mathematicians and philosophers shut up <laughs> Ali, you're such an intellectual oh, that's now. the last thing i want to hear about Gotta infinity watch it. Oh, seriously it's like Gotta masturbate with a cheese grater are you kidding <laughs> It's like they have all these like like animations to like accompany all the philosophical like thoughts and it honestly feels like getting high. Like it's so trippy and it makes your brain hurt in a really good way, like the way that they talk about infinity and all the like contradictions and paradoxes. And it's this very interesting, insightful documentary and I was like having that feeling when you watch a doco and you're like, oh my God, for two days I'm going to be an expert in this thing <laughs> and then forget all about it. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the doco, they – which I think they were trying to be kind of like endearing with this ending, but they had this one of the philosophers just being like, um, you know, infinity is so high and we wonder about like, will we ever be able to count to infinity? And then he's like, some days I can't even count past 10. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then it just he's ended. A minute of him looking away. <laughs> like, I'm so relatable. Yeah. <laughs> no, like, it's so like meaningful. It's like, no, he's a dumbass. Yeah. 11 is after 10. Oh my goodness. I love that. I think that like, I, 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 want, I don't know if we've talked about this before, definitely not on the pod, <laughs> but while we're on existentialism, um, I reckon it's like such a, um, it's very telling of how I am mentally. If like th the idea of space and infinity either comfort me or stresses me out yes like if some most of the time it comforts me because i'm like i'm tiny it doesn't matter i'll just do whatever the fuck i want but then if it stresses me out then i'm like something is amiss yeah. i'm not well yeah, it's like venus is in retrograde that's why yeah is that what's happening right now i'm not sure i have to look into it yeah. like i said i am Can we just get out of saturn in retrograde like isn't everything <laughs> something is always in retrograde <laughs> yeah, yeah. six planets were in retrograde a few of them moved out now like i said i'm studying astrology next year so then i'll know but until then, I'm not sure. <laughs> it, it, it's it's one of those things <laughs> where I feel like I I feel like I'm on top of it, mm. and then there's a new layer. Yeah, like I thought only like our planet got into retrograde. Like who's the one that everybody talks about? Mercury. 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 Everyone's was like Mercury's in retrograde, and then someone was like yeah. Venus is in retrograde. I was like, what's she doing there? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> any planet can move into retrograde at any point. It just will seem like it is moving um slower than it is for some reason i can't explain but um in reality they're actually moving at the exact same speed that they should oh, okay wow okay yeah i mean uh, st Clair over um, here yeah it does feel like um the marvel universe like astrology yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> truly <laughs> infinity expanding Jones. yeah yes. it's wild it's wild um speaking of like shows on netflix have you seen heartbreak high Yes. Yes. Also, have you seen the original? Because like I know it's an Australian thing, and I didn't grow up here, so I haven't. But no, no? Well, it kind of missed us. It was like sort of before we were born, and when we were like literal babies. Um, it was late eighties, early nineties. Okay. Um, I actually really got into Heartbreak High last lockdown, and you know when something drops on Netflix or Stan or something, and you're like, they're gonna remake this. Yeah. Like, there was something in my heart that was in my heartbreak, um, <laughs> where I was like why have they suddenly dropped all of Heartbreak High and why is it like the 
the big thing that they're trying to sell me. Yeah. Um, and then they announced the thing. Weird, yeah. And I just like I really loved it. I really loved it. I was nervous for the first couple of episodes because sometimes I find um I get a little bit of just like cultural cringe at and this isn't great, but like hearing our own accents saying things. Yeah. Huh. Saying things like slay and <laughs> <laughs> and like hunty. But there was something like there was also things where I, I really enjoyed when they didn't try to like accommodate an American audience, which I think is what we've done sometimes in the past. They had like there's like full Eche law in there. <laughs> like yeah. which I loved. And I yeah. And that the Eche storyline in particular, Cash, I just I was obsessed with him. It's very yeah. sweet. And uh, amazing representation for not just queer people and like people of colour, but like um people on the autism spectrum as well. Yeah. Um actually having an autistic actor playing that role and being like very vocal in all the press around it as well it's really nice to see i feel like the only thing that i'm like this doesn't ring true for australia that feels a little bit like selling it to the u.s is uniforms oh yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. wait they were you're right they didn't wear uniforms they wear uniforms but also like i don't know i I feel like the fashion was such a highlight for me. Yeah. But then also watching it, knowing what they're wearing, I'm like, how does this high schooler wear Dion Lee? That's a $500 <laughs> top. Babe, I see you. Yeah. $500 top and you're working yeah. at Macca's. Yeah. Be a yeah. dramaturg on season two and you're like, um, actually, here's what they can afford. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, I understand like not everyone knows, but I'm like clocking all the like Aussie fashion. Yeah. Because that's cool too, like having local designers. Like, yeah. Um, showcased I'm like this does not add up um, but I enjoyed the fashion as well yeah I'm happy to let it slide but it, yeah it was kind of like that that um, you allow them to like to have that like disbelief like euphoria when like Hunter was wearing like literal Dior to like some <laughs> grungy like fire pit party yeah. and you're like oh yeah a classic high school experience wearing Dior yeah and most of the cast actually seem like teenagers like you know it's not like one of those yeah. shows where you've got the 35 year old men that's so true being a 16 year old and it's like this is yeah flying with me no. yeah absolutely and like shout out to Aisha Madden who plays um Amory in it who is the lead and I feel like that is the toughest role to play in mm. a show especially in something like Heartbreak High and I just think that like it could have easily have been one of those characters you know how like oftentimes the lead role uh, especially with like assertive female characters people immediately hate <laughs> like which yes. is i mean inherently quite sexist but yeah. i feel like uh, um aisha fucking smashed it and amory ended up becoming one of the most loved characters in the series when traditionally those characters people dislike so That's i was like so Fuck true yeah. i usually hate the lead yeah. yeah no reason straight away well, I'm it's like, the australian reason of tall poppy syndrome we're like yeah. oh attacked yeah, yeah. pulled yeah. out <laughs> You're officially one of us. <laughs> Thank you. I take that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was like, um, it was realistic enough, but then also still had that, like, the drama of, like, what teenage shows should have, you yeah. know? It's lovely. What yeah. annoyed me straight after was I watched, like, one video on TikTok, like, dissecting how great it was, and the algorithm assumed all I wanted was think pieces. Oh, on. yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I don't need, like, a three-minute dissection of what you thought of the show. I've seen it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. My TikTok feed right now is uh, is just all this video of uh, two of the actors from House of Dragons talking about Negronis <laughs> and um, Emma who plays I don't know all their names sound like variations on the word anal but she's, <laughs> she's playing like Queen Anal or something <laughs> are you watching okay, they are they are yeah yeah okay I'm not it's, are you I okay I gotta talk about House of the Dragon I'll let, uh, tell us about this yes. and then I'll rip into no, it no but I feel <laughs> yeah. this uh, anyway so, so Emma is also really cool like in like the biggest show out at the moment there's like a non-binary lead which is like so sick like not the character but the Australian? actor no uh the younger version of that okay. character is australian right. but the um the older version of Rhaenyra it's that somebody uh, told yeah. me that it sounds like, like I, I I've watched a few episodes and I can never get it. Is it Ramira, Anira, Magira? It's like so I close to gonorrhea. Yeah, <laughs> it's so close to it. Yeah. Um, and uh, they're, they're playing just, the adult yeah. version because they did like a time jump and they had what I thought was actually like pretty great casting for the the younger people. And then they were like, now nah, we're jumping forward ten years. Um, that really surprised me, actually. It was also so interesting that like 
hardly any of the male characters got aged out. <laughs> like, yes. they're like they're like women. Well, they've had babies. They need to be fucking like. Yeah, yeah. And everybody else was it's like the, the like same. Madonna whore complex. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. She's she's a mother now, so she's a crone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like literally, like I'm trying to think of the other. Unless they're like literally children, everybody else stayed the same actors. Yeah, but these Matt two Smith female stayed? characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Matt Smith stayed. Yeah. Um, the best. Anyway, I love it. Um, but there's this interview where they're just talking about their favourite drinks, the two leads. Um, and Emma, I can't remember their last name, but they, they're like, I love a Negroni, which already hot. <laughs> <laughs> they just have this like deep, like sick voice. And they're like, with a bit of, uh, and, he, <laughs> and they go like, Spagliato, with Prosecco in it. And like has this smile. And like all of my uh, For You pages, just like people like stitching that and they're like soaking wet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, they're, like, I saw one comment. sweating. Spagliato. What is that? I think never it's like, but it's hot. I like I literally like I'm so like taken by it that I've never really thought, yeah, what is that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tortellini. Tortellini. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tortellini. Um Spagliato. I guess it's Getty. like a Negroni topped up with Prosecco. Prosecco in it. Okay. Yeah. Oh my god. Anyway. Before I slip off this seat, um, <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say about House of Dragons? Oh, I just I was trying to give it a go and I watched the first two episodes or three episodes I think and they had in House of Dragons similar to in Game of Thrones these gay characters but in Game in Game of Thrones obviously they experienced like brutal deaths and Game of Thrones kind of got like read online for the bury your gays trope have you guys heard of this like yeah yeah it's pretty straightforward it's the idea of like almost solely introducing a queer character into a show just to have them like experience some kind of brutal horrific death or punishment um and then leaving it at that and like there's no dimensionality to it there's no um actual like engagement with queer storytelling or anything like that and game of thrones had um had that a lot with a couple of the gay characters that just got killed off in brutal ways um in particular, um, one of the like bisexual favorite characters, I forget his name, something Martel o- Oberon or something. Yeah, that sounds familiar. Yeah. And I've like literally like watched like icon. two seasons. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've seen them all and I, I don't know their names. I yeah, only yeah. found <laughs> out in like season four, I was like, why is Daenerys obsessed with getting the throne? And then I realized that she was like, a descendant of the ma- I truly yeah, wasn't yeah. listening. <laughs> it just Four went seasons. over your head. Four seasons in, I was like, she's really obsessed with that. Why? Get over it. <laughs> <Girl>. <laughs> But Game of Thrones had already begun this worrying trend and then people were kind of like, well, with House of the Dragon, you've got like a whole new um, sort of like world that you can create. Like it doesn't necessarily have to be the same thing. Anyway, they had these this gay couple that was introduced and then by the end of the episode, um, one of them was like absolutely horrifically murdered um, on camera in like in the most like disgusting way and it's just like it straight like, back into it when you saw it happening you're like this is this is really messy and then they showed you even more even more and you're like you didn't need yeah. to do that it's going out of their way to have this thing and it's like so you've created this world that is fantasy you've got dragons you've got whatever the hell you want and you're like oh in this world incest is just rife and people <laughs> Just yeah. deal with it. And yeah, yeah. And, but if you're gay, you die. Yeah, yeah. You die. You're going to get punished for it. So after that, I was like, I can't actually in good faith continue with this show. I was like, it's, it has made me like really upset. I'll be continuing in bad faith. <laughs> <laughs> but also, can I just say like every single show is actually a remake or a... God. <laughs> oh my God. Technical difficulties. Wet. Um, wet on Wellington over here. Um... No, every single show out at the moment is like a remake or a prequel. Like there's that re- Game of Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings, yeah. Heartbreak High. Um, yeah. Like why are there no new shows, um, new ideas? Like what's happening? I feel like there's just like like there's so we're it's, we're so spoiled for choice that like the initial like grab of a new show has to be like either like so fucking amazing yeah. that 
people are like, oh, yeah, absolutely, I want to watch that. Or is a remake so they come, you, you hook them in from for nostalgia reasons yeah, as true. well. But it doesn't make it better. It's, it's oh. like I, I think we should – I think that uh, – we should cut at least three streaming services, <laughs> all of their content, and only. Have. Uh, but it is that they, I remember when I was applying for some like TikTok money, and they were like, "You need to be able to get their attention in the first second. Yeah, in the first God. second. And someone said to me, "A It'd second be like is my a dad's long time." Be like, yeah, yeah, dad's yeah. Dad's passed your on. Dad's passed away. <laughs> I have some horrific news now. <laughs> please, please, please watch this show I wrote. <laughs> Yeah, it's a bit brutal. It is. But to be honest, like, do, does any of it excite you? No, I mean, I'm I'm really hard to excite when it comes to shows. I'm like, yeah. I don't know. It needs to be either just right there or just really easy to watch. Mm. I like don't want to watch gay people get murdered in my spare time. Oh, you don't? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Well, apparently, get it on all a lot of, of Netflix Stan does. Netflix. With yeah. the number one show right now is the fucking Dharma. Oh yeah, that's yeah. fucking. That's just awful. I did watch the whole thing, and that, <laughs> that's some kind of like punishment. It's not good as well. It's like not good television. And I found out that Ryan Murphy was attached, and I was like, oh, okay. Mm. And uh, yeah, Ryan Murphy is. Um, he, he does some amazing stuff, but I I am a he bit starts like, some amazing stuff. He starts. And then he never finishes them. Yeah, that's true. Every single show he has, it's got like an amazing premise and amazing first couple apps, and then it just nose dives yeah mm. absolutely the one thing that he does have is aesthetic like yeah. he makes a beautiful show which is why he shouldn't have done dharma and i would argue nobody needs to do dharma no. yeah he's been done you know yeah it's yeah it's all like the marilyn monroe thing yeah yeah Maybe, yeah trauma porn yeah no. have you guys watched blonde yet no. no. I'm not going to. First of all, because it sounds awful. Second of all, because it goes for two and a half hours. That's oh. too long. They should have made it into like a mini series. Yeah. yeah. Like, like multiple. <laughs> I'm like, here's a show I'm not going to watch. Here's how. <laughs> and this is how you could have improved it. So I still wouldn't have watched it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Apparently there's like a segment where like her unborn child is like talking to her. Yeah. Like pro-life propaganda. So oh my fucking God. weird. No, no, no. And just like no. so many shots apparently. Just of her vagina just what? like like up her legs like really like graphic like invasive photography like just full on we are shocked and we're both lesbians yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely usually quite pro the puss yeah. <laughs> it's wild it's crazy speaking of wild lesbians um did you hear this week <laughs> that um they're doing a new season of naked and afraid <laughs> <laughs> And you're hired. Um, <laughs> no, um, Cara Delevingne has been kind of oh. off the rails lately. Yeah. Oh, yeah, actually, that is actually no, yeah, that's sad. True. I think she's, like, kind of not well. But I think Margot Robbie's really close with her. Oh, and I saw that. And it was something where, like, Margot was going to see her or coming from seeing Cara, and the paparazzi were just, like, hounding her. And to try and, like, evade them, she literally, like, rolled out of a moving car. Have you seen this? No, but I saw that she cried. Did she cry? There was another time she visited she crying, Cara and yeah. was crying. Yeah, I think she's like really worried for her friend. Yeah. She looks a little, yeah, it looks fucked. Like, yeah. um, and even it, it also like sheds light on that. We, we talked about it on the pod before, mm. the weird behavior. Was it the Grammys? Yeah, with, with, with Megan, Megan Stallion. That was a meme for a second. Yeah. And now looking back, it's actually worrying. It's a warning sign. Yeah. And then I think after either Coachella or Burning Man, she was spotted um, in an airport just appearing quite unwell. Oh. Yeah. It's sad. Fuck. Mm. Well, she does have an ugly house. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my god! Being a hot house? No, being trapped in that house with no, no. That's, yeah. She needs to leave that. And also, uh, yeah. Margot Robbie is affiliated with a lot of lesbians in Hollywood, and I smell a rat. Do you reckon yeah. she's gay? I reckon. And isn't she married? Yeah. I mean, the who among us? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's married. <It's> yeah. <laughs> I reckon. I yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if she's in an open marriage. Wasn't there rumors about her and Will Smith hooking up as well? There were. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Did yeah. we run that movie together? That nobody saw. I, sometimes I think that actors fund these movies to have hot co-stars so that they can maybe sleep with them. Yeah. Truly there's like an, an app for that. They get Yeah, Raya. Raya. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, sorry, what were you going to say about uh, Beautiful Houses? Oh, Emma Chamberlain. 
oh that was beautiful home also i was so sick of seeing it because i'm like she's a millionaire come on now she has a nice house are we really that surprised when rich people have nice houses who is she well i've introduced me to her and i still don't know who she is (laughs) (laughs) and that's emma chamberlain just to show like the difference of our algorithms so essentially i think she started on youtube or she used to just do like outfit of the day videos okay Yeah. yeah and i mean she's just like stylish skinny 18 influencer type, influencer type. Okay. yeah and then she has just like she had i don't want to say motivational but she's like make sure you use your alone time usefully and people are like oh my god i should yeah yeah <laughs> i'm like okay you're 18 that's why this is inspirational for you and i get it she has anxiety so she's a hero i guess which wow. is fair. it makes three she's of us fair. yeah 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 <laughs> i think she's just like in the world i think that people find her voice like especially in the world of youtube i mean she kind of set the trend for what youtubers and like vloggers are now but for do you remember like peak like i don't know when she started but do you remember like peak 2014 like zoella youtube where mm. it was like like girls Back when troy savan was actually a youtuber yeah totally mm. and it was all like poppy colors and like this is what i did today and here's my haul and stuff like that whereas like videos that emma would do she like first started off with like just vlogs and stuff like that and then she was eventually like i'm having like a really hard time and she like dropped out of school went to homeschooling, blah, blah, blah. I've still made fucking heaps of money. Yeah, and her um, parents were like artists and like wealthy yeah. already. And I feel like that's such a benefit when you're doing something like YouTube, which is visual. Because yeah. some places I've lived, I could not film it. <laughs> 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 Nobody wants to see this. Yeah, yeah. yeah totally. And also My just... derelict like, housemates <laughs> just... <laughs> I can take the risk of this. Like the risk it, when you have come from like a super wealthy family doesn't really like exist as much mm. I, this is uh somewhat shady but also quite funny i think i uh was talking about like a, a, an elder comic not elder actually at all um <laughs> but a comic was like to me because we were talking about someone um who was doing some killing absolutely crushing doing some uh quirky comedy and i was like apparently they're like super rich and this other comic was like you will find that most of the weirder comics who aren't doing like straight stand up we were doing not all of them it's not a rule but like they do often come from quite wealthy families and it's not a read on them because they're fucking funny but it is that thing as well of being like oh there's that stability you know so i can take a in a sense like a calculated gamble with this yeah other than having to like yeah to what's mainstream stuff and you know oh totally even like even me pursuing comedy like i i know that i always have a home to go back to if shit hits the fan and most people a lot of people don't have that yeah yeah Anyway, so, so you said version. I'm going to be an adjective comedian. Yeah, I'm going to be an <laughs> adjective comedian <laughs> and go for it. And fill the slot. Yeah, yeah, totally. Anyway, so funny. Um, but Emma Chamberlain's house is nice, but I, I think it's hard to get a shit house when you're, you've got X amount of designers working on it. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. It helps. Although I have been so surprised watching Architecture Digest videos like Cara Delevingne and other ones where I'm like, this is, this money is, doesn't buy you taste. It's ugly. Yeah. You know, has a nice house, Dakota Johnson. A beautiful house. Nice. Yeah. Limes. Lime. Oh my God. <laughs> the limes. I think she, didn't she even say she was allergic to them? Yeah. It? She's <laughs> such a liar. She's like, she said, <laughs> being like, I love limes. She's like, I'm, al- and like, <laughs> I'm allergic to limes. <laughs> they set up this house. Yeah. yeah. She went to the Jamila Jamil school of like <laughs> press. Oh interviews. my God. Well, on a like lesser scheme, my apartment was uh, fe- featured on like a local um, home blog. Yes. Oh, yes. They, they were in my house for four hours to take those photos. And I live in a small apartment, so I was like, they're going to be in and out. No, but they were there for four hours and they moved like a lot of stuff around. It still looks like it looks pretty much, but like yeah. they'd place like a cookbook that was haphazardly on top of my fridge, like in the kitchen. So it looks like I actually use cookbooks when cooking, yeah. <laughs> it was just stuff like that. So they made it look really nice. So I imagine when they do those celebrity houses, it's like a full day. And there were three yeah. people taking these photos yeah. in my like tiny apartment amazing and they would have their own like you know and have dress teams and yeah really true on all of it. yeah yeah Bloody hell. I fucking love that um, um have you I, I have to talk to you guys about the bad cinderella drama yes before <laughs> nobody cares anymore which I has have happened not rapidly. heard anything about this yeah, we have a day 
<laughs> so, <laughs> this is. Yeah, yeah. Before it's old news, I feel like it already is. Um, so Andrew Lloyd Webber wrote a musical. Now, he is uh, famous for being really shit. <laughs> now, he made he made Phantom of the Opera. Good on him. Um, but Shrek the Musical could do Phantom, but... Andrew Lloyd Webber could not do Shrek the musical. No, no, absolutely, <laughs> Let's just absolutely put it that way. not. Um, and he he famously also like part of the reason that his music sucks is because he, but like some of it is great. Like I fucking love like a big boom crash sing sing, but a lot of his music, unless he has a collaborator, is shit because he writes the music before he writes the lyrics. So it's like a church song sometimes. So that where there's like one word over like four different like musical phrases like it'll be like and i went to the park <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like phrasing it makes no sense mm. it never forwards the plot no. um it's uh it's whatever but he wrote uh a, a, he's he did his own version of um the wizard of oz um which was you know kind of whatever like, wh- if if it ain't broke you yeah. know like why do that and he has since taken on cinderella I made it bad, Cinderella. Mm-hmm. Um, I heard about the plot for the first time. Do you know much about the plot, Charlie? I, I don't know anything about the new one. So Cinderella lives in a town uh, full of supermodels <laughs> um, and they win Hottest Town every year and they have for 49 years and it's the 50th year. So it's Melbourne. Year. Well, yeah. yeah. It's, it's I would say that's Sydney. Oh, <laughs> my God. Yeah, the most livable. <laughs> yeah, like Sydney yeah. has like the hot people. Yeah. Melbourne has like the hot people who are like also kind of quirky and have septum pierced. Have inner beauty. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Much Melbourne less is, profitable type. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Melbourne's like what we were in like high school where someone would be like, ah, I don't want to fuck you but I'd marry you. Yeah, you yeah. Know what I mean? You're a good friend. <laughs> You're a good friend. Um, I need to... <laughs> um, um, and it's just this ba- bad Cinderella is like is not hot <laughs> apparently. So she's like not as hot as everyone else, and she's like incredibly hot. Yeah, yeah. And she steals something that like makes the town hot. She like steals it. They Stunk. think it was her, or like no, she vandalizes something, which comes back into the press. Comes back into the press thing. She vandalizes something, um, and so they chain her up in the woods. Mm-hmm. And leave her there. That's kind of hot. That's yeah, that is. Well, and they yeah. have this really wanky um, thing where they get the lead actor to. She's at some like red carpet event, and they've got like this big sign behind her saying Cinderella, and it's like above it is the, a little logo that's like of her in a red dress that kind of makes an A, mm-hmm. and then she gets out a spray can, and there she's like, "I'm bad Cinderella. I I'm so it. bad." I do the thing. I've watched it so many times, <laughs> and it's like the song is so shit. It's like, "I am bad Cinderella." And she's like looking at the thing, and then she like kicks her foot inexplicably. She's like. <laughs> <laughs> like, and she writes bad, and also like she can't find the um the spray can for a while. So there's this awkward like her thing, which is like, <laughs> I'm not your regular Cinderella, I'm your bad Cinderella. And then she's like, What's the thing? And I'm like, you look pretty it's regular, so bitch. Uh, to be honest, I'm still traumatized from the Camilla Cabello Disney Cinderella. Oh. Yeah, like, yeah we've, like, that was the yeah. original bad Cinderella in my eyes. Yeah. I feel like there's something going on with like Cinderella and Princess Diana. Like we're just getting oversaturated with content. Is it like it's come out of the like, what do you call it? Like the um, copyright period? Like yeah. Where, you can, where like I, I know that Ooh. Mickey Mouse is about to come out of, into the public domain. Oh. Yeah. Oh um, what are we gonna do with him? Yeah, <laughs> There's gonna be so many like the sharks, <laughs> porn redos, and oh, oh they're already doing. That. I mean, it's, <laughs> I'm a mouse. It's the whole thing. Like again, everything is coming back. There's nothing new under the sun. Yeah, yeah. It's so annoying. But this bad Cinderella stuff goes even further because he did open the show on West End, um, and the they, the cast was contracted for at least a year run, mm-hmm. and then about six months in, they started auditioning new roles. There were a couple of people who were leaving, but they were auditioning pretty much every role, and people got cast, and they messaged their friends being like, I'm joining the cast, I'm doing this plot in West End, and then that person would be like, that's my plot. <gasps> What is going on? And then they abruptly cancelled their contracts. Then they just closed down the show completely. Did it sell? It was selling well. And, like, also they it was a financial risk because they opened it right after, co- like, when COVID was still yeah. very big back in Omicron and stuff like that. So it was, like, everyone was struggling, but it was going well. What happened to and her? And on the last... <laughs> Omicron. Yeah. Omicron. Where's she been? She's, she <laughs> might be in your throat right now. 
<laughs> you could be lying dormant. No, in well, here. actually, we had to do rat <laughs> tests. Oh, yeah, we did. Oh, negative. Actually, Omicron is not here tonight. Yes, but it was it's actually not. so quaint to do a What's rat oh. <laughs> again. Like, I was like, oh, my God, I'm, like, I, I haven't done these. one in a while. And I was like, I miss this. No, I don't. I, like, had to do one just the other week because I just wanted to real- rule out that it wasn't COVID. And I was like, my nose is gagging right now. <laughs> I hate this feeling. It's so shit. No, <laughs> My nussy can't handle it. <laughs> nussy can't. <laughs> um, Shady Lloyd Webber then sent a letter on closing night. He didn't show up for closing night. He also announced that it was going to Broadway with none of the <sighs> cast members. Such a bitch. Uh, and he, the letter was like basically said, this was a huge financial risk. Um, and I am glad that we're closing. Like, yeah. And the cast were on stage listening to it and they're just like in their heads. And he is opening on Broadway and, by opening Bad Cinderella, he is closing Phantom, which continuously sells well and is yep. the longest running show on Broadway. But he said, no, Bad Cinderella. Yeah. <laughs> Chain this bitch up. <laughs> Someone said that when Queen Elizabeth died, she was like, I'm taking Phantom with me. <laughs> <laughs> um, in totally other side of the entertainment sphere, um, did you see this week that um, during one of Lil Nas X's concerts, um, he had like a two minute toilet break. He was like, I gotta go take a shit. And then he just left the stage. <laughs> Everyone thought it was a bit, um, but he, d- and he kept his mic on and he was like talking as it was happening, being like, yeah, I'm just here in the toilet. I'm taking a shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then he came back and kept with going with the show. He's like, sorry. No, but I, I need to take a dump. I understand because before, you know, when you do like your comedy festival, fringe festival shows, whatever, it's so crucial to take a shit beforehand. Yeah. Otherwise, you're on stage for 50 minutes and you're just in pain. Yeah. 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 It's, um, it's a living nightmare. It really yeah. is. Yeah. So I, I'm with him there, but yeah. also, like, I would not be able to take the mic with me. What? How did he, like, muffle it? I, I, don't. I don't know if he did. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? That's probably a kink. Yeah. Well, yeah. Do we think that little Nas X puts down toilet paper before? Or to soften the... To soften the sound? Or do you think he went in raw? Oh, my gosh. I reckon he went in raw. Yeah, he would have just I gone in fast. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like the plop I want to kill myself yeah. I, hate that. I hate that Oh my god When someone next to me Makes a plop Cringe Oh my cringe. god yeah. yeah So cringe you Who's plopping it? In this day and age <laughs> So much information Out there yeah. To not To plop Yeah, yeah. Right now it's, it's a choice 2022 yeah. yeah. Also, hold it in till you get home, like the rest of us. <laughs> like, yeah, don't shit. <laughs> yeah. Never use a public restroom. Um, yeah. So that made me laugh. And there was also something like he had been like I think Lil Nas had like tweeted something that was like I won't be truly famous until I have furries at my concert. And now there's been all these like people just like full on furry costumes at his concerts. And he's like, I- I've made it. That's what? so funny. And now he's like, now I. He's like, I've got to raise the bar. So he's like, I won't be truly famous until people are having full on orgies in the mosh, the sort of thing. <laughs> it's like, don't what, tempt your fans. What like, is the benchmark for you to feel truly famous? Like, do you have one? Furries at your comedy festival show. I don't show. think it's furries. Like, it's such a strange benchmark. Yeah. <laughs> furries could be at any show. I think if I could leave my show to go take a shit. <laughs> And my fans are okay with that. And then I come back and they're like, yeah, this is fine. I paid for this hour with you. Yeah. Um, that would probably be a benchmark. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, that would be – that's probably it for me as well. To, yeah. to be able to do something so truly, um, like, viscerally disgusting and <laughs> get away with it. <laughs> How about you, Aurelia? Um, well, now that I said this question without thinking about it um, – I would probably say fan art. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. You've had fan art made. Yeah, so have you. Remember, you sent me that one. <laughs> we love fan art. We love fan we art. Love fan art. Yes. And if you oh made us fan art, we love it. Yeah. We love it. Yeah. I haven't seen – I've not – uh, received any um, soon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your time yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> will come. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I I want it because I think that there's this obligation then to reshare it. That's true. No, the only thing I've shared is this like 
I've shared this a few times, this picture this guy made for me when I was like 18 and I think he had like a big crush on me, he sent it to me in a mail and it was That's awful. Oh, well. um, I like don't have a nose, my eyes are really close together. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, like, why do you have a crush on me, babe? I'm fucking... And I'm like, you draw me this ugly. <laughs> and also he like kept saying how good he was at drawing and that he's going to give me one for my birthday. Mm. And yeah, that was it. That's I really awful. like... I, this one of my like resentments is um, people who give their own art as gifts. Like I'm, I don't give people tickets to my show. For yeah, Christmas. or or even worse, so here's a joke I wrote for you. What? <laughs> oh. <laughs> just, just say you hate me to your to my yeah, face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, fuck that. Um, we've also got to talk about the R plates in Victoria. Are they Victorian only? I think so. I might be wrong. It might be an Australian thing. No, oh. I, no, because I think it's like the roads, like because peep platers and the rules and stuff are different across different states. Yeah. So it makes sense mm. it would be Victoria only. Yeah. I th- really are the woke state. <laughs> I think it's so weird because um, I would not want to display that. I feel like I would get bullied. <laughs> yeah. They did not think it through. Yeah. At all. Yeah, who are you inviting? Like already, even L plates, you know, are famous for people being like, "Oh, loser!" Like, uh, you know, like it, it becomes <laughs> like, you know, maybe you guys haven't been bullied. <laughs> <laughs> That's just you, Charlie. I've never, you know, they're always yeah. like, "Loser!" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm like <laughs> rounding a curb and I've like hit a pedestrian. <laughs> you're like, mate. <laughs> even with P plates, so I remember when I passed my license and I like got to drive with my pee plates i did it like two or three times i was thinking about buying a car but it just wasn't in the budget and then by the time i could afford to buy a car um i was on my full license wow. <laughs> so i never had to yeah. display any beside like a few times driving yeah. that's and then so like nice plates. and yeah now i'm on my full license just because well, i had to I had to do like a bit of research because i was like everyone's talking about the r plates but no one's saying what the hell it stands for because it's like what does it a rehab <laughs> You've got to rehab. I'm worried that kind people of, it's are going to like claim it as like the other R word. I know. Well, that's no what way. everyone's worried about. Like you can't, you can't just do that. It, it's recovering, and it's okay. for people that have like had either like accidents on the road or are like in some way, shape, or form like have like anxiety about driving. So it's for them like just be like extra careful. But. It's not going to work that way. No, and I feel like assholes on the road are just going to be assholes on the road. Absolutely, it feels like very like band aid over the real issue. It feels like telling women to like dress more modestly. You know what I mean? Why are people assholes? Yeah, (laughs) what's going on? So true. Although, like, I am, I have road rage for sure. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I, <laughs> like, I let it rip. <laughs> <laughs> you were the one who said loser to me on the road. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the only time I can truly express myself is in my car. Because like, I can, s- I never sing in the shower because what if my neighbor's here? Um, yeah. But I sing in my car. I sit in my car after I park it, just making content and crying and thinking about sad stuff. It's um, so therapeutic. Yeah, being sad in your car just hits better. There's nothing like leaving an event where you feel like you've overstayed a little bit and then you mm. get into your car and you mm. close the door and things are just quiet for one peaceful minute. Yeah. It's like an extra room to the house at this mm. point. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> that is my office. It's <laughs> fully an office <laughs> for me. Like, I have so much shit in there. Like, it's like I, clothes and stuff like that. Like So true. Like, yeah. a million coffee cups. I actually sometimes I'm like, oh, I'll put this in the car because it'll be more useful in the car than in the house. You know what's in my car and not in my house for that reason? My makeup bag. Oh my god, so true. I don't have it in my house, I haven't had it in my home for the last like six months. Yeah, like all my spare. You makeup. can tell. <laughs> <laughs> it no, it lends itself to great lighting as well. There's always good lighting in my car. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's more realistic rather than in the bathroom for yeah. sure. I yeah, I'm nervous about this these are platers because mm. I really do feel for people who've had like, but should there be also, which is something that I think I should have where R stands for reckless, um, where they've <laughs> rage. Never, rage, rage driver. They've never truly been in an accident and it is a miracle. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe like a baby on board sticker. Truly. Or couldn't it just be like another color? Cause we have like red peas, green peas. What if you just had like blue peas and it just means like, because it kind Probation. of already, please be nice. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Something like that. Or, or even just give them one of the other P's. I don't know. It just seems a bit like drawing attention to it. Like yeah. P is for pussy. 
Yeah, pussy car. <laughs> Can't drive. Pussy tight, pussy clean, pussy fresh. <laughs> pussy clean. Um, I I pretty much got into a drag race the other night because I was so it was road rage. Someone <laughs> pulled in fr- cut in front of me, um, and and I fucking saw red. <laughs> <laughs> and then we were both at like he was like ahead of me and then I started fucking like like <laughs> dodging traffic to catch up with him and then we were both at the lights together and I was like blasting uh, I think it was like Ghostbusters or something like and I was just like <laughs> And we both looked at each other and then it just became like us going through traffic together until eventually I got to my house. I've never like if I see people like that on the street, I'm like, you idiot. And then I was like, who is this woman before yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. You know? Wow. My ah. mind immediately went to obviously like RuPaul's Drag Race. Yeah. Um, because I'm broken in that way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and weren't you the one who was telling me that you it took you till this year to realize that Pit Crew? Um, I forgot that the whole thing is an analogy for drag racing. Yeah. <laughs> like, I like the, the pit crew, the like fact that they have the little, oh, like, yeah, the, the, the little, like, flag. The people who, like, change the wheels and shit. Yeah, it's all yeah. racing themed. Uh, Everything is. Did you not realize themed. either? either? Um, I never even thought about it. Oh, my God. It was just like, here come the nude hunks. Like, start your engines. Like, it's all, like, yeah, race. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Well, how about Sharon Needles being sharing needles? No, I knew that. Yeah, I knew that. Oh, I thought I thought you. <laughs> I, I thought I thought, thought you were gonna say second, something about her. For a second, I was like, <laughs> "Oh my god, she literally did that." But yeah, well, she's cancelled. She's cancelled anyway. Cancelled at the moment. Oh, what she yeah. do? Um, she shed needles. <laughs> oh, she actually like groomed this child. Yes, and it was really Aww. weird. Oh, yeah, that's no like good. a cruise. Wait, well, also, what's going on with Enrique Iglesias? Oh, with yeah, his... we haven't, we haven't, I haven't seen it in the news since the initial thing. <gasps> oh, my Wait, God, are no, you talking? Are you, no, no, no. Do you mean Ricky Martin? Ricky Martin. <laughs> Ricky Martin. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's so bad. It is so That's funny. So bad. <laughs> but I, I was, was like, fully thinking. Enrique Iglesias, no, like, in my golden mind, child. I was singking, I can be a hero, baby. <laughs> baby. So I just had the wrong artist. Oh, that's so no, bad. Like, she bangs, so bad. she bangs. <laughs> I occupy the same space in my brain and heart. I like, know. in terms of music. Yes. Well, yeah. Well, like, I feel like, like it, the it same might type be of music. another thing as well. But, yeah. 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 But Ricky Martin, we really like, do, uh, is there any follow-up on that? We don't know where he is. No. I, I think know. it's been like like quash. Like I don't think they're going to court, which maybe means that like he paid them out, or maybe they mean they resolved it, or they retracted the statement. It could be anything. Well, there was another thing that now comes to mind with Tiffany Haddish. Did you see that? No. What happened with Tiffany? Yeah. Ha- oh, love her. Like New York. Is that? No, 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 no. no, no. no. That's um, Tiffany that's Pollard. P- yeah, oh, oh, Pollard. Okay. Tiffany Haddish is a like African American comedian who has done like some, some. I don't. I'm trying to think of the roles. Um. She's fucking funny. She's really funny. She's in Girls Trip. She Girls Trip. Trip. Yeah. Oh, um, yes, I know her. Yeah. So um, she had some allegations against her from some children who were like her foster kids, I think. And she also came from like a foster family um, environment. And her and this other comedian called um, Aries someone um, had these foster kids be in this sketch that was really inappropriate where it was like how and it was called how to spot a pedophile oh god <laughs> oh my and it god. was like just not funny the transcript of it and um but then the case got dropped and the pe- the people suing were like you know the, the parents or whatever and then they dropped it all and well they settled it out of court but now she said she's lost all of her work Oh my really? God. Because of it. Yeah, she had like a bunch of stuff lined up. And I mean, the moment allegations come out against you, especially if you're a woman, especially a woman of color, like people yeah. are like, um, we can't work with her. That's um, so fucked up because I think of all the people, especially all the like male comedians who do the dodgiest shit and yeah. still carry on and nobody blinks an eyelid. Mm. Yep. And Tiffany Haddish is like a national treasure. Yeah, and, like, and she like brought, she had this like Netflix special where she highlighted a bunch of. Um, POC female and like trans voices so people had like 20 minute Netflix mini specials essentially Um, and yeah I think that has been probably cancelled for as well oh my god God. Uh we'll see like how that pans out and if you know Brad Pitt gets any kind of equal treatment in Hollywood I mean so far no (laughs) yeah (laughs) Yeah. truly 
Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that brings us to our pop or flop for the week. Yeah. For the week, which is where, if you're new, we have something that we love and something that we hate, but we just pick one. Either or. <laughs> yeah. Either or. It was too much for both. <laughs> <laughs> too much thought. Who wants to go first? Because I can't. I, I'm happy to go. You I go. um go this week I have a big flop. <laughs> um, I don't know if you guys have seen, but Australian Idol is getting a revamp. Yeah, on Channel Seven, and the like the judges and the hosts got announced, and it's um it's a big flop. Who is it? It's like Kyle Sanderlands. I literally can't even remember who else. I think it's like um Harry Connick Jr. Megan Trainer. Megan Trainer. Yeah. Are we paying these? I'm US? confusing all the memes with the actual people. <laughs> like in my yeah. mind, I was like, "Is Miss Piggy in there?" <laughs> yeah, the, the, that's what I made because I was like, "This is just not representative of Australia." Like, and like Australian Idol, it's meant to be camp. You know, we're not here for like big budget stuff. The whole no. point is the like stupid stories with campy judges telling us that we're wearing ugly dresses I'm and here for the touchdowns. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Like, just bring Mark, Dicko and Marsha out of fucking retirement. Sorry to these people if they're not actually in retirement. But <laughs> <laughs> bring them out all the same. Dicko is a legend, I will say. I yeah. met him in passing and he is the nicest one. Apparently, famously, yes. Dicko was the nicest backstage and yeah. Marsha and Holden was were the mean. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm. It's like on this panel how, like, <laughs> I'm kind of known as the bitch, but secretly I'm the nice one. And you guys and are, are the hateful. <laughs> I, I don't know what I'm known for but I hope it's being hot yes <laughs> it is <laughs> um, I actually have a pop for this week oh, nice. great. Um, my pop for this week is Giselle Bündchen being a witch Fantastic, good for her. Please tell me. <laughs> Did she graduate? Is she, is she a BFA witch or is it masters? <laughs> who is Giselle? Who is? Oh this? my God, she's a Victoria's Secret supermodel of the world. One of the highest grossing models of all time. Now Mary, one of the highest grossing witches, witches of all time. <laughs> yeah. Married to Tom Brady, the American football like superstar, who's had okay. this really long career because, you know, with any sport that is like a contact sport you don't usually have like a long time to um have that career because of concussions etc cetera, etc cetera. Yeah. he's had a 20 sex scandals yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly yeah. but well, that doesn't really <laughs> <laughs> if anything that helps i mean yeah. that kind of helps but no he's had like a 20 year career right and um he's had these in, in interviews he said that Giselle gives him these tinctures and has these things prepared to like make sure that he wins the games and <gasps> she told him he was going to have a really tough year in like I don't know 2013 and he did and then um she like has had a sage ritual to clean her car recently <laughs> so yeah she's a full-on witch um but now um he was going into retirement and then he came out of retirement which upset Giselle apparently because she was like, "It's your time to be at." Like, home. I did a spell, babe. Yeah, and now and now there's like divorce rumors because she was spotted not wearing her ring, and <gasps> everyone's like, "Tom Brady, you should be very worried about your livelihood because your wife is a fucking witch and you don't fuck with that shit." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, he's, she's tell gonna get a voodoo doll. Yeah, Aurelia was telling me this week about um, the idea of like the coins. Like yes, I've never heard this I before. Mean, I'm a low key witch myself. Yeah. Um, a soft witch. I'm a soft witch. Oh my um, <laughs> <laughs> So I shared this with these guys, and I'm going to share it with you. Uh, you can put negative energy onto objects and conveniently lose them and get rid of that energy that way. Commonly, I like to use like a coin that I'm not going to use anyways. But I'm going to do five cents. You know? Yeah. So uh, put some negative energy in a five cent coin, drop it in the street. It's for someone else to pick up and it's not my problem anymore. Love, love that. that. Now yeah. I'm scared of coins. Yeah, never pick up coins now. <laughs> pick up a coin. Do not pick up coins in Melbourne to the north. I have cursed them. <laughs> yeah. And also they've got the queen on her and she's so dead. Yeah. Like, get over it. Yeah, Move it. on. Oh. Get some new currency. Yeah, get some new, <laughs> new currency. <laughs> I have a pop. My pop this week is uh, Tom Cruise's height. Um, <laughs> because we all know he's short. Yes. He's still, like I watched Top Gun Maverick um, on my birthday and oh, I had nice. a really great time, I recommend. Mm -hmm. um, but it's in very all queer. the scenes with Jennifer Connolly, who was like quite, I, I would say like a tall, statured woman. Like, mm -hmm. I yes. don't think 
she's short. But like in all of them, he's like towering over her. Even in the sex scene, like it was almost comical. <laughs> like she was like at his like belly button, and I was just Descending like sending from the Absolutely. roof. Absolutely, yeah. I was like, this is so good. He's he's just being like, I know that everybody knows. Yeah. That I'm short, but I will Absolutely. not allow that in mm-hmm. the. I, he famously came to the aquarium, my old workplace, and to do the um the uh, behind the scenes penguin experience you have to take off his shoes and put on special shoes and he refused to take off his heeled boots and there was like a full on like hour long back and forth about whether he could take his heeled boots off or not Um, and he eventually did but they gave him something to stand on for the photos he is so like insecure and everybody knows it and I think that's a pop yeah yeah it's camp. It's so yeah, good. short kings unite. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, I love oh. it. Well, that's it. Yeah, yeah, this was our first like live episode. Thank, thank you, you if so you much. were watching you. this. Yeah, and thank you to Stupid Old as well. What a yes. fun time! And check out all the other amazing podcasts that are on, and especially Pop Gayers. Yes, yeah. <laughs> just rewatch this over and over. <laughs> thank you. Bye, Bye friends. That was my favourite so far because I wasn't on it. Um, how good the pop goes? Excellent pop goes. Uh, now there, you'll see them sort of standing around behind us. Um, do what? Do what? Would one of you be up for chatting to us about it? A bit of a post-game debrief. Yeah. Fantastic. I look like I'm holding them. <laughs> Let's see. Come on this in. Is, who's going to take the mic? See, this is a real. How, how was that? Did you feel good? Feel comfortable out there? Yeah, that was really cute. We try like recording our episodes before with these shitty little cameras and then we watch the footage and be like, we all look so ugly. <laughs> and I finally feel like that's not going to happen today. No, real hot stuff up there. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> 10 out of 10. You look beautiful against the background. Yeah, you've done this so well. These are like exactly the types of colors we love. Fantastic. I've been in the chat room and uh, a few people are uh, split screening your podcast and the Bathurst 1000. Wow. <laughs> isn't that a, that's a, that's a that's, wild combo, isn't it? It is. <laughs> it just goes to show like people have such diverse interests. Mm. I learned a lot in this uh, episode today. I didn't know about the new Cinderella musical or the <laughs> fact that there's a lot of Cinderella media coming out in the last few years. Um, we're all over that. We we like have real Cinderella energy, yeah. all three of us. We feel like we've been wronged by some um, evil stepmother. Um, and yeah, we're reclaiming that energy. Yeah. That glass, really glass shoes and all. I love that you put an energy into coins. I am personally a coin picker up because I'm like, ah, oh, my lucky day. That's, I'm going to start dropping them. Um, be careful because it might be your unlucky day. Do you know what I'm going to start doing? I'm going to start picking up coins that I find in the inner north. Yeah. And I'm going to put more negative energy into them. I'm going to yeah. do stacks. And then drop them again. And yeah. if anyone's desperate enough, they're going to have a worse day. <laughs> oh, no. I think that's too cruel just to leave them out for anyone to get. I would put them out where you're going to walk with one of your enemies, right? And go oh. and point it out. Oh, is that? I don't need it, but do you need that five cents there? It Maybe. kind of reminds me of that prank where people have like glued coins to the ground. So like people that's will so try. Embarrassing. <laughs> that's will so embarrassing. So <laughs> embarrassing. Yeah. Have you ever fallen for that? No, because I wouldn't pick up a coin to start mm. with. I, <laughs> as a coin picker, I've fallen for that. I've definitely yeah. been like, oh, I'll grab the... Huh. Someone's watching <laughs> me. They've watched me be shameful. Oh, you reckon uh, people are sitting, sitting around watching? Oh, like, there's... Oh, yeah. You know, Surely. You, you glue a coin to the ground, then you stand on the sidelines and you watch from a bush. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> those are like old school pranks. Like those, you know, uh, early 2000s prank shows where... Um, there'd be like someone's just starting to run and then everyone's running that sort of vibe like innocent pranks Yeah, I missed that era. There were I heard about a prank from like olden days 1800s or something in England They used to do this prank and it doesn't make any sense anymore But they would hide a brick under hats on the street Just knowing that people would go to kick the hat but would stub their toe on the brick because <laughs> apparently back then people would kick they hats. saw a hat you'd Kick, kick that? I, saw, I read it online. I'm doubting it as I say it to you I, now. I would pick up the hat. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so like, yeah, I would pick up a hat, but not a coin. Right. So is it is it harder to curse a hat? 
I don't know. I mean, it would be just as easy. But I reckon if you see a hat in the street, the likeliness of someone is having a luster is higher. Right. Right? It just blows off your head. That makes all well, sense. Well, with a coin. Who I mean, loses no a coin? Who, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why are you dropping coins? Yeah, that makes yeah. all sense. You didn't need I, it. Mine now. Yeah. I didn't realise that Tom Brady's career was all based on witchcraft as well. I mean, it's not purely witchcraft, okay. but I would say it's helped. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, he got there to meet Giselle in the first place, so she probably just extended it, right? I mean, I want to uh, not go into too much, but he was actually dating someone else and got that woman pregnant, and then he, me he met Giselle, and um, they continued dating, uh, which, you know, generally you'd be like, oh, they just got together, he briefly left her, got back together with her ex, got that woman pregnant, and then he got back together with Giselle. And that seems odd, because why would she settle for a man who already has a child? But she she did. She did, and she's a witch. <laughs> <laughs> I, lo I love how that's... That Maybe a she's tangent. like, I'll put my bad energy into the kid. Yeah, no, no, she wouldn't do that. that she's actually a good witch. Because you start out by saying, you're not going to go into it. But then I do. <laughs> All the way in, I love that. All the way in. Um, there's, like, several more minutes, um, but we saved it for the next episode of Pop Gaze, which... You know, you should listen to. For viewers who haven't yeah. caught the podcast before today, what what is is that as sort of a gen like a uh, an average slice of the show? Geez, I phrase that weirdly, <laughs> but do you understand what I'm trying average to slice? say? Yeah, <laughs> say average slice. I would say it's usually just as juicy, if not more. Oh, yeah, oh. yeah. So you're just sort of covering pop pop, pop world news. I'd say so. You know, we have different interests like i'm not really that much into musical theater but more into witches but, but i'm more into witches but every episode i like walk away knowing more and for a whole year um i know i know who stephen sondheim is now yeah. <laughs> you know i didn't know that a year who ago who is stephen sondheim i know that name um unfortunately he passed away oh. um <laughs> yeah so you can't know now <laughs> but Sorry. um he is a legend of musical theater right um, unparalleled and will never be seen again. So I learned something today <laughs> as well that <laughs> a Andrew Lloyd Webber is a bad person. Is that I, true? I'd say so. Yeah, right. Yeah. And that's not just because he's the musicals he's made. He's like just inside is bad. His I know this, one, I'm, I'm, this wasn't even your comment. Look, I think I'm taking Jordan's if you, words if you and putting make, them in if your you, mouth. If you make bad musicals, you're a bad person. <laughs> <laughs> it's as simple as that on a Pop Gays podcast. Okay, yeah. I like the simplicity of that. <laughs> Joy comes from the heart. You can't you can't be writing awful things and be pure inside. Yeah, I agree. Hmm. So, mm. what, what if you're going to break it down? What are your individual strong suits? Who's the mu so Jordan's a musical? I would say so. I'm sorry, Charlie is also very musically <laughs> talented, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to say. <laughs> okay, I'll put you um, on the spot there. Well, you could have two musicals. Yeah, two musicals, and then um, I'm like really into gossip. <laughs> yep. um, but we're all also into gossip. Gossip's fun. Yeah, yeah. Gossip's fun. We, we love it. Um, and yeah, just co it's an intersection of, I would say, Australian comedy. <laughs> um, international musicals and anything that comes up on the TikTok for you page when you're truly in deep. Right. <laughs> yeah. What a beautiful mix. Yeah. You know, just take those three together and you make magic. We do. Just just like Gazelle. Uh, another yeah. she's a witch. She gazelle? is a witch. <laughs> just like a gazelle. Gazelle. A gazelle. <laughs> I, okay, I said the name wrong. But I but it's okay. I'm because I, I was surprised that Charlie hadn't heard of Gazelle. But I think Charlie is not a Victoria's Secrets gay. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Tom Brady. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That He's makes hot. sense to me. He's hot. Yeah. I'd say there's like Victoria's Secrets gays. Would you like, what does that mean? But you know, they had that like annual show um, where there'd be the beautiful women running, going down the, the runway. And I have some friends who are just like watch it every year and be obsessed, um, which is me. I think out of the three of us. Um, so that's why I covered that segment of news. <laughs> I yeah, can't believe how like much you learn. crammed into the hour. Yeah, True. I feel like it was all the juicy bits from just the last little chunk of time. Chunk of time, <laughs> of course, being a week. <laughs> yeah. I'd call it a slice. A slice, a slice. okay. Yeah. A, a delicate slice of, of yeah, that was yeah. everything you said. I'm like, oh, yes, oh, oh I didn't know about it. No, absolutely. And I then didn't know about the Australian Idol thing. It just keeps coming. As the good news just keeps coming for us. The whole um, Don't Worry Darling drama, the Try Guys. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's something new every week. What's your take on the Try Guys? I think a lot 
lot of people learnt the term wife guy recently. Yeah, I mean, we've been talking about wife guys for years. Really? Yeah, um, it, sta- it all started with John Mulaney. Oh. He, was a, he was a wife guy and look at him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying it's a slippery slope. You don't want to go down that path of being a wife guy. No, absolutely not. And look, I have a wife and I'm not a wife guy. Okay. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Do you think of Tom Brady as a wife guy? No, he's not. Okay. You no. can't be a wife guy. Do it. Well, I guess that's the whole point. The wife guys do do things like that. Yeah. I feel like the term's going to evolve so that eventually when we describe our friends who love their wives, we're going to be like, He's not like a wife guy, but I he think loves so. his wife. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to be like, oh, okay, good. It's like a wife guy, but not like a wife guy. Mm. I wonder if, uh, are we almost ready to go on the next show? Give me a thumb. Amazing. Do, would you like to throw, it's two in the think tank with Alistair and Andy. Do you want to throw to it? Three minutes. In three minutes, do you want to throw to it? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we may as well, why not go now if you're ready? Unless you, we've got more to say here. I mean, we could talk forever. We, <laughs> we, we truly, could. We truly, yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm just going to quickly plug. I have a show in the Fringe Festival. It's called I Said What I Said. It's all types of silly um, nonsense. You will learn absolutely nothing in the show. Yes. Um, but you should come. It's until the 14th of October at Trades Hall, 8.30 p.m. Awesome. And everyone should uh, subscribe and tune into the podcast. Released weekly on Wednesday. Wednesday is a fantastic yes. day for podcasting. And what's a social tag where you've got links that people can access all of these from? Please find us at pop gaze pod on instagram awesome now do you want to throw to the next show um how do i do that do i just say i throw to yeah like you're on saturday mm. night live or something oh. something like that okay okay um <laughs> <laughs> i'm sort of it's talking about you know that's a way that know, i thought like, maybe you would understand i've totally <laughs> been on that show before. um next up we have two in the think tank with <laughs> Alistair and Andy. Hi, Hi babe. <laughs> <laughs> Cute. <laughs> Amazing. The flop is a chip. <gasps> oh no, is this us? I think it's us. This means we have to go into the. Mm, very nice to be here with you. Hello, Hello and welcome. Welcome to Two in the Think Tank, the show where we come up with five sketch ideas. I'm. You're, you start normally. I'm Andy. And I'm Alistair George William Trombley Birchall. <laughs> and it is such a joy. To be here with you. Mm, mm. Starting to pronounce the H's today. <laughs> the the uh, hang on the the uh, you're pl- pronouncing the H in with yeah yeah the, the yeah. silent and invisible uh, the one, H the invisible H. Oh, I love <laughs> heard the of idea. the silent H. <laughs> the, also the invisible and the one that takes no space. Mm, sure, sure. Because a lot of that's an interesting thing about invisibility. Mm. Is that like um, it? You know, a lot of the time, things that are invisible still occupy physical space. That's right. Do you ever think about that? That mm. in when we put spaces in between words, that mm. there could be invisible letters. There. <laughs> I, I hadn't thought of that until now. Yeah. But that's. I mean, that would be incredible. What if we discovered that there had always been invisible letters mm. in between all all in, in all the spaces in between all the all the words that have ever been written and indeed said. That's right. And then if we were somehow able to develop it, I don't know, a new kind of glass. Glasses, or maybe some sort oh, of spray. Maybe we could, could just use those those something. magic Mormon ones. Sure. Remember that one that allowed him to read the tablets? Oh, of course. He just had some ma- magic glasses. Anyway, mm. we, they might not be available. If not, we could invent new yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah. And the, I mean, of course, the other thing is, once you discover that. <clears throat> Uh, a space is an invisible letter. You realise that almost everywhere that there isn't a letter yeah. could in fact be could be occupied by an invisible letter. There could That's be right. invisible letters all over you right now, and indeed all over the walls. That's true. This yeah. is the. This could be there. There could be a, um, a new sort of a, a letter invisible letter theory of illness. <laughs> yeah. And actually, yeah. it wasn't the germs that were making us sick at all. It was just all the invisible letters all over it. They were spelling I mean, out the word sick. Now, now that. Um, you know, th- we've got uh, the you know the CERN um, this is particle. The Michelle Gondry version of sickness. <laughs> there are people doing a lot of Michelle Gondry based. <laughs> now, uh, based how is references. how is that how is that Michelle Gondry? Well, I think tell me more Michelle about Gondry it. Gondry would do a lot of that very kind of like uh, simple stuff where it's like things are made out of cardboard, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. and things like that. And and I just pictured somebody getting sick because a little cell that has the word sick on it, <laughs> and, uh, you know, enters their other. Of the cell and then makes it sick 
Yeah, very Michelle Gondry. Very Michelle Gondry. Yeah, yeah. I, I have Michelle Gondry. Yeah. Go- <laughs> Michelle Gondr- Gonorrhea. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Gondry. You heard me. Um, I think that with the CERN nuclear laboratory, the big cent- synchrotron. In- We're into it early, Andy. Yeah, We're yeah, into I it know. early. <laughs> Is it too too early to start oh. talking about superconductors? No, no, no. It's never too... Do you think yeah. that the people who are enjoying pop gays, do you think they're still having a good time? Do you think, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm so sorry to everybody. We've moved around a lot. I think... No, I'm, I haven't moved around. No, no, I'm no, still no, no, on no. the same topic. No, I, I understand. No, it's because I just meant, you know, we've gone from letters that occupy no space and they're also invisible. Yes. Although they might be visible, but you can't see them because they occupy no space. Uh, yes. And then there's also the... The invisible letters mm, mm. It could be everywhere, and then we need glasses. And now we're at CERN. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But, but we're going to use them because now I, I think they might be running out of looking for uh, new particles. That's right. You know, um, I think they've 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 got maxed out the the thing. But maybe they should start looking for new letters. And there I could think be that s- would be a huge announcement for CERN to announce that they discovered a new letter. That's if anybody's right. going to do it at a very high energy, if you crash two particles together, or maybe two articles. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, and all the letters come smashed together. All the letters smashed other. together, and then it creates a new... Probably create the diphthong. It could create the... Have we already had this idea? No, as not, soon oh, as maybe you we said have. Oh my smashing God. letters together to create uh, a diphthong. No, but no. But I think there's, there's a possibility that there are letters... Yes. ...that are always invisible. Exactly. And even if we discover them... Mm, they'll remain invisible. You can only see them if you, like, sprinkle powder on them but, or something But you like might that. be able to... You might also be able to, like with your with... Yeah. You might be able to infer with, their existence yeah. from their the, the effect that they have on the pronunciation of existing words. Well, that's true. Yeah, yeah. And that would, that would be very... That would be good new work for linguists who I imagine... Mm. <laughs> I mean... Yeah. You know, if they're up to date with the language, I guess they, they're just waiting for new words to come once out. They basically, so. once they get the alphabet down, then they're onto the phonemes. And once the phonemes are sort of locked down, mm. you're like, what do we do? So we need something like that so yeah. that we, they can get a, a whole fresh pass over the, all the mm-hmm. words exactly. Then suddenly all this work that's coming up, all these unemployed people that there's actually not that many. There's a there's a huge skill shortage. So once we just start discovering these letters, whatever they may be in yeah. between all the words and that kind of thing, yeah. there's a chance that they will be... Um, um, uh, they'll they'll make up some new information. We'll be able to read, you know, reading between the lines is all very well, but reading yeah. between the the words that's yeah, also yeah. good. And there could be some secret message in there, you know, about mm. about life or something like that, yeah. or maybe even just just some insults or something. You know, like anywhere on a page where you know, like there's a sentence and then there's a space and then there's the word shart, like that, right? <laughs> You go, oh, that always seems like an awful word. And then you realize that there's actually been an invisible letter before. It's something like ooze or something like that. Like ooh or something like that. And then ooh. And it's supposed to be ooze heart, referring to Kevin Hart. (laughs) You know, I'm just giving examples of new information that we could be getting. I don't know. Example and a good one. Yeah. (laughs) Good one. (laughs) All right. Am I writing down? (laughs) I think we're, we're definitely writing down. In my in my mind, yeah. writing down using the synchrotron to try and find new letters. Yeah. Okay. Invisible letters. While you're talking about that, can I talk about something that happened to me uh, on Friday, which is that I was carrying my son around on my shoulders, my yeah. youngest son, and he was also eating an ice cream, and he uh, dripped a lot of ice cream into my hair, um, something that I I didn't I didn't think about. I didn't I didn't. Put together those two. So wait, wait, you were holding him on my shoulders. On your shoulders, okay, yeah, shoulders. of course, yeah, yeah. An ice cream. Yeah, yeah. And of course, my <laughs> head became for him, I guess, the ground. Mm, you know, I mean, yeah. the, from 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 the Earth's point of view, we're all riding on its shoulders and, and of giants, and, of, of giants. Yeah. Yes, your, your son was very much like you know, I guess <laughs> Einstein, Einstein, or, <laughs> or, or or Isaac Newton at that time. You think that when, oh, sorry, Isaac Newton. Yes, do you think when <laughs> Isaac Newton was was riding on the shoulders of the giants, yeah. if he did have an ice cream, would the ice cream have dripped into their hair mm, would the would the, uh, the giants have realized at the time or would it have been later when they came to 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 get into the shower and they discovered the the sort of the dried chunks mm, maybe what he was dry dropping was something else you know he could have been dropping something valuable mm. um uh you know like information you know like back into the hair you of know, the giants. because when you're writing a lot of like laws of motion mm. right 
Yeah. One is bound to fly off and you sure. lose that one. There could have been three or uh, there could have been four maybe or five. I mean, he probably, I'm sure there were more and then he sort of had to pair it back for the, yeah. you know, for the radio edit or whatever. Yeah, or, or he was just eating an apple and it was dripping. That was just apple juice. But it could have been apple juice, the, yeah. yeah. Do you think that we could introduce the new saying into the language? Mm. Uh, I have... Um, I've, uh, if I've if I've seen further than others, it's just because I have dribbled into the hair of giants. Mm, yeah, with whatever I was eating. Whatever yeah, yeah. I was eating. Eating because yeah. I was sitting on their shoulders like a little boy. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that's right. You could have also stood if you want to see further. You could also just stand on the foot of a giant. Yeah. Um, Wouldn't see as far unless the giant was upside down. <laughs> Doing a headstand, doing a headstand like, as yeah. part of like a yoga pose or something like that. Oh, I mean, I, people. This is the sad. This is the thing that I don't. That makes me sad. I don't want you to be sad, Andy. Well, I'm sorry, but I can't wait to like dislike whatever you're going to say. Very tall people. Very, yeah. very tall people. Yeah. Whenever they turn out to be like, you know, the tallest person who's ever lived. Yeah. You know, they always have sad. some sort of issues with their bones. They, they never stop growing. They never stop growing, but then like, you know, they reach a, a critical point where like their heart struggles to get enough blood to their but you know, mm. and, and and you know and then they have problems with their knees and they can't you know run around and stuff like that like you like you want them to <laughs> <laughs> like if I hear about the tallest yeah. man who ever lived I want him to be really fucking active and agile yeah I want to see him swinging do... off stuff and jumping over really big things yeah, yeah I want to kind of stuff yeah I want to see him really enjoying life. You know, exactly. On a big swing. Yes. Uh, doing a hundred meter sprint. Mm -hmm. Maybe with you know a lot of sort of average height people. Well, the tallest person in the world should also be the fastest person in the world. It would make sense. That's what you would want. And yeah. I don't know how we make that a reality. Bodybuilding. I don't know. Genetic engineering. Something yeah. like something horrible. Probably build them a robotic skeleton. I'm not sure. Whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. I just like to feel. Whenever I learn about a new tallest man in the world, mm. I'd like to feel really good about it. Yeah, you know how they like be about me. You know how say they sometimes do that thing to Olympic swimming pools water to like make it less viscous, viscous or something like that. Alistair, this is not true. This is this, this is something we've made up on the podcast. Is it? I don't think this is a real. No, thing I think in it the happened world. at the 2000 Olympics. No, was, I, I don't. Sure. I don't think. Oh. I don't think they're doing something to the water in swimming pools. Did. Did this is a the water. think tank idea. No, 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 no. This is reality, Andy. Yeah, okay. I'm losing the grip between the two. <laughs> This is true, no, I, but I genuinely do think that I've heard about this, that they, they changed the water. I, I to reckon make it. we talked about it like last week. I know, but we were talking about people swimming in oil and whether you would go faster. <laughs> That's a completely different it's idea. It's a different idea, right? I think that they have done stuff to water, and I think you can you can Google it wow. one day in your I mean, own I time. I think that's really exciting. If anyway. it isn't, if it's not real, like it to be one of our ideas now, a new faster water that's easier to swim in. Water too. Water too. Yeah. yeah. Um, but... If they have made this kind of thing this mm. that makes it easier to move around or yeah, something like yeah. that, make that into blood for very tall people so that the blood can get up there easier. Blood. You know, you get you get more flow for each mm -hmm. heart pump. Mm -hmm. Like that. Yeah. Or give them a, a second heart, maybe. Two hearts. You know what I just realized? I realize I'm a heart skeptic. I don't think that those things would actually be very good at pumping. <laughs> <laughs> they don't look like they would be very good at pumping. This what? is... <laughs> What's really going on in yeah. there? Yeah. Like, they're not even squishing that much. No, then, I don't think they are. I mean, I, have, I haven't seen, I haven't looked closely, because I will say that exposed hearts, yeah. one of the things that grosses me out. I don't like, sometimes you'll see it in a documentary or something like that, and I always look away, even though I, I should be looking more closely because I, I want to be able to have answers for you. And That's I want right. to be able to reassure you yeah. that the heart is able to pump blood yeah. in the way that you, mean, you would want it it's to. It's a bit iffy at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Unless it's like a really full bottle of like, you know, tomato sauce. You yeah. know, like one of those ones that you can refill you can really at a diner a or something like that. Those. And you don't have to squeeze much and you get quite a bit out mm. like that. Mm. It could be like that. So maybe if the body is absolutely chock-a-block full <laughs> of blood. Yeah. Um, then maybe it's believable. I, I mean, maybe maybe this is but what, I mean, what you be need to hear. Because if you think about the heart, if mm. there's anywhere in the heart, and I'm not a not a medical doctor, but yeah, yeah, if there's anywhere yeah. in the body. Doctor, are you? If there's anywhere, if there, I'm not going to tell you. If there's any part of the body yeah. that is going to be full of blood, it's going to be the heart. 
You think so? That's that's what I think. And the lungs look like they probably have a fair bit of blood in them. No, no. <laughs> not not in a good day. No? Not in a good day. Like no. going through like little veins in there. Yes, I guess. I guess there's a transfer of somewhere. When somebody coughs up blood. Yeah. That's probably a very similar mechanism to whatever the heart's doing. Really, the heart is just coughing blood just around the body. It's a constant coffer. It's a constant cough. So when you put your ear to the chest, <laughs> and you just hear it going. <coughs> 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 I think that's what it is. It's constantly trying to clear itself. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's like it's like the, the guy pushing the boulder. Imagine a, Fred Flintstone. <laughs> for, <laughs> for a second, for a second, when somebody's arterial artery gets arterial artery, I think that's a tautology. When like their cardi, their heart artery, whatever the main one. The cartilage, cartily. The cartilage, cartily. The one, the one coming out of the heart. When that gets severed. Yeah. There'll be a second there before the heart realizes what's really going on, yeah. where the heart squeezes and the blood just gushes out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That must feel so good for the heart. The heart is like finally. I don't know, but th- there's yeah. still stuff coming in on the inlet. Yeah, there would be, but you would be able to squeeze it out so easily. Yeah. The heart would feel. Um, it would feel fantastic. It would feel so strong. I know, but it's like when you've been hiking and you've been wearing that big backpack all day. You finally take the backpack off. You feel like you're floating. Yeah. You know, there's a moment there where that's the that's the happiest beat of the heart's life. Yeah. Well, I guess it would know that now it's finally getting somewhere because mm. it's only a certain number of beats away from mm. emptying out the body, yeah. emptying out, out the veins of all the blood, and then the job is done. That's what it's trying to do, and it is constantly being swamped. Swamped. Its inbox is always full, you know, and it's targeting like mm. we're try- targeting inbox zero. Yeah. It's targeting like zero blood in the body. That's the dream. What do you think about a fat? Listen, this is like a. Write know, that a down. No, what write is that? that down. That's a sketch idea. What is it? The heart. The, the heart's, heart's joy. Getting, the heart's joy. The joy the jo- of the heart when uh. they, they're able to somehow, somehow study it. And maybe this could be even a thing that we start doing where, you know, you can you can do this for your heart. Yeah. Right. When was the last time you did something good for your heart? Okay. Give it a win. Right. And they bypass. Mm. They do something. They stick a little thing in there. They open up that artery they let the blood flow out into a in just do into a big bucket they catch it all and they put it back in later on your heart just enjoy. a few beats like that yeah. where it's just like yeah, oh, yeah. To what a treat and so then what's just like you just do it into like a big plastic container We're putting the rest and then they've got a cardiac ho- arrest the rest have a rest so you're actually letting the heart just stop for a bit well well just t- you know just 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 have some wins you should let let, let your heart out just t- take it out put it like get, you know put it on a beach with some sand. imagine it really flopping around there yeah. like a fish and by the way and I'm we've probably talked about this but heart in your organs like I mean sand in your organs sand yeah. in your internal yeah. organs the idea of if you're going to perform surgery the idea of it's like being a sandwich beach, to a beach beach, beach surgery, surgery. <laughs> Awful idea. Yeah. Terrible idea. I hope that never happens. Yeah, yeah. But but at the same time, you know, <laughs> it's <laughs> like it's just spleen transplant, just being like, what, 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 like that. And he goes, the sand. Like that in the sand. You're, you're like, trying oh. to rinse it off. But the, you know, you got to think about like. I'm, see, beach being, surgery for me is a much clearer. I agree. A I much agree. clearer you're sketch. Right. You're I'm completely right. Well being is so is such a holistic idea, right? And you think about our doctors and you think about how hard they've been working mm. over the last couple of years with the pandemic and everything like that the pressure they've been under okay and that must be taking a toll on their effectiveness right as as mm. doctors whatever it is okay yep. and statistically speaking we we are going to reach a point at which you've got to start giving something back to the surgeon yep. giving them a break mm-hmm. and maybe that is letting them perform some of their surgeries out on a beach yeah yeah that's true or while smoking a cigarette. <laughs> exactly. You know? Ashing into the, yeah, they, into the chest They cavity. get so much leverage at this point because they're so done. Mm. You know that thing where it's like sometimes you just, you know, you, you get a job, that job interview, when you finally, you just, you don't give a shit about it. Mm. I don't care about this job. You're like, I don't, like so many people in healthcare now don't give a shit anymore. They're like, I can't wait to get out. Mm-hmm. And that's when they got so much power. Yes, right? you're absolutely right. They've got us over a barrel. Exactly. And if that's where they want to perform the, surger- perform the surgeries, <laughs> over a barrel. 
<laughs> will allow. We're going to do heart surgery of you leaning over a barrel mm. like that, forwards, and yeah. we're going to go through the back. Yeah, oh, I bet I bet they would love, we'll say, all right, <laughs> we've been holding out on them. Yeah. The, the surgeons would say, all right, we'll let you go in through the back. Like that, and then sometimes I know they you've go, been wanting to do it from behind. And then I just want to give, I just want to give your your butt, like just like you're still wearing pants, but I just want to give your butt a big, <laughs> like that, while I'm, while you're giving surgery. I think if if they said that that's what they wanted, and if that was all they wanted, yeah, I think that's a that's a no brainer. Yeah, but that beach surgery, you know, I mean, it can all be over barrels. <laughs> I don't know if that's absolutely what they would want. Imagine the premier comes out and says we've solved the crisis in the health yeah. industry. <laughs> We've started a new one. The doctors are going to be allowed to give you a big spank on the butt. Yeah. <laughs> during. I think it's a small price to pay mm. for you know what they've been through, what they have to witness. Out that's what they want. Yeah. I think it probably would. I would. It would release at least some pressure, especially in the butt muscle. Oh yes. Um, I when you were talking before about the heart, because mm. you know, in the way the heart is like a factory worker, mm. right? Whose job it is to just They're keep on pumping the line, through the... Got, yep, absolutely. But the, it's modern but, times. But the big prank, and I don't know if they did this in modern times, perhaps they did, but the big prank on the heart is that it's not pushing anything everywhere, it's coming right back in. Exactly right. Now, yeah. there's, you know, there's something, one of these kind of like ideas the where... The heart doesn't know any of this. But the idea that you would work in a factory and that... You're pumping, you're helping, you know, let's say it is a cheese factory. You're chopping the big blocks. Let's say it is. Right? You're, you're, you're chopping up into smaller yeah. blocks, putting them into one kilo blocks. You're wrapping them. Mm -hmm. You're checking the wrappings. You're boxing them. Yeah. They're going through, them. The, through, a, through a little portal, a little door with those flaps on That's it. Right. But then sometimes you also work in the trim room. Yeah. Right? Which is where offcuts come in. And Doesn't he know a lot about cheese factory? Yeah. Why? <laughs> Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to name any cheese-based <laughs> towns that I may have done high school in. Of course. Um, but then there's also the trim room where you just get bits of cheese that they then have to uh, – you seal it up, and then they use it to make other cheese, right? So then you could just have the thing coming around. They go, oh, we got to unbox oh, – there's one area where they just got to unbox the cheese, and we got, this was packaged wrong. We got to repackage mm -hmm. this. So then they're putting it back into the factory. Goes back around. Goes back around. Like that's back in the loop. Maybe Same they're cheese. It's the same cheese the whole time. Yeah, like that. And then I don't. Is it, what is that? What what is this idea? <laughs> is this horror? Uh, I mean, it's not quite. It's not comedy at the moment. Yeah, but I mean, the idea that you know, I mean, you send the cheese out into the world, and then they they they, they do just drive it straight back in. They turn it back into a melt it down into an enormous big blob, right? And put it back through, and you have to repackage the same cheese again. I mean, that is a kind of hell. Yeah, right? it could be hell. But I mean, I don't think it is hell. If you don't know that that's what's happening, yeah. I think once you realise you're never going to win, you're never going to finish the cheese. Yeah. Um, that's maybe when it gets interesting. But I guess well, if you if you were working if you're working in a factory, you're not ever thinking, well, one day we'll finish the cheese. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think I think you're I like. I think that's what I ultimately deep down I've never addressed this. This is, <laughs> I, I I I don't I don't think about death. Yeah. Okay. But I also think that one day I'm going to finish doing all washing and folding all the clothes. Really? Yes. That part of my brain, I haven't a ever been able to fully reconcile the fact mm. that I will never finish. But maybe it's the same thing. Mm. When I, if I don't believe I will die, yeah. then I also believe that I will eventually one day finish all the... All the I'll have time to finish all it's, the washing. It's because you've never accepted that even the act of folding and and washing clothes mm. is itself creates new washing to be f washed and then mm. folded. Yeah. That unless do you fo fold and wash in the nude? Have you ever? I I don't think I ever have. I don't think I've done many activities in the nude except for a few key activities. Yeah. Uh, teeth brushing. Yes, correct. Um, and writing your will, <laughs> um, driving Uber. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, um, I, uh, I, 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 I factory uh, idea. I have, yeah, I've, I've, I've completely forgotten what okay. I was. Oh, but look, but look, but look. Is there anybody who is a nur nudist, right? Who is just doing it purely because they're sick of the folding and the washing of the clothes? They're you know, it's 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 a it's a it comes from a point. I, I can see you're already depressed about this. No, no, I'm just trying. I'm trying to think about this this factory thing still. Yeah, okay, whether okay. or not there's a way of like turning it into comedy. Mm. 
I mean, do you feel it? I mean, it's like it feels like a horrible loop, you know? There's almost sci-fi to it. Yeah. What do you find out that's behind it? Big money. Mm. You, there's big money behind how are it? They, how are they profiting off this? What's yeah. this sort of cheese cheese loop they've got us trapped I guess there's, in? you know, there's business, uh, you know, what are those business grants? Mm. Do you think you could have a business grant for a company that ends up not doing anything? Because getting the new materials, that costs money. You know, you have to buy the milk from the, um, from the, from the cow people. I suppose it could also happen in the context where everybody else in the world is dead, right? Yeah. You live in this There's cheese town that you've been talking about. We all know cheese towns. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's a type of town that you can have. Cheese towns. Yeah, there are cheese towns. Yeah. I, I genuinely went to high school in a cheese town. <laughs> it's a real town. It's a real type of town. <laughs> but, but, um, it, it, this in this cheese town. Yeah. W- somehow the rest of the world has has cease to exist everybody else is dead but they're trying to create this illusion they don't want the people in the cheese town to know that this has happened try to keep okay. stability they're trying to keep stability and and what that means is that they got to keep the cheese moving through the cheese factory yeah right? they're, t- they're driving it out into the wasteland they're bringing it back they're squishing it back together into a blob and putting it back into the cheese factory yeah but who's who's doing this? So this is like, is this like let's say let's say let's say maybe a few aliens, people, social but imagine, shady alien. Imagine a few people in the government are like around. We go. There's only one town that survived mm. this crazy yeah. bombing thing, and they'll go mad. Eh? They'll go mad. They'll go mad. We need them to breed, and we need them to keep leading normal yeah. lives because that's yeah. what leads to breeding. They're mm. treating us like pandas, mm. right? Mm. They need to, you know, they need to do normal things like mm. this. And who breeds? More than people who work in cheese factories, all right? You're around it all the time. That kind of it's a very erotic yeah. food stuff. Oh. The smell. There's something it's, about oh. it. When your body, your belly is full of cheese. My goodness, you feel like making That's right. love. And just, uh, just as a reminder for anybody if, who's never heard me say this, but if ever you want to know what what the inside of a cheese factory smells like, when you first burst that block of one kilo cheddar. Mm. Just breathe that air. Breathe that air in there, and that's exactly what the cheese factory smells like. It would like. be, wouldn't it? It would be perfectly se- sealed in cheese factory air. Yeah, it's not. I don't love it. I don't love it. Yeah. Okay. So you sniff it every time. I sniff it every time because I just it, it takes me back. It's that it's that Proust thing. What is it? Yeah. You say it. You always say it's it. It's a Proustian Madeleine. I know, but what's the yeah, line? A la recherche du temps perdu. <laughs> Yeah, à la recherche du Tom Perdue, like that. <laughs> I genuinely enjoy hearing you say that. Okay, so they're trying to keep everybody feeling normal. Yeah. Okay, so they're 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 just recirculating. They're, yeah, they're just pr- providing enough money. And you're there, and you could be one of the people in this scenario who's cottoned on. You think that there's a conspiracy out there, mm. a cheese conspiracy. Yeah. Right, and you're trying to tell everybody, and they're like, "Don't be crazy." Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then, but I'm also too horny all the time because I work in a cheese factory. That's right. I just want to breed, and I'm just gotta, mm-hmm. I gotta find somebody who's, you know, a, a willing participant in this, mm. uh, in this sort of advance of human. You know. Nothing like a willing participant. Yeah, well, there's, oh. nothing, there's actually nothing like. No. It. Look, I know that this is not great. No, but I think it's something, and it's it's made me think. You know, I I, I love the idea of remaking the movie The Matrix, right? But Instead of um, instead of uh, instead of the aliens needing electricity to survive, uh, no, the robots needing electricity to survive, for some reason they need cheese. They're che- they're entirely cheese powered mm-hmm. uh, robots. <laughs> robot overlords, yeah, yeah. right? And they're used. They're actually milking the humans. Maybe it would be exactly the same as the mate as 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 the existing Matrix. Yep. But instead of those few milliamps of electricity that they get, they're getting those milliliters of milk that yeah. they can milk out of male and female alike, right? And so when so it's just from humans. From just humans. Like, so, exactly so 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 they just alive. they they get our lactating That's abilities right. activated. Right. They know the, they know the gene. And, and, and they've been so studying the, us. That's why they've been here for so long. Mu- the movie's exactly the same, except instead of those little plugs all over your body, just huge suction just two things p- like they would have in a dairy over your yeah, over your like that. breast. And, and Keanu's nipples are extremely long. Yeah, yeah. When he gets out of yeah, them, yeah. they're Do flopping everywhere because they doesn't have nipples in that movie. Does suckled he? at. I don't think, does he have nipples when he comes out of that? I don't know if he does. I think he has nipples. Does he? I'm sure. In fact, I I guarantee yeah. he has nipples. Okay. I think you're distracted. Are you talking about you Keanu don't know. the actor? Or are you talking about the, um, you Keanu know, Keanu the character in the film? Yeah. <laughs> um, I think both of them. My memory of him is, is nippleless, but I, you know. I think they both have nipples. I think it's just that both, you were distracted. Both sides of his body? I think you were distracted 
by the um, the sort of the the other little bulbous. A lot of that ooze is very nipple colored, and sometimes a nipple, the discoloration Lost from regular use. skin tone is mm. um, is only slight. And so, I think if I was running my hand down his chest, I would be able to figure it out more. Yeah, that's, that's my thing. Is I have very, um, you know, quite quite subtly colored nipples, yep. but very large. Are they very large? Yeah, yeah. They take up a lot of surface area, but you you could also at the same time you could miss them. And maybe that's what Keanu I do miss has. them. Maybe, <laughs> maybe the nipple oh. is, is is full chest width. Using a sort of like a kitchen appliance or kitchen mm. implement, mm. what? How big would you say? Like a soup spoon? Yeah, I'd say about a soup spoon. <laughs> yeah. They puff out like a soup spoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah they do. Yeah. Could you push them in mm. and eat soup out of them, or could somebody else eat soup out of them? Could you feed your small family? I don't think I could reliably. I don't. I couldn't keep them pushed in. Depends like on I how don't know heavy what the I soup do. is. I don't know what I would do. I, I mean, maybe, maybe I, could, I could press like a ladle into there or something like. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. And then I could get some maybe cosmetic injectables injected in while it's pressed in, mm. injected in there, and maybe they would set in such a way or some Botox or something that yeah. stops it from bouncing back, and then I could have some sort of... Maybe need some negative pressure in there. Negative pressure could also work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would have to be something sucking from within. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the like... sucking is coming from within the nipple. I don't know what we're <laughs> going to use that. Imagine that. You're trying to feed your baby, and it starts sucking your baby's tongue into the into the, into the That's boob. That's a great horror horror yeah? concept it's the nipple that sucks back oh my god <laughs> <laughs> um all right let's is that we're gonna we're gonna put that we're gonna we're gonna write that down it's I the nipple nipple, the nipple that, sucks, that sucks back i think it's a really good idea because they've done a lot of um horror movie concepts around you know parts of the body that that that, that may have you know some sort of hunger right but i don't think they've done the nipple Hungry nipple. Oh, I don't think the hungry, hungry nipples. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's true. You you hardly see anything about the hunger mm. of nipples in mm. any fiction or non-fiction. An alien or non-fiction. comes down, right, and it's somehow preying on people who like to suckle. Yeah. Right? And then and then when they suckle, it, it, it sucks them in. Should I be writing down um, the sort of the dairy matrix? Yes. Yeah? <laughs> yes, I mean, do you yes think that there's, absolutely should. Um, do you think that... There's any other parts of of this world a bit more dairy based? Like, there's more cheese shops or instead of coffee. There's cheese shops everywhere, or you know, like how would the robots not? How would they hide their love for for dairy mm. in their programming? Because they create it and they must just have such a passion for it. Yeah. Well, I suppose I mean those those alien octobot things, mm. the squids that they talk about. Yeah. On the end of each of those uh, each of those tentacles, there's mm. one of those weird little cheese knives. Oh yeah. The little yeah yeah. Little the little um sh- a snake's tongue on mm. the there. Yeah, and then maybe instead of the lady in the red dress, there's the lady in the sort of the overalls and the uh, yeah yeah the, uh, the, 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 the 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 lady with the uh, the piece of wood across her shoulders and the two buckets on each end, <laughs> and then the sort of gingham dress and she's on a stool that's and she's right. milking a cow. You yeah. think that's cheese you're eating now? Yeah, yeah. He says, "Well, yes, that's the only thing that's real." Yeah, and then also maybe scyther scyther scyther. Cipher, yeah, and instead of him eating a big steak, because they would hate that. They would hate that. They would hate them. Yeah, he's him. eating a big cheese. <laughs> <laughs> or he's, or he's writing a, an essay about the, about the benefits of milk. You know, <laughs> yeah, of instead of eating a big steak, he's writing an essay about the benefits of milk. <laughs> You know, and then he's saying, you know, when my pen rolls over this page and I make an argument about the benefits of milk. <laughs> you know what I think? You know, you know what I think? I don't care whether it's real or not. Mm. Um, you know, that brings him enough joy. In you. But there's still yeah. that disgusting, crunching, like weird, you know, steak crunch sound that he's making. Right. But it's in the pen somehow. And then the only other thing that's different is when they go to that big white orb. You know that big white world. The it was one of the one of the sequels. No, 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 no. They go to this in the first one. When they go, the guns. We need guns. He's sitting there on the chair, and it's just white. Oh, that one. Yeah, yeah. And this one, it's yellow. Really? Like cheese. Oh, I was picturing it white like milk. I thought you were saying all that white is milk rather than sort of infinite. Milk. <laughs> what would that be? What would that be? How would that work? They're just in milk. There's milk, milk up there, and milk in the sky as well. It's milk everywhere. Like this, they're just like and then. 
<laughs> trays of guns come and they go splashing through yeah, the milk. Splashing through the milk. Yeah. Um, I'm really excited. Can we call this your great idea yeah. Austra- that you had for an Australian version of the Matrix? Yeah. My mate Ricks. I don't. I realise that doesn't work on any yeah. other level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's such a good name. I'd love to get it in there somehow. Yeah, yeah. Well, my mate, you my mate Rick could be a farmer. He could be a farmer. Yeah. He could be a dairy. Maybe technician. dairy farmer. I suppose that would, <laughs> I suppose be, that that would, would be. work well. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking Gosh, like canola great, or something. That's a great addition. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I do love those yellow flowers though, and anyway, I guess you could probably feed them too. Obviously, when the aliens rise up, we try to get them onto something like Nutalex or so, uh, the, the robots. I keep saying aliens. The robots rise mm. up. We try and get them onto something like Nutalex, but they can't get what they need from that. No, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So that's what we do at first. We just give yeah. have an offering. Yeah. But they see us as dairy creatures mm. as well, right? Mm. Yeah. What do you well, think they do with the cows? What do you think? Do you think any they kept mammal, the cows? you can milk any mammal. I think that you know they talk about hunt, hunting the most uh, you know the dangerous game and how these um, really rich people mm. going on um, safaris they want to kill all these exotic animals. Mm. Right. But there's but there's a, there's more than one way to derive sustenance yeah, from a, a wild creature and you know if it's a if it's a if it's a lion that they want to derive you know yeah. to, to to kill you know in in my version it's mm. to eat it. Why not just milk it? I, Why not going on a safari, a big game safari, yeah. where you try to milk a lion? I know. I mean, I love. I mean, I, I think a, a bunch of billionaires on an island yeah. being like, just like, um, like we're gonna milk the most dangerous, dangerous animal of all, <laughs> man. man. Yeah. Like that, and they go out there, and they are kind of they got mm. the big gum boots like this, and they're yeah, like that. <laughs> that's right. And we're out there just eating. Getting out at five a.m. because you got to do that if you're a a dairy farmer. For yeah, yeah. I don't and then, know what part of it. And then they just milk us. Like, and we're our... Because mm. it's like they we're would... running they would, away. Man and woman. But also... Oh, we're, we're full of milk. We actually full need milk. to milk milk. Yeah, we, we need milked to be right milked. Now. And so we both don't want them because we don't want the billionaires to win. Mm. Like in regular life. If You know, maybe there's a prize for you if you're able to get away with all your milk still in your... Yeah. In well, your, I guess you'd... Your teats. You'd want to hope that there's young, but maybe you could also... Just do it chemically. They just give you a hormone as soon as they release you into the jungle. Partner up with your friend. I mean, if you and I escaped. We could milk each other. Yeah, we could just like, you. I could have one of your nipples in my mouth and you could have one of mine. <laughs> that would keep us alive. We'd live off of each other's milk. That's great. That's a beautiful scene in the movie it's where like they that, realize they can do that. Yeah, it's like one of those movies where it's like, you know, like I think it's Martin Lawrence and the... And the other guy, uh, Tim Robbins, maybe they yeah. escape from jail and they're on the run and they're always they're handcuffed it's together. It's amazing that there isn't already a Martin Lawrence movie in which he he and another man have to drink each other's milk. To yeah, survive. that's right. And so and but it's that, but it's them and they're they're cuffed to each other through the need for sustenance mm. rather than through physical cuffs. That's right. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to write... Uh, I'm going to write down the words titty cuffs. Yes, That's all I'll write, and I think I'll remember the rest uh, based on that. Milk. I think, uh, you know, milk the most dangerous game, obviously, you know, or you, you could be milking a, 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 an elephant, you know, and, and instead of that that awful um, scene where they're like, they're, they're standing with a foot on a dead a dead creature, a much, much better one where they're on a little stool un, under the, the still living... Creature milking away there. No, I wasn't Tiny sure. Little. No, I wasn't sure how long. Oh, wait, I just want to make sure that we know, like, we don't overdo time because, I mean, obviously, this is all unbelievably good stuff so that good. everybody needs to see. Yeah. Are we supposed to go to three forty-five? Is that what? Okay, we're just double checking so that I know yeah. where we're at. Okay. Yeah. Because I mean, I would. I don't want to go to three words from a listener too early. No, no, no. You absolutely. know, even though we're, we're you know, because I mean, usually when I'm doing when I'm doing this with you, filmed, mm. we're we're aiming for like hundreds. We're going, yeah, fourteen, fifteen. But the thing 15, is, is that also today, you know, it, it, you know, it, it's it's deceiving because once we get on a get on a dairy strike a rich vein a of rich of curdled milk <laughs> exactly it's it's, wow. it's hard for us to not come up with endless uh love the idea of being down the cheese mines mm, yeah you think oh yeah i mean there must be there yeah. must be some naturally occurring cheese naturally occurring cheese because what does you know, it take think about a creature gets um you know uh, dies and falls under the yeah um under the under the silt and it's compressed yeah sometimes it must have a full udder Mm. Whatever this creature yep. is, and 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 maybe the <laughs> over years the cells learn how to replicate or something. Well, I was just saying over years, you know, like you can get aged cheese, maybe the whatever milk there dry is. aged milk. Yeah, you know, prehistoric. 
like Jurassic Park. Yeah, yeah. Jurassic, Jurassic you know, fromagerie. Mm, yeah, yeah. But this is not like naturally occurring kind of like cheese. This is just cheese from a cow that's just died. Well, I, I, I'd argue that's naturally occurring. I don't know. <laughs> I suppose. I guess if the if the I just I just assumed you were going to find a new way for cheese to be created. You know, like nature always finds mm. a way, right? Mm. You know, so, you know, there's like, you know, the milk is made up of... Cheese finds a way. Is that what cheese finds a way. way. Curds and whey. That's right. Curd well, finds you. a way. That's what it would have to be. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Curd finds a way. It's, it's almost more too elegant. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, I could picture the guy saying it. Uh, you know, nature always finds a way. There you go. That's but exactly like the guy. Yeah. That was quite good, actually. Well, like, in, you know. In many I mean, ways. he would have been insulted if he'd heard that. Yeah, yeah. I, and, you know, I'm sure many people were when you said it was good. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, but uh, at least we're both equally offending everybody. Yeah. You know, yeah. because I'm just saying that the body is made up of many things. Mm. And if those things were separately, were to come together in a non-cow or mammalian system. Yes. Uh, they perhaps could create the same work, you know, uh, uh, maybe milk. Can I tell you what I, what I have just pictured in my mind? All right, all right, let's see. Okay, it's a version of Jurassic Park yep. in which for whatever reason, yep. that um, mosquito that they find. Yeah, that is what they put in a cage. No, 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 that'd be good too, though. People like, <laughs> yeah, this this mosquito's hundred million years old. Oh, it's it, got blood in it. That's dinosaur the, blood. The, the mosquito it's full of piss instead okay. of blood, yep. right? And they are somehow able to replicate not dinosaurs, yep. but they are able to exactly replicate dinosaur piss. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and instead of having big cages full of it. Mm. They have enormous vats of flowing, dinosaur piss. Flowing rivers, maybe? Yeah, maybe flowing rivers. Waterfall. Huge, huge tanks, right? And Bubbling kind of like natural. And everybody comes around to look at it. Ponds. Obviously, it's still just as popular. Yeah. Right? And you go and you drive around all the different types of dinosaur piss. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and, then, and then something goes wrong. It's like Jurassic Wet and Wild. I was you thinking know. Jurassic piss, but <laughs> <laughs> sure, yeah. But it's like you know. But I guess you would turn it into hmm. some kind of thing for there's like stuff to do there, right? Uh, there'd be attractions. You're you know, right. Yeah. I okay. Think, I, you're, of course, you're right. You know, like you can go in a in a flume ride, but it's all dinosaur. it's all dinosaur piss. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's there's yeah, there's regular. You know, like you're in tubes. You know, like those big inflatable tubes, but yeah. they're like a child's potty or something like that. You know, sure. Or I don't know. Or you could, I guess it could be a, like a big little dinosaur vagina or something like that, you know? Okay. No, I don't know. Maybe yeah. that's not as good. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> could be. <laughs> could be a um, toilet seat. Could be a toilet seat. No, but I mean, what would a dinosaur ride a river of dinosaur piss in? <laughs> so why would the dinosaur be riding the ride? Well, I'm just saying, I'm just trying to find, you know, it's hard to accessorize. You know, we've got the dinosaur piss. Yes, yes. Right? We've got that. Okay. That's in the bank. That's in the bank. Don't worry about Don't worry. that. Okay, we figured That's out. That's locked in. We're trying to bring in the, the, the logic. Okay. And I'm not, I'm not trying to change your idea about the dinosaur <laughs> piss. I want you to have that. Yeah, yeah, we've got that. Everybody's on okay. board. Now, we're working on getting dinosaurs we've at one of these we've parks. We've got to monetize we don't this. Have it right now. <laughs> we don't have that yet. We've right? only been able the to replicate the piss. is 20, 30 years away. <laughs> yes. In the meantime, we have the dinosaur piss. <laughs> okay. Yes. Now, and we have a lot of it. <laughs> right? So much. And we can, we can cover things with it and things like yeah, that. Yeah, squirt thinking, it. You could run through it. If we're thinking about, like, you know, I mean, there's, okay, we can think cocktails. Can people drink it? Well, drinking piss is healthy. They say. They say. Right? So I guess we could try to make cocktails with it. Um, People, what else do people use? Just think of water and then what you would do with that and then we'll just, and then we'll put the piss in. Yeah. So I think, I think obviously one where like it squirts up out of the ground is like one of those water parks. Water parks. But then if you create, let's say a slide, a water slide. Yes. Yes. Right. There are things. So you got the piss. Yeah. Right. But then let's say people are riding on the piss in like big inflatable donuts. I think I think it realistically back in the time of the dinosaurs if there had been a big stream of dinosaur piss yeah. right, and, there, and it would have been big coming from one of the big dinosaurs. Sure. Then what would have been floating along in that would have been seed pods and leaves and that sort of thing. Seed pods. So maybe, you know, um, on the forest floor, as that finds its way to the lowest point, mm. we'll recreate that. The experience, you, you, you climb onto a big leaf that we've made out of foam and you pretend to be, you know, a bug. 
riding on a leaf in a stream of dinosaur piss. Yeah, great. Well, that, that makes sense to me. Yeah, and I guess it could just and it could just look instead of needing to build big kind of things, it could just be a bit of. It's just, you know, carved out of mud, you know, just the way that like and the water and the water, I guess, yeah. could be coming out of big yeah. dinosaurs, yeah. bigger than a real dinosaur. So just so that you can feel like a bug. I think the fun part of this. But then you picture big bugs. <laughs> is going to be the setup. You know, you set up, you're, you're plugging the idea that we've been able to get our hands on these um, ancient bugs that had. Yeah. Um, you know, parasites that did live off dinosaurs. Yeah. Everybody's very excited. They're expecting the reveal of, and we've managed to bring back dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. Then you reveal to them that actually what you've managed to do is re recreate exactly yeah. the urine. But you could be the dinosaurs. Maybe that's what they say. You dress up as the dinosaurs when you get there. Mm. And then we've got you, and you're just one of those smaller dinosaurs. Yeah. Deal, you know, like those kind of really little ones, those yeah, ones really that are kind of like that turn into hand. chickens or whatever yeah, yeah. like that. And... And then you're just dressed up as dinosaurs, and but they've got these giant dinosaurs, and you're just playing in their and piss. They're, they're robots or something. They're yeah, yeah, they don't even have to move. They just have big urethras, and the piss is pouring out like that. And that's kind of the park for now. That's <laughs> just for now. And then later on, <laughs> we'll, bring, we'll make real dinosaurs. We'll dinosaurs. Real ones. Things but like you've got to walk before you can run. Exactly. You know? So, you this know. is a very important stepping stone. It might not look like it. But mm. we are well on the way. I mean, 10, 20 years ago, everybody would have told you this was impossible. It was impossible to have dinosaurs. It was an impossible dream. Dinosaur piss. It's never going to happen. Yeah. Right? And they said I was mad. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, so. No one's laughing now. Yes. No one's mad, thinks I'm mad now. Um, what about the. Um, yes. No, I, I was just going to be another dairy idea. Really? But I mean, I'm not. I'm. I'm I'm not saying all the all the meat's off that dairy bone, you know. <laughs> I mean, not all the cheese has been scooped off of that rind, <clears throat> if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, scraped like, out of the old. Was it going to be dinosaur dairy? Do do reptiles make milk? I don't think they do, and I think that's one of the key things that they do not do. And I mm. would say, in fact, the idea of a mammal, its yeah. defining feature is the fact that it does make, it if, does make milk. If you crack their egg open, yes, into a frying pan, yes, does it go white and yellow? I think there's a very good chance. I think I don't know about the yolk. I don't know about the status of a of a reptile yolk. Yeah. I don't know if reptiles have that same yolk. And I don't. Well, and they must have. Would they have hard shells on their eggs? I don't know if dinosaurs had hard shells, hard shelled eggs. Well, they could have been soft shells. They could have been soft shelled because like, I think. So you'd have to like tear it open a little bit. Days. Eh? It would have been maybe leathery. Leathery, of course, yeah. But we're used to in popular culture seeing a dinosaur egg crack. So maybe that is actually what. Well, I guess it's got to harden at some point so that you can get out. I don't think it has to harden to no? get out. I think hardening, in fact, is a barrier to getting out. I think if it is a if it was a leathery. No, but I mean, I, I'm, I'm, when I say harden, I mean like it kind of becomes more brittle, so that you can sort of like. Once again, it's possible to get out of things that aren't brittle. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's true. Soft things, in fact, yeah. I'd argue, are easier to get out of. Yeah. Do you think they brittle. use their nails? How do let's picture yourself as a as a baby dinosaur? I know the answer to this question. Yeah. How, uh, how do they tear their way out? I'll just I finish think, my question. Just so I think they have a little, a special little tooth or something like that, a little egg tooth. I think chickens have it, a little egg tooth that they use to crack the... Where, where is it? It's in their mouth and it falls out almost straight away. I think birds have an egg tooth. What? I could be, I could be wrong about this. Egg tooth. Egg Wait, tooth. But how does it go? Like, so let's say they've got a little beak. Yep. Okay, this is so you're talk, we're talking about birds now. Now that you're asking me to picture it, I'm losing all confidence. A little thing, but are there one like big buck tooth at the end, like a rabbit? Yeah, that is what <laughs> I'm it's picturing. It's pointy, but it's pointy. Yeah, like that, and they go, like yeah, that, like that. and they kind of stab it. But they would have to go like this, like that, and this is the beak, and then that is the thing, and they go Ugh, like that, and then it pierces a hole. Yeah, and they yeah. start to tear it and they cut around. But like, like chickens a, don't do this, right? I think they might. Egg tooth. Everybody Google egg tooth. <laughs> give, me, give me any information no, no, you have. No, 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 I want everything you have any, on egg teeth. We're not, we're not getting any info on egg teeth right now. I think we're going to... I'm hearing, I'm hearing uh, that egg teeth are a thing. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean... All right. I mean, that would be great for us. Like, you know... If, if we had one special if tooth there was, for eggs. But if, like, babies could have, like, a cesarean tooth. So, <laughs> <laughs> that would be great for us. Hey? I mean, not for, I mean, not for us, but, I mean, as in, like, <laughs> they could just be like, it's coming, like that. And yeah, then it's, just kinda, like, it's a great idea. Like and that. they do. They cut, they cut like, like, a, like, a, like a cartoon 
cat sawing a hole in the roof of uh, a, 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 you know exactly that's, that noise is so good I'm a, it feels to me like you've been doing that every day of your life yeah well it was actually a monkey impression so, wow yeah well it was repurposed it was a monkey but it was a monkey yeah. sawing a hole people <laughs> d- never get rid of your old monkey impressions they can be reused <laughs> to be a cat sawing a hole in a roof I mean, and this is the kind of upcycling and, you know, circular economy stuff that we need to do to tackle climate change. But it's that, it's like that, you know, that sound that Leroy, Larry, or whatever mm. like that. Remember that sound mm. that we all had to like yeah. listen to and they were like, Those things whatever always the words make me say, so upset whenever they happen. You know, if I'm, if I'm going like this, <laughs> like that, you think it's a, it's a, it's an ape. But if I'm going like this, <laughs> I think it's, I think a, it's a, cat. a cat soaring a hole in the roof. <laughs> <laughs> the cat sawing through a roof. Yeah, yeah, incredible. Okay, what was the last idea? Are we are we <laughs> writing down cesarean? <laughs> I think we are. I think we are. I think it's um, exciting. It's the first self cesareaning baby. You know, maybe we pitch it on Shark Tank. And it's somebody revealing to revealing to a pregnant person, a woman, um, mm. saying a doctor revealing it. Uh, nine months in going and we you know obviously we did that little bit of genetic uh engineering, stuff, engineering so that the baby could have a cesarean too so that yeah. you won't have to you won't have any problem with Maybe pushing very early on at the first scan they say do you want us to inject you with the thing and then you can do it at home which a lot of a lot of families love that being able to have that oh yeah yeah, yeah. thing at home yeah i mean it would be pretty cool i mean this is maybe not cool but pretty cool <laughs> i'd be cool if the baby could then sew it up as well, if yeah. the tooth had a little hole in it that you could put some sort of dissolvable thread yeah, great. in there, and then it could go. <laughs> like if you could just put, no, oh, no, spit. <laughs> it normally isn't a problem when I spit that much on on these audio podcasts. Mm. Um, you just hear it as like it just sounds like Falling rain, like rain, rain, like you yeah. know, it's very calming for everybody. This is, this is much more disconcerting, mm. but um, you know. There's got to be some hard w- wired, you know, bits of knowledge that we all have, right? Yeah, that absolutely. thing where babies, if you put them here on the belly after right after yeah. being born, they already kind of know to like push their way up the There's belly. That reflex about where they know to like stop breathing underwater and that sort of thing. Yeah, I think you'll find that a lot of babies naturally know how to set a so close to, to stomach to, flaps. Yeah, to s- s- all the different layers because there's a crazy amount of layers along the way. I don't want to know about the. Layers. You know, you probably got to redo the uh, abs. Got to read. Could re-attach. this be happening on a beach somehow? Well, yes, beach surgery. Mm. Yeah, we're having a. It's a turtle birth. Uh, yeah, Bondi operating theatre. Mm, yeah, well, that'd be cool. And then you could have like a, what was you know, you know they had that first Bondi burger or whatever that was like a, Bondi burger. You know, like uh, yeah, wasn't it sand in that? Well, there could be. <laughs> I think it was like those Portuguese burgers. You know that Portuguese or Porto? Yeah, I don't know. I think a Porto might have started on bon, in Bondi, mm-hmm. maybe at Bondi Beach. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. not sure. I'm not sure if this is. I picture a Bondi burger having um, pineapple for some reason. I don't picture anything when you say a Bondi burger. Really? I don't. You're talking about this like it's a like a cultural phenomenon. Yeah, yeah. I've okay. never heard of it. You just picture like. I it's don't a bun, then you see like a beach ball, and then like some like a, a pair of speedos in I there. I see, I see a bun, and then, like and then I see the word Bondi, things. and then I see another bit of bun. That's all. I'm not visualizing a single. That's visualizing. You're visual. I'm not. Well, there's a lot of invisible letters there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Visible Let's visualization. Have a look. I'm trying to time. I'm trying to time this landing. You know. Oh yeah, we got. Oh, a we got ten I more think minutes. This would be a great time to go to the. Three words from a listener. You know. While we're on such a high, well, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all that great stuff. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Well, okay. So uh, for anybody who doesn't know, we have three words from a listener that come in mm. from a listener who supports us on Patreon, um, and also we have listeners, which is very nice, and uh, and so they get to send in three words, which inspires our final sketch. Sometimes you know more than one. Mm. Um, now today's listener is Crud. K Rudd. K Rudd. Um, we've never had confirmation whether or not it actually is Kevin Rudd. No, but I think they are Australian. They are Australian. And they're I very they... interested in whales. Yeah. Uh, and then in our pa- uh, in our Discord, they have their own channel, which is all about whale facts. Mm. And sometimes 
fake whale facts, mm, which are still facts. Which is uh, yeah, which is our, our you know one of our favorite things is speculative uh, biology, mm. and so. Uh, you know, if you want to get into the Discord and get into that, that's it's a, you know, go for it, please. The link's in the bio. <laughs> and as he says, as he points to his own dick. Um, <laughs> the link is down here. The link. Written on my penis. Yeah. Um, okay. So now, Andy, do you want to try and guess what the three words from a listener are? Um, the hyperlink on my penis, it's, it's exactly like a hyperlink because if you click on it, it also turns purple. Something, something like that. Oh, yeah, this works. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I have to guess what the words are. You think that the link f- turns purple because it fills with blood? I think that's what's going on. Yeah, right. <laughs> I never thought about that. Why, yeah, why does it go like that? It, it co- loves it and it becomes engorged. Now look, I've written down two of K, K- Rudd's uh, sets of words because I think that one of them I might have done. Yeah. So okay. maybe I'll go to the – look, whatever. If you guess any of them, I'll give I'll, – I'll do all six words. Yeah, okay. How about that? Um, and the first word is Python. Python. Okay, that's neither of the first words. Okay. One of them is glib. Okay. The other one is must. M U S T. Uh, we have done that one. We've okay, we have done must. One. Okay, great. Did yeah. you know what that is? Is it the thing about elephants when they they, they get aggressive and they get a, like a, a a, shot a, of around testosterone? Around the period of their, you know. Um, yeah. Okay, great. Okay, uh, well, no, the first word is glib. Okay, um, glib uh, newcomer. Newcomer. Unfortunately, no. But I don't know. It feels connected. The second one is squad. Glib squad. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful words. What fun fun things to yeah. say. By the way, I don't glib know. Squad. I don't know what glib means. I've forgotten. Um, glib means sort of offhand, not serious. When you're being a bit glib, you're talking right. about something you know that 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 many people would consider serious, but you're not giving it it its due. Thank you very much. Um, like, like I think a lot of people treat nine eleven like that. We are in a, an extremely glib. Phase of globally, yeah. Globally, g- g- we're a glib globe. G- yeah, it's the glib globe nine eleven yeah. uh, sort of parallel universe. Correct. Yeah, where you could almost if for for many nine eleven has become funny. Yes, when it was American, a very to quite a few Americans. A few well, Americans. I think I thought they would take a lot longer to yeah. get to the glib to break the glib barrier. Yeah, <laughs> but no, they're there. Yeah. Um, and the third one is... Um, a, they, they went through a comic boom. <laughs> they had to, they had to, and then they broke through the, into the, uh, the, the glib barrier. Yeah. That'd be great. Um, and uh, so uh, uh, glib... Um, glib squad. Glib squad. Grug. Oh, Andy, you were down... You're going down the right path. Oh, how could you tell? Nub. Hmm. Glib, glib squad nub. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I mean, and the idea that um, you know, maybe mm. being glib about a disaster is an yeah. important part of healing. You know, it's a you sign. Send that them out the front of b- battles. Exactly. They're there on the front line. You know. You know, or like a you know a natural disaster, a <laughs> volcano has just gone off, and you send in some of the most hardened, you know, mm. millennials. Or whatever, yeah. people who spend a lot of time online. Yeah, yeah. Right? People who grew up when watching, like, you know, Saddam Hussein get hanged and those beheadings exactly. and all stuff like that. all the something rotten kids. Yeah. All of them, you send them out there and they're the first on the scene before the ambulances arrive and they're there, they're already being glib. Yeah, and they're... And it li- tricks your brain into thinking that you're... All, that, like, the, the, that the disaster must have been years ago and that you're already... Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, they've got... They'd have special, you know, high-vis suits. Oh, man. I mean, yeah, which they also make fun of. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then but then it's like <laughs> it's it's tweed. It's this weird neon. Psychic, it's a kind of neon tweed. It's That's this a, weird psychic coating that kind of helps for some reason, almost like a psych, like a like a mm. psychological condom. Yes, that's yes. There to help. It's a prophylactic, prevent, a mental prophylactic. Prevent trauma from like getting, getting through <laughs> into the brain because you're there. They're there making jokes about what is a very situ- uh, a While serious situation. While you're still there in shock, that's a point where you're like you're very you're very susceptible to being mm. pushed one way or another, and you yeah. could go down the trauma road or sure. you could just treat it all ironically yeah, yeah. there i think you know there would be consequences to this as well we sure. probably fail to learn from history a lot mm. more. Yeah, yeah yeah i, I mean, think there's I mean, going to be a so chance many that disasters in the future <laughs> we're not going to be able to learn from all of them that's true yeah and also there's a chance that this is just a phase that they try they tried out this this squad, squad. the glib squad <laughs> um, 
you know, and, you know, I mean, and we're only finding out about it as the CIA closes mm. this dossier. Mm. You know, and they, oh, really good. You know, from a PSYOP. Yeah, from it's a yeah. PSYOP, but an it was M for their own MK side. Ultra. A positive PSYOP. Yeah, that's To nice. lift the mood. A PSYOP. PSYOP. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so they get you there. They pull up in their big van. <laughs> right, and they they get you. They they put you into instead of strapping you into a, a stretcher, they strap you into a wheelie chair. They slide you in the back of the van, and there's a whole lot of screens with all Twitter and stuff on there. Everybody's posting glib stuff about the disaster. Oh, I thought you they put you on a on a rolling chair and they spin you, and they're like, you hey, oh, you, thought, you thought that was uh, disorienting. Thought, yeah, you <laughs> just bombs going off, and yeah. you go. But I think they need to be like making sar sarcastic remarks about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're on there. You're immersed in the feed, and you're in there being glib with everybody else. About yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they they give you a mic, and they try to get you to contribute. And that way, also, they they get everybody in saying bad stuff that they can then use against them later on, 20 years later. To you so know, they could cancel you. They could cancel you. It's one way that the CIA yeah, can stop right. you from revealing secrets. They can probably also kill you and stuff. But, yeah, yeah. But, you know, if they keep you alive, you know, if they go down that Batman route mm -hmm. of never killing anymore, I don't know why they, they would do that, but... Um, <laughs> They would just punch you, punch yeah, you, punch you in the of, head, you know, like throw you off a building and stuff like that. But they wouldn't, <laughs> no, they wouldn't you kill you. No, use a gun or anything like that. <laughs> no. You know, just crush all your bones. Mm -hmm. I think um, having the uh, a a a crack squad. Um, Why, a wise crack squad. A wise crack squad. Thank you, Alistair. Thank you. We did it. Um, uh, who um, who can uh, be sent in to perform you know character assassinations or, or cancellations on on the higher ups and the enemies? Um, but like they go they go into like you yeah. know like the president's yeah. you know uh, like like or you know or Alice like the, or something Alice like that, and then yeah. they go in and they they break into his room and in front of his children humiliate him yeah with, <laughs> like by roasting him. <laughs> That's right. Mm. Yeah, they um they demean you there. Yeah, in 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 front of you, the kids. I think that'd be you know we we maybe we we transition into a we become a completely peaceful society. Yeah. There's no violence mm. except for psychological violence and yeah. bullying. Yeah, and bullying becomes the new sort of one-on-one -on -one bullying. Yeah, and bullying technology, which with cyberbullying we're already you know making great strides. Yeah, we, we, you know, we're we're at uh, the, 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 that sort of thing is happening. Yeah, I think I guess if we start treating killing in the same way that we treat dropping nukes, is that it's yes. it's really it's a, it's a very rare thing that you do, and and almost it's never. In a, a way, we already cross. do treat killing like that, but then yeah. in other ways we don't. Well, I don't think the state does, <clears throat> right? Sure, we do as individuals, yep. but I don't think the state. Now the does. state, as well as having a monopoly on violence, the state o state also has a monopoly on bullying. Yeah, no one else is allowed to bully. Yeah, but, but the state but we can, can bully. But we don't kill anymore. But we do. Uh, we're we are still allowed to bully. We're, we're really mean. Yeah, and there's some of the like the yes the the meanest. Bitchiest SWAT crews mm -hmm. coming in, breaking in through the windows, yeah. swinging in on a rope, and then making really hurtful comments about your body of work and your pants <laughs> in front of your, your children. Relationship to your parents. Mm -hmm. Andy, I think we got to wrap up. I think that's so. I think, I think everybody's going to be happy to hear that. I think what we're going to do is I'm going to take us through the sketch ideas, and then right. we are going to do a little outro song, a ditty, and then we are gone. Exity Ditty. Are you ready? Yes. All right. First sketch. Invisible letters that could <laughs> be found using a part particle collider. But they but there's also the implications of if we find all these invisible letters, there could be all sorts of new information, you know, in already the in the brain. documents that we've already got. Yes. All right, then we have the joy of the heart once we sever the exit hole. So to mm. to bring it joy. So we, mm. you know, you might fill it up, fill up a bucket with it, empty mm. out the body. The, the the heart's finally feeling like it's getting some work done, and then I assume we have to fill you back up and bring you back to life. Or glorious. Yeah. Uh, then we got beach surgery. That's another sketch <laughs> idea. Then we got sci sci-fi cheese factory loop, keeping us going so we breed mm. after a huge uh, yep. thing. Then we got the nipple that sucks back <laughs> horror film, right? <laughs> and then we got the dairy matrix. Mm. 
Uh, then we got Billionaire Milk, Most Dangerous Game of All, Man. Mm. And there's a possible buddy escape sort of film in that where yeah. they have to milk each other to stay alive. Yeah. But also I wouldn't rule out just milking safari animals, big game. Oh, of course they would do that yeah. as well. But then after the billionaires get bored of that, yeah, that's when they go and... I think the billionaires, definitely, they are still dressed up like traditional milkmaids as well while sure. they go out yeah, into the course. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, then we have Jurassic Piss. <laughs> <laughs> that's... <laughs> Um, you know, that's the that's the park yeah. where they were able, they are able to actually get the dinosaurs. They have a, they've been able to recreate dinosaur piss. Piss finds a way. Piss finds a way. Uh, uh, what was the other one? Life finds Bird a way. Finds a way. Finds a way. Yeah. Finds a way. And then that's for, that's the message for Jurassic piss. Mm. And then we got cesarean tooth. <laughs> um, and then we have the CIA psyop. The glib squad in the front line, and then mm. a similar one is the wise crack squad. Yes, the more serious, but they're kind of more like a Navy SEAL. Mm. Um, sure, it's more Navy steal your dignity or whatever it is. You there know? you go. That's right. <laughs> All right. So, thank you very much. Some of my best work, and we. Isn't that beautiful? What a way to end. I don't know if the mic's caught it, but Alan Andy did say the classic sign off. We love you. Can one of you, would one of you like to join us here? Get in here. Hey. Let's have yeah. a little chat. Let's, let's, Who let's, let's wants the oh, mic? Let's do it. Together. <laughs> Fantastic. Let's keep this going a little Thank bit you longer. Thank so much. It's good to finally have an opportunity to talk to not only Alistair, but also the people at home. Yeah. Uh, and both of you. Yes, and both of you as well. Yeah. What a beautiful uh, episode. Did, did that feel like a particularly beautiful Ever's one? The word episode felt more apt. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I couldn't help but think that maybe you could be, you know, the, uh, our generation's Mel Brooks or Leslie Nielsen, and mm. this could be a Jurassic Park, a timely Jurassic Park mm-hmm. parody oh. film. All those ideas in the mm. one. Yes, absolutely. I think Very it would be timely. lovely, sort of young, young Jurassic Park, mm. kind of, sort of like the young Frankenstein, I suppose. Yeah. Oh, so it's like you know? fun and a little bit hip. Yeah. And... Yeah, yeah, and maybe also a little bit hit and miss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But also, if they're allowed to reboot Jurassic Park, we should be able to reboot Jurassic Park parodies. Yeah. You know, in fact, we should be able to reboot any parody that we want to do. We should be able to bring back The Naked Gun or Hot mm. Shots. Yes. You know, well, a Lego sequel to Hot Shots. Now there's, there's a new Top Gun, right? Surely it's... Exactly. T- what better time than now? Yes. I can't imagine that what's his name's doing all that much, Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, you know. He that. used to drink tiger piss and stuff, didn't he? Tiger, Probably tiger in the blood. In the tiger blood. Maybe blood. blood. Yeah, yeah. Was but, that a code mm. name for something, or was he actually trying to do that? Hmm. Yeah. That, he said, well, he would say that he was on a drug, Charlie Sheen, mm. which does sound like Charlie, <laughs> <laughs> which does. is a drug and, and yeah. which loser in there. Yeah. 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 Reading between the w- well, yeah, reading the words. He's got that Charlie Sheen to him. That's yeah. right. Yeah, that you often get when you're on the Charlie Sheen. It's about time someone broke down these Charlie Sheen references. <laughs> yeah. You know? They've Once been again, sitting there. We're rebooting them. Okay, <laughs> yeah. we're bringing them back for a new generation. So I asked um, the the chat people watching at home or you know wherever they are, I suppose, mm. uh, for that comments work. and whatnot. Mm. <laughs> Do you want to hear some of these comments sure. and questions? Yeah, I think that's really. Uh, cool. Some of these are now going to sound way out of context, but uh, Brayden <laughs> at one point said, "I mean, water can be soft or." hard like slightly different levels of chlorine could have a small effect on water what do you say to that yeah i think that's probably true mm. really good point Braden. um i i've never really understood the soft water hard water thing um is there what, is hard water on? the one that's in the nuclear reactors and it's no, made that's heavy water. that's heavy water that's sorry yeah. is there light water then i guess uh, there is. must be presumably i think regular water is considered light water right the opposite of milk water. yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, in that way. We've yeah. got soft water here. <laughs> do we? Yeah, Australia has soft water. Okay, and so, do, and, uh, yeah, I don't know. What does it do? Um, hard water will... Something to do with shampoo, soap? Yeah, it will make your hair worse. It mm. will, like, mm. it'll get stuff in your hair, so your hair gets bad if you move to Europe, apparently, or to the UK. That okay. explains and, a lot. <laughs> yeah, and also, I think, I used to sell coffee machines for a living, mm. and you had to input your water hardness for the country you were in because if you were in the UK or yeah. Europe, your coffee machine would need cleaning more regularly. 
Oh, so is there more like calcium? Yeah, in like there was like scaly calcium. build up or something. Another yeah. reason why our coffee culture is world class. Absolutely. World class. Because yeah. we don't have to clean our coffee machines. <laughs> <laughs> we got those dirty coffee yeah. machines. I worked at a cafe where they only used hot water. Oh. Oh. So that they didn't don't... clean it because they didn't want chemicals in their coffee. Oh. I mean, Does hot water not me. have chemicals in it? Hot water? Yeah. So you said, oh, they only use... <laughs> they, did, they didn't want any chemicals. They didn't want to use any cleaning products. Yeah. They didn't want anything to else to get in their coffee. Oh, they would only, only. use hot water to clean it. Mm. I thought you meant to like make the coffees. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't sell any cold coffees. <laughs> hey, how about this? X it makes it sound like they bought the water hot as well. Like it was mm. delivered to the, to the shop yeah. hot. Yeah. We only have hot water here. Yeah. <laughs> The, the hot the, water trucks here. We can make Sorry. you a nice coffee, but it's hot ice. Mm. It's like when you ask for avocado, and they're like, "We only have the guacamole. It actually comes as guacamole." That's it's like, fun. "Can That's I get so some tap fun. water? Like, it actually comes hot." Yeah. <laughs> we don't, we don't get that one I'm in. Sorry. Yeah. It's hot and it's got bubbles in it. Yeah. I think it's boiling. I think it's actually just mm. boiling. sparkling. Oh, you're a scientist. Yeah. Some sort. Why do, is hot tap water white? Uh, it's a great question. Why is hot? tap water white um, this is feeling like a, one of those Miss America moments mm, where they repeat yeah. the question <laughs> yeah. you can see the brain is ticking over real quick what? no I mean I learned from Xavier Michaelides that um, when you uh, micro or you shake up milk right and then you microwave it the bubbles expand because obviously they're getting hotter so the air is expanding in that there so out. perhaps there is already air in the water dissolved like dissolved oxygen in the water mm -hmm. and when it heats up maybe that then uh and in fi i think this is also possibly an effect that we're observing with climate change as the oceans warm they are able to hold less oxygen so maybe when you heat up the water it stops being dissolved oxygen and becomes little bubbles and the little bubbles are what makes it appear White. That's okay. my that's my Dr. Carl on the fly bullshit. I love um, it. That's so exciting. Looking forward to seeing your swimsuit round. Mm. <laughs> uh, XZ Neil was loving this episode, saying that they are an engineer for a cheese processing equipment manufacturer. Whoa! So they were wow. lapping XZ this episode Neil. up. They are truly controlling the means <laughs> of production. Oh, it's nice to get some messages from the cheese town. <laughs> yes. Uh, Crud wrote at one point, egg tooth is actually not a tooth, but it is a bit on the tip of the beak. So we were in the close area, and yeah. it is called an egg tooth, so that's, I mean... <laughs> I mean, if they didn't want us to think it was a tooth, they really shouldn't have called it an egg tooth. Sometimes mm. things are functionally teeth. That's Thank right. You. Yeah, yeah, like like a saber tooth tiger's. Oh no, like like that. Uh, what's that thing on the narwhal? I think that's a tooth. That's mm. a tooth. But it's like not functionally a tooth, right? So that one's Wait. technically a tooth. I feel like a, yeah. a egg tooth is functionally a tooth. Yeah. Mm. Narwhal tusk mm. is that's a tooth, but it's functionally a horn. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yes. Mm. Or a corn. Or a corn. Yeah. Mm. Corn. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, I didn't realize that was what that was. Because the only got one corn. <clears throat> I never, I never understood that. What unicorn? Does that mean one corn? Yeah. And the corn is the horn? Yeah, I think Was so. Was that like old English or something? I don't know. Did H's used to be pronounced as C's? You know. I know your scientists are not linguists, but. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. But I would, I'm going to just go ahead and say yes. <laughs> we love a bit of speculative linguistics. Yes. <laughs> Can I ask a question via Nest, who's mm. watching along? Nest wants to know what your pre-comedy festival routine is. Uh, do you have certain meals? Do you do certain talk exercises? I do about eight shits. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Andy does a lot of that. I. Okay. That's a huge. Bigs part or smalls? Of, like enormous, comprehensive, <laughs> comprehensive, everything. Cannonballs, um, no machine gun. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I I often do a thing. I don't know about food. I try not to eat too much. But then what I do right before the show is I close my eyes and I try to get out of computer mode, you know, like the mode your brain is in from just looking at your phone and using computers all day, real yep. fucked up. And so then I try to picture the numbers like 20 and then 19 and then 18. Sounds and then, a lot like something a computer would do. Yeah. <laughs> and then I, and then that kind of clears my head. And then I try and do it at least until my head is clear. I just mm -hmm. picture the numbers. Like I, I make my brain refocus on something and imagine something every second. So that I can just get my brain functioning again. And that gets That's you ready to be funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We also like to give each other high fives before the show. Yeah. We have a small routine of asking each other stupid questions like, uh, why are we here? And then we'll, then we'll say the, the wrong thing. Yeah, so, so. we'll say, because normally if, we're, if we do a podcast, we go, why are we here? We're here to, to 
uh, perform one sketch comedy show. But then if we were doing the show at the comedy festival, we go, why are we here? We go, we're here to come up with five sketch ideas. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's little jokes like this. <laughs> little, little things that are, just get funnier with the retelling. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Someone noticed uh, during the stream that you were sitting sort of a slightly awkward distance from each other, but you were trying to make up for that by leaning in. Mm. Yeah. Did you, was that a conscious thing or does that... I know. I think we're just bad performers <laughs> yeah, on yeah. camera. We have no idea what they're doing and make it worse. I loved it. Yeah, I yeah. It looked, it looked, it looked great because yeah. you know I thought the spacing was nice, but it also looked like you really wanted to be well, close we, to oh, each other. It is an intimate so thing. Mm. Yeah, it's it's it, it, we. It's 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 a it's an it'll, you try and trick yourselves into thinking that you're having a very interesting conversation <laughs> in the hope that like it like it like a fake duck on a pond that some interesting topics of conversation will think that these are interesting <laughs> topics of conversation and will land nearby <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you can kill them. I think my favourite move from you guys was this one. <laughs> I don't know if it's coming through on the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of big, big lean like that. Big lean. Just like having an energy. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. Maybe like I just, this one? Whoa, yeah. I mean, squat. Yeah. Almost, yeah, like a, like a silverback gorilla yeah, yeah, yeah. doing a yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, having a look at a photo well. of one of the shows I was on earlier, and it was the exact opposite. I couldn't have been Being any back. further slumped. Distanced. I, lo yeah. I, I looked uncomfortable, but I felt comfortable. You've got a very casual energy, and you know, <laughs> you you more I think will lull the topics of conversation into thinking that this is a safe space and there's no <laughs> threat here, yeah. and we can safely enter, and there's no chance of us being mentioned or talked about. But then, you know, you do have a good chat. Oh, yeah, there you go. Are we so we're coming at the same yeah. sort of. Yeah. Yeah. Opposite ends. Yeah, you're more the good hunter waits. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. From we're, we're, we're more the good hunter leans towards yes. the other <laughs> good hunter. <laughs> yes. Uh, here's a question from John. Mm. Firstly, John said, ask them where they get their crazy ideas. Bracket. <laughs> Please don't ask this. <laughs> yeah, no, it's okay. We do it on the podcast. And then uh, John followed up saying, uh, has a riff ever got too crazy or off track that you had to cut it because it was too nonsensical? I think that uh, usually that will be the point at which I try and abandon the riff and then Alistair, um, you know, very bravely continues to the very end of the riff. <laughs> yeah, Often I... by himself, with no support. <laughs> it's like touching the void when the guy cuts the rope and then the uh, bloke falls down the crevasse and has to crawl all the way back to base camp. Mm, that's it's what that you do to well. mental, yeah, yeah, basically, I say, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't, I can't yeah. anymore. Can't follow you i got to look path. after myself. And yeah. then, yeah, he's... And, and then often if that happens, I just take... <clears throat> whatever weird concepts we're talking about and then I try to personify them I give them human qualities and then I bring it home uh, by just making it a sketch about like inanimate you know inanimate objects or, or concepts that have human personalities and bodies mm. <laughs> what if a concept had a body yeah <laughs> um, here's a question. There's just a couple more here before we throw to our this is great next questions. show. Thanks, everybody. One minute. Can you believe it? Interesting. Uh, this one comes from Lewis A. Garcia. Oh. What are your hair regimes? Um, or yeah, regimens? Is a, yeah, yeah. Reg is a regimen <laughs> different to a regime? I live under a very brutal hair regime. <laughs> Oppressive. Uh, uh, I, on the days that I want my hair to not look like I'm depressed, I wash it. Mm. <laughs> and how and often? what's today? Okay. Yeah. This is when it's washed. Yeah, right. This is when it's washed. I mean, it gets a curl. No, no, no. It it gets a real grease to it that that I think suggests uh, many days in bed and sort of yeah. And, is that uh, how it's caused? I I don't like not a hundred percent. I mean, I'm not saying I'm always active, but I you know I, I lean back a lot and my head's up against soft surfaces. You look. You gotta look almost a bit like. Uh, Zamet, who's on the next show, uh, had a kid with Weird Al Yankovic. Yeah, I, I mean, I would love to, for those both of them to be my parents. And, and that is, I couldn't um, mean that any more complimentarily. Thank you very much. One final question before we do throw across to them. About my hair regime, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> Just uh, quickly, what is your hair regime, Andy? Ignore it until I very suddenly <laughs> realise that I'm incredibly disgusting and then wash it in a panic. Yeah. But Andy's hair always looks nice. Yeah. yeah. So it's, a, it's a pretty similar one for yeah, you guys. Yeah, I suppose yeah. so. You're like, this is hair, I'm alive, mm. I'm going to cause other people stress. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Final question comes from Crud. 
Uh, what are your episode 400 plans and do, do they freak you out? Uh, it does scare us every time that yeah. we think about it. Was yeah. that, so that was 354. I never think about the passage of time apart from in the context of we're getting closer to episode 400. Yeah. So I don't, I'm not aware of my mortality, but I do know that one day we will all eventually have to epi record episode 400 of yeah. Two in the Think and, Tank. And, uh, and, and, and our sketch ideas. one philosophy is just try to survive. Mm -hmm. you know, just try then. to survive, yeah. Pe quickly, people who uh, haven't seen the show before heard it, where can they find it? You can find it online. Um, if you Google Two in the Think Tank or if you go to www.google.com okay. <laughs> and then do Google two, in, go, the two in the think tank you'll be able yeah. to find yeah. our all, podcast all right well if you, if one of you would like to throw to our next podcast I'll cass is off. cass is going to be on it so let's see if you who oh, wins yeah, of course all right um, al <clears throat> now it's cass versus al um, cass runs um, al talks who wins okay cass is off um, the vlogs oh she's beating you please <laughs> Please welcome to the PodFest, uh, one of my favorite podcasts, and uh, a magnificent group of podcasters known as Sans Pants. Please welcome Plumbing the Death Star. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Go! Can we talk now? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> we on? We alive? PodFest, what the fuck is up? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Woo! We've come in for the 4 p.m. slot and we're here to spice things up. Coming hard. Oh, yeah. Coming hard, coming hot. Oh, so very ready, yep. We are Plumbing the Death Star. We're the podcast that asks the important questions. I'm Joe. I'm Jackson. I'm also Joe. And I'm Cass. And today we are asking which would be the worst fictional universe to date in? So. Yo. Mm -hmm. Basically, our thought uh -huh. process is dating's cool. It's awesome. It's yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's, a, it's a cool thing to do. Right way to meet new people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I contemplate who I get to spend the rest of my life yeah, with. Exactly. Maybe if I want to start a family mm -hmm. at some point. See what's going on with what's people. Going on. That's why I like yeah, dating. Maybe if we like out. the same TV shows. Yeah. It is like... <laughs> Something to do, I'll tell you that much. The wild's away the hours. Yeah. Oh, God, it'll end a night. Pushes away the void, yeah? excuse to go to a restaurant. Oh, restaurant. Cinema <gasps> and cinema. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you do restaurant then cinema. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bang. That's nice. So yeah, dating's good as yeah. we just established <laughs> in rapid we're, fire. There, we're fans of it. Yeah. yeah, and we're also fans of watching current pop culture things so that our podcast can remain on the air. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Without content, we got no content. <laughs> <laughs> and recently, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we always say, <laughs> "Hey, was catch yeah, That's our slogan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And recently, there has been a little Marvel Cinematic Universe television program airing. Yes. And that is called She-Hulk. Mm -hmm. And that is about the titular She-Hulk. That's true. And She-Hulk, aka Jen Walters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I pay attention. I know. <laughs> I never said you didn't. Yeah. She's new to the superhero life. Sure is. Sure. There's a lot going on. Obviously, yep. you've step one, you've been made a Hulk. Exactly. You drank good. some blood, now you're tall and green or whatever. And a shame. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, two things. Uh -huh. Damn. You're a lawyer. Uh -huh. Stressful. Three Job. things. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's going to get worse. You're also single in your 30s. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so a lot of She-Hulk focuses on uh, Jen Walters, you know. Dating like, as a Hulk. Yeah. yeah dating as a Hulk. Dating as a Hulk. Dating as a Jen and dating as a Hulk. Yeah, and as a lawyer. And, and in her 30s. Her yeah. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> There's a lot going on. Jen's stressed. Yeah, yeah. Oh, stressed. But yeah. that got us thinking in our tiny little pea brains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the size yeah. of a chicken's brain. The yeah. one we all share. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's my turn with the brain. Yeah. Okay. As we'd say. <laughs> so basically we're like, okay, so mm. things clearly suck to date. Well, date. Things suck to date. Things suck to date. Things suck to date. Things suck to date. Is it possible to quit the podcast <laughs> mid-episode? Yeah. Five minutes in. I got to go. Yeah. Call uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously it sucks to be dating in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah, oh, yeah. There's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. There's like regular people that are fetishizing superheroes. There's yeah. superheroes pretending not to be superheroes. Yeah. Oh, superheroes man. Superheroes oh. fetishizing normal people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's fucked all the way down. And yeah. we were yeah. like, yes. But this is not something that's usually addressed in fictional universes. Yeah. And that's where Plumbing the Death Star come it's in. It's freaking forte, the brother. Sweet and butter. <laughs> the worst in. brains. Yeah are perfectly suited to deal with this. <laughs> yeah. And this is also taking place in October, so yeah. it's the spooky month. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just going to... I have to find out how that's relevant. <laughs> in sort of like a left field thing. Uh-huh. Alternatively, right. get ready. Two things are about to come together. Synergy. Two things? Two things. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, 
Uh -huh. Dating's hard. Yeah. What is it worse to date in? Uh, it's horror month, so horror eighties, <laughs> eighties horror movies. <laughs> Why are horror movies Whoa. bad to date in? Yeah. Okay, because usually Michael Myers. <laughs> yes, Michael Myers is a problem. Yeah. Freddy Krueger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jason. Uh, like say for example, if the date's gone real well, and maybe you've gone back to like either person's house, mm -hmm. you're snuggling, you fall asleep, you have a dream. <laughs> oh Kruger. shit! Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, waking up. That's bad. That's bad. <laughs> it's bad to get Freddy Krueger in my dreams. Yeah. Yeah. Um, especially in bed thanks to someone this is extra embarrassing yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah this yeah. is our third date and as we all know the third date rule so we slept together for the very first yeah, yeah. time and oh no they've been Freddy Krueger yeah. as I'm going to sleep I'm like babe um <laughs> I've been seeing this guy in my dream. Uh, yeah. He sort of fucked up. I think he was a farmer once. I don't know. But oh, if cool I hands, it might be a rake. I wasn't paying <laughs> that much attention. It's a guy whose hands are rakes that I keep dreaming about, and I'm thinking he's gonna kill me one yeah, day. Yeah, so, yeah. and I don't know if it's a proximity thing. He might jump over to you. I'm just, just interested in being open in the relationship. Yeah, so, if I die from day. getting killed by a rake man, <laughs> I don't really know where I was going with this. But you, <laughs> you sleep well. <laughs> well, yeah. So basically, look, this is a great sum up of why I think the dating is. And horror movie uni yeah. universes sucks. Huge dog shit. Yeah. yeah. Is because basically horror movies, especially in that era, often follow the formula formula of yeah. mm -hmm. you fuck, you die. That's true. Oh no. Yeah. Oh, I gotta remain a virgin. Yeah. Chase them being a big virgin, but yeah. I will be alive, and all the non-virgins will be dead. Be an alive virgin. <laughs> yeah. 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 Rather. Is that worth it? I'll be a dead hero. <laughs> 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 but yeah. So like. Mm. Imagine living in a world, and look, I know that it is sort of cheating to just slam all of these universes together. Oh, that's fair. Slamming their it. own bodies together. Yeah, exactly. yeah they are. Oh, so they get into a bit of trouble. Question. Yeah. What? Uh, so, we, we, so if you thought you uh, virgin, great. Yeah. yeah. Now, what if um, what if I got fingered? Okay. You get fingered. Ooh. Is Freddy coming for me? Well, Freddy got fingered. <laughs> <laughs> did. <laughs> Take a <You> moment. Did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pay them off. Freddy got fingered. Right <laughs> joke. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. How'd that feel? That felt really Stop good. the episode. How are you? How are you traveling? That, that to good? throw out a Freddy got fingered reference. <laughs> oh. <laughs> felt spectacular. Mm. Okay. Yeah. And, I mean, like, how am I not going to address Freddy got fingered when he said fingered by Freddy? Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's we on all should have said that's it. That's on me. <laughs> <laughs> he set me up for it. Yeah. So he sets him up, I knock him down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is his Freddy covered for me or the, or the guy from Scream? Well, Scream's 90s. That's true, it was. And just a guy. Spoilers for Scream. Yeah. Uh, well, two guys, actually. Is Extra Jason for coming Scream. for me then? Well, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking yeah. in this scenario, it's best mm. to just imagine that all of them are there. Because most all of, of them are coming for you. Oh, no. <laughs> most of these. I get fingered one time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> most of these fucking guys. Yeah. Yeah. Have like a small range that they'll do. So like, okay. uh, Jason's like, "Hey, if you fuck at Camp Crystal Lake, I'm gonna kill you." Well, yeah. I know where I'm not fucking. Yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. then if you're having a nightmare on Elm Street, <laughs> and again, oh, uh, but then again, the danger of fucking in Camp Crystal that might add to it. Exciting, makes it a little exciting. Exciting. No, no, this version. is gonna be. Oh, it's gonna be real hard. And I think oh. it's kind of it depends on where it is in the horror movie because you could kind of almost get that like I've been bit by a zombie, but maybe I'm special. Yeah, you know I mean, I was like, already thinking that. every other council is dead because they fucked but maybe we'll fuck just right so we yeah. survive. <laughs> Living in a world where you work at Camp Crystal Lake and you've put two and two together that mm -hmm. every camp counselor has yeah. died if they've had sex and then coming to the conclusion they must have just fucked wrong. <laughs> <laughs> they were just Very doing it. Very brave. We, babe, we could do it in just the right way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's us. a perfect way to yeah. fuck where you don't die. And you <laughs> somehow, whilst, whilst 69ing, which is how I imagine yeah. oh, you yeah. start. Yeah. You, 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 the code. <laughs> A machete comes through your ass and into their head. <laughs> babe, what's happening back there? <laughs> oh, babe, ow. Oh, ow, are you stabbing me? Are you trying to finger my asshole, but your finger <laughs> is really sharp? Cut your fingernails. <laughs> Cut your fingernails, babe. Fuck. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so Camp Crystal Lake, Elm Street, yeah. Halloween, it's like if you know Lori, uh -huh. last name, Shroud. Shroud. Uh -huh. Shroud, sure. Uh, or if you're related to Michael Myers, mm -hmm. that's not a great way to be. Yeah. Seen Michael Myers, he'll probably kill you too. Anyway, so like, you know, just imagine all this is happening. I don't think, Sam, you didn't answer his question. If I'm getting slobbed off. Yeah. yeah if you're getting yeah. <laughs> full on sucked yeah. off. Yeah. Is yeah. that enough to be killed yeah, by the yeah, horror yeah, yeah. Well, In horror movies, usually what happens is someone takes their clothes off and dies. So they don't oh. oh, shit. Yeah. Okay, so I have to be like only, like say, above clothes. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, so I can get groped, but I can't get. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slap on the ass, you're probably all right. Okay. 
that's okay. exciting. That's titillating. Because you know? it's like uh, 80s rules as well. Yeah. So yeah. if a Norg were to be out, that's mm. probably that's probably going to end yeah, yeah, yeah. like a male nipple fine. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You can yeah, yeah. be a shirtless fella in huh. board shorts walking around being like, hey, what about, babe, what's going what on? <laughs> real trying. short shorts and I have like just a hint of under testicle kind of... <laughs> If I think that's showing. not addressed in any of the movies, but I believe that would follow the honker rules and yeah. you would be yeah. stabbed to death by Freddy. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So if little shorts, but wardrobe, yeah. balls in yeah. is fine. Mm -hmm. uh, and like a, like a little top, as long as nipples are covered, you're good. Yeah, but if you're okay. showing anyone a ball or a nipple, one, two, Freddy's coming for you. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, no full Risky, norg. risky, no risky. Full what about a bum cheek? What about a bum? What about uh, those pants from that movie I learned about recently where a man invents pants that have windows in the ass cheeks called possibly so delightful or something? Fucking <laughs> <Can> excuse me? <laughs> I, what? I, is that the one where the, the windows are actually plastic? So it's yeah. not like he's cut holes. Yeah. He's made them plastic? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because it's about a movie. It's a, well, it's a, a movie about a man who's in the fashion industry. Yeah. And he can't yeah. catch a break. And then yeah. one day his pants rip on the ass cheeks. Yeah. <laughs> Has no other alternative for is some this reason. It's like, like a fucking apple falling on Newton's head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. oh my god! It's the equivalent. It's the equivalent. And then he he puts in plastic, and then he he like goes. He's got nothing to present at the big fashion meeting, and they're like, "What about these pants you're wearing?" And he's like, "Well, yeah, that's what I came in to present." And they're like, but "He they didn't take the pants off." <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> and then it takes the world by storm, and they're called like so delightfuls or big jollies or something. It's a film or a thing that happened in real? No, it's a film. Okay. Do you, I don't know. I don't pay attention. <laughs> this might have happened in the 80s. Come on. <laughs> to listen to the most made-up sounding movie of all time due to the fact the plot is psycho and then yes. be like, wait. It's based on a true story? Did this happen to you? I buy some so delightful. Uh, yeah. Or Big Jolly. I can't yeah. remember the name, but it's not like what you would expect the name for clothes to be. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, uh, so the reason that dating would suck in the horror, horror movie is really going to stick with me and it's going to upset me deeply. And the reason I know about them is that somebody found a pair in an op shop and posted a photo online. They were like, who would ever wear these pants? And people were like, that's from the movie So Delightful or whatever. It did happen in real. So in a way, it did happen in real. The world is a fucked up place. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Like, I'd suspected it, but now, right in this exact <laughs> moment... Full on confirmation. You know? <laughs> yeah. Here we are. This has sent you over the edge. <laughs> yeah. Dating in the 80s horror films. Well, oh, okay, so, uh, let's go on a beautiful date. Say, I'm going to take you out. We're going to go mm. down and get some milkshakes and then go to the local drive-in. Yep. That's nice. That's fine. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Good. Oh, Cass chill. doesn't like it for some Excellent. reason. Why? What's wrong? Drive-in. What's wrong with the drive-in? That's what drive you in. get. drive-in. Too sexy. Yeah. <laughs> We're watching the latest film that's out. I don't know what's out at the moment. Is it a scary movie? Mm. Mm, if it's scary, you're fucking yeah. up. Yeah. But it's too, sexy. too sexy. What about, like, uh, I'm thinking maybe something a little bit boring. We can spend most of the movie macking out. Uh, are you just... Going the other direction. Macking leads to fucking, dude. <laughs> macking leads to fucking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come on. Well, it's, it's, okay, let's we're go. We're dating. We're dating. We yeah. want to have a bit of We're trying to... We're we trying to live. <laughs> I don't want to mack on. Yeah. In a car? Yeah. I think a boner would get you killed, just so you know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Unless it's a comedic boner. Oh, in a boner, you're like, I'm about to die. Slam it in the car door. <laughs> or Freddie turns around, he walks away. He's like, that's not my business. Sorry, man. I Sorry. Really misunderstood the situation. Or alternatively, to be safe, you yeah. just gotta, you feel a boner coming on. You just got to get ready with a boing <laughs> sound yeah. effect. You throw one of those out, you're good. Quickly, like, Uber eat some, like, a chocked top from the candy bar. So they deliver it, like, the most inopportune. Yeah, moment. exactly. Drop it on your lap. Yeah. And you're like, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, no! oh, it's so cold. Oh, no, I'm fucking my eye. Oh, no. No. Oh, no. Ice cream would yeah, be. that's another question I have. If I fucking ice cream or it's Halloween or pumpkins. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in a spooky month. In a spooky month. Yeah, Will yeah. I be killed by Freddy? I or Jason? That if it someone it? should kill you in that situation. You'll be killed by Joel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'm the true. worst horror movie villain of all. I, Come in, yeah. I have no rules. I'm just so, like, I don't like you. So is it, is it just is it just what? like the, the physical intimate act of, of, of love making? Yeah, well, yeah. It's gonna get me got. It's or, usually yeah. it's usually actually a little more sinister than that, because it's okay. usually yeah. like if because if you're married, yeah, yeah. you're good. Like parents ah. exist. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so it's pre -married. But date night yeah. for a married or like you know couple. Yeah. Fine. Uh, when you go on your first date as a married couple, you can <laughs> fuck all you want. Uh, yeah, New first yeah, date, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> but also, if you're a married couple in a horror movie, whilst you are having your date, presumably it's like, oh, you left the kids at home, or it's yeah. mm -hmm. time, you know, got yeah. time off. Kids work. are probably getting murdered. Exactly. Ah, the kids damn. are getting murdered at home. Real, like, yeah, put a happen on <laughs> date night. You yeah. come home, you're horned up, open the door, slaughtered children. Uh, <laughs> again? <laughs> but then also, like, it yeah. gets a little tricky here, too, because, like, in the first Friday the 13th, mm. Jason is the one who dies, and then his mom is the one who does the murders. Yeah. She's like, well, you fucked my son died. <laughs> well, I fuck sons die all the time. Yeah. <laughs> That's not on me, dude. Sons are dying every fucking second. So it's of, of course it's going to happen. That's just maths. What? <laughs> 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 well in. A few things to think about. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Boop, 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 boop. You, you might as well it. fuck. I mean, you've you've probably it. timed a death Sunday. with an orgasm before. Absolutely, you, you would have. That's awesome. Mm. That's cosmic. That reincarnation. <laughs> <laughs> it's something. It's close to. It's close to. <laughs> that hit me late. Anyway, <laughs> so. Yeah. Look, I don't even know where to go from. Yeah. Basically. It uh, sounds pretty bad. It sounds I don't want to do it. Yeah. It's just like because so like, dating, dating, dating is fine. Yeah. Dating, like having a nice time, making out, fine. It gets, it gets to a you point. Gotta you gotta go to keep like it PG thirteen. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's the horror films can't happen in the PG thirteen sphere. Not yeah, well, the violent extent that we're talking about. Yes, but you got to remember because like this is a rule from Scream, which mm -hmm. I know is nineties, and I did say Scream didn't count yeah, yeah. before, yeah, but yeah, now yeah, yeah, it yeah. works for me. So, <laughs> so it now it's allowed. Again. Okay. Fair yeah. 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 Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, so not Cindy. What's her name? I don't know, dude. Anyway, I'm guessing it doesn't matter. Yeah. Sid Sydney. <laughs> uh, so Sydney uh, is it matters. <laughs> yeah, <maybe> okay. Uh, Sydney basically with her boyfriend, he's, yeah. he's like, I really, oh, oh, I just want to be inside you. Hang on. And yeah. she's like, no. And then he's like, well, you always keeping it PG 13. And then she's the final girl. And there you go. Uh, her but more do it. Promiscuous friends. Are I guess, look, I guess, yeah, dating. Dating fine. Dating is fine. Making to be out honest. fine. It's yeah. just, yeah. it's just, I think once you get to, as you said, the third date, yeah. Yeah. anything after that, you're dead. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. especially if all the monsters are in one universe. Mm. Don't know which Especially one. Especially what you've done right now, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be worse. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dealing with one Freddy, bad. Dealing with a Freddy and a Jason. Yeah, yeah. Oh, terrible. I, look, I might be in the minority here, but I think if I knew who was coming for me, then I can, like, weigh it up. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Obviously, there are some of these slashes you could fight. Is yeah, 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 yeah. No, my logic is better. that I could <laughs> escape from some of them, or at least not necessarily fight, just <laughs> this my chance awesome. of survival. This is awesome. Chance of survival is. <laughs> I clear. need to know who. Who's the easiest? That's all. That's all. We don't have all day. Yeah, 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 so yeah. who's the easiest? Don't rank them. Just the easiest one. Yeah. Easiest one to escape from probably. Oh, this is a huge call, but maybe Jason. Jason. He is just a guy. Jason, before or after he came back from hell? <laughs> <laughs> Probably before Jason oh, yeah. goes to hell. Fair enough, fair, fair enough, enough, fair okay. enough. Fair I enough. honestly think with Jason, I get in the car, I drive away. Yeah. And I just keep driving. Okay. At some point, he stops. He's got other guys to kill. <laughs> yeah, because that's... He's Freddy, <laughs> I have to sleep at some point. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah, I could dream good and beat the shit out of Freddy and play his own games, like what happens in Dream Warriors or mm -hmm. whatever. I mm -hmm. vaguely remember that movie. Yeah. But I can't. Look, <laughs> you, I, you ain't got off. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking. I'm gonna dream about getting my dick and nuts cut off by Freddy's hand or whatever. Dreaming about that, and then Freddy <laughs> turns up in your dream. <laughs> what? Oh. what? What the fuck? <laughs> I can't just do this. Yeah, this feels like idea to be derivative. Yeah. I'll leave him alive. Dream, I maybe that's actually the best way to fight Freddy before we move on to the other ones. Mm -hmm. Is to dream about Freddy killing you, and then the real Freddy shows up, and then Freddy fights Freddy. Yeah, that's true. Freddy kills Freddy. Hopefully the good Man. Freddy that you've made up wins. If it's the bad Freddy that wins, you die anyway. You well, they're both bad Freddies that <laughs> want to kill you. Yeah, but one of them... They fight... To, for the honor one of, of the, killing you. One of them's a dream. Yeah. <laughs> they're both. You're, you're still in the dream. Yeah, but if you die in this dream, <laughs> you die in real life. But you only like, die... With the presence of Freddy, I mean, surely I mean, it becomes then you... Yeah, if you died in then, you would die in real life. Watch it, you just... You, please. Maybe if you, like, you, you make the Freddies fight each other, there's a big tussle, yeah. then one of them comes to you with a knife at the end, and you know that if your Freddy dream Freddy kills you, it's yeah. just like a regular dream and you wake up, but yeah. it's not. Yeah. <laughs> mm. 
<laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. How do you wake up? How do you wake you up? Don't. You don't. <laughs> you stay dead. That's yeah. a problem with Freddy. He kills you. He does. Yeah, he kills you. Really All right. That's anyway. So yeah, on a scale of bad to really bad, where we sit, that's the scale for today. Say <laughs> pretty bad. Pretty bad. Okay. Yeah. Pretty bad. Right now. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty bad. bad. It's pretty, pretty bad. bad. Um. Yeah. 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 At least the lawyer in her thirties with <laughs> superhero powers yeah. hasn't died at time of that's recording. That's true. Cass, what do you got? Twilight Universe. Okay, oh, fair enough. Oh my right. Fair God. enough. All right. Everyone's got a special thing. Oh, uh, they do. Got a that is thing. annoying. It's so frustrating. Like the like the whole Edward thing. He can read everyone's mind. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> but I'm not thinking anything good. Good. No, no, okay, what that's you thinking? my problem. <laughs> I'm not thinking anything good. Let's play a quick game, Jackson. What are you thinking about right now? Think about in a cartoon how yep. the ham. <laughs> you know the ham, how where it connects to the bone coming out of the back of the ham. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm just thinking about that. <laughs> oh, the little zigzag. Yeah, I was thinking yeah. about those little zigzags, and I was like, "What are they on a real ham?" That's kind of where I was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, Edward would be pretty upset. Well, I mean, are he they on a real I don't know. What are they meant to depict? I genuinely can't fathom it. <laughs> but I think if Edward, I think the thing is that if Edward read my brain and that's all that was in there, he yeah. would move promptly on. Yeah. Eddie can I'm move not. on, right? <laughs> or maybe Edward would be like, "Yeah, what?" And I, I, yeah, then we'd we'd get into a it. conversation. Get yeah. down. <laughs> Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> We're all trying to go after Edward. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah he can't yeah. read Bella's mind. That's true. Does that mean that then that means that all of us as humans have a latent power uh -huh. that will activate if we become a vampire? Correct. Yes. Uh, that's. Why am I sounds... special? Like, <laughs> 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 what am I going to discover about myself, and how will that play into? So you think if you were dating Edward Cullen in the Twilight universe, you'd go for the vampirism? You'd you'd get turned? Yeah. Well, well you got. He'd read he my doesn't mind. want he'd to. Know. He doesn't want to. He doesn't really want to. Turn doesn't you because want to he's do. He's well, yeah, that's so a religious. He's really yeah. He's Super. big. He's a huge Mormon. So yeah. like he's he doesn't want to turn you because he's, he's like he's he's full of self loathing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hates being a vampire. He's reluctant to turn you. Oh, yeah. He, yeah. Uh, Look, we wouldn't last very long, I'm thinking about now, because mm -hmm. I'd, I'd constantly be thinking weird stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I'd just be like, oh, this guy, do you reckon he'll kill me? Do you reckon he'll kill me? <laughs> Surely you'd turn it off, right? If you're dating Edward Cullen and you're like thinking either about ham or he's going to kill me, mm. he'd be like, I need to stop. <laughs> yeah. Right? You'd hope, but right. I, don't, I don't think he can help it. Can you stop thinking? I'm scared to in case I die. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reading my thoughts. I gotta stop. Oh no! <laughs> you can. Oh my God! Jackson killed yeah, right. uh, Edward. Killed Jackson. Edward's like, I, I didn't do this. I did nothing. <laughs> he, he achieved thinking. Nirvana, but <laughs> it killed him. Uh, I think uh, I get like a defense mm. mechanism so that anytime I notice him coming into the room, I just like cow, 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 cow. Cows are As delicious. My beautiful woman always thinking of cows. <laughs> my favorite thing about her. Be It'd be like an I'm coming into the room alarm. You'd walk in and just hear cow, 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 cow. But you're thinking of a cow. Now he's thinking of eating the cow yeah. or at least sucking off that cow. Yeah. And that's all he's going to be thinking of. Now he's hungry. Yeah. He loves the smell of you. So you might get got. Is that so bad? <laughs> likes my smell. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm hearing a lot about how he likes my smell. Just carry a fan around. Yeah. His old into his and look. Get like, ha, -ha. <laughs> <laughs> Sniff me, babe. <laughs> big inhales, big inhales. Well, flirting's bad, we just found out in Twilight. Oh, when yeah. <laughs> Sniff me. <laughs> Sniff me, babe. Well, Sniff me, babe. Uh yeah, because with vampires have heightened sense of smell. Yeah, werewolves have heightened sense mm, that's of smell. True. What other mythical creatures that exist? I think in? most of them get it. Most of them, like most mythical mythical creatures, tend yeah. to have a heightened sense of yeah, smell. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna be lot like stinky. And look, it's it's also rough because like you, okay, you're fucking a vampire. They're really cold to touch and whatever. Or you fuck a dog. Yeah, <laughs> which is uh, he's got a human yeah. penis. Does he? When he's a human. When he's I'm a not wolf. fucking him when he's a wolf. <laughs> Am I? That's, that's up to you. Oh, it's him. up to him, I guess. I might be. It's up to both of you. <laughs> yeah, it's a yeah, joint yeah. decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe. But what if, okay. I mean, there are humans that exist we could date. <laughs> Just putting that one out well, there. Well, if I'm living I mean, in a world where there are humans and werewolves, I'm yeah. dating the humans and werewolves. Yeah, humans have become so boring by comparison. <laughs> no, I mean, what? It's like vampires. Yeah, he fucked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if, there's a, if humans exist, I wouldn't be dead dating humans. I'd be dating humans. 
Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't know what okay. happened to us today, but nothing okay, good. Jack. Yeah. Uh, cause what? Yeah, what is like? Because if you're yeah. dating, because the dating pool, you're right. It it, it almost uh, uh, it, it's I'm gonna hit triples, but no, it doesn't. It, it sort of gets segmented into dating human, dating a werewolf, dating a vampire. Yeah. Mm. What's a vampire date look like? Because oh. what what are what are Edward Old Cullen money. and what are a lot of the Cullens and all the other vampires? What are their hobbies apart from hunting us like sport? Yeah, yeah, baseball, running real fast. Uh-huh. Can't, I can't I can't do that. No, they they hold you. Oh, you're, cool! You're I get like to backpack. be held like a baby. Yeah, <laughs> wind okay, You seem to be all for this. <laughs> Have you ever been hooning? <laughs> 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 okay. Fair enough. Fair call. Have okay. we been hooning? Yeah. No. If cops are listening, no. If the police are yeah, not listening, you can't drive. Maybe once uh, or twice. You, you can't try. I've, I've been in cars that are I've hooning. not done the hooning. Yeah. yeah. I just happened to get into a boy's car and the boy was a hoon and we went hooning. <laughs> okay. So you think the exact same thrill of that if someone was holding you either uh, like fireman style or like <laughs> cradling fireman you. Fireman style? I'd be just like... <laughs> yeah. On his back. Yeah. Do you? Yeah. yeah. So okay. they're vampires. Aren't they very hard? Yeah. Like yeah. Oh, yeah. When they Bubble. get died, they crumble. Like when, when they, they get, get died. died. When they get died. What has happened? Okay. Now? So basically, what happened is in the green room, we're like three, two, one, and then we all banged our heads together. We're like, <laughs> we're, ready, we're, we're ready to podcast. Yeah, and then neither us, n- neither of four of us. <laughs> <laughs> We're falling apart at the seams here, guys. Neither of us. We're an internationally successful podcast. Yeah, Do you yeah, think if the, you were dating a vampire or werewolf where they could, they get such an enhanced sense of smell, you would try to be clean or you would give up being clean? I think I'd give up being clean because I think they might like that. Well, yeah, exactly. The stinkier, the better. Yeah. Because they might be like, give give me that bit of sniff, and they're like inhaling my scent. Yeah, yeah. I love it. <laughs> give they're me. like Napoleon and these letters to his oh, yeah. wife. Don't how he's like, for a week. never bathe for a week, babe. Yeah. I wanna, I wanna get in there. When you were in the, your hypothetical, where your partner said, give me that bit of sniff. Yeah. Where, where were you? <laughs> <laughs> and what, and yeah. what were you doing? Like, what was uh, the scenario you were about? Okay. Well, so I was in the woods, um, <laughs> by a lake, <laughs> and uh, I was not wearing clothes <laughs> and very much lying on my back, kind of almost like in the birthing position. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. They were aware. They were a wolf, though, and uh, mostly sniffing my toes initially, and I was... that. That's when you asked me the question. <laughs> that's so... That's not what I expected. <laughs> that was a lot. Where does that end, that <laughs> situation? I think I can guess, yeah. <laughs> Just, there's no great mystery there, really, yeah. is there? Oh. Getting slopped off by a werewolf. You're getting slopped off by a wolf. Yeah. Give us a bit of that sniff. Hey, give babe. us a bit of that sniff. But I imagine w- the wolf saying it out of its wolf. Give me a bit of that sniff. Give me a bit of that sniff. Give me that wolf lips. Yeah, Ooh, foul. Yeah. <laughs> uh, another thing about dating the werewolves as well is because in that universe they all imprint on someone. Yeah. Uh, what, yeah. If, what if it's not you? What if it is you? Yeah, it's both bad. Like if mm. it's not you, you're yeah. like, cool, they're going to leave me one day for an egg in a girl's womb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Or then the, uh, yeah. they're like, they've imprinted on me. You're like, I, I, am I stuck? Yeah, yeah. Like I'm not yeah. so into this, but... There is a weird thing to be like, you know, oh, how did you meet the, the, the I guess, the man who is maybe, what, 20-something years older than you currently are? Yeah. Like, well, funny story. <laughs> he was trying to date my mother. Yeah, but... And, like, really went for it. But turns out he just loved the air. You'll laugh. You'll laugh at You'll this. La- it's very <laughs> funny. Silly. It's so silly. silly. You'll think he actually right. loved uh, her her eggs and uh, I guess dad's sperm. He, that, yeah. the, when those connected, that was that's he what was he like, really was waiting. That's what I was after. Yeah. That's what I was yeah. after. That's cool that Jacob was into Edward's calm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is cool. Yeah. But he hated Edward. Yeah. 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 Complicated. Well, I think yeah. there was a lot of feelings there that he didn't yeah. quite know. Yeah, fair enough. I love this He's man's young. balls. I don't know. <laughs> this man's rest. Yeah. Of his body. <laughs> I wanna, I wanna date Bella, and I wanna date Edward. I don't understand. Wait, well, well, you probably just wanna. Bella, I love you, but I love this kind of bit of your yeah. middle kind of. Yeah. That's my favorite bit of you for some reason. Well, you know <laughs> what, Bella? I would argue that I really love your wound. <laughs> it's not my favorite bit about you. Yeah, just that's a compliment. Yeah, yeah. I'm normal. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a normal I, uh, guy. I'm Jacob, and I'm normal. <laughs> I'm a normal guy. I'm yeah. That's I'm me. in love with your wound, babe. So good. Yeah. Give me a bit well, of that. Give me a bit of that. Yeah. Well, I do have an answer about the werewolf dating. 
fading imprint mm. uh-huh. debacle. Uh-huh. It does happen in Twilight. We don't see it in... And yeah, I'm a Twilight guy. I've, I know. I've decided, I had I've, decided, like I'm... I've decided right here, right yeah. now, because I remember this bit of information that, yeah, I'm rebranding as a Twilight guy. <laughs> mm-hmm. So there is... It doesn't happen with Jacob, obviously, but in Twilight, there is, like, werewolves that imprint on people, and yep. then the person's like... Nah. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna date you. Yeah. So then they just become like almost like a guardian angel. So they get incelled. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which is fucked. Generate your own incel. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, so if someone, if I just hang around werewolves for long yeah. enough, yeah. one of them imprints on me, and I'm like, yeah. yeah. I get my own guy. You get yeah, your you own guy. You get your you get own, a full on guy. You get your own incel following around being yeah. like, I'll die for you, babe, but you don't have to touch me or whatever. It's good. It's awesome. Cool. I don't want it. I'm, I'm going online. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't that then fuck up both your dating scene? Because, well, one, he's not dating anyone yeah. because he's mm-hmm. like, well, I've already imprinted on on you. And I guess it's hard to date when you have a... you got to find a very yeah, open well, guy where you're like, hey, babe, like I'm really into you. This is... An incel, he's mine. <laughs> <laughs> he can sometimes turn into a wolf. It's yeah, good. You sort like, of like a butler that wants to fuck me. Yeah, you could move into a pet. Yeah, yeah, you could go into any dangerous situation. You'd be like, "Babe, we got a guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. got a guy. We got a dog for us." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's like a. I guess the 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 fear would be that you then had a baby and. I, yeah, 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 yeah. Then he yeah, left, and you yeah, lose yeah. not only your bodyguard but also your butler. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then <laughs> yeah, you, that's the thing I'm concerned yeah. about. And and then you have a son-in-law that tried to fuck you once. Yeah, that that's is upsetting. Cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool. This is maybe conceited of me, but I think if I did have a butler, they would want to fuck me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay. I think a butler would be the like. The opposite. <laughs> just they would not want to fuck me. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, they would learn. Why not? I think because they would see how you live. They do see how much. That's fair. That's fair enough. Yeah. You probably want to fuck your bot, Law. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you're. Th- you're getting confused. I'm getting mixed up. I'm L- getting all mixed up. Yeah. Low job, sir. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. No, why not? The afternoon's open. Let's go for it. <laughs> Thank you, Eugene. <laughs> of course. Uh, <laughs> Eugene's like 65 and very gaunt and everyone's Yeah. 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 So, yeah, yeah. so what, what is a, a a date look like to uh, say say a uh, hunky vampire yeah. mm-hmm. who is like what 300 years old? Is like, Cass, I give you a bit of sniff from across the room. Yeah. Very sexy. Let's go on Ooh, a date. And you're like, yep, cool. What date are we going on? Um, I really hope for, for a, a bareback hoon. Okay. <laughs> so I was like, all right. Let me latch on. One. Take me on a... Right, so date <laughs> one, he's piggybacking you. You run up a tree. I'm yeah. hooning. I'm hooning. How do you, can, yeah. can we, can we roleplay that? Can you try and, like, how would you say I would like a bareback hoon? <laughs> how do you approach that subject with yeah, your yeah. vampire yeah, yeah. power mm. more? I'd be like, so I heard that you can run pretty fast. Yes. Can you, like, prove it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. How? That, like, how do you run fast? Like pretty fast. Nagging seems to be your approach. I'm just, very, I'm just very, I'm superhuman. I can just run yeah. at incredible so, speeds. Well, okay, then he's like, okay. And then he runs. So, so he just quickly runs from <laughs> here to over, like, over there, like, 100 meters. Yeah. And then he waves at you. He's like, see, that was pretty fast, yeah? Wow, I wish I could do that. Well, you're not somehow. a vampire, and yeah. I will never turn you. <laughs> <that> was, yeah. <laughs> oh no, you might think I'm trying to. No, I'll be like, can you carry me? Where to? Okay, where you want to go? Around fast. Like, can you take me up a tree? <laughs> okay. One of the other girls at school had her boyfriend take her up a tree, <laughs> <laughs> and right. it sounds sick. How you? How do you want to be carried? Or like, are you going to piggyback, or are you? Like, yeah. What does Edward say in the movie slash book? It says, "Hold on, spider, spider monkey." monkey. Mm. That's awesome. Yeah. That yeah. <laughs> I'd be worried that because he was going so fast, I'd fall off the back of him. <laughs> yeah. So I'd go frontsies. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, like a papoose. Yeah, papoose. Oh, like, like papoose, but you're you're facing him. <laughs> Your <laughs> legs. Are still- you go behind him, <laughs> like like you're you're like, so you're a cool teacher and he's a chair. Yeah, <laughs> that's because so cool. if it's if you go up too high, <laughs> you can't see. No, my head's thigh. on his shoulder. Oh, okay. Okay, 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 okay. I'm looking at the world. But you're kind of moving like this. Yeah. <laughs> That's so that, yeah, funny. that's what I want. <laughs> okay. That's All right. So good. That's okay. Say so that goes well. That's date one. Yep. Okay. All right. Now now date two. Okay, so he's hundred years old, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. I'd be like, cook me your favorite meal from history. I don't eat. I haven't eaten in sixty years. Human blood's it just my favorite feels meal. It's like you don't yeah. care about I don't meat. remember how to cook. I, I can look it up. Yeah. We'll make we'll try and make Italian food, I think. Why am I dating someone who doesn't like me? Because <laughs> your name's Cass, and that's a town. Cass- yeah. Casanova. Cass- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why, um, 
He likes you. Yeah, you he's smell just a real freak. good. <laughs> Why isn't he nice to me? Wow, that's Why doesn't the main, he want to take me on that, a nice date? That's the big problem. That is the big there problem. That's the whole thing because he wants to eat me. Yeah, exactly. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Okay. 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 I would say that's pretty bad. Now we'll we'll, we'll just shift out. So dating uh, a werewolf. Mm. Oh, okay. really likes me. <laughs> really likes me. Stinks like dog. Yeah. <laughs> really Gross. likes me. Stinks like dog. Uh, okay. What's the first day for a werewolf looking like? Dog food. Meet um, the family. So, so I'm like, Is it f- fuck on, full on, just first date. Meet the family. Yeah, because you're gonna be, you're gonna be sniffed uh, by the pack or whatever. Uh, surely. I don't want to be sniffed by a bunch of wolves. Okay. Here's. Can I suggest the first date? Yes, uh-huh. please. Uh-huh. Babe, I heard you can run really fast. <laughs> <laughs> Just buy a motorbike, dude. <laughs> and turn into a wolf. <laughs> I've heard that. Like, my friend, she knew a wolf and yeah. you could I, like, and what if I was I on a wolf? and we went through a run? Yeah. How are you getting on the wolf? On the back or underneath in the same... <laughs> 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 okay, I'm, I'm like front style, like one of those little harnesses that goes yep. around the f- dog's chest. Yep. So when they run forward, they can't. You know when you yeah, yeah, yeah. walk in a dog and then the dog jumps up and the dog just floats for a bit like this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep, 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 yeah. Yep, one yep. of those. That's me. <laughs> so you're like. Well, I'm, I'm always a harness on. <laughs> yeah. Cut okay. some serious shapes here today. <laughs> it's been a very physical episode. <laughs> okay, yeah, on the scale of bad to very bad, where do we think this falls? It's, it's very bad. It's yeah. very bad. I mean, people very died in douches one, but somehow this seems worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, we're straddling a wolf. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good. I think I just need to buy a motorbike. Yeah, I think you I think just, you just need, need to go to fast. Yeah. 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 On a roller coaster, yeah. that'll do you. Yeah. Roller coaster, yeah, they're good. Um, <laughs> maybe stick your head out of a car. <laughs> hoon, find a hoon friend. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, I think what, what I'm missing in my life is going hooning. I just don't want to do it. It's so dangerous. Yeah, of course. I'm, it's, it was so upsetting how fun it was. <laughs> I remember being there being like, oh, no. <laughs> That's the ultimate hoon dilemma. Tell me got butterflies. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I can't know that. Yeah, that's that's yeah. terrible to learn. Yeah. 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 Well, in a very similar vein of, of the, I guess, with the imprinting, mm-hmm. I think, uh, for, yes. for me, horrible segue, a horrible place to date or a horrible world to date. Yeah, is Avatar, but the blue cat fuckers. Okay, Not James the, Cameron's. Yeah, Avatar. yeah, yeah, the good one. Okay. Uh, <coughs> To date in 2009's Avatar. Yes. Why is it bad? Well, first off, an Avatar. Uh, yeah, let's say yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Avatar or uh, look, hey, for the Avatar fans at home, do you mean Avatar is in an Avatar? Avatar is in a Navi. Well, I was yeah. thinking of Avatar as an Avatar dating a Navi. But oh, okay. Oh. Yes. Like Jake Sully in Natiri. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. A couple the plot of problems. Of the movie. Mm. The movie. The movie. So a couple of problems with, I guess, da- dating Navi. Yeah. yeah. Is that it seems that a lot of when you're dating, there's no real. Dating, it's your bonded for life. Yes. Yeah. And also, just to interrupt before that, yeah. Jackson, worst thing about Navi's? No ass. Mm. <laughs> awesome thighs, true. though, so I've come around. <laughs> <laughs> Watching a Navi crush a watermelon with their thighs, are you kidding me? <laughs> Damn. You could learn to do that. Well, I don't want to watch a Navi do yeah, it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Tall. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Anyway. Right. So, yeah, so they, they uh, uh, bond for life. Often it's like, how do you know that you know, you've met the one? Is yeah. They try to kill you. Yeah, okay. Like, when you meet someone that you like, you instantly get like a murder lust. Yeah. And then if Fair. you don't kill each other or one of you kills the other, you then are bonded for life. And then... I don't even know if you've seen uh, Avatar. Yeah. Oh, familiar yeah. with the oh, work. Oh, I've yeah. seen it. Classic. I've seen it. Work. But the way you end up bonding is you both get your little hair dicks. Yeah. Yep. And then you just jam them into each other. And you might be like, that's beautiful. Sounds it's nice. It's great. Yeah. But the thing is, I've also seen you do that to a horse mm. moments ago. And I yeah. don't know if you've cleaned that recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've to everything. Uh, yeah, everything. A tree, everything. a bird, a yeah. bigger bird. What do you reckon's got the dirtiest each other? hair dick? You. <laughs> <laughs> Very possible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's when it peels Washing? back. I, I don't know. They don't. Yeah, you they don't dunk it in a stream. Or yes, you could. That's see, worst <laughs> one. <laughs> you, just, yeah, you just shake it out. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, they don't. Flop it against yeah. a tree a couple times. I will say that the one thing with it that is like it's it's hair and it's not wet. Yeah. Yeah. As if it was like a wet tube. <laughs> yeah. That's bad. Well, the thing is though, it peels back. 
Yeah, there's a moistness yeah, there's, inside. There's definitely yeah. a moistness with like tentacles all moving, right? Uh, mm. yeah. So it peels back like a hair foreskin. Oh, and then oh, and no. then we see these like little little tentacles that like you know yeah. intertwine with things. Yeah, yeah. If I've just seen you do that to like our I don't know the mule over there, yeah. and then I'm like, and then he's gonna put it on into me. That's what would you What would you have him do? What would you have him wash do? it at least? Clean it? How do you do that? I don't know. Pull the hair back. <laughs> clean yeah, it. But it would. You oh, you ha- suck it. <laughs> <laughs> You, so you watch your man fuck a horse, suck his own dick, then fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome first date. <laughs> first date sucks. <laughs> How's your first date? Yeah, he rode up on a horse, sucked off the horse. <laughs> sucked no. He said, sorry, my dick's dirty now. <laughs> sucked himself off. <laughs> and he sucked me off. Sorry, yeah. babe. Might need to say that. Whoa. <laughs> 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 Who is this guy? And then, and I, t- t- I, they don't have taps. They don't have taps. That's so why you're washing taps. this stream. In the same stream. stream. Yeah. The horses. <laughs> Everyone's also, washing it in the, the same ho- stream. So the horses aren't washing theirs. Maybe it's self cleaning. Maybe they do because, like, I guess they'll be like, you know how oh. you know a cat and will lick itself. Yeah. Accent's that. right. It might be self cleaning. It's self cleaning. It it's not such a big deal. Yeah. Dope. Do you know what the self cleaning means? What? what? So it, stuff has to come out of it. Uh, <laughs> He's still gonna have to deal with the stuff. So is it like, say, when a, when a mosquito bites you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The first thing it does is it blows its nose. <laughs> yeah. Uh, same thing. <laughs> so he's just like, say, for example, I'm like, there's my beautiful uh, boyfriend. Yeah. And he comes in and he plugs into that horse. He's yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> blows into that horse. No, but I'm like, well, at least it's clean. For me. <laughs> but then the horse would be blowing into him. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> They're both self cleaning. It's. <laughs> what are they blowing into each other? Because then he blows horse goop into you. It, yeah, it's not even a swap. They collide in the middle. And then I get that. Yeah. And then again, I guess I'm yeah, but also... Then you'd into him. You're not yeah. bonding with horses? But then again, I'm also going up to get... Yeah, I'm also bonding with the horse. Yeah. It is awesome. This makes sense because you know how like some of the creatures in Avatar, they yeah. have two things that you can plug yeah. into. So I guess they like... Um, you plug into yourself? I guess you could plug into like one side of the horse thing and the other guy plugs into the other side Oh, and side you fuck through thing. the horse. You fuck through the horse. <laughs> It's also that Avatar, the highest grossing film in cinematic history, yeah. is mostly about docking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so imagine, so for example, yeah. in, for, for uh, example, it will take uh, Cass's wonderful hooning experience. Okay, sure. Uh, where I'm going to go on a lovely ride date with uh, the, the one of the hottest Navi out. Okay. They're like, come on, uh, this is one of the fastest uh, six-legged horses you ever did know. And I'm like, yeah. sweet. He's like, get on, babe. Yeah. He's already hunked in. Yeah. I can't hunk into him. So then i got to hunk into the horse. Yeah. yeah. And we go for a beautiful ride. You talk. Is, sorry, go on. The, all the horses have two hunks? Yeah. yeah. Two hunks. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't people have two hunks? We don't know. <laughs> Maybe they got a secret separate hunk we don't see. Maybe. Oh, Maybe we've, there's always been some confusion about uh-huh. the Navi genital situation. So maybe you got a hair hunk and a crotch hunk. And then to hunk together. So you, <laughs> you could do yourself. You can self hunk. <laughs> you can hunk. Or you could yourself. kind of like again. Hunk 69? Yeah. I'm get, you, could, you could ride a, a horse like horizontal. <laughs> 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 Riding a horse by both of you wrapping your legs around the horse's neck, honked in. People be all the other Navi being like, "That's that's, that's a wrong way to. That's really not how you ride that's on a love, horse." Love, look at them on their first date, having the time of their life. This is I, beautiful. I would not have ridden the horse beautiful. that way, but okay. Even if we peel it back. Yeah. And you're riding a horse together. Yeah. Your first date is you both fucking a horse. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One hour of a first It'll date. bond you. It'll yeah. bond you. Well, yeah. And we're bonded for life, except for, I guess, this horse. I mean, have we fucked that horse up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you also, like, mind meld or whatever. So yeah. I guess you All three of us are having a first date. <laughs> and we get up the horse again, the big bird. The horse. The three of us are, like, us two and the bird are having a lovely date. Her horse looks up and is like, motherfuckers. <laughs> it's so <laughs> deep. <laughs> they abandoned the third wheel for that third wheel. Do you think in Avatar they just, like, were just honking shit together to see what happens? Like, oh, making a horse oh, and a I bird might yeah. melt. I, yeah, would you honk the horse <laughs> and the bird? Yeah. yeah. See what of course the horse I the would. Do reckon they would have tried? Yeah. yeah. It's, see what they think about what's going on in each if other. If we put you on <laughs> uh, Pandora, the yeah. Avatar mm-hmm. planet, sure. and gave you an Avatar body, you'd be dead in 15 I'd be minutes. Dead <laughs> or banned. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you'd see, like, yeah, hunked into some Avatar bear as the bear gallops over, you dead dragon with your fucking head, <laughs> slamming into What did he rocks. do? <laughs> <laughs> or you see me disappear into the woods, and then you see one of those birds flying out, and my hair honk is in the bird. 
my dick honkies in a horse. They're just torn in half. They're like, how do, you co- how do you coordinate that? Well, he clearly made some kind of mistake. The worst thing about torn in half. I would say the worst thing about him is that it's, it's almost genius yeah. what he had to do. <laughs> it's a kind of dark intelligence to organizing that. You just see the two bits flying off. You're like, we lost a great mind today. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We Funny, lost that yeah. great mind 20 years ago <laughs> when we didn't support him. If only he'd applied it to anything else, you know, in yeah. his innovator. life. An innovator. But you're right. Aside yeah. from all the honking. Yeah. The fact that you're basically married from your first date, yeah, a bummer. And and that's, that's it. and also have to try and kill each other initially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is a hassle. Yes. You know what? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so you married for the first date, bummer. Yep. yep. But you are in a world where you're hunking everything. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't matter that you married on your first date. Okay. You're only well, monogamous. To a Navi. Yeah. To hunk the rest of the planet. <laughs> That's right. true. And I can hunk the big tree to think of other people. Can I, if I say, okay, say we hunked. Okay. Yep. yep. But then I hunked JD. You piece of shit. <laughs> is that a crime? I'm chill with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is yeah. that a crime? You jealous? <laughs> A little, I mean, I, I, mean, I think you can hook whoever you like. <laughs> so, like, are you yeah, riding JD somewhere? Or? Well, but then also, yeah, like, JD it... just had to share an idea. <laughs> <laughs> what was the vibe of the hunk? Well, yeah, we're sharing an idea. We were just sitting by a tree, and I was like, hey, dude, I got this, I'm trying, I got this concept, but I can't articulate it. Can I, mean, I just, and then, yeah, yeah, a cheeky way to flirt, though. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm thinking of something, but I can't tell you. Yeah, can like, I? Just... Oh, yeah, it's all right. Oh, the ham bone thing. <laughs> what is that, though? Yeah, yeah what the fuck? I can't, I can't quite picture it in my head. Uh, <laughs> well, if anybody, oh, wow. anybody, I mean, we could it. always honk. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, that would work. It'd be if fine. Wanna, like we don't, we literally don't have to. Like I don't even. It's care. like not a big deal for you. But my partner's cool. actually fine with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, isn't it also a thing that like you could just do it and then you find out that you're not like it's pretty much it's also you get married straight away or yeah. you're like oh, okay I'm not into this person and yeah. then you've just you honked yeah. for no reason like well, well, so on that honk check. Yeah, like, it's a vibe in check. In a way, but it just, it just seems that you're locked in if you find well, the right well, person. Well, actually, maybe, hmm, because with say the bird, mm. yeah. right, Jake tries to honk into initial, or does succeed because they're like, and be careful because they they do this for life. Yeah, but then he does abandon that bird and for a bigger, sexier bird. Yeah, that's true. Right, one of those words I'd use <laughs> <laughs> for birds, it was probably sexier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me. Yeah. So you, I reckon you can hook whoever. I think level. you could. I think, and especially if, like, you know, well, partners are right with it. Yeah, exactly. Then yeah. I'm fine. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Hunk away. Like hunk away. To each other. Well, you know, you know like you're. Three, four, yeah. Four. yeah. Just be honked yeah. into everything yeah. all the, the time. The hardest part about this is to think that I would want <laughs> your horrible <laughs> hair near mine. I got such good ideas. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. You it think was, you're going to get sick? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, actually. Do you ma- imagine the kind of... I reckon I would somehow manage to get hey. food poisoning <laughs> from connecting hair with you. Yeah, imagine the HTDs that you would get from all manners <laughs> yeah. of animals. Yeah. Because also you're right, because it's not just like... Like, cause obviously, yeah, you're right. You honk into a horse. You don't know how clean the horse is honking you to. You don't know how many people have honked into that horse. Yeah. But also, psych- you're honking whether that horse is honked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Honked. When you honk with a horse, you're honking with every horse that horse has ever honked with. <laughs> <laughs> the advertising campaigns to get you to stop fucking animals on Pandora rocks. Yeah, I like that that one's not, not like pick a horse and stick with it. It's like, what are you doing? <laughs> stop fucking horses. But also... Do you reckon you could transmit? Say, I I got a lot of bad ideas. Yeah. What? Okay. So maybe I, if I if I hooked into you, could I leave bad ideas in your head? Are there? Yes. Or did we share ideas and I accidentally put? Well, I fix your bad ideas with my good ideas. <laughs> yeah, like a weird poison. amalgamation. A <laughs> good ideas. <laughs> It'd be like an a weird, yeah, an yeah. amalgamation. Yes. We'd have medium ideas to well, get. Okay. Be tainted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It'd be like, like hey, ideas. I see you. You're like, I see you I see. too. <laughs> then it's all bad. Would it be like? That thing where every time you are remembering something, you're remembering your last memory of it. Yeah. Like every time you think of something, you're thinking about it with someone else's think in it. <laughs> no. Dangerous line of thought. <laughs> yes. Stink up my think in it. Mm. Yeah, you're thinking someone else's think. Are you yeah. going to be sitting there, JD, after we honked by the tree, and you're yeah. going to be like, I'm still thinking about that ham, and yeah. I don't want to be. Yeah. yeah. I don't in you now. I don't know if you can control what you let... Send across. Yeah, what someone else can think. You let Dude. it in. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to hold back. <laughs> <laughs> I accidentally just downloaded into my brain the, the, the most vast collection 
collection of gapes anyone has ever come across. You in and just out one of your ears, your brain goes. <laughs> slops out the other side. Well, it, God, um, he jumped. <laughs> <laughs> Sad. Yeah. So... Avatar? Yes, I yeah. So, uh, I'm bad. Uh, very, very bad. Very bad. Very bad. Very bad. Very bad. Now, Jackson, and it pains me to say this, but take us home. Well, I've been thinking about the porno universe. <laughs> Wrong with that? I've been thinking about arriving at the date and being like, I'm sore because I just took the bang bus to get here. <laughs> 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 Being like, would you like some wine? I'll go suck off the waiter. Yeah. <laughs> Get that out. <laughs> right, I'm just going to cook a book of fucking fake taxi. I'll be there soon. Yeah, 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 yeah. I gave the driver a rim job. Obviously, I got to rim the driver, but yeah, I, yeah. so I will be late. So let's let's actually yeah, call yeah. that. Instead of half an hour, it's going to take me an hour to get there because I'm going to mm. fuck the taxi driver. Yeah. Mm. Everything's taking you longer. Yeah. yeah. The universe is double time uh, or yeah. half time. Yeah. When, yeah. when are you having dinner, right? So I, I'm at home. Mm. Yep. Say so we planned a date at yeah. 6 p.m. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I'm at home. Say, say I say we're all living in a house together. Yeah. Yeah. Say I gotta fuck that's each of you before. Well, yeah. I get on the date. Yeah. Yep. Well, like it, that, you can kind of get that's like a, almost a one and done. Situation. Okay. So that's I get one and done. I get gang banged. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Fabulous. We move in day one. We're like, oh, it's our first day moving in. We all fuck. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. I'm like, great. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, to oh, I gotta. Oh no, my housemate situation so yeah. complicated. Better yeah. fuck them all. Yeah. yeah. Can you help me with this bed. Oh, it fell down, and I'm not wearing pants. Yeah. And it would be so tight. Like, do you imagine you? You drop something right yeah. in the house. Ah, uh, yeah. And you're like, I just know. <laughs> yeah. yeah this I bend down leading, to pick that up. Leading the fucking. I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm, we're gonna fuck. So yeah. I'll leave it on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I got things to. I'm do. in a hurry to get to my date. I yeah. think it's really dangerous dinner. <laughs> oh what? no. Are you bending into an oven? Oh no. I'm getting you stuck in that oven. Pizza. Yeah, you oh no. <laughs> How are you eating? I just fridge is dangerous. Can get stuck. Doing ovens. Like, although that would be. Well, the vibe of that is weird, but yeah. it would happen. Putting my head in an oven, <laughs> Sylvia Plath style. Yeah. <laughs> Getting stuck and then... What are you doing? Um, yeah, can bro. you just make sure you turn off the gas? <laughs> That's a dark, complicated joke. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, but you're right. I don't know because I was like, well, I guess I could eat a fruit. No, that's something you can do. I'll go for the banana, guaranteed. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> I'm sucking a dick. Exactly. <laughs> go for the banana, yeah. and I'll be like, I should shut my eyes and just put whatever comes in my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sucking a dick. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Any kind well, of someone starts accusing you of stealing that apple. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Let me suck your dick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you're right. Any kind of food delivery person, yeah. I'm fucking. Oh, yeah. You know what? Yeah. Yeah. You might be able to get your fill of sweets if you eat them off of someone. Oh, okay, that's true. Yeah. You can eat things off of a person, and that way you'd actually eat, because all these other ways but that you don't eat. If I say douche is lying in the lounge room yep. covered there in cream, yep. okay? Yep. You guys are watching the game or yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is the game. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. If I come in and, and I'm like, well, I'm just going to grab a quick snack before I go yeah. on my date, I'm sucking him off. It's well, like, yeah. <laughs> no avoiding it. You, Well, for example, uh, I think you could get stuff done if... Say you were the partner of someone that was getting fucked sneakily. Oh, okay. Obviously, oh, yeah. while you were getting shit done. Yeah. You're making a like a like a pizza. You're yeah. doing yeah, whatever that's it is. True. I gotta get cocked to yeah, eat. Oh, ah, okay. Cockhold meal break. Oh, we all live together. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, hey, so you're here, you're Jackson's date. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just playing Twister in the lounge room with Jackson prepares oh, okay. dinner. <laughs> this is the only way I can eat. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be good. We'd, we'd have to have like a chore rotation. So it'd like it's a, like everyone gets a day of cock. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. That's yeah. your rest. <laughs> that's your day of rest. <laughs> and on the the sixth day, God got cocked. <laughs> That's what the Bible says in the porno universe. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Then okay, so I've finally eaten. Yeah. Okay. Whilst you fucked my date in the other room. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then we go in the. I feel like I'm gonna get cock tapes tonight. <laughs> 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 Why the fuck the are you cucking? Because well, now I'm going places with my date. That seems dangerous, yeah. right? Mm, yeah. Where are you going? <sighs> if it's just any date situation. Yeah. Mm. The movies. Yeah, no, that's all right. You're getting sucked off in the popcorn. Yeah. God. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not seeing the movie, though. Well, they're not. I am. <laughs> 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 but then I got to do the sucking and I missed the second half. Yeah. yeah. That's sweet. Later on, you can fill each other in on what happened. Well, yeah, then no. you can fill each other in. <laughs> well, you could be. It's just like both of you have some popcorn. Yeah. And you can both be jerking each other off. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Watch, watch the movie. The yeah. It's a great movie, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's nice. Don't talk. Shh. <laughs> this does seem like a good time for a real life segue yeah. where I, when I worked at the movie theater, mm -hmm. once walked in on uh, 
a, a group of three people yeah. where there was a uh, young woman sitting in the middle jerking off two separate <gasps> guys. That's the- awesome. Like she was skiing. Like she was skiing. <laughs> and the three people, if you were to just put them in a group, you would yeah. never have guessed they even knew each other. That's uh, so cool. So it, yeah, it really colored my life. That's I just so needed cool. to take really this. Nice. Yeah, yeah, that is. What movie? What movie? What movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you I remember? Think- Oh, man. Were they also, it, were they watching said movie? Was yeah. it a situation it was where it was like... <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Hey. What technique is one after the other? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think at the same time, feels like you're flapping your wings. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, I don't like that. Yeah. Well, yeah. Gotta do is like, yeah, come on. Side by side throwing me off my balance. Yeah. Well, you're sitting down. <laughs> okay, so. if, you were, if you were jerking off two dicks, would you jerk it off like this? <laughs> <laughs> or like this? Oh yeah, there's a chat. Let us know. Chat, let, let us know. chat. Way in. Two dicks. Have, have a go because it does shift the weight of your body. I think one at a time is the way. I, I think go. I look silly when I do it one at a time. <laughs> <laughs> you look like a fun mum. <laughs> 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 Let's get the body started. <laughs> Same time, do I still look silly? Yes. <laughs> I can't I'm, look cool whacking off. The audience me. probably didn't hear that because you didn't say it anyway. No, said the mic. I know, I know. You I look know. silly when you uh, were. Well, uh, I could do like a rhythm thing, so it's like. Oh, yeah. Those drummers who can keep 4 4 and 3 3. <laughs> He's getting into it. Yeah. <laughs> but here's the thing Am I getting the movie? Were, in this? <laughs> Are they enjoying it? No. <laughs> to answer your question, uh, yeah. I believe based on the glimpse I saw, it was pretty much the same time, so it was both. Like. Uh, Ah, yeah. rock and roll, rock and roll. Yeah, okay. yeah, proper okay, skiing. Okay. And yeah, it was like a <sighs> person probably in their 20s, someone that was probably early 40s, and mm-hmm. someone that was like also 20s but looked like totally different scenes. It was That's fucking awesome. crazy. That's great stuff. I think it was Mission Impossible 3 to answer your movie awesome. What a great film. Great yeah. movie. They were in the back oh. row, which seems subtle, except the door's next to the back <laughs> row. So not so subtle. No. First thing that, I saw. I don't think I could enjoy a movie. What? Well, okay. <laughs> I was getting whacked off or slobbed off or yeah, yeah, slopped yeah. off or yeah. socked off, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you get yeah. slobbed or socked or yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah glad to go. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's hard to enjoy a movie. Well, no, because I like I'm enjoying the movie, but differently. I, I definitely <laughs> won't come out of the movie remembering most of the yeah. movie. You know it's what like, I mean? Stop it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I want to pay attention, but also I live in the porno universe, so I, I can't stop it halfway through. Like well, I'm just gonna porno universe of the movies you're watching just Porno, <laughs> or is it like trying a, to pay attention? No, I just know. Awesome <laughs> is it like uh, the film where they're also trying to get shit done, but they are also <laughs> struggling? And I'm like one of those people who like can never pay attention to what's happening in the movies, and I'm like, who's that guy? <laughs> <laughs> babe, uh, babe, 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 look at the babe, screen. Babe, who's this guy? Are they still the cops, or <laughs> are they on the cover now? <laughs> <laughs> pay attention. <laughs> I think I think that's the murderer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Babe. Anyway. <laughs> Where, where's that guy from? <laughs> I, know I know him. I know that boy. It, can you put, just pull up IMDb? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have. Re- I turn my phone off. I can't be back. <laughs> turning back on. Can you just look at it? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I can't well, reach. My pants are on the ground. <laughs> while you're down there. Oh, oh, no, a bare ass to a cinema seat. <laughs> yeah. I actually think that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's a good. I haven't done that, <laughs> but I think that if someone did do that. It'd be, I feel like I get it. It's fucking cool. It'd be calm. If I had bare ass cheeks on a cinema seat, I would get infected ass cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon the salt from the popcorn will kill the germs, but you're coming away with salty little buns. Yeah. Salty buns. See, that's cool. You, you, yeah. you got some popcorn in your nose. Yeah. Wait, okay, okay. So bare ass in a cinema seat. What did you think about the idea of the, the old classic? Again, something I've never done and I don't think would ever work in real life. But yes. I, Seem like you would probably be into the idea of cutting a hole in the bottom of a popcorn dick in. I would be scared of the hot butter. <laughs> There's no. There's no. Okay, so popcorn doesn't have like you eat pop. You've eaten popcorn with us. You know what popcorn is, Jackson. <laughs> Jackson, you're, you eat popcorn. <laughs> popcorn. <laughs> it's hot. When, when you're eating popcorn. It's not, okay, it's hot. No, no. But there's not a hot liquid on it. <laughs> No. But uh, in the porn universe, you'd want some kind of lubricant, yeah? Well, I hope it would not be hot. <laughs> warmish butter. <laughs> uh, no, I think it's, it's a good way to wreck popcorn, but a great way to get jerked off. So, so then, yeah, that's so different from going bare ass to the chair. Well, yeah, it is, because the chair's had multiple bare asses in it previously. Yeah. No one else is fucking the uh, popcorn. I guess it is. I mean, I, sorry. Unless. I, sh- I should have made it clear. I meant in real life. Oh, I see. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Um, <laughs> I, think so I don't get the movie. Yeah. yeah. 
Then we take the bang bus or the fake taxi home. Yep. Uh, yeah. At home. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck all you. Yeah. yeah. I'm in bed by like 1 a.m., uh, 2 a.m. Like, every oh, I, night. I, I can't be bothered going home. I'm just going to like book into this like uh, fake hostel. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, uh, now I'm stuck between the beds. And at no point can you be like, oh, I've just had a really hard day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. I got to come in. You if I want to get to sleep. Harder and then. Yes, let's try uh, Let's try and imagine. I've, I've left my date. We've yep. slobbed each other off at the yeah, top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to get. You're all in the lounge room. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get past you. <laughs> the bed. Good luck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Your best bet is if we're already yeah. currently fucking. The only way you're safe is if we're all, like, you've gone out with like, huh, what are we going to do tonight? <laughs> Jackson's on his date. Then you fuck. Yeah. And I get cucked. We haven't had a date in ages. And I get to go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah again, cucking is the only way out. <laughs> cucking is the yeah. only yeah. way you can kind of like, get anything done. Yeah. Not even like, be like, oh, I'm just going to go visit my stepmom on the weekend. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, i got to go take my car to the mechanics. Oh, no, 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 no. Basic no. services have become a nightmare. Oh, I just yeah. have to have a meeting with my university teacher. No, 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 no. You have no, to no. be on your best behavior. Imagine yeah. like a parking ticket. Oh, no, uh, no, no. no. No, 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 no. Hey, your boss needs to have a chat with you. Oh. <laughs> no. Oh, and if you're too good at your job, your boss needs to have a chat with oh, you. Oh yeah, 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 absolutely. I the the working week has expanded <laughs> yeah. monumentally. Well, it's actually a good oh, way all to. All money's going to Gatorade. Yeah, yeah. 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 all your money's going to Gatorade. Every muscle you have that is used for pleasure aches. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also, I think it's really good that we started this episode with the horror universe where yeah. fucking's bad, and that's why dating's bad. Yeah. Porno universe where the fucking never stops. So the fucking's bad. <laughs> so the dating's bad. That's true. Yeah, and uh, I think Jackson. Yeah, you might have picked the worst one. I think I might want something that was awesome in this world, <laughs> yeah. which is fucking. Too much we of a good thing. Do all of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now I've left a bad taste in my mouth. Yeah. I'd rather honk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd rather honk too. I Although think. the phrase "my first date was watching my partner suck off a horse, <laughs> suck their own dick, and then suck me off," also not pretty powerful. Great. Yeah, yeah. Man, we've I got. Think I want that on my tombstone. Yeah. 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 Old douche, R.I.P. Died doing whatever. Yeah. yeah. Once yeah. saw a man suck off a horse, <laughs> suck himself <laughs> off, <laughs> and then suck him off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> May he rest in peace. Yeah, but then we've also got like you know every person who's trying to date us giving us big sniffs. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah that's and we got basically being murdered. Oh, yeah, getting even thinking of a titty. <laughs> yeah, I sucks. This whole thing sucks. Dying is rough. Yeah, yeah dying is bad. Yes. Dying is v- famously bad. Yeah, dating in real life is yeah. probably the best way to do it. Which yeah. is good that we don't live in the movies. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, say that every day. Yeah. Yeah. I, guess, I guess the best way is to stay pure and virginal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Will yeah. this no. work for the porno unit? I don't no, know. dude. Yeah, sucks. <laughs> that's gonna you have no. Fire. You have yeah. no reprieve. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you got to get cocked. Yeah, cucking reprieve. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, that's sick. <laughs> and on that note, I've been Joel. I've been Jackson. I've also been Joel. And I've been Cass. And we have been plumbing the Death Star, and this has been an exceptional episode. And <laughs> you are welcome. Mm. And thank you so much for having us, stupid old pod fest. Keep watching, everyone. Woo! Oh my goodness, can you believe it? What an exciting time to be alive. One more time for Plum and the Death Star. Yes, and what an exciting time to be the word cuck. Mm. Which... Or yeah. slobbin. <laughs> or slobbin. Yes. Um, um, both, you know, both both powerful anybody words. Wants Would to Would anybody like in. to, you know, do, do, you, do you feel Have like... Have a debrief? A yeah, little sure, debrief? sure, 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 sure. Yeah. yeah. yeah we're told one person, but... No, we, we, got, oh, we, have we only have one. One, one, one microphone here that will distribute yeah, yeah, equally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, there was quite a bit of interaction on the, on the, on the chat lines with mm-hmm. people... Um, you know, talking about the simultaneous yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, whacking yeah. off people in the, in, yeah, in the cinema. The two techniques that I like to call uh, the Australian crawl <laughs> or yes. the butterfly, basically. Yep. Yeah. And, um, you know, it seemed to be pretty evenly divided. Mm. I, I, imagine. Could be a... I feel like I was spending the whole time up there thinking, is there a third option we're not mm. considering, but I couldn't come mm. up with anything. Well, the fly. third option was the Joel Zammett, which That's was true. different <laughs> rhythms. <laughs> the drums. I, I was experimental. I think the, 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 alter- the third option is, is two hands on one. Oh, oh yeah. You know, try and get them up to a good speed. Oh, like, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's like, 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 yeah. like spinning, yeah, like spinning 
flames, flames, or I was going to say rolling a hoop down a street with a stick. <laughs> but, mm. but you know, similar similar thing, you yeah, know, yeah, and, yeah, and try and get them enough to to, to, to then buy yeah, you, yeah. you know, a few good seconds on the on yeah. the other. Yeah, yeah. So joint edging. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, you want to get them close to against the, time. Yeah. yeah. I'm just, I'm just, congratulating them. Oh, that's cool. oh the congratulations. <laughs> No, that's a good one. Yeah. I should have stopped and offered insight. If only I had this knowledge when I witnessed it in real mm. life. I, I like to think that you could also get the foot going, maybe just like <laughs> just stomping on a ball bag. I think that's probably the Kinda only. Kind of like you playing the drums. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> that. The yeah. song ends calm. <laughs> mm. It's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. I, I don't think anyone. I, I can't. I find it hard to believe that anybody has really done the idea with the popcorn container and the hole. Yeah. Because, uh, well, at least in my mind, I'm picturing it still full of popcorn. Yes, yeah. But maybe absolutely. that's maybe that's where that's maybe that's my problem, and I'm not looking at it yeah. the right way. Well, I assume oh. it is full of popcorn, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Kind of want that like little grease. Yeah, and they've got a reason. Yeah, I don't think. That, I don't think you do. No, because also <laughs> you're in there amongst the popcorn, which is the opposite of grease. That's it's a true. crunchy, dry substance. Yes. But, you know, no, but I think I think that the whole point of it is that people have a reason to reach into there, and yeah. then they yeah. discover because they want the popcorn. A and little then they... surprise. Yeah. 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 Is it's it kind that. of like an iceberg situation where you kind of want to get it to like a certain point sure. where certain things are poking up, but then you kind of just focus maybe mostly on like the top of the iceberg. Yeah. I mean, I think it's possible. I think in the end, you want you know, you want all of the joy that you can get from the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. But it's about the surprise at first. I you think know? it's impossible to do without the other person knowing what's happening <laughs> and, and helping. You know, like you think about mm. trying to get the hole in the bottom of the container of yeah. the popcorn yeah. and yeah. get the penis in there without the popcorn all yeah. falling out. You know, I think of it as like tying a bow in a parcel. You know, you're doing yeah. somebody's yeah. parcel and you're trying to tie that nice yeah. knot. And, you need the and then you need the finger. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you're yeah. going to need the other person, I think, to to like help you. Yeah. Or you just you smack yeah. their hand away and you just fuck the thing. <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Get, get out of here. You're not involved. This is actually in not this. about you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm just here to fuck my popcorn and watch a movie. Yeah. yeah. That's all I care about. Yeah, that's yeah, why yeah. I'm here. That's, what, that's what I'm about. Hey, honey, can you hold this? I got some scissors. Yeah. Quickly. Yeah. 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 Help me out here. This the, is why I go to the movies. Yeah. I think there is an issue with the way that those the bottom of those things fold. That yeah. I think if once you go in, I don't think there is any coming out. Correct. Correct. It does. Chinese finger cup. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, you, yeah, you probably yeah, have yeah. to snip it off. <laughs> I think. Jaws alive. Jaws alive. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, look, I hate. Sucked off by the jaws of life. <laughs> <laughs> have you already got a subtitle for your memoir? No, or... I think that would do it. I yeah. Think okay. Would do it. <laughs> Terrific. Yeah, I think that is the idea of you writing a memoir is oh, uh, <laughs> a, hor a horrible place <laughs> and time to think, you know, be alive. Yeah, I see really that on the bookshelf. I'm like, well, today was my last day on earth. Is it okay? Because we talked quite a bit about Cass's outfit before. Yeah. Um, Jackson, can we talk a bit about your ensemble? Yeah, it's great. Um, it's, it, it was making me feel so happy. <laughs> The entire time. That's so. Wait, what, wait what's specifically well, it about of, it? I guess it does have a cottage minion oh, yeah. feel. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I that's mm. you've almost perfectly encapsulated everything I'm trying say, to do in my life. I was gonna say life. a knives out minion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> as long as the minions in there, mm. I the, love the minions, yeah. guys. The minions are incredible. This is like the, uh -huh. the cross between like a farmer and a sheep. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, exactly. True. I've been thinking that it does seem like you are going in a more of a lamb direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Between a farmer and a sheep. <laughs> <laughs> we got time for a second episode. <laughs> Uh, um, I actually missed the very beginning, and so I didn't know what the actual theme was. Do you mind repeating it for me? Yeah, so it was, which would be the worst fictional universe to date in? Yeah, That's course. incredible. There is yeah. no way I would have guessed that <laughs> from the, you, all you the think? rest of the yeah, episode what would, you have that imagined? what would you have imagined we were trying to get to the bottom of? I, I feel like you said something about the born identity, <laughs> right? I and, don't think that don't came up at any oh, point. No. And I didn't hear you say born? Born... Born. Wow. Born. Okay, so I was so far off. Listening yeah. to another one of our episodes. Yeah. <laughs> you were talking about uh, Bella Swan's womb. Yeah. Oh, maybe someone being I born. I did say I was in the uh, the birthing position, about to get like slopped off by a wolf. That yeah. was that confused was you. <laughs> We did say that it would be a problem if you were in love with a werewolf who wasn't thought he was in love with you, and then when your 
child was born. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Child. Okay. Oh, I mean, I main think main Andy just it. assumed that it was uh, <laughs> what's 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 the born guy's name? Jason, Jason Bourne. Jason Bourne. When the, you know, if you're a werewolf Jason. and your child was Jason, Jason Bourne. Uh, that's probably it. Yeah. That's yeah. probably it. Yeah. I think the um, I think it was just the overwhelming volume of the cuck conversation yeah. towards the oh. end there that yeah. really reset my brain, maybe forever. And, yeah. Uh, I, I guess I'm, I was I was thinking a lot about. The, the, the situation you seem to be in where you needed to be, I think, constantly making love. Yeah. And, and yeah. then cucking was the only reprieve. The only yeah. So, yeah. Jackson, you could probably explain this. So, basically, Jackson said that the worst fictional universe to date in would be the pornography universe yeah. because everyone's fucking all uh, the time. I didn't realise that was a universe. Is that a shared... Well, I would say in many a, ways. I'd, I'd say it follows specific conventions, mm. you know. Yeah. Yeah. There's so, like a shared set of unspoken rules. Yeah. Mm. And if, if you're watching a porno and someone's ordering a pizza, you can guess what would happen as opposed to another film. Yeah. 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 You know what I think yeah. it was? I think I heard the word porn. And I thought born. you said born. Jason I, Porn. I, I Jason, Jason <laughs> Porn. Did Jason Porn get cocked in the I reverse? I, re I did the opposite of a porn parody <laughs> in my mind, where I took it out of the porn world, back into the mainstream Hollywood. That's awesome. And, um, That's rare and maybe never been done yeah, before. I yeah. Two in the think tank <laughs> continue to innovate. Yeah, absolutely. Just taking, yeah, I mean, normal movie parody of <laughs> porn films. Mm. Um, it's not, it's not Seinfeld. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Seinfeld? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. For legal reasons, it's not Seinfeld. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not Seinfeld. It's, yeah. like, it's, it's, not, it's, it's also, Seinfeld. yeah, we're not stealing from either. <laughs> um, yeah, and I guess it's the, probably, maybe the porn universe is maybe the first open source universe. Like, yes. I know they, mm. they do a lot of things where it's like, well, actually, we, they, you know, they're always innovating with technology and things like that in the porn world. And I think... I mean, it could be the first sort of real metaverse that we, yeah. that yeah. we all engage in. I think so, yeah. And there's so many things we can get fucked by. Yeah. We could make we could make a porn movie right now, and that would be within that porn universe. Like, it's be, open to anyone. It's beautiful canon. to know we can yeah. add to the canon yeah. at any Ooh. point. Like, it's yeah. what we make it. It's like real life. Yeah. But you have more power. <laughs> so yeah. we just cut away, and instead of you know, Dusha holding this microphone, it's like, uh -huh. Oh, yeah. 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 Mm. yeah, yeah, just like, yeah, let's yeah, continue yeah, this yeah, conversation. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Porn is pretty easy to make. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, it's it's hard to make good porn, but yeah. it is easy to oh, make. It's easy to porn. make it all the time. Yeah. 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 Amateurs, homemade. Yeah. yeah. But also, I don't necessarily think porn needs to be good in order no. to, no. to be to be good or to function. Well, that's this. I'm sure there's an entire like amateur, like ha amateur and homemade, where it's like part of the appeal is that it's bad. Yeah, yes, absolutely. It's so just bad real it's good. people doing real it's things. Nice to see <laughs> stuff represented. <laughs> sloppy yeah. rings. Yeah. It's a sloppy exactly. ring. Exactly. <laughs> I don't you know? want to see someone who's got like real cut and head. I can, can probably lift oh, up a person. Like oh no, we're both lazy lying down. Yeah. 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 Slop on slop. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. That's why I watch amateur. Porn. That's why yeah, we are. Yeah. yeah. That was a question. Yeah. What's our favorite yeah. porn category? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> What is okay? Well, let's go around. Let's let's oh, let's all say what our keywords are. I think someone should someone should try and reverse engineer and work out exactly what is the Bible slash law of the poor wo porn yeah. world. Yeah. Because I think you know there's a lot of things like obviously their welfare state is not very good, or at least the mutual obligations requirements yeah. to yeah. stay on welfare require like almost constant job interviews. Mm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's you know there's yeah. all sorts of stuff that we could probably infer. Yeah. From yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Is a it, different ball game. it does seem like, though, in the porn universe, you have a lot more chance for redemption. Yep. Mm. If you make a mistake at your job, yes. if, you've, if you've made a faux pas at an event, yeah, there's a sure. lot of chance for immediate fixing that. Yeah. Crime, yeah. shoplifting, don't worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, as long as you can slop someone off, you can get out of pretty much any crime. It's, it's just that slightly <laughs> bit closer to the bonobo community. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Really it's really <laughs> We're getting there. We're, yeah. We're finally getting back to being a monkey. And yeah. I like yeah. <laughs> it's this kind of, yeah. It's this, I mean, it's a utopia of it's sorts utopia. where, you know, yeah. 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 Mm. where, you know, I mean, but there's, I guess the laws of that universe are slightly the, thank you very much, the laws <laughs> of the regular world. Although I would say there's probably some porn that probably breaks the law. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, but, I mean, if so, but if it does, there's a very easy solution. Yeah. 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 
to fix that remedy. Yeah, 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 of course. What, is that more porn? Yeah. 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 Slopping. Well, slopping. Slop, slopping, slop. Yeah. Slop, slopping, slop. Slopping. Slobbing or slopping? You go, you, you yeah. pretty much, you make an S noise and then whatever letters follow, and then you add off. Yeah. yeah. Slop, wow. slopping off. off. Sloshing yeah. off. Sloshing off. Sloshing off. Yeah, see, it's good. Yeah, wow, I'm learning, you know, I guess a lot. Are you? It's so good to be here with the, I guess, entirety of Urban Dictionary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we won't judge the whole website. <laughs> I think you are the website. <laughs> Um, anyway, so you guys obviously did the podcast before ours yeah. and therefore had this interview mm. with others before what we yeah. were setting up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was the tone difference, do you yeah. think? Mm. Did, uh, you, how, did cucking come up in yours? Is that exclusive think, to us? I, uh, yeah, no, we didn't say cucking as much. I think the only fluid that was leaving a body in ours was probably milk leaving a, even a male nipple. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Hey, Jackson, fun. you've actually, uh, and look, this episode hasn't come out, so it's a bit of a behind the scenes look for everyone that's bought a ticket to today's mm. podfest. Yeah. Yeah. Jackson, what do you think milk is? It's blood. <laughs> uh, we, 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 we agree. I think yeah. it is filtered yeah, blood. It's about filtered this. blood. Yeah. Holy yeah. shit! So is blood. Blood. You cunt. So is cum. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 cum is not blood. <laughs> it's, it could, it, it could, it, it'll have, have blood components <laughs> because, I mean, yeah, blood is really wrong. like the... Jack, you need to go to a doctor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well, maybe. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's a lot of like prostatic fluid in there. I think that's what the prostate is. Yeah, okay. And but, but where does the prostatic fluid come from? Obviously, the all liquids are essentially oh. distributed, but you know, and all, 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 all the energy, the protein, that sort of thing, gets, makes its way around the body in the blood. Right on this one. I think we're all right. We're, and right. we're, right. we're gonna yeah. get. But but you know, there there are. It it, it, it is processed in different ways. Yeah. I mean, you know, we're all. Yeah, so I'm actually one of the it's, it's kind of yeah. Like, yeah, like different between like pork, ham. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm one of the few I think that's people. That's a great way to look at it. Okay. Yeah, blood well, like, is the pig, yeah. cum is the ham. <laughs> Ten seconds. All right. All right. <laughs> what a way to end. Uh, well, so enjoy that conversation come Christmas, because that is part of our Christmas episode. We've already recorded. We're on top of this. Thank you so much for having us. Sans pants, everybody. Yes. Thank you. Absolute I, heroes. I'm one of the few people who thinks that male ejaculate is piss. <laughs> um, anyway. Uh, so, well, it's now time to bring on another podcast. And I am just speaking for a couple of seconds just to add a buffer mm. so that there is mm. a less palate cleanser. The palate cleansing buffer yes. um, before we introduce our next podcast. How are you, by the way? Are you well? That's great to hear. Yeah. Uh, uh, the ca cameraman Jam gave me a thumbs up. And I, I hope that that's because he thought I was talking directly to him, and, and that's wonderful. We're good to go. We're, just, we're, ready. we're ready to bring you we're on. We're good to go back there. All right, here we go. We're good to get going. Three, two, one. Please welcome Confessions of the Idiot. Idiots, everybody wants to confess. Not everyone wants to hear them. Today, I am joined by some absolute icons in the popcast game. That's right, you heard Bird Turd. I am joined by the wonderful broadcaster, comedian, cabaret performer. She bloody does the whole damn thing. It is, of course, the wonderful Michelle Brazier. Thank you so much. That was such a random collection of my activities. I really uh, stopped thinking so during like the sentence. Singer, actor, writer, you're like cabaret, cabaret artist, artist, macaroon enthusiast. And of course, wonderful comedian boy. I'm going to keep this list short. Gorgeous boy, Mr. Broden Kelly. Yes. Broden. <laughs> I'm Broden Kelly. Done already. He's done the you can't Stop. switch off. I'm here to make sure you <laughs> mucking around. Around all hey, one you by one. No, everyone loves you for you. You don't have to do that all the time. Oh, no, they hate me. I'm going to give them a bloody gun. Oh, Broden. <laughs> we all do Broden? Oh, yeah. oh bloody hell, Broden yeah, Kelly's Broden, here. Broden, my name is Broden and I'm here to stop see. Stop doing mine. Oh, bloody never stop. Yeah, bloody, bloody, boys. bloody hell. Yeah. And the other guest sitting Broden right here, you can see him. Maybe you can hear him. It is the wonderful podcast extraordinaire, Mr. Nick Mason. Welcome. Thank you. Do want to hear them? You do want to hear them? I want to hear them. The studio audience is very quiet today. Mm. What's the chat saying? What is the chat Let's saying? Check the chat any chats chat. at the moment? Are there any chats we can throw to any chats at the moment? Love to throw any to any chats, chats, any and all chats. Open to anything. Any chats? Have we got any chats at the moment? 
Oh, lovely very jumper. Nice, yeah, very nice. nice. Anything, anything, anything happening about, about my jumper Michelle or... Michelle Brazier. Anything about Michelle My jumper Brazier? or no. Is anything in the chats? Wow, right. I stole right. this. could have lied, Evan. <laughs> no, 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 that's fine. Right. No, 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 I want honesty. I want that. I'll burn I this. I stole this from my partner mm. who stole it from an old woman. <laughs> now I'm wearing it on telly. <laughs> Everyone at home, everybody. I stole I this from stole my partner, partner who stole, stole this from an old woman. woman. And <laughs> now I'm wearing it on telly for everyone Jeez. to Idiots. see. Yay. Yay. What a strong start. I feel like we started <laughs> really given an inkling, I think, a real of, of what this <laughs> what is going to happen. Absolute yeah. train wreck. Now, how do you feel about doing a live podcast today, Nick Mason? Now, you're a wonderful podcaster with a wonderful pedigree. But I'm audio, I'm audio only. Oh, I don't like you're being on camera. I hate it. I'm so shiny. <laughs> you have an awful time. Oh, yuck. Any comments on in the chat about Nick Mason, how he looks, Evan? How shiny I am or not shiny? Anything shiny? about in the chat, Because it would really help my self-esteem if I wasn't that shiny. You weren't shiny? You shiny. Okay. Yeah. okay. Wow. <laughs> We're, on a, We're clearly on a delay. We're on a what delay. We what delay. we want. Also, used to look like Tony Stark. Is this true? true? Yeah. Can we confirm this right now? Yeah, we'll put it up in the chat. We'll put it up in, in the, the chat. chat. There it is. Can Somebody can put it in the chat. Yeah. Mm. Is this your first time on visually uh, yes. represented? No. Wait, imagine no, if this was a was. face reveal. Yeah, right? Is this your like face reveal? You know, like wow. Dream, Didn't that backfire so very quickly? It was his face reveal. Did you see this? His face reveal. Who? Dream. dream. The I don't know what Dream star. is. Oh, God. No, maybe. maybe. I don't know. Really. I, I, I hate Twitch. I've done some research. Yeah, Twitch. So much. Twitch. Twitch. Oh, Twitch. Face reveal. Oh. And then everyone just said how ugly he was. Um, and that was, yeah, not a very nice face reveal. When you were That's talking awful. about face reveals, yes. I didn't hear who you said. And I thought you were talking about... Um, the guy over the Dream fence. chocolate. The guy over the fence on uh, Home Improvement. Mr. Wilson. Oh, Wilson. <laughs> Wilson. Remember he came out in the last time and he went... Do you remember that? No, I don't remember. What happened? He just he hit went, his face a bit. Like, this final episode, they're going to show his face. Oh, yeah. You, you know. Oh, yeah, all the time. And he came out and he went... Hit me. You won't. You won't dare hit me. <laughs> you won't dare me. hit me. His face looks like the top of his face. Oh, that's oh, shit, fun. I that? like that. No, a, and spoiler alert for anyone still wanting to catch up on Home Improvement. Yeah. Sorry about was that. Was it Home Improvement? Was that what it's called with Tim Allen? Did you want this to run to the hour or? No, no. no yeah. Well, we're going we're gonna to get into some wonderful online confessions today. We're gonna, we've are gonna got five beautiful confessions today oh. from oh. wonderful people on reddit.com. Now, Michelle gets a little bit mad on this podcast. I will say that. So that is hell. You, you, get, you get really mad on this podcast. Yeah, this really. is my place. This is my space to take out the, my female rage. <laughs> And it feels great. It's yeah, it's a confession based show. Are you alright? Oh, right? yeah. Are you okay with being a confession based show? I've been on this show. You've been on this show. But it was in a different location, <laughs> aka your about, house. That was my house, my NYC loft studio apartment. Yeah. Um, I'll put up some photos of it after this for the Patreon. Fried chicken after it. I went, you did. I, yeah, From she f- fat. Well, I don't want to dox anyone, but I oh, went to that's Fried not in and my Tasty. House. You've moved. Uh, well, I have. I have moved. You can say it. I went to Tourist Fried and Street. Tasty on Ligon Street. I used to live at 123 Victoria Street in Brunswick East. That sounds like you that's made, made that up. up. Yeah, yeah, that's a made up place. No, it's, yeah. it's not. It does sound made up, though. When I used to... 123 Sam Street, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 I live at... Uh, oh, <laughs> Fart Street. <laughs> oh, one, one, two, three... Victoria Four, five, six, Street. Seven, eight, nine. How many numbers do you need? <laughs> Live on one million. Now, I've got uh, five wonderful confessions from five beautiful people on Gorge. Reddit.com because that is the whole conceit of this goddamn podcast. I don't know where I'm looking anymore, Evan, but I'm having a real good time. I've got there. a split over there you can look Thank at. You. And you did tell me before we started the podcast. I'm really going, going wild on this. Now, five wonderful confessions from five wonderful people. We're going to get right into it today. The first confession. You ready for the first confession? Is everyone ready? These are from Reddit. Reddit. These are Reddit.com. 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 Have the app. You have the app on your phone? Mm. You could get some up as well. If I would never friends. download the app because I go outside. <laughs> You have friends, you have family to see. It's lovely. I have stuff on. Yeah, you got stuff on. Not Broden and Kelly. No, not, absolutely not. Not bloody Broden and Kelly. Broad and Kelly. Kelly. <laughs> We've got the first confession. Nobody look at each other, only at the camera. The first confession that comes yes? from John. John confesses. One night me and my wife got so drunk we passed out in bed. Brag. We've all been Brag, there. That's, yeah. Been there. Yeah, it's, 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 passed out in bed, being yeah. drunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brad, same question. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. Mm. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never tell. <laughs> oh, I'll never tell. Not a lot of passing out, am I right? Yeah, yeah so yeah, bloody yeah, right. Yeah, so right. Just, just, just. <laughs> that's not something I'm going to be proud of forever. So not forever. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just temporarily proud. Just a little bit, and then I'll probably forget because it's not Other things an achievement. Yeah. <laughs> but something that I can't deny that it happened. I guess we all have moments like that from time to time. Wait, what? Is this the whole confession? <laughs> no, 
It's going to continue. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I promise. Imagine I'm at the bottom of the barrel of confessions now. This is, this is Mormon confessions. Holy doors, what do we reckon? Poo in the bed? Poo in the bed? Poo, poo in the bed? bed? You think I'm pooing in the bed? Poo in the bed. Poo in the bed. People's, most people's stories of their life are about pooing. Mm-hmm. Um, 80% roughly. Yeah. According uh, to Reddit. Uh, I think it's... Um, I've got no idea, to be I'm going to say something fun. Maybe improv it. I'm more excited, Mike, because I've seen Evan's got the crane working. Yeah. And I was like, like, can you make it swoop in as he finishes? As I climax. Confession. Like, yeah. As he climaxes. So he'll give you a nod and then that's, and bring it in. I won't nod from now on and then I'll just nod at the end. Make sure you don't do any nodding. Oh, God. I feel terrified and scared to move my head. Oh, most God. Filmic, most filmic podcast ever made. Beautiful. Lovely. Yeah, if I put it like that, is that fine? If I put it up like that? That's not something I'm going to... No. Be... No, it's fine? <laughs> it's exactly in front of your face. <laughs> I like it. That's not. Oh, you. Hey, that's. You, hey, Sam. You could not have put it in a funnier spot. Though, right <laughs> it was in front for of your comedy. face. Right. <laughs> Good night, everyone. <laughs> Good night, Australia. We're only eight minutes in. <laughs> oh shit. Okay, we'll do a confession. Okay. That's not something I'm going to be proud of forever, but mm. something that I can't deny that it happened. Right. I guess we all have moments like that from time to time, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. At some point, I woke up with the room spinning. We've all been there. Happens. Yep. Mm. At some point, I woke up with the room spinning. The whole room too, not just bits of it. Oh, were you in the bloody Gravitron? The Gravitron. The Royal maybe. Melbourne. Yeah, it's a bit is, maybe. Went on the Gravitron. It's worse. Been on the Gravitron, Gravitron last week. Did you? How's that go? It was Better. good. Well, unfortunately. As an adult man, how did that go? Crane on, crane on me for this story. Um, uh, so, I haven't uh, nodded. Do I have to nod? Are you ready? Here it comes. Here it comes. I was on the Gravitron and uh, a eight-year-old boy tried to run towards the middle and I had to stop the Gravitron to tell him off. Oh. Did you tell him off in your dad no, voice? The, the man stopped. Here it comes. And then I had a good time on the Gravitron. Oh, wow. I love it's this. Worth it. I love the oh, crane nice. shot. I can follow it, which is quite nice as well. Hey. But now James. This will be great if it's ever released as an audio version of this, I think. It'll be quite hey. nice. What are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? Good morning. How are you today? What is Wherever it? you are in the world. Is it morning? What are you doing? We don't know. Keep keep going, yes. The whole room too. Not just bits of it. It was awful. Unable to move. And I threw up all over her. Oh! The throw up one. Uh, The throw up one. The poo of the mouth. The poo of the mouth. Oh, yeah. The poo of the mouth. How's he going to get out of this one? Who's he going to blame? He's going to blame the dog? No, not going to blame the dog. Accidentally. I woke her up and she assumed she had done it to herself and Uh, hasn't drunk since. What? It was nine years ago. Oh, my gosh. Can't own up to it. I feel as though... If I do, it's too late and she won't forgive me for so long. Wow. All right, so that's the first confession that comes from John. Now, what do you do in a situation like that? Michelle Brazzi, imagine you in bed being a gorgeous girl that you are, being a gorgeous girl, hanging out with gorgeous your lovely girl. boy, Tim. Lovely boy, Tim. Yes. And picture this. Mm-hmm. You wake up, yeah. throw up on Tim. Yeah. Little Chuck, little Chunder. <laughs> he wakes up, goes, bloody hell. Well, it's not Broden, sorry. <laughs> Tim would more be like, I have slept hey, in bed. Have? have you actually? Yeah. yeah. Uh, like We're fucking. Ago. Anything funny? Okay. <laughs> I was yeah. house sitting because my partner had COVID and I slept in that bed. Is Michelle living in the Gravitron? Yeah. yeah, I live in the yeah. Gravitron. Yeah. Did you spew in my bed? But she does have one of them fans. What fans? You got a fan with Let's a remote. <laughs> oh, yeah. Are you trying not to say the brand? Uh, no, I don't know the brand. What is it? have got a Dyson Hot it. Cool Air Purifier. Dyson. Goodness, wow. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing pretty well. <laughs> Imagine if... So is this the end of the story? Oh, that, that sorry, that. She has a fan. Oh, I love that story. It's one of my favourites. Thank you for telling it on the phone. Oh, my gosh. Can get that crane out again. <laughs> now, Michelle Brazier, imagine Tim... Does a little, you, sorry, you do a little vom. Yes, him, yes. And you tell him, oh, the next day you're like, oh, I, you know, that was you that threw up. Oh, my God. Do you feel like, and then he's saying, I'm never going to drink again. Would you be owning up to this? Do you think you can? That's great because now he'll drive everywhere. Drive everywhere, Dezo, Dezo driver. I think it's good. It's good for his health. So. It's not going to hurt you if you don't drink ever again. Yeah, that's true. So that's fine. Yeah, it's if fine. it was like a joyful food or something, yeah, maybe not. Okay. But alcohol, who cares? If it was tacos, there's no way I'd do that. There's no way. And there's no way I wouldn't do that. that. Also, can we just talking about Brian Kelly at my house. Yep. Can you just on camera, can you, you talk eat? about... What did you eat? <laughs> no, I want to talk about what you broke. I want to talk about what you broke and you uh, still haven't returned. I want to talk about that. Okay, this seems awkward. Fine. This is petty of you to bring it up. More like Broken Kelly. Oh, that's yeah. good. Mm-hmm. Someone write that down. Beautiful Mish Wittrip. Broken bought, Deli. Bought me a, a present. Bought me a beautiful gift. I, uh, okay, so she... Ironic, but a beautiful gift. Yeah, yeah. I like you said ironic. <laughs> <laughs> so Michelle had fridge magnets on her, on her fridge. Her fridge. Mm. Of all places. That's where I put them. And um, <laughs> weirder. She, uh, it said Queen. Queen. In Scrabble letters. That's fun. Queen. Queen. How many, how many U's? It was I, just the, just the Q-U-E-E in the end. There was no other right. options. What about this? Just Queen. Mish thought it would be funny, and I thought it was funny. I, I think it's funny. 
But you know what's not funny? Just Anyone Quinn. else in the studio audience? Nope. Quinn. I, and I not, I brushed the fridge mm. with my big muscles. <laughs> God, and God, are they big. Let me say that. Do you want to get them out at the end for a big reveal? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Patron only at the well, end. I don't know. Let's see. In the, how much money can we raise? And I'll, <laughs> that, can we go to the phones? Is Anything this a fundraiser? Evan? Anything is this a chat? fundraiser? Message yeah. all your friends. Get, get them in the chat. Get them on. Here she gets spaghetti dog back. I love that. Um, What's spaghetti dog? Uh, Greg Larson brought his dog in and did spaghetti dog 2021. And uh, the dog ate spaghetti. I love that. Uh, Let's finish this story. I knocked the two E's off. <laughs> Oh. And shattered them on the ground. What were they made of? Porcelain. They were porcelain. They were gold. They were solid oh, gold. Okay, oh, solid gold. Rose gold. Yeah. Solid gold. Rose gold for girls. <laughs> solid for girlies. I yep. understand. The queen. And, uh, Sorry. Queen. Queen. Qu- uh, so it said Quan. <laughs> Quan. And so I. Um, That's still fun. Yes, hunty. Quan. <laughs> I sourced the E's. I've had them bought to be replaced. <laughs> and um, but I haven't given them back yet. I'd also like to say that I didn't know that they were missing until Broden told me he'd sourced the E's. <gasps> But he hasn't given them back to no, me. No, you've got to earn them. Are they sourced? Are they I have to earn them. them. Yeah, you've got to, you've, got to, you've, got to do a, you've got to do a gesture of truth. To re- do regain. you want me to do a night of monologue? Yeah, after this. I'll do it for you. Do it on yeah, the podcast. No, I, would, that's that's I would like that. Beautiful, honest can, night of monologue. I know you've got up front, but when you come back. Yeah, I've got to go to Sydney on a plane right now. Then we'll perform monologue and you will get your ease. Okay. This is huge. This has got to be big for Australia. This is absolutely huge. Now, Broden Kelly, what would you be doing in a situation like this? If uh, your partner, say, yeah. your partner, lovely Annie, if she threw up mm. on you, would you want her, and you stopped drinking, you stopped drinking for nine years, would you want her telling you the goddamn truth after nine long years? We'll be back after this. <laughs> oh, there's no, there's no advertisements. Okay, I, I was kind of hoping there was an ad. <laughs> We're back uh, after Ms. Egan. She spewed it. Yeah. on me. Yeah, and because she said she would been, she, she'd been a bin, bin girl the night before. You remember the confession? It's I'd be, that. I'd be like, it was, <laughs> it was a moment to go. I, was, I would be fine with it. Probably, I'd be yeah. like, yeah, just you wouldn't care about it. No, I'd be like, it's fucked that you spewed on me, and I'd use it. It's fucked. You'd use it as a weapon. <laughs> Yes. Things. Weaponize it, yes. I'd be like, it's you know, a healthy man. Yeah, I'd be like, yes. I'd be like, <laughs> yes. you know how you spewed on me <laughs> yeah. as, I, as I slept and slumbered? Yeah, slumbered. I want pizza for tea. <laughs> Every night. <laughs> yeah. Um, is what I would do. I like that. A friend's dog, not saying who. I'm not oh. saying the friend. Oh. Name's friend's Eva. Dog. What's the dog's name, Eva? <laughs> Doesn't matter what the dog's name is. Okay. With no E's, of course. Just I had a friend's no dog. No Diarrhea on my floor. Okay. <laughs> Touch yeah. back on that later. Whoa. Well, Nick Mason, what would you do in a situation? I like think you've got to admit it. You've got to admit you've it. You've got to admit it, and you've got to allow the playing field to be leveled. And you have to be like, at some point in the next nine years, you can vomit on me. This is huge. My sleep. This is huge. <laughs> at any time. That's fine. Anytime you want. Yeah, I yeah, think that's fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's cool. I think that's you are a fun like boy. I've always said that about you. You are a fun oh, boy. Mason, Isn't the he fun? funnest boy there is. Oh, you. You're a wonderful boy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's move on to the next confession because we absolutely solved that. And we're going to be right back after this. Missy Higgins. Miss Higgins. I think we're back. <laughs> Confession two comes from Ashley. Ashley writes, I'm here to fuck shit up. Yes, Ashley. <laughs> yeah, this is it. what we want. No. This is what we're here for, Ashley. Behave yourself. No. <laughs> no. Bad Ashley. Bad Ashley. None of this disorder. <laughs> None of this disorder we speak <laughs> of. And I am done making friends. How about that, Okay, Mason? Queen. Done making friends. Mm. Okay. Okay, Queen. Okay, okay, okay Quan. Okay, Quan. <laughs> okay, Quan. <laughs> I think, go off, Quan. Go off, Quan. <laughs> I think I gave up that a while ago. Yep. A while ago, when maybe that's all you need. What? I don't know. I'm not sure, but let's just move on. Keep going, actually. Move on. We've got five of them. We love it. Yes, Quan. <laughs> yes, Quan. I remember my childhood vividly, and while it's not all relevant here, some of it is. Well, that's, yeah. Yeah, it's that's true. how things work. Mm. That's our story. You can't the tell moment, all of your stories. The moment I'm right, I'm downvoting this. Right? Downvoting. I'm giving it a down. No. Well, let's see where it goes. Okay. Can you change back to an upvote? Absolutely. Absolutely. As you're reading through. <laughs> you can go back to neutral and then you can go up. Okay, find the up from there. Okay. I'm here. Someone's got the app. Yeah, someone's, <laughs> someone knows what's going on with this. <laughs> not me. I'm here Jeez. to let you know that I'm a product of my childhood. A product of maybe loving too much and being loved too much. Yes, Quinn. Are you going to wreck though? This can only help to explain why I did the thing that I did. All right. Now, look, you can guess if you want. I think it's going to be very hard to get (laughs) from the limited information that we have. There's a whiskey bottle involved. That's all I'll say at the moment. There's a whiskey bottle involved. Love whiskey. You love whiskey. (laughs) (laughs) We'll be back after this. (laughs) What did she do? What did she do? I piss in my dad's whiskey bottle before bed each night. Each night? Each night. Oh, my God. Each night. It's a lot of piss. Meso, heard about this? (laughs) <laughs> oh my gosh! What that question meant <laughs> just a little bit, not much, not much. But I have to, I have a tub by my bed, and I piss in it each night and pour it gently into the whiskey bottle, hoping not to alarm anyone 
of what's really going on. Tub of piss. Tub of piss. One of the tub of piss. Oh, tub of piss. If you live in a house with people, they know that you have a tub of piss. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. When And my dad's going into that bedroom. He's looking for that tub of piss. He's like, why is there Stench. piss smell? What have you labelled it though? Apple juice, maybe? Label the label the tub. The tub. Label apple. This tub is a tub apple of apple juice. juice. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. good. Idea. In the olden days, everyone had a tub of piss and it was called a bedpan. <laughs> oh, Beautiful. True? Mm. That's a would, fact. Because the art house would be out in the cold, yeah. so you would have a bedpan beside your bed where you would piss and shit. Piss and at shit. Two in the morning. Yeah. Oh wow, I didn't take know. it out and toss it to the cleaner. Uh, the toss it to the cleaner. To the cleaner. <laughs> Are they waiting with open arms? Yeah. Like this Giles. This was in the olden days. I wasn't around then. I didn't know piss about a, all of this. It's in a pan, they would call it. And that's where Peter Pan came from. That's where Peter Pan from. came oh, from. The, the, he would never, take never all the pans. Like. He would go around all the houses. He would take all the pans. He would take them all. It's a pan. And drink, pan. drink, drink, drink. No, 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 no. And that's why that kept him young. And yeah, became, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you, you have a little Tinkerbell in the night. And then I feel like actually there it is. a little Tinkerbell there in the night. Is. Peter Pan comes there to piss. Back up young forever. I think this is how Ashley. Cutting away. That's what Ashley's doing. Ashley is trying to stay young or trying to keep her dad or their dad young yeah. by feeding oh, dad feeding piss. Yeah, I yeah. never want you to die. I want you to keep drinking this piss. <laughs> I think that's forever. Yeah, that's fair, actually. For, that's amazing. That's actually amazing. We should commend her for this. Yeah. Upvote. Upvote. Up you're, you're back to upvote. I'm at neutral. Huge. Okay. <laughs> Let's see if you can get you in the end. I know it sounds manic and nasty, but here I am telling you it's not. <laughs> Okay, like I think I have experience. to say you're wrong, unfortunately. You need a therapist, but that's fine. I'm a 29-year-old woman and oh. a good woman at that. Pushing, good woman. Good woman. 30. A good woman. Close to third, not 30 yet. Sometimes you, when you're pushing 30, you've got you to gotta put away your big bedpan full of piss, I think. It's time to discard to big girl. childish things. You know? Time for big girl pants. I'm a, you're a good woman. You're Ashley. a good woman. What a good woman. It's time to get rid of the piss tub. <laughs> I'm not saying... Just because you're in your 30s doesn't mean you stop pissing, guys. You're still alive, Queen. Still like, yes, Queen. <laughs> piss all you want, Queen. <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying my parents are mean people. I've never said that. Mm. I do it for uh, exhilaration at nothing more. It feels like a funny prank at times. Other times, it makes me feel a little bit grotty. I'd like to talk about how she's 29. Yep. And she lives at her house with her parents. That's all right. And pisses in a tub. And pisses in a tub. That is the most tick, important tick, tick. part, yeah. yeah. I, I think it's gone pretty well. How long she be doing the piss in the in the is she? In the whiskey? Say, all right. Say how long. <laughs> and, and, and how long how long has the father been drinking from the, the whiskey piss bottle and does he not notice that it's never yeah. Does he yeah. think it's magical? It doesn't taste like <laughs> does he piss. Think it's, it's been full for eight years. Yeah. It's, it's a man that she calls daddy yeah, and oh, she's having daddy. sex with that man. Yeah, maybe. We don't know. We don't know if she's having sex with a daddy for sure. We never Never know, you, you never, never know. know. You think you know, but you don't know. You don't know. Is it a prank if you never tell the person? Because she said it's a prank. <laughs> it's not a prank. At times. But it's if you not never a prank at times. the prank, it's probably not a no. prank. No. I don't think it's a prank. Yeah. Uh, I think Sometimes it's a... Sometimes people's cars, that's a prank. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a, we- a bit of a weird kink. Yeah, a funny kink. Bit of a misguided, fucked up Maybe. thing. But is it a prank and a funny prank? Yes, it's so funny. Anything in the chat? Have we got any chat about if it's a funny prank, Evan? Anybody pissing in a tub pissing in the chat? In so the people chat. know at home watching on their laptop or maybe they're Chromecasting this. iPad. Um, iPad. iPhone. Evan's operating nine different cameras and reading the chat. And well, he's not reading the chat. He just goes to the chat whenever we say, yeah, what's going on in the chat? Like, and he yeah, abandons yeah. one of the cameras and goes, oh, God. Very, Begrudgingly walks over very, to the very, iPad. Very, very appreciatively doing a mime sometimes when we ask him to do something. He'll, yeah. he'll, I think he's in a line. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> very <laughs> appreciatively. Yeah. Uh, what, are you, what are they saying? No, I forgot nothing at the moment. Oh, my God. Nothing oh, at all. Are they... D- Okay, I feel like... Uh, wow, well, all right, whatever. It feels like a funny... Maybe they're pissing. Tubs. Maybe they're all pissing in a tub. <laughs> we should drive all the list, all the viewers away. It's not it's a fun not a fun prank. prank. We can't confirm that. It's not... <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Well, it's so nice, Evan. Right, right back. Yeah. <laughs> right back, say hi. Hi, Evan. Hi, Evan, you say hi. hi. We'll do this. You say hi. Do this. I know I shouldn't do it. I know I should stop, but it's somewhat of a tradition for me now. Somewhat of a habit. <laughs> tradition is nice. <laughs> it's like changing my clothes, like getting up and having a shower. Uh, I'm not expecting you to understand, but I am wondering if I should be telling my dear papa that uh, this is what I'm doing. No. I don't think he'll see the funny side of it. All I don't right, think so. Probably not. What do you think, Nick Mason? What do you think Ashley should be doing in a situation? I'm not like sure it is a tradition in you the way that I would think of traditions like <laughs> yeah. Christmas or Easter or a birthday. Uh, Those famous traditions. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I'm. I'm. I'm not sure. You're not sure. I think she should stop. Actually, <laughs> yeah. it feels a like idea. a crime. I in yeah. some way. If you're not revealing the hilarious prank, it's mm. kind of poison. It is kind of poison. Yeah. Yeah. What would you do, Broden, in a situation like this? I'd 
what if am I the person pissing, or well, am I, what would I tell Ashley. them? I would tell your dear papa. I would, I'd, I'd stop pissing. In, <laughs> oh, okay. In the, in okay the, but bear in mind, it's a tradition, and traditions tradition. are hard to break in a lot of instances. You know, oh, yeah, but tra- traditions are made to be broken. Well, that's, I don't that's, think that's the saying. That's why we said because my family used to have Christmas at, to at a house. Don't get up and then <laughs> down. sit down, bro. And then, no, you get back and then we went. Back. We're gonna have it at a hotel. You point in Broden, my face. Broden, We're gonna have hotel. Sit back down. Christmas Broden, at a pub. Sit down. Broden, you're embarrassing yourself, Broden. We had a great Christmas pub lunch, and it's not traditional, but we had a great time. It's actually really nice. I think it's great. So I would, we, uh, what would you? <laughs> I would. I would love to have Christmas at the pub. I would love to do that. That's what I would love. Uh, okay. It's expensive. It's not. It's. Not I think cheap. she should have Christmas at the pub. It's never not cheap always. anyway. Christmas isn't cheap. Yeah. Christmas is not Christmas cheap. Ain't cheap. But I, for the lack of work. I go to my mum's house, and what happens is, mostly vegetarians. Mum will have served on the table like piss. six different <laughs> lots pisses. of piss spread out. Six different tubs of piss. <laughs> Frozen. Different animals. <laughs> Chilled. Let it thaw, yeah, child. It's a salad. <laughs> a salad. Yum. It's too much. It's too it's much. Too much. The pub much. meal, they're like, here's your meal. Here's the piss. Here's your piss. Here's the piss. One piss. piss. Add piss to One taste. One piss per person. Easy. It's got the little urinal cakes in it. Uh, yes. <laughs> I think it's lovely. Scoop it up. I just I think, think it's, it's nice. Lovely. You don't get that at home. That's a kind of restaurateur kind of piss. Restaurateur. I think she should um, stop doing it and start her life again. From scratch. Fake her, fake her death. It's hard to do. Fake a death, again. start again. You need to yeah. learn to walk. Oh, yeah, no, be a baby. That's a, that's a kink a big that is, baby. that's not going to hurt anyone. This is more than a baby. Anyone. Oh, that's true. Ah. First, someone had a lot of water. 29-year-old woman. 29-year-old woman papa. named Ashley. Well, let's move Dear on to papa. the next confession. It's Brendan, you need to walk it off or you're up? I'm okay. You're up. <laughs> Confession three comes from Andrew West. It's the first time I've had a full name, oh! which I quite like. Oh, we can dox Andrew West. Oh, where's he from? <laughs> Let's find one, two, him. One, two, three, Victoria three, Street. Three, yeah. Three, yeah. Three, Andrew West confesses, if you have a keyhole in my area, chances I've licked it. Shit. Licked it? Licked it. Shit. Hit. Get out. If you have a keyhole. <laughs> if you have a keyhole. I've licked lots and lots of things <laughs> in my time. I've got what they call <laughs> I've got what they call an active tongue. Yeah. You could look that. They call, is that what, they call, that's what they call it? That's what they call it. Okay. The opposite of an inactive tongue. That's what she says. Mm. Oh, he says, sorry. Shy tongue. Andrew, Andrew West. <laughs> the amount I lick outweighs the time I don't. <laughs> I don't know that cannot, that be that cannot be true. <laughs> that cannot be true. That's physically that's can't not not uh, 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 Are you calling bullshit on sleeping. sleeping. <laughs> what about sleeping? sleeping. Maybe, I, maybe they're factoring in sleeping. When I'm awake, he could say. Maybe he's got his tongue in the Some of these aren't particularly well written. I appreciate Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Stop you there. I appreciate Queen. this person probably licks a lot. Mm. Potentially more than me. Whoa. <laughs> Which is not a lot. Yeah. Uh, but to say that they are licking, what is it? Four times. Four times. Twelve hours a day at least. Or more, yeah, yeah. Do yeah. you sleep for 12 hours? I do a good eight. Okay. Solid eight. Same Congratulations. Question. Yeah, eight, eight or nine. I'd be fucking doing nine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. How many hours do you sleep? I don't sleep. Beautiful girls don't. No. What, what is she had a beauty, beauty sleep. Your boss insomnia. Love it. It would be too intimidating and I'd boss. never be allowed in a comedy room. You're going to die soon. <laughs> you need to sleep. You are not I don't well. think so. Lots of kombucha. <laughs> yeah. You're not even on a live stream right now. This, you're alone in a, in a room. Yeah. She's fine. She's oh, fine. We wake her up every now and again. Give it's her a good, good kick. Let's give her a good kick. <laughs> <laughs> give her a good kick. I don't know if that makes any sense, but it's the truth. So what am I meant to do now? Just sit around and pretend it doesn't happen? No, you keep licking. Keep, keep licking, licking if you want. Sit around That's and far. pretend it doesn't happen. Yeah. Thus, Thus far. <laughs> Thus far. <laughs> Let's be clear. Uh, didn't you say keyhole? Is that how we started keyhole. this? Lots of if key you've hole. got a keyhole. Mm, chances are. That's so funny. Arden Vicker. Uh, I should include keyhole surgery. Uh, uh, very no, good. That's no good. Like little, <gasps> is he a doctor? Very good. Could be a doctor. We don't know at this point. We don't know if Andrew West is a doctor. I Look it up. Dr. Andrew West, that's seen. Dr. Andrew West, give him a little kiss. Plausible. I'm doing it secretly already, always making sure <gasps> my wife doesn't find out about anything. I'm oh. so scared of her catching me do it, and I've become more anxious recently, often ducking behind things <laughs> as a protectant <laughs> so I don't get caught. <laughs> Tongue. Imagine if it was smooches instead, though. Oh, That'd be so nice. Fun. Little smooches for a keyhole. No. Oh, oh, good luck. He's going to places where she is and just licking, just licking. in the background. Licking. Absolutely. I love that. Yeah, That's incredible. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Little Tim was doing Little Tim. Sorry. I, if Little Tim. <laughs> little Tim. <laughs> little Timmy. Little, if Little, little Timmy was doing that, would you yeah. be impressed? Oh, my God, yeah. yeah. I'd be like, How? this is incredible. Does this person Andrew get West? sick a lot? Or uh, do they have no. an immune system Put of a... Uh, finger down. This guy is... This <laughs> <laughs> Listen to me. Jacques Sammy Peterson. Would you both... Put your fingers yeah. down and ease. You're not weaponized. Put it 
does this yeah. person it, get sick from licking things? Right, we're gonna have to come back after this. Yeah. <laughs> Answer the question. Back. Quiz <laughs> uh, no, not you. <laughs> not you. Shit she did in the show we just shot. <laughs> yeah. the shit she did on Auntie camera. Donna's show coming out on ABC. What? Uh, what? <laughs> I was. It was not my fault. But the person I was in the scene with, she we were improvising. The per- people, the person I was in the scene with, we were improvising. 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 We didn't they write said, it. They said I'm thirsty, and I looked around. What was on set, and I saw a cup, a and piss. I didn't see any water of piss. I picked it up. She did this for real. It, and I gave it to them, and, the and then they drank, drank it. it. Problem solved. That's not on me. That's comedy. That's <laughs> oh, funny. Look it up. That's comedy. I better make it to the edit. Yeah. Oh, I think. Oh, it's yeah. Be in the edit. Get an, an edit. But also, <laughs> uh, Michelle, 2014, Edinburgh. Every night Finger. for fucking 26 yeah. night, licked the fucking pole in a in a room. Did you? Do you think wow. bacteria yeah. was that quite good? Do you think it's quite well, good? Well, I've not got COVID, so I guess it was. <laughs> and I used to make out with Vince at the end of all of our shows. Which is and he licks it's all worse than a pole. It's a similar. It depends on where the pole is. It's like um, I think Vince is like uh, you know what Maya, the escalator rubber. I know it well. I Vince, think it's similar to that. Ex- your comedy partner. Vince, my ex comedy partner. Backwards Anorak. From backwards Anorak. The old comedy. Only the OGs it's will know. Only the OGs crazy. will know. What I'm trying to say is yes. that person would have a good immune system or would be very ill. I do have a good immune system. Or the other. Yeah. I think no this is, I th- yeah, I have a good immune system and maybe it is because I do gross shit for a laugh. Because you never sleep. And I never Very sleep. unwell. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they're going to be very unwell for a while and they're going to push through that barrier. Yeah. Maybe they got COVID and they started Evolution COVID. of humankind. Do you, yes. Do you was, were you a sick kid? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Now I, was, I can't die. I was I was a sick kid. You never die. Yeah. I was a sick kid. I haven't got COVID either. Yeah, same. What do you mean you were mm. sick? I, was, I just got sick a lot. You were sick. He played skateboards. I almost died. <laughs> yes. I almost died. Dick. And they had to, had to take out my appendix because I had septicemia. Close up of that? Can we get a close up? I was oh, like a week before. Of that? Guess what? It was a week before keyhole surgery. Oh, it was invented? invented? No, it's a big scar. Keyhole, licking the keyhole. Yeah, they started doing this. The more you hold that up, the more I'm going to lick it because it's no, funny. Don't lick, my, don't lick my appendix scar. <laughs> the lovely stomach, though. Oh, blowing it down. Lovely. Oh, yeah, lovely that's gonna, watch the stomach. chat go. They're gonna, it's going to get, get all horny. Everyone's getting horny. It's going to get real horny. You can't have too many big cuts. I wish I could watch this lick podcast. Broden's tummy. That's what they'll all say. You know what I mean. Oh. Not a euphemism at all, but very fun if you say it like that. Evan's off. Have you had COVID? I'm I've had COVID, no. Are you serious? Sick kid, sick kid, never had COVID? Holy shit. This is fucking crazy. You had COVID? I've had it three times. I've got it right now. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, like VB. you got the VB. I've got it right Matter now. Matter of fact, you've got it now. <laughs> okay, so recently, ducking behind things, the other week, I was licking our friend's toilet seat. Oh, no. was sprung open and in walked their youngest daughter, Meredith. Oh. Instead of just admitting what I was doing, instead I played it off as though I had fallen over and hurt one of my legs. It's clever. Oh, one of my legs. <gasps> Ow. Yeah, don't oh, specify. God. Either one. Hold either. <laughs> either is fine. Uh, it didn't look like Meredith believed me at all. She told me she was going to tell her mum. So I told her. So I, I killed her. <laughs> so I killed her. I licked her to death. <laughs> <laughs> the worst way to die. I, I, like, I, I told her I would pay her some money to keep it quiet. <gasps> So now I'm involved in this weird, in fact, very weird no! series of weird lies that I just can't do not shush me. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, no. <laughs> this series of weird lies that I just can't seem to shake off. It goes, it's going to get harder to explain as time goes on. Ooh. I suppose. Yes, I do. Oh, Andrew West. I do suppose. I hate Dr. that Andrew, Andrew West. West. Dr. Andrew West. Licking child blackmail. This is That's lovely crazy. Meredith. What do you think about yeah. this? Nick Mason, what do you do in a situation like this? Do you do you do you fess up to what you've been oh. do you fess up to what you've been doing? <laughs> Pointing my finger behind. I think the money changing hands was too far. I reckon you could have yeah, just said crazy. um I reckon you could have just said I hurt one of my child's a big liar, as oh. children often are. You know? Yeah, most uh. children are. Mm. Yeah, so you think you would just yeah? Would you be coming? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> would you would you would you be coming clean to something like this to your lovely partner and saying Meredith and I've got this little deal? Oh fuck! It's hard for me to get to the place where I'm licking toilet seat. I yeah. think. Look, honestly, I I kind of think I, I was I was I was on this man's side up until the toilet seat licking. I'm like, oh yeah, okay. You are voting because uh, you know, uh, a comedy legend Tony Martin. He uh, he uh, as as. People might know he he walks every street and he's going to walk every street in Australia. Or he's something. not licking yeah. every. Street. Yeah, but I was like, but I was like, this is a similar vein. He's just going to lick every. He's going to lick every door lock. That's mm. not so bad. Okay, that's a you know. Tony Martin, if a little, Tony uh, Martin was doing that, would you be worried for him? 
If he was no. licking everything. Every, 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 every street in Melbourne. Every Tony Martin's licking Melbourne. every street in Melbourne. Sammy J famously yes. uh, licks. I'm Sammy P, but. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. What's <laughs> wrong? <laughs> uh, musical com- com- comedian. I don't know where my puppet is. Sammy J famously licks every. He licked every parliament building in Australia. Is that true? Yeah. That's in, funny. Like with a security guard. Allegedly, here do we have to say That's allegedly? Funny and normal. Or? He, f- he videoed it and filmed yeah, okay, it. Okay, yeah. it's out there. Um, so uh, look that up. Allegedly, allegedly happened. Uh, allegedly, there's a show about the Phantom. It was really good. Oh, I so good. Oh, so good. What? The show about the Phantom. It was so good. Uh, Did you ever win the um, most shows? Funny time. No, yeah. I came second once. Oh, you win the best newcomer award. No, I'm not a comedian. So it's <laughs> okay. <laughs> one time I saw. <laughs> what is your name? <laughs> Did you ever get nominated for most outstanding show? No, oh, none of these. You should. Sick. Next year. Wow. Okay, sorry, I, I feel out of politeness. That's crazy. Michelle, did you ever get nominated for Most Outstanding Show? Have, <laughs> I've never been nominated for anything. That's not true. You got nominated for the Golden Gibbo. Once. But I got nominated I you, for it twice, but... About Mace. <laughs> I'll tell you a story about Mace. <laughs> this guy sees more comedy it. than anyone ever. <laughs> he went. He was in at every room. Yes. I'm telling the story about Mason. It's on Sam and it's on Sam Michelle. And, yeah, they're doing more. Tell the story. Keep telling the story. We're acting it's it out. Nice. We're acting we're it out. We're acting it out. Tell you us. tell the story. Tell the story. We're acting I'm out. comedy and one Sam is Mason. One time I saw Mason at the back of a comedy room watching comedy and he was having. A, he was standing up eating a soup. <laughs> <laughs> he was just eat, Yeah. So there's a comedian over there and yeah. And Mace. I love this. Mace is having a soup. Oh, do you remember that? What's I mean, the I, deal I, with airline food? I don't, but it seems like something I would do. Like, it feels yeah. like something I would do. You did it. And yeah. there's the crane. This is yeah. perfect for it. That's great. That's right. Yeah, there it is. I hate ASMR, and I feel like I just did it. You did do it. Do you guys know yeah. about this? ASMR? You heard about this? It's the worst thing in the world. It's actually one of the worst things that can happen in the here's, world. Here's me doing ASMR. You ready? This is for free for all your Patreon at home. subscribers. Huh? I'm having a drink of water. Ah, uh, that was good water. <laughs> that was really good. Can you put that in? Evan, in, in post? Can There's you put that mic. sound effect put in? That in is, that, is this going out live? Can you get a super of this? Right. Uh, this, is person, this person's a f- fucked up person. Oh, Nick, Nick Mason. I? <laughs> oh, no. It's right there, man. I, I was trying to get it back on track. Oh, sorry. Oh, thank you for doing did that. You come, did we meet? Did you come to Space Tortoise, my first solo show? I did. I got recommended it. That's have a how soup? we met. No, I didn't have, have soup, soup there. No, they didn't. Didn't have any soup. I wasn't yeah, allowed. Say, soup. We yeah, well, they wouldn't allow it. It's heritage listed. <laughs> have we so. met? <laughs> Did we meet? Who's this? Hold on. <laughs> Who's this? This is, is not Sammy J. I thought I thought this was Sammy J. <laughs> You're thinking? Would you would you come clean about that? Because there's money okay. money being exchanged. You cannot you cannot risk mm-hmm. anyone finding out that you are paying a child to keep a secret. That is crazy. Mm. So I think what I would do, what he should do, is go and see a therapist. This is my answer to everything. Yes. Or therapist. End it. And I think <laughs> what child, should, my goodness. No, I think what he should do is tell the parents of the child. Mm. I was going through a time. Tough time. I was doing cocaine. Yes. I was and she saw me do a cocaine off the toilet seat and she said, Are you licking the toilet seat? And I was so embarrassed. I didn't want you to know that I was doing drugs during the day at your house. I was so humiliated. Because drugs is more normal <laughs> than drugs what you normal. were doing. So I would say I would pretend I had a drug problem and yep. that I was helping and then I would go to some place where the they could help theme. me not lick shit. Yep. And I'd go to not lick shit rehab where you do yoga and you don't lick anything. Lick shit what's, rehab. What's, that? what's over there? What's that? what's going on? You I'm are telling you a story. Distracted. I'm worried about what's you. What's wrong? Now. I'm just worried about it. Wildlife coming out. <laughs> <laughs> and attacking us. These stupid old studios. Just wild trees. Evan, are these from your home? Some of them might what be. Not sure. What tiger came out? <laughs> That's Mid- crazy. Podcast. That's so dangerous. That, that would not happen. Let's just say that. That would not happen. Let's move on to the next. Even, com- a, even a Tassie devil. <laughs> That'd be no good. A Tassie devil, you can't you're predict them. They're only in Tassie. No, they moved a, a, a section of them to Wilson's prom so that the ones the that get of cancer can breed themselves out and then they're going to put them back in Tassie. Just if you were wondering. Even right of reply, anything you want to say about that? <laughs> I think, think it'll be fine. I think it'll be fine. It should be fine. I Let's not know. worry about it too much. I'll check. You tell the next confession. I'm just going to go check. Tell the next confession. <laughs> it's just for peace of mind. It's for peace of mind. Just check if there's any sort of. Drugs animal. is more normal. I think is what we've, we've come. Up. I think we should start a campaign called "Drugs is More Normal." Is and man. if you've got any freaky problems, just be like, "No, I was doing drugs." Actually, doing dr- I'm, just I'm just doing drugs. Doing drugs. I'm just so. doing drugs now. How you going by there, man? Manager? Everything all right? Uh, pretty good. <laughs> yeah, great. It's pretty good. Oh, it's a Michelle behind at some ferns with yeah. Michelle Brazier. Between, but, but, oh, oh no, I said. Oh, you I were, said what I said. I'm not having a go at you. Okay, all right. Michelle Brazier, everyone. 
Thank you. How many confessions have you got today? Usually it's three, isn't it? Usually it's it's all. People always say this. It's usually four. All right. It's never been three. I feel it's like I was been on once. It was, it was three. Never been three. But okay. but I've got five today. Oh yeah, great. Because oh, yeah. we're you know the visual medium ads a bit. Yeah, well, yeah, and we've got ads and stuff. I think they've crossed There's off the ads. ads. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. What what brands do you hope are advertising? Hello Fresh. Yeah. I would love Hello Fresh. You know. I would love Missy Higgins, Kombucha, uh, Orange Squeeze. If you're listening, uh, what brand would you like to? Well, I can't talk about brands because on the, the Auntie ABC. Donna podcast, oh. um, every time I record an ad, the people who get us ads come back and say, no, it not sounds him. like he's not taking it seriously. <laughs> right. He's naughty. Make naughty one boy. of the other ones do it. So I can't do ads anymore. But I'm not. I genuinely am just reading it. Yeah, they just think you sound sarcastic. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was oh, like, genuinely just reading it. I, was like, I love Hello Fresh. Genuinely French. just Easy reading meals. it. It's yeah. upset me. It really hurt me. Oh, I'm sorry. I was like, what am I doing wrong? Yeah. You're I'm crying. just reading about fucking Telstra what, or whatever it is. What am I doing wrong? You're doing what Telstra doing ads? Wrong? I don't know. <laughs> You need to know the product. You need name. to be aware of the product. You need to have connection yeah. with the project. That's why Remedy Kombucha and I are so synergized. Because I drink it and I love it and it's a delicious treat for me. Full of yeah, bacteria. Live bacteria, so I don't get COVID. Would you lick it off a toilet seat? In a that? Sort of I'm spilling yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm lapping that That's up. Nice. The brand alignment that these guys on the Weekly Planet have. One of the best podcasts. The way they the talk world. about their products makes you think, I'm going to go. Buy what products them. do you talk about? Ad ones, exclusively Apple TV bad. Plus. Did That's we, a good we? one. That's a good yeah. product. For, good did you us. get Apple TV Plus for free? Maybe. Maybe I've got it. Got I us. still have Netflix. Stan for free. Netflix.com. Netflix. Netflix. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, you heard of that one? I've heard of it. pretty good. You can plug in that right now. Netflix. Netflix. I love getting You're free Netflix. stuff so much. Show us your butt. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lick it, but show us your butt. Yeah. Uh, I can only see your hand. Move your hand. Oh, yeah. Netflix. A bum. A Nice. All right, let's go on to the next confession Sorry, because everyone. we've got we've got we've got two more two more wonderful so confessions today. Don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. You should be proud of your body. Away. A lot of people ask me. They say Broden is that is that Broden? Did Broden really get that tattoo? Broden yeah. Really Mark that. says he didn't, but he did. You get he ABC definitely on did. On ABC for the next. Yeah, get ABC. Yeah, get yeah, ABC. Yeah, oh, yeah. get them all. Get them all. Get all get the channels. All the platforms yeah. we go YouTube, on. YouTube. You got YouTube.com. Yeah. OnlyFans on there. OnlyFans. SBS special bump service. I'll get an ABC one. I'll get an ABC tattoo. Yeah. Your ass. On my ass. Your ass? No, probably not on my ass. No, my no. ass is different politically to Broden's. Okay. You politically. know what I mean? I don't know about that. It's yeah. liberal. It's liberal. My ass is oh, it's liberal. liberal. Liberal coalition. Yeah. My it's ass, liberal. very conservative ass. <laughs> A lot of people don't know that about Happy me. Happy to admit that. Happy no, sphincter is Dan Tian. It is. He is. That's what my sphincter is. It's crazy, right? It's you the fucking so right. Dan so right. Yeah. Sorry. Michelle. Confession four. <laughs> From Martin. <laughs> <laughs> Come through Martina. Fashion Martina confesses. Four of three. Okay. Fashion four of three. Mm. <laughs> I'm having a secret affair with my husband's best friend. Uh uh-uh. uh. Mm. Seems fairly standard so far. That's not on, is it? Uh uh. No uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> no no no. No 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 no. Okay. It's been going on for two years now. Mm. And at the start, I was loving it. Sometimes having sex with both in one night. Oh. Isn't that fun? Do you like that, Brent? That's so fun. That's I love that. Sexy. I think it's sexy. You love that? Yeah, yeah, I like it a lot. Want to hear more detail? Yeah, yeah give me more of this. <laughs> Something having, more. Sometimes having sex with uh, both in one night. It just occurred one night very late while my husband was away. I was missing lust in our relationship. Uh, well, that was all in caps. That wasn't just... That's that. tough. Love that's and tough. lust, yeah, yeah. Love and lust, they're different. different Limerence, different. There's so many different stages, but you can recapture the lust. If you read Esther Perel's books and podcasts, yeah. read if you podcasts. read the podcasts, you the can recapture it. The thing about lust is there's one at Doncaster Westfield. Lust? Yeah. Keep where going? Yeah. Actually. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, you the soaps and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a good There's actually a new one. There's a new one in Melbourne Central. There's a new lust. That's the thing about lust. They're they're everywhere. Everywhere. And there's so many samples there. So many Goodness, samples. They're helpful. In very the friendly. Smell of lust is quite overwhelming. Quite a lot of fans I work I at Lust. Approach it, I shouldn't go to Lust. I went to Lust and I'm, it was a mistake. They were like, Michelle Brosier has Michelle w- entered, Lust. <laughs> She's entered Lust. samples. She's entered Lust. Oh, I love Lust. <laughs> <laughs> Something it smells like, so good. They sell it at soaps. Uh, like bath bombs and stuff, which oh, I really love. Bath- so How Tim has to go and Tim goes in and gets my bath bombs. It's like JB Hi-Fi. 
a lot of there'll be a lot of guys who look like me going there. Hello, I'd like to buy a gift for my partner. <laughs> One bath bomb, please. <laughs> guys who look like you, cards? namely my boyfriend Tim, yeah. who looks exactly like <laughs> you. Do you do you have any bath bombs for my partner? <laughs> I love her. <laughs> we, we mock, but we we've all gone to a JB Hi-Fi, bought a couple of plasma screens, and chucked them in the bath. Oh, yeah, I haven't. Oh, a bit of relax. Yeah, now it's a cry for help. Mm. Boys love a bit of a plasma in the bath. He's Am I right? Your so plasma right. liquid, like, would that come out if I poke my teeth? That's a great question. Plasma I don't know. The- I don't know. Sound off in the chat. If I stabbed my plasma TV, or one of, or a big screen out? that's yes. near us. He stabbed it. He stabbed it like this. Do you have a, do you have a plasma? plasma? Some I people have plasma. Yeah, I've derailed everything. Some people might still. Some people have plasma on sale. Some people have plasmas on sales. Oh, no, I don't have a tea bag. Screen. Important to donate Please. plasma as well as blood. What are you doing? What Where are you going? Broden. 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 Broden, what are you doing? Broden, what are you doing? That's a different thing. a different thing, I think, yeah. That's different. I know. I feel like you don't mean that. And I feel like you've just forfeited your right to the insurance Evan loves these screens as much as Beck. Loves do you? Them. What do you love more, Beck or these screens? I love Beck more. Yeah. Oh, he loves Beck more. What's got, a, gra- cans, what's got a greater though. insurance value? Beck on cans. Beck on cans. Uh, what dinner. are we reading? What are we going to read? Beck on cans. Oh, yeah. I love Beck. What are we doing? I like yeah, Beck more than the screens. Right now, I think, yeah. <laughs> I, I just want to be clear. You have been clear about that. <laughs> was missing lust in our relationship. Something I know a lot of young couples take for granted. Yeah, because you, cl- you live close to a mall. Close. You can just go. You can go more often in Doncaster. But sometimes you can't always go. Not always. Sometimes you live there. in the regional. I don't. I don't live I don't close enough to a, to a We're Donut lost. King. You, but don't. I miss. I miss Donut King. If you don't live close enough to a Donut King, then you live in a good place. Yeah, yeah that's probably. Yeah. Like, I feel like it's like the outer Northgate. suburbs. Northgate Shopping Centre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, Northgate. Bron's a healthy boy. Right yeah. Um, Bron, put that finger down. I think everyone's like Krispy Kreme this, Krispy Kreme that. But I don't think they are anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's been right. working on this. I've got to fill, fill this over here. Year two thousand. <laughs> that was like, that was so special in Wagga. If you, if anyone in the town went to Sydney, they would. Yeah. Everyone else in the Same town would Island put in Melbourne an order. Me Krispy Kreme. Krispy Kreme. Ah, yes. I need twelve Krispy Kremes. Krispy Kremes. Krispy Kreme. That <laughs> best donuts. <laughs> the best donuts you can buy. Three dollars. <laughs> Five kilo. cinnamon $3 freshly $3 done kilo. donuts at <laughs> Donut King. Right. That's right. You fucking idiots. Stop. This is a good ad. Donut what King is a good have ad? the best donuts in Australia. Best yes. Sure. The they're best fucking donuts stupid. In Australia? They're stupid dinosaur ones. Pieces Stop. of shit. I love dinosaur ones. No, you're our sponsor for today. Donut King. Yes. The I'm dinosaur the ones. Well. Oh, sorry. Okay, the okay. dinosaur I have ones. The best donuts. Okay. It's the dinosaur ones that are sponsoring us. Oh, well. That's why I love dinosaur donuts from Donut King. Got that clean. I think we're good. I think we got that good. It's great. We got it. I know a lot of young couples take that for granted. I certainly took it for granted when I was younger, but now look at me. Two men on the go at all times. Queen. Queen. I've really changed my tune. Oh, you like it? I think she's getting it. She's getting it. I think she's getting missing it. something in here and she's trying to fill that with not a heart. I don't think it's about yeah, I think it's about the way with I think it's not about the husband's best friend. I think it's about the way the husband's best friend makes her feel about herself. Yes, makes her feel sexy again. Yeah. You, you it's important make to make sexy. people feel wanted. You making everyone feel wanted? Everyone? everyone? Yeah, I think so. You meet someone, you you oh. go for many oh, years. I have to have you. For many years. I, have to I have must. You. I should be lost. That's nice. I think that's good. Yeah. That's what I do. And it never gets me into trouble. Ed Kelly felt wanted <laughs> by the police mm. for two years before they, they were watching him, him. Down in Glen Rowan. They were always watching him. They were watching him. Shell around himself, yeah. I think. The whole song. Well, yeah, the metal, they metal. were watching Shell. him. Mm. Mm. They were watching him. They were watching him. They were watching him. Two, I think we're back. Yep. Two men who oh, I cannot can ignore. You I see? feel as though I have, keep going, I've found my sexual awakening in my mid-40s. I know men seem to slow down in the department with their dicks. When they're younger, they are coming all the time. Bullshit, as <laughs> How dare you? When you guys were younger, you were coming. I was coming all, all the time. I stop coming. I'm, I'm as virile as a, as a fucking walrus. All right. A walrus? Good. Can we do a fact check on that real quick? How virile are they? walruses. Don't, don't, do not go to images. <laughs> See a lot of nasty pics there. Ready in the chat? I know men seem to slow down in this apartment. When they're younger, they are coming all the time. But as they get older, it all slows down and their balls begin to droop like they've been used up. It. Oh, this is awful. Men it might still just come. Hey, still do come. 
Surely a drooping ball sack would mean it's full of more cum more that's cum. being weighted down. Elongated. You should say, one. the ball is rising. It's be- that's wonderful. It's beautiful. So true. It's very evocative. That's so beautiful. That's really evocative <laughs> visually. Visually lovely. For me. For me. I look forward to For me. <laughs> For me. Aging. It, yeah. It might it just be the... It won't happen to you. It might just be the cha- key of change that strikes me in this light. Key change. Uh, uh, my mother makes me mash my mini M and M's on a Monday morning. Uh, that, yeah, see, drama, it's sharp major, drama school drama. 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 Uh, we're crazy. We clapped in we're before crazy. this. The fact that he is interested in me physically and quite often is something that drives me wild. Yeah, absolutely. It's about how he makes you feel about yourself. Yes, you know what? That sexy. is that's something missing. That's something missing in you, girl. Yes, hunty, go off. And that's something missing in your husband. Your husband probably needs to feel wanted too. Maybe if you made it's him okay. feel wanted, maybe he would make you feel wanted. But cool. it's a vicious cycle. I think vicious all three cycle. of you should split a six-pack of Donut King cinnamon donuts. I think you should come. Oh, yeah. yeah. You can be there. If yeah. You yeah. should go and you should come. Yeah, I'll gra- yeah, yeah you can definitely come. A couple of doughies, yeah. And you get a little – there's like a deal. It's like – Yeah, yeah. You get a milkshake? It's like three – you get them up. Cinnamons, yeah. freshly done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of the I'm shower. not talking of old ones. No. Fresh, fresh, yeah, you want a fresh. fresh you want and a little fresh. coffee of, of your choosing. Oh, of your choosing. And I think that's like five bucks. There's nothing wrong yeah. with old donuts either. You know, if you anything, they're just as virile as a walrus. Mm. Oh, I'm virile as a walrus. And have we looked that up yet? Virile as, Broden Kelly, virile as walrus. Yes, look up walrus. Broden's, Broden's dick. <laughs> Don't look up that. <laughs> Lots of pics. Look it up. Safe search off. <laughs> it. <laughs> Uh, look what it up. would come up? up. We, we we have to meet in secret, oftentimes booking the seediest hotel room we can or motel. It's not Why don't you book like a nice hotel? Book a regular one. I would yeah. really have sex in a motel. It's your husband's oh, staking no, hotel husband's only. Staking Jesus out the Christ. Did she say she's in her 40s? In her 40s. You don't have to have sex in a motel. Meet at someone's house. That's nice. Or your house. Land. One, two, three, Victoria. Nice yeah. park. Parkland. Mm. The fact it's gone on for two years and my husband hasn't noticed is driving me crazy. He just wants to feel wanted want by a husband. Notice. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Yes, maybe that's all I want. I want him to look up at me down like I'm a been a bad girl. I guess I don't want it to ruin the relationship, but maybe that's not up to me. Nothing ever is. Quite a depressing way. <laughs> Nothing ever, ever is. is. Nothing ever is. We're in on that. <laughs> We're craning in on that. Uh, I'll do that again if you want, Evan. Yeah, do that again. Maybe that's not up to me. Oh, look at that. I like that bit then. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's not up to me, though. Nothing ever is. Did you learn that? Yep. Well done. Just look down. Stay, I'm, stay, I'm stay, stay, stay here. Say it again. Nothing. Oh, nothing ever is. Nothing is, ever is. 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 Nothing ever is. Uh, nothing now, Nick Mason, what would you do in a situation like this? If you were asked, <laughs> if you were asked, uh, Nick Mason, what would you do as beautiful Martina? Oh my goodness! I, yeah, I think I think you're right. I think she does want to be. She 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 wants this to come to a. You come Let this be a warning for anyone who's in a long term relationship. I mean, on Nick. Yeah, if you could so just write write as close as you can. Do I follow just that? Don't kill Jam on the way through there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I think she I think she wants this to be a big a big event. She doesn't want this to peter out. She wants this to be a like a. A bit, uh, an explosive finale, you know what I mean? Yeah. Of course. Cool. <laughs> How are you right. today? Are you doing well? Yeah, I'm doing no, but great, so thank you. yeah, so what would you do? What would you do, Michelle Brazier, in a situation like this? Uh, if I'm Jan? If you're no, if you're beautiful Martina. Oh, what's woman. her name? Who's Jan? Martina. I've forgotten who Jan is. I don't know who Jan is. I would say to Martina. <laughs> if I was Martina, I, I would call, Jan I would call my best friend Jan. Your best friend Jan. I'd say, girl. I Jan. Jan's fun. I need some advice. a fun one in the friendship. I've made a mistake. Uh, I made a bad mistake. I would just say, listen, it, do you love your husband? It depends on if she loves her husband or not. Mm. I feel like she just wants to feel wanted by him. Yeah. And I feel like, honestly, maybe it would be great if he would find out. But it, you're ruining a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. You're ruining a lot of trust. Yep. I think if you can, you end up with this guy, you go to this guy who's your husband you say jan. i jan you say jan my oh, husband jan. i want to feel Tenderborn. wanted by you when you do this 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 makes me feel wanted when you do this 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 it makes me feel unwanted that makes me feel bad about myself and that makes me honestly look elsewhere i love that i love that you could take the husband to a, one of these city motels you like so much yes. rekindle that take romance him. Yes, have a little go. get yeah. that romance you back. sit him down you say bitch there's a line get to the back of the line if yes. you're not gonna Satisfy my needs. Satisfy my needs. We'll have needs. My needs. Yeah. We'll have needs. Yeah. And Kelly, what would you do in a situation like this? Um, I'd say, who am I? Your beautiful mother. Jan. Jan. You're Broden. You've kicked the door in, in the motel. No, no you're, you're the person having the affair. I'd say, let's all three of us go down to Northcote Plaza. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Go on. Talk at this over yeah. a couple of fucking the best donuts over. on the market. Yeah. And then you, it's better you go... I've been fucking around. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we've got to stop fucking around. Yeah. And everyone's like, oh, oh, this is a big moment, but 
Yeah, yeah. Home of these donuts. It actually feels nice, doesn't it? Warms it, it up. It's yeah. Then you take a trip to Lust. You oh, yeah. Then you take a trip oh, to nice. Lust to get yourself plasma. a couple of plasma TVs. <laughs> and then Milligram. I love Milligram. Oh. I took Broden Milligram. Kelly to Milligram and he had the time of his life. He went, oh, 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 that's oh. I've been back to Milligram. Abby, what did you get? Did you get another mug? Notepad, pen. Mm. Study Which one did you get cast? Which one did you get? Tree? Study of trees. That's what I showed him. I showed him. I said, smell this. And it was study of trees oh. from Milligram. I got a field notes. I like a field oh. notes. It makes me feel like a real outdoorsman. Field notes. Are, I like oh, study of trees, but I, I like you native before. botanicals. Native botanicals is my favorite Milligram set. Yeah. I love the cast stone mm-hmm. paper. It's the Melbourne only there. thing, though. Is it? Yeah, they started just in uh, online in Melbourne. Cups. Online? They're fantastic. Broden yeah. and I got Kinto mugs. Brick and mortar store. We saw the movies. We had a friend date and it was lovely. Yeah, what did we see? Nope. Nope. Good. Mm. Um, all right. Oh, yeah, that's what I do. Yeah, chop chops. He's already, already it? said, we're, we're, we've got one more, we've got one more confession today. Popcorn. One more beautiful confession. Oh, my God. Should we go for it? Let's go Let's for speed. it. Okay, go real quick. Let's Let's go, go. Speed run this one. Have we got time, Evan? How much time we got? We got you got seven, eight minutes. Seven minutes. Seven and a half. We're fine. We got seven and a half minutes. That's so much. Uh, and like we're getting the 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 uh, good the, stuff. The light in that Alistair and Andy have entered the studio. Mm. Um, you guys got to laugh. Can you, you laugh? So we the feel last, good. One in the last confession. Not now. Like I wanted to <laughs> feel real. The like I. The last confession is actually from Andy. It says Andy. Okay. Andy confesses. Okay, sir. My friend Tom always gets the babes. Andy, is that true? You can say. That's true. That's confirmed. Just confirm that. Always gets the babes. He's a good-looking cat, and I have to hand it to him. He knows how to talk to women. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Hello. Hello. (laughs) Hello. How are you today? That's how you talk to women. Hello, woman. (laughs) Hello, woman. (laughs) Never heard of their name. Women have just always loved Tom. Mm. I imagine even as a baby, women were drawn to him. <laughs> I don't think in a sec. I just think as a, you know, I, I have this funny image <laughs> in my head of him in a stroller, and women coming over and fawning over him and saying he's going to be a little heartbreaker one day. Oh, weird when people call kids heartbreakers. Yeah, it's, yeah, I mean, no, it's, no. it's weird, isn't it, going, yeah. you're going to be a little heartbreaker one day. I imagine people said that about you all the time. <laughs> Oh, they oh. said, oh, yeah. oh. So I was a yucky baby. baby. I was a yucky, yucky baby. Yucky baby. I was my, I had fingers, I had, I had fingers. No, no, you were jaundiced? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had um, skin hanging off my fingers. My, I had too much, I was born with too much skin. I was born too early. Webby fingers. What, I had Webby skin, girl. skin, like a Mr. Burns skin, like a skin. So they had to wrap me up, but I was only this big and I was like, blah, blah. It was blah, blah. disgusting. I was disgusting. But look at you look now. Look at me now. <laughs> I got into top class. <laughs> <laughs> so this, you know, is that top acts? Uh, no, it's like, top class. Top class uh, top doesn't class matter. Act. Doesn't matter. My drama solo. About and he turned out to acts? be two. Ha 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 ha. He turned out to be one of the biggest heartbreakers. We're at uni together at the moment, and he is with a new girl every week. Oh, oh Tom, Tom, Tom. Player. Tom, Tom, mm. Tom. I'm with I'm a bit one, of a tomcat. In with one, out with the other. I think means any holds a goal for Tom, and he knows it too. Any hole is a goal. Uh, too far. Any hole is a goal. Even the ass. He knows it too. Any, even the ass. <laughs> even the ass. Even if the ass is a <laughs> Liberal Party <laughs> member. Antian doesn't, doesn't worry how it votes the ass. So we go to uni with Sarah, and she is a firecracker. I love everything about her, and she's not too bad looking either. Firecracker means woman who talks. <laughs> That's yeah, yeah. Literally, what Absolute it means. Little firecracker. Like, oh, you're a firecracker. I was like, sh- you just talk. Speaking. <laughs> Luckily for me, Tom has never really tried it on with her. But a few weeks ago, we were all having dinner in the uni halls and Tom leaned over to me and said he was going to try it on with Sarah. Don't try it on with Sarah. I told him no. And <gasps> Sarah that... belongs to me. No. <laughs> and I liked her and he said, even more reason for me to give it a crack. Oh, he has to die. Has kill to... him. Uh, no, you're a can't dog. Kill what him. a shit you cunt. Kill him. Why can't you kill him? We can kill him. We can, we can kill him. We're smart. Tons of places to hide a body in a uni. You can kill him. We can kill him. We're smart. You can kill anyone if you're good at getting rid of stuff. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop saying this on podcast. I, 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 I got the way. I got the way. I know the way. He really bury him behind. How to do it? I know how to do it. Bury him behind the Eagle Bar. Exactly. Yeah, Trobe <laughs> University. Trobe uni. That's right. You get it. You yeah, I get it. You get yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you go to the Trobe? Yeah, don't. Don't, don't go. do any digging behind the Eagle Bar at La Trobe University. Please never don't do, do any. Do you bury bodies at La Trobe University? Yeah, I've, I've been, this is going out live, I've just realised. <laughs> he laughed don't at worry, me. Don't worry, no back. cops. <laughs> no cops. Mason's a murderer. No, no we do background checks on the people streaming. His white teeth glistening as he did. It made me feel mad and I loved how careless he was and always is. Okay, wait, you want to fuck Tom? No, he doesn't want to fuck Tom, but he wants to fuck. He wants to make love to Sarah. 
I think they're going to make love to Sarah and fuck Tom. And where's Tegan in all of this? We don't know who Tegan is. Tegan and Sarah? brought this up. Where's Jen? Tegan and Sarah. Tegan. We have three and a half minutes. <laughs> this is about Tegan and Sarah. Yeah, Canadian pop duo Tegan, Tegan and oh, Sarah. It's not about them, you silly boy. I do envy him that I decided to act quick and act quick I did. I Okay, I'm going to go through this really quick. Okay, go. Okay. I eventually went back up to my room and got some laxatives. I came down and made sure what I did was put some in his drink when we, he wasn't there. Yes! Got back, he was already chatting to Sarah, and then he had to go and he got tucked in because he had to shit. <laughs> I could see Sarah. <laughs> These are so much better when they're fast. So much. Shit. <laughs> they should be sped up from now on. Dumb and dumber. <laughs> and chatting to her friends. She was looking over at Tom, and that made me so mad. Tom shit his whole body out that night and never met up with Sarah. I went over and asked her out, and she said, maybe someday, but not tonight. It's been weeks now, and Tom's still jokes about how much he shit that night. That's a funny joke. Funny's funny. I know it's something I should probably tell him, but it feels like a big thing to bring up and tell Tom. Tom might not want to hear that kind of thing, but he's bad, and what he did was fucking bad. So bad, so fucking bad. Tom doesn't deserve that. In fact, nobody deserves that fucking thing to come to think of it. Mm. Three people on reddit.com have commented on that. Land Destroyer writes, an idiot for doing that. I'm a big shitter. And if I found that someone had made me shit more, I would be even more <laughs> furious than that already. You're a disgrace, friend. Pack up your stuff and fuck off. Brown Town writes, I'm sounds like shitter. someone got a case of Brown Town. They just come with their own <laughs> quote. Hail yeah, Fairy. Man, you know. <laughs> yeah. And Hail Fairy writes, Sarah is better off without either of you boys in her life. She deserves a prince. Someone dashing and fun. I can't think of anything at the moment, but as soon as I do, you'll be the first to know. I like that. Actually, commented like she had to I'll write that comment know. right there. Yeah, I got and I got to go. All right, <sighs> let's end this. We've got two minutes to go on the clock. Okay. What do you think Andy does in a situation like this? Michelle Brace, go. I don't care. I think Tom. I don't care about Tom. I don't care about Tom. No. And his glistening teeth. No, I don't care about Tom. Care about Tom, Tom sucks. Yep. Tom. Andy sucks. should take up guitar. Yeah. Find another person than Sarah because Sarah doesn't like him. Right yeah. Everyone in this should all just you know grow up. That'll happen naturally. Mm. Yeah, you know, you grow up and then you'll go back. Remember that time in uni when I made a man shit himself? <laughs> right. That was silly of me, Funny but time. I learned and grew from it. Mm. Mm. Now I do it all the time. Yeah, all the now time. I love the back it. Of I do it. I do it yeah. all the time. Think Mason, what do you do in a situation like this? Don't go to the Eagle Bar. You don't go behind you the Eagle go. Bar. You never don't never go behind the Eagle Bar. You don't use any kind of like thermal camera or anything like that on the on the grounds <laughs> behind the Eagle Bar. <laughs> Ultrasound, whatever they do. These whatever days. they do. You're a murderer. No, no. you're not I'm a murderer. Just saying, it's not a it'll be a waste of time and resources. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> I think that's a wonderful place to leave the podcast for today. Remember? We've got twenty. Well, no, we've got we've got a little bit of time left. Nick Mason, how do people find you on your podcast? Hey, how do people? Hey, listen, oh, listen. How do people find you on your podcast? We talk about a podcast. It's on the it's on the internet. Bye, bye. But th- these guys. Gordon Kelly, how do people find you? Annie Donna podcast. <laughs> ABC iView coming up. ABC Comedy. ABC if you've got a TV. <laughs> Plasma. Yeah, all that. Michelle Brady, how do people? Find you? You'll never find me. <gasps> Mystery. Mystery. Oh, yeah. mystery. Do, not look, do not look behind the eagle bar. Good night, Australia. Thank you for coming. We love you. <laughs> we got a you. kill. We got night, Australia. Night, Australia. We got, we got ten oh, seconds. Oh, we got ten seconds. All right. Have you got any more stories? <laughs>
<laughs> she wept Fellas, my dick. Anybody, anybody want to have? Uh, anyone? Anybody want to um, discuss anything? Was there anything that went? <laughs> you felt went like unaddressed oh, on the podcast? Can, we do a sketch can I? Can I just suggest something that I was thinking about Tom and how he had to shit himself like that? You've, you've I already think got a mic. A great thing. A great thing. <laughs> thank Double mic. A great thing. Smart. A great thing about that would be obviously he could shit anywhere because for him every, any hole's a goal. That's and, so true. Oh, you know, that's you brought, brought it all together. Which I, can yeah. we edit that in the podcast? Even the butt. Too late to even. <laughs> I shit in a, the butt hole. Do you think you could? I own. I own that joke. <laughs> TN, I know, TN, but I, I changed TN. it the context. Yeah. If I see that on Jay Leno or anything like that, it's a very Leno joke. How are you two doing? Even Carl is talking about buttholes and and poos. That show's done. That show's. Done. Done. It's done. Yeah, but just in his daily life. If, he, yes. if, I, if I'm listening in on I'm him... Still, I I'm still feeding him jokes yeah, in yeah, his yeah. regular life. Mm. <laughs> what was the last joke you wrote for Mad as Hell? Uh, I found a Bill Shorten zinger. Ah, uh, great. Yeah. What was the first joke you wrote for Mad as Hell? I found... Bill Shorten? Bill Shorten. It was all, and, <laughs> it was all Bill it Shorten. It was just an old... It was all, such a big Bill yeah. Shorten joke. And, that, that, and that, was, that was pre-Bill Bill Shorten's right. uh, sort of... Uh, yeah. How, how you uh, for me, I... I, I my, sorry, sorry. No, You've already got a mic in. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Um, again, somebody else hold it. For God's <laughs> sake. Uh, my last joke that I wrote for Mad as Hell was a bit about... Um, Indigenous recognition um, and uh, Andrew Bolt. It was a very worthy, very important topic to be brought up and to be addressed. Was it in the on last episode? Broadcast. It was, yes. That's sick. Made to the final broadcast. Great. Some of the best comedy writers in Australia. Right the here. Best. IMO. Everybody here. Everybody I-M-H-O. here. IMHO. Yeah. <laughs> IMHO. Oh, okay. I, I, yeah. I, IMO and for the, me. One of the best podcasters in the world. Oh, my oh, goodness. One of the best podcasters in the world. Can you believe that? Opinion. <laughs> My, my honest opinion is he's one of the best podcasters in the world and one of the best looking guys I've ever bloody seen in my life. Yeah. Um, how, how do you respond? Um, Even the button. My opinion, Sam is no, one right, of the no, nicest so people right. I've ever met. Oh, wow. Can I say one of the loveliest people I've ever met? One of the loveliest people I've ever met? One of the loveliest people I've ever met? Well, I'm going to do it to you too. One of the loveliest people I've ever met. <laughs> Imagine yeah. if I didn't do I that. Mean, that. No, I just go away and everyone's laughing. Yeah, no, you made it, uh, you made it sound I, like you did. I made it sound like I was going to do it. Yeah. I think everybody's very good. You met everyone. Yeah, did you have a good time on the podcast? Yeah, I did. Yeah, good fun, yeah. Brennan, same question. I had an absolute ball, and I hope the people (laughs) at home had a great time. I hope so too. And there was a lot of talk in the chat, Um, I I can feed that back to you, that this was possibly the most visual this podcast has ever been. Now, I realise that, like, in a lot of ways... (laughs) That's very often, you know, just the nature of the filming it will, will certainly add to its visual nature. That's right. And having Brody and Kelly on sometimes makes yeah. it a bit of a visual But I think, I think people were really excited about the opportunity to watch it live, to see, you know, that sort of deconstruction yes. of the form taking mm. place. Felt wonderful. And, and, I, and, I, and they also expressed their sympathy for anybody who wasn't watching it visually <laughs> and who might be... The, new, but the, na- the next podcast, next podcast is here. I know, he but we, we have to fill 15 minutes. <laughs> oh, you have to, oh, 15 oh. minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Josh Earl, how are you? Well, we can't help you with that, it's honestly. This is yeah, yeah. You're on TV. Yeah. 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 How does it feel? Do you feel good? Hey, Josh. Josh, do you want to give some people any, any uh, yeah. you know, ahead of the time previews about what people might see? Uh, it's, it's, don't you know who I am? It's Michael Hing, Emma Holland, Grace Jarvis, Tim Clark and me, and it's uh, going to be very, very funny. Stick around. <laughs> Stick around. Really How Stick around. It's really exciting. Can we just um, get a shot of this? Uh, yeah. Emma, Little it's happening again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's happening again. What's it, what are we looking at? This oh, man. Yeah. About how big his muscles are. Well, he's yeah. got a, he's oh, got a wrong. Turn, yeah. turn, turn slightly because we've only got the one oh, camera. Oh, damn. There you go. There we See, go. that's oh, how you get huge. Yeah. Wow. It's not flexing. even flexing either. That's. I told, I'm not. I told, yeah. I told. Someone, I reckon he's getting it somewhere. That's what I'm saying. Now that he's gone, do you think he's juicing? You think he's just probably, probably one of the most um, muscular <laughs> podcasters um, in Australia. I'm not in of this. These guys are the, the um, yeah. I mean, you can you can talk. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Um, this is you're shooting your load before your podcast. Uh, no, but Thanks feel free. For feel podcast. free for everybody's load to just be Save completely that unloaded. Sweet load. <laughs> <laughs> That's Save good. your like loads. That. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that I'm in control of this microphone. Yeah, so long, but I was holding it up, having to go on. All right. Now. Yeah, um, but no, it is very nice to think of. Um, any any conversation, but indeed everything hmm. you say in conversation is being shooting loads at each other. <laughs> um, lovely. It's lovely. Very nice. Comedy, very nice. Comedy is sex. Nice. Comedy is sexuality. Is awesome. <laughs> We're going to shoot ropes of laughs. <laughs>, laughs. That's right. What's a yeah. load? <laughs> very good, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> That's a rope, baby. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Can someone good. please ask me what it's like to be a woman in comedy? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, oh, no. Um, <laughs> You're you're from Canberra. Yeah. You're from Canberra. I lived in Canberra for a time. Yeah, and he's from Tassie. No, 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 no. behind you. Oh, yeah, he is. Yeah. Where are you from? 
Melbourne. Oh. Uh, Australia. Uh, Australia. Uh, Australia. Uh, Australia. Uh, Australia. 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 Yeah. Oh, so good. So um, good. I, I used to live in Canberra. Where did you guys live in Canberra? Am I legally allowed to say this? Uh, Gungarland. Gungarland. 2913. Whoa. How about... Holden. 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 Oh. Is that down south? <laughs> um, because there was a... I was there and then there was a big bushfire. And then everyone's house burnt down. And then my parents were like, we'll buy one of these burnt up houses for cheap. Ooh. And then they got all the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. This is good. It's giving good. you the thumbs up. This yeah. is good content. That would have been a really good time to get on the property. I can recommend to the viewers buy property after there's been a natural disaster. <laughs> this is good. Brody agrees with this because Broden was telling me this before we started the podcast. Maryville. Today. Maryville. 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 It's Maryville. It's Maryville. It's Maryville. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful town uh, in Melbourne. Yes. In Victoria. And it's been. Um, uh, flooded or it was part of. Oh, yeah. Let's not get into this, <laughs> but it was part of the Black Saturday in uh, 2009. Yes, okay, yeah. And it's still uh, cheap now? Sorry, no, it's not cheap. It's okay. very expensive, actually. <laughs> you should have bought it um, I, well, I, I, I messaged Emma when we were doing shows in Canberra. I said, oh, What are all yeah. the Canberra jokes? Yeah. And then, and what she just, she like, you know, this one. just, this one. This one. and uh, I read them out oh. just before the show. <laughs> And um, <laughs> and it, everyone fucking killed, like just to this, war, like just to the people who came in early. You got it, you know it. You, 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 do, you know Canberra. Yeah, um, it's just uh, just another uh, way that women have been pushed out of the limelight. <laughs> I write all this material. <laughs> it was the best night of my life. <laughs> I fucking dominated. <laughs> And, and is it true that if you if you text Emma, she has to tell you all her jokes Legally. about a particular topic? Legally, she can't Legally, turn yeah. you down. I yeah. signed a contract as a baby. Yes. Because yeah. a, a goblin guessed my name. Yeah. <laughs> it's, the Don, it's the Donna Clause. We every, get all this every, stuff. Every, every thought you have is in the public domain. <laughs> so a goblin guessed your name. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Emma. wow. Emma. Uh, you it's actually... It's all it was the most popular name of the year. Yeah. It's a real reverse rumple stilts can you were pulling Ooh. there. No, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what I'm talking know who about. That is. <laughs> Have you been filling for 15 minutes all How's day? Going? Going? Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, you know, Al's done a lot of the heavy lifting. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you wouldn't need to. Sorry, go grab the logs. Oh, we're back. Yeah, we're back. Here it is. Do you want us to do a sketch or anything? I know you two like sketches. Yeah, oh, like sketches. We, and you, you like sketches? You're a sketch I comedy. Love sketch comedy. Do you guys do? All right, I'll be a shopkeeper. Yeah. And you guys are all. Uh, I, I don't know. Well, I mean, I'll leave that to you. Just improv. Do you want to write the sketch first? I was going to wait and write the sketch and come back. And I, I, mean, I, thought, I thought that was more or less the idea, and we'll punch it up in the yeah, room. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, yeah. It's, a, it's a writer's room. But this is right. my idea. Yeah, yeah. This okay, is great. my idea. Okay, yeah, you own it? The shopkeeper okay, idea. Okay, right, right. <laughs> yeah. What's and this? anything we contribute, we keep, right? No so, impro, no, we're writing it. Oh, right, right. We keep keep any of the words that you use. Okay, great. But I'd like the general vibe. Okay, so, okay, we'll walk in. So you're a shopkeeper. Ding, ding. Yeah. Now we're that? improing. Is What's going on? Yeah. Are we writing this or are we improing? Well, it seems very. It seems very. What did that man just say? He said ding ding. Yeah. yeah. So are you improing? <laughs> no, I'm. That, that was a genuine question. Was that a tram yeah. out the front? Tram out. Was a tram out the front? No, was that a tram? No, it was Andy. Andy. This is ding. this is, ding. This is yeah. kind of descending a little bit. It could be a tram out the front. <laughs> it's descending now. No. It's been an hour of this. Yeah, yeah, but you know, but. This is the most. This is the most. <laughs> mm. right. well, what's the this the last? Do you remember when you did? You wrote uh, four hundred sketches yeah. until you stopped. Well, we, we, we just came up with the ideas. Yeah. Oh no, three hundred. We we have to do four hundred in about six in about a year. How, yeah. how many? Scared? Yeah, we're really scared. Sorry. You don't. You don't have to though. <laughs> I say this every time. You don't have to. You can yeah. Up, you I know, know, but we have to. It's, yeah. this, it's this weird situation where, like, we're you know, we're. <laughs> I think I think for our generation, for people of our age, a lot of the traditional structures of society and the traditional expectations have fallen away. Oh, isn't it you so know, true? church no so longer true. has the same role. You can't expect the same loyalty from your employer and that that relationship in both directions has, has sort of been fractured. And so really the only things that we have, the only guiding lights to sort of lead us onwards as you know as we as we mature are uh, arbitrary bullshit we decide to do ourselves yes once we give up on arbitrary bullshit we'll literally have yes. nothing left what are the arbitrary what's what, what are some examples of the arbitrary bullshit i'd like five yeah well i mean i'd say five. you know making, five. Five. making five. every time we make a two in the think tank episode yes. it's arbitrary bullshit it's arbitrary bullshit the, the the rules the structures that we've made up they, yeah they, they mean nothing so you're saying podcasts as a yeah, whole i was going to say podcasts podcast as a whole, whole like, the very idea yeah. of podcasting is itself you know, a, not, it's a lie that we tell ourselves. Would you say it's, it's replacing God? 
I think it has. I think, it, I think <laughs> podcasting, has, <laughs> podcasting has killed God. <laughs> we did yeah. it, guys. <laughs> that's, that's, that's wonderful. That's Fucking wonderful. hell, that's yeah. awesome. I think it's a, God, I think it's a golden great. calf. It's a false idol. Um, yeah. Uh-huh. You know. <laughs> We're living if, in it. Guys, we killed God. We'd even... We'd, if we'd the Antichrist... Just us with that. We could write that on our to-do list and check it off now. Because if I was the Antichrist looking to begin my my reign on Earth, you know, the, yeah. the, the, the sort start of the, with podcast. Well, I think I'd Joe Rogan. I'd be here right now Three today at this like f- this orgy basically yes. of, of podcasting, oh. sort of obscene, um, wasteful, you know. so wasteful, mm. disgusting, mm. self yeah. Is this the last one now? Worship at Second the altar, last, of, I think. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Right yeah, we're closing on oh. Kentucky, Kentucky Fried Chat. Ch- yeah. yeah. Hey? You're going to get KFC? Uh, uh, well, uh, Someone will be getting KFC. Beck will be getting some KFC. Maybe Michael, Z- uh, Michael Xavier Leides? <laughs> <laughs> Michael Xavier Leides. Xavier Michael Leides. Xavier Michael Leides? Yes. And, and, we'll, and then they'll be eating, you know, eating yep. like that. It's yeah. a podcast. They're all talking, praising, yes. uh, you know, a, a white God. man eating his Killing flesh. Sacrifice. It's the last one because this place is going to stink after that. It's going to smell like that fried shook. Oh. It'll be, I mean, oh, it will probably cover the paint smell in here quite nicely. come back for that podcast because it's going to be Great, great podcast. Oh, yeah, I just get some on the way home if I want it. If yeah. you want it. Podcasts? Yeah. No, yeah, podcasts. You're doing pretty well then. <laughs> yeah, somebody's, had, somebody's got a TV show on the ABC. Yeah, I can, I can listen to any podcast in any time I want. Wow. I've never, I've never. Do you listen to podcasts at your work? <clears throat> Not on the tram. No. You won't yeah. trick me, bro. Ah, to say it live. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah no. Got him. Got him a beauty. Yeah, I bet he can walk to my ability. <laughs> well, the pod- a, a podcast or a really good play would be about the crazy characters that come onto a tram. Oh, yeah. that's funny. I thought you were going to say I should listen to a play while I'm... I'm not allowed to listen to a podcast, oh, but I could, I could watch a watch play. Watch like, Or you could, play you could re- on, maybe on read a play? Yeah. 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 Or, you know, that they, seems safe <laughs> and fun. You're just driving along listening to 12 Angry Men, yeah. you know, and the, and, the, and the way that... Everyone voted, he's guilty, 11 people, but one person turned the whole room. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, spoilers. Fans. Yeah, yeah, but, <laughs> but I mean, it's because they weren't wearing their, the, the, the person who witnessed it wasn't wearing their glasses. That's right. Mm. And they, 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 they went through and, and talked, and all the witnesses were bullshit. So they, they were, I don't know if they were a good jury, actually. Yeah, it was a pretty bad jury. And luckily, <laughs> luckily there was one guy there with some, with some integrity to, yeah. you know, maybe call them on it. Probably Lovely bad lawyers as well, though, yeah, who would let it get to that There should either be state. one microphone for all, each of us, yeah, or no microphone at all. System. I think but it feels good. This, 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 system is this, so upsetting. this is not a podcast. That's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, this is, is a middle chat podcast. This, this is, is not a pipe. This is, <laughs> this is, you give me two minutes? We only got two minutes left to fill. We, oh, no. Yeah. This is, it's so much more to say. It's so loud. Yeah. Okay, and I think we should do that scene now. Yeah. Uh, is, are we doing improv? Yeah, I yeah. need to know. Yeah, it is improv. Don't trick okay. me. But improv is a form of... I need to know if it's a writer's room or yeah. if it's an improv scenario. Okay. I, I don't be, I'll, I'll, I'll get angry and start like... Yeah, you do get angry. Okay, yeah, can we all angry. walk in now? All yeah. Okay, yeah, all walk, walk in. No, we're Ready? in the shop. Hey? He's walking in. We're in the shop. No, he's no, the shopkeeper. Shop oh, goodness. But maybe this is a shop Sorry. where the shop comes to you. Yes, okay, here we go. Um, uh... I'm really sorry, guys. The shop closed five minutes ago. If you'd been here slightly earlier, I would have been able to help you. But um, you can get on that tram outside. Ding, ding. Uh, at the end. Oh, no. The Russia, no. Russia have nuked. Have nuked. The have, have nuked yes, the Ukraine. They've escalated it. They've escalated it to nuclear weapons. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, get on the tram. <laughs> and then it blows. Can we do it? like explosion? No, look, how, how's, like the, how's, the, how's, the, how's NATO going to respond? Um, help, I'm not good at improv. Wait, no, no, no. no. <laughs> um... Uh, Hopefully, with not nuclear, maybe they it's match. All right. Elon, Elon Musk has twi- tweeted a compromise. Ah, suggests right. a compromise. He says that um, what is it? we'll restore the original territorial boundaries before the initial invasion. Crimea remains with Russia, and um, and Zelensky's tweeted sounds good. He's a fuckwit, isn't he? Yeah, yeah he's a bit. Yeah. You don't like yeah. him? You're not a fan. Zelensky. Which one? No, 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 no. I, I wow. think Zelensky. You like Musk? Wow. The Even fan of Musk. Fascism, I love. You seem like a Musk guy. If I'm going to beg you, you seem like a Musk guy. We're getting we're getting the wrap up. No. <laughs> do you throw? Do you throw? Hey, no. Yeah, we can throw. Do you want to throw? No. Do you want to throw? No, I do not. Absolutely not. No, no, no. What's it called? Okay. Don't you know All who right. I am? Please oh. welcome our final, uh, final podcast. No, no, it's not the final podcast the for today. The penultimate podcast for today. But it's their last. Is it your last one ever? No, it's, their, it's their last one today. <laughs> Please welcome. <laughs> Don't you know who I am? With Josh Earl and guests. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> and welcome to Don't You Know Who I Am. Did I go early, Evan? I went early, didn't I? Oh, hello. Welcome to Don't You Know Who I Am, the podcast that asks who knows whom, who knows what, because who knows why. My name is Josh Earl, 
And if this is the first time you're watching, what I do is every single week of doing this podcast, I will look at the internet and find other Josh Earls and see what they're doing. And this week I found a new one. <gasps> I found a new one. Never had this guy before. <laughs> this is the manager of a chicken restaurant in Sussex. And the chicken restaurant's called Cox Kitchen. Oh. This is why you bring the podcast back, Josh. <laughs> There's a Josh born every minute. <laughs> Cox Kitchen, I see what they've done there. Hey, what I do, let's get four very funny guests and let's meet them now. Our first guest shares his name with an attorney advisor for the Department of Justice in Washington, D.C. But one we have here can be heard weekdays on Triple J it is Michael Hing, everyone. Hello. Hey, Michael. Hello, Hello Josh. How's things? Things pretty good. Um, doing a podcast right now. I, was, I forgot to say to be here. letters and numbers as well. You, you're the oh, host. yeah. I mean, you, you know. You host. This, this isn't going to bump them up. You know. This <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everyone, it's, it's <laughs> letters and numbers. It's We're good. fine. <laughs> hey, also joining us is a comedian who shares her name with a London creative manager of a company called Pray As You Go. Please welcome. It's Emma Holland. That's awesome. Woo. Yeah, Pray As You Go. You That's great. Because I've been on Christian YouTube for some time <laughs> and it's nice to know that I'm being accepted into that community. Do you know what this business is? Have a no. pray as you go. What, what, any, this is open to everyone. What do you What's, think? What be? is Christian YouTube? I'm interested in that. <laughs> oh, we <laughs> don't have time. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> he invented <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> Christian a lot of YouTube. Young people telling you ways not to fuck. <laughs> but is it yeah. is it a separate website? No, it's just. Sorry, I'm like, 400 years old. <laughs> is, that, is that where you learn about soaking? What is That's soaking? Mormonism. That's Mormon. Oh, I'm sure the Christians do that as well. I'm yeah. evangelical strictly. I oh, okay. I don't go into all that other okay. junk. We'll chat after. Soaking, that's for a good time. Yeah. <laughs> pray As You Go is an app that reminds you to pray. To pray. Yeah. Oh, I have one of those for drinking water. Oh, <laughs> Michael. Well, combine the two, <laughs> turn it into wine. All right, our next guest shares her name with a London archaeologist who is currently working as a school librarian. Two jobs I can see you doing. Please welcome it's Grace Jarvis. Hello, Grace. You look like both of them right now. We're all, uh, we're all together on a brand. <laughs> <laughs> Me and all the Grace Jarvises. Yeah. We have a lot in common. What are London-based women? Well, two. That's all. That's heaps. I mean, you're correct. There are a lot of London-based women. <laughs> yeah. A lot of women there. I've a lot of women. I said it. Some of them are probably watching tonight or today. Hello, London-based women. Yeah. <laughs> Top of the morning to ye. <laughs> <laughs> and finally is a man who shares his name with a Melbourne chocolatier. Ooh. But the one out here is comedian Tim Clark. Yay! Hello, everyone. Thank you so much. Actually the name's you. Tim Cadbury. <laughs> I'm Tim Cadbury. That's right. I'm Richie Rich's butler from the movie Richie Rich. Starring it's beautiful. Macaulay Culkin. Macaulay Culkin. One of my favourite Culkins. Uh, it's so nice to be here in cyberspace. Dri when you're driving along the information superhighway, make sure you in inf inflammation superhighway. Get that tested. But you're on the information superhighway. Unroll your windows, because hey. I refer to my whole body as the inflammation <laughs> superhighway. Beep beep. I uh, stop the earth. I want to get off. Wave out the window. You you're okay? What is happening? People podcasting on the side, and we've got a, <laughs> we've got a sign that says "Will Pod for Food." Let us in. We're hitchhiking down the highway. Like the opposite. Destination: of the Laugh Town. <laughs> Have you ever met Tim before? Is this? I've seen Tim do com I've seen Tim perform before. Comedy. I've seen Tim talk on stage, <laughs> <laughs> do mixed results. <laughs> well, thank you for doing this. Thank you for having us. It's been, a, it's been a while since I've done one of these. The last one I did was in Sydney, like mm -hmm. three months ago. So mm -hmm. I could be a little bit rusty. So pressure's on you for. Did you bring it back because the people like were demanding it? They were bang. They were Evan and Beck said, doors. "Do you want to do it here?" And I said, oh, "Okay, yeah, I'll do it." People, here. yeah, the yeah. people, the people, yeah, they're Evan and Beck people. Yeah, <laughs> but the podcast is retired now, theoretically, right? Yes, except for special events like this. Special events. So, so once a month on Patreon, huh. uh, I'll do I'll do an episode. Okay, so, yeah. right. <laughs> and maybe in festivals, maybe festivals when you know to give yeah. people. A showcase. Go, come Little on. Little taste of the JE. You yeah. know? John Farnham of podcasts. That's me. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Fuck as yeah. In, as in like. It's great. Yeah, good. <laughs> You're the voice trying to understand yeah, exactly, it. Because people make it slow and make it clear. Fast. Yeah. Oh. Oh. We don't, oh. oh. We don't have the upper right to that. Okay, what we're going to do <laughs> is we're going to play a game. And now the first game tonight is called Social Me, Me, Me. What I'm going to do, I'm going to read out status updates by the five of us. I'm included uh -huh. in this. Great, okay. If you think you know who wrote these, buzz in. Your names are your buzzers. You get a point if you get it right. If you get it incorrect, the person actually wrote it, they get the point. So you can't lose points. Oh, so just go, go crazy. Go nuts. Gosh. All God, right. Thank God Pax is on because this is a one hell of a game. <laughs> <laughs> you can't buzz in for your own one. <laughs> That's the other one. All right. Here we go. Question one. It's so dumb that daylight savings still takes it out of you the next day. I lost one hour of sleep and suddenly I've had diarrhea for the past four months. Emma. Yes, Emma. Michael Hing. No, that was Tim Clark. A point there for Tim. Yes. <laughs> what 
What? What? You just seem like the kind of guy who has something to say about daylight savings. <laughs> oh. And also that you have diarrhea. <laughs> I will say that my stools are perfect. <laughs> All right, Brad. I have, I have I have nothing but the most pristine <laughs> expulsions from my anus. <laughs> so. Think about that. It was pretty quick time. to get that one in, wasn't it? It's like you almost wanted it to say it. You just had to wedge it in anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I've been complimented on mine before. Really? I had a colonic irrigation and she was like, oh, these are very big. Well done. And I was like, thank you. Thank you very much. What's very big? My poo, my stools. As in like they were coming out solid. They weren't like pebbly. Sometimes she said that's an issue. That woman is is strange. No, she's a, a, she's an expert. That's a specific woman. I don't care for that at all. She loved it. No, no, I like it. I like. <laughs> I, I, I respect the size queen. <laughs> <laughs> she knows what she wants. <laughs> but she, so I had t- two two visits. Right. Mm-hmm. Can't just do it all in one. And so the second time I went back, they, they went, challenge accepted. Well, they said, we Googled you when you left. You're a comedian. We watched your clips. And I was like, oh, that's not what you should be doing to your clients <laughs> and telling them. And now we will wash your asshole. And also you have a beautiful asshole. <laughs> so congratulations. That's not coming from me. That was in the space of. That's yeah, that's just so well known about you, Joe. It's unrelated. People Another are talking. thing that happened in the, in the space sites. of the last episode and this episode, someone online, Grace, you were included in this, sent us no. all a, an like a gif of their bum, like their bum hole. You saw this, right? I did not. I saw this. Yeah. <laughs> he tagged us in it because he said, "You, you, this looks oh, like a this bunch guy. of people who look like who love bum hole. So yeah, what he you, did? You posted the post of like, "Here's who's on my podcast," and then a, a guy who's whose username was like I heart buttholes or something. Yes. <laughs> it was like this guy, see, it was like, this seems like a group of people who love buttholes. And I was like, that feels like confirmation bias. What, what, <laughs> you he, seem butthole obsessed. He's an NFT artist, this guy. And he's, yes! taking, a photo. Yes! <laughs> he's taking a photo of his butthole <laughs> every day for so long. And then he's made them Is go. It like a stop motion animation? Lovely graphics. And like first time you just think it's like, like a, paint spider kind of thing and then you realize oh it's, it's someone's is he bum spreading? hole is he spreading them cheeks well not spreading but you can see it's it's right up there it's like a, mm. okay. it's right in there and well, what he tweeted this at you he tweeted he he tweeted these people look like they'd love buttholes but it was from a post like from five years ago mm. oh so he's, it's a bot or something that's just tweeting no it's everyone. not a bot because he's a fan of the, these <laughs> are the people who love josh earl i retweeted <laughs> it going this is funny and then he followed me and then sent me all these dms but then the last one he sent me was like hey man you're gonna have to follow me back Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to follow you anymore. And I'm like, I don't. I only like posted, tweeted you because I think it's very funny. If you had to guess zero to ten, is he a freak? What sort uh, of freak level? He could be watching. Hello, butt lover. Okay, uh, let's move on. All right. Ten. Ten. Okay. <laughs> These Hollywood celebrities are all hair and teeth, but so is an ovarian cyst. So, Tim. yes, Tim. Grace Jarvis. You are correct. Another point there for Tim. Yes. That was a giveaway. Yeah. <laughs> what was the giveaway? Uh, talking about cysts. The cysts. <laughs> The ovarian cyst, Michael. Okay, I'm learning you all. Mm. I don't have any ovarian cysts. Diarrhea. Cysts. <laughs> Other one. <laughs> you. Josh. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Question three. Before every show, I look at photos of dogs that look like Richard Gere to be in the mi- right mindset. It's a bit of a process, but it's worth to go on stage feeling confident. What do you do to pre- prepare for your job? Grace. Yes, Grace. Tim. No, that's Emma Holland. Point there for Emma. Was when that a joke or was that I not believe the amount can't. of photos that look like Richard Gere of little dogs. <laughs> Is there a lot of dogs that look like Richard Gere? There's heaps. He There's does so have a, yeah, he does have a dog-like appearance yeah, in a yeah. good way. For, for people like me who can't remember anyone, what's Richard Gere's deal? Yeah. He was a a Billy Flynn in Chicago. Guy. Did he beat his wife? No. Oh, okay. No, it's uh, different possibly, I mean, <laughs> just to say. The famous rumour, to also piggyback off the last uh, t- topic, was that he famously had a gerbil in his anus. And if any of you out there have gerbils in your anus, send them to us. Tag Josh Earl Comedy. Uh. Give us a call. Give us a call. Why don't hundred? <laughs> Honestly, if someone tweeted at me that they had a gerbil in their anus and they were like, Grace, I need your help, I would come over. I would be like, you're a stranger, but I'm, I have Grace, to help you. Grace, don't put that out there. Yeah. Do not put that off the online. What do you think you can do in that situation? I don't know, but I have tongs. Grace, have you, have you never been a woman on the internet before? <laughs> oh, I have. I got have a message not. from a guy the other day that was like, I'm... He was, he. I tweeted a tweet that said the word boobs in the tweet, right. and then he messaged me and was like, "You said the word boobs, and now I can't stop thinking about boobs." Right. And I was like, "Sure." And then he said, "I'm on antidepressants that render me almost erectionless. I need help." And I was like, it "Can't be from me, dude." <laughs> 
I'm not the expert in this situation. You say, what, do you think I look like I'm an expert in erections? <laughs> I have a lot of wool tights. It's not my area. Saying, you're already on the internet, buddy. You're almost there. Yeah, you, Dig a bit I, deeper. Literally, I, I replied to him and I was like, you got a Google boobs move. Man, it's going to blow your mind. <laughs> I want to say th thank you for your $60, by the way. Because <laughs> statistically, you're watching this. I never know which camera to look at, so I'm just eyeing I'm all. looking at them all. Don't look at that one. That one's mine. Okay. I'm looking right. to my friends who I'm playing a game with. Grace, <laughs> Emma, are your friends, Michael? Kim, <laughs> and Josh. I'm looking at my friends. The great subscribers of <laughs> Cyberspace, the information superhighway. Beep, beep. Question four. The beautiful thing about international travel is learning that piss smells the same no matter where you are. Whoa, that ping. That ping. feels like a Josh. No, that's a Grace. Fuck. Went there for Grace. It does. It's the true equaliser, piss. Beautiful. You, you can be anywhere in the world, smell some piss. You'd be like, I could be in Melbourne right now. You know where it doesn't. Uh, the asparagus factory in France? Helsinki. <laughs> Helsinki has a smell to it, the whole town, and then you don't realise, and then you have, they're known for their reindeer. That's what they eat. Like That's reindeer of. piss. It's ra reindeer, the gaminess of the reindeer makes your piss smell, and that's the whole city smells like that. Oh. You know how stressed is dessert backwards? Yep. Do you know piss is sip backwards? <laughs> You're going to get some weirdos now. Huh? <laughs> That's weirdo bait. Good. Next question. Here we go. Question five. A lot of people talking about the role of comedy in society. The way I see it, <laughs> comedy's main function is to introduce comedians to other comedians so they can be friends, sparing the rest of you from having to be friends with truly some of the most annoying people on the planet. Tim. Grace. Yes, Tim, I heard Tim first. I think that's you, Josh. No, that is Michael Hing. Damn Michael it. Hing. Hing. Everyone's Hing. on the board. I hate all comedians. <laughs> Even my closest friends. I remember I retweeted that. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone's quite nice. No, you don't. No, I don't. You absolutely <laughs> don't. I've seen it inside your heart. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> Question six. Biting my nails is somehow both self-harm and self-care. Emma. Okay. Yes, Emma. Grace. Yes, you are correct. Yes, point there for Emma. Any reference to self-harm? <laughs> <laughs> Here's a Grace Jarvis. And self-harm, okay. I was just at a gig with Grace and she go, She started stammering going, uh, uh, um, I shouldn't. No, uh, and someone just goes, go for it. <laughs> and she goes, all right, I used to self-harm. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the crowd is too supportive. <laughs> the irony of someone yelling, go for it. <laughs> <It's> so, <laughs> so, do you bite your nails? Pardon? You bite your nails? Yeah, too? compulsively. Uh, I think that's a cool thing to do. You bite your nails? All the time. <laughs> do you bite your nails, Hing? Yes, yeah, but it's cool. No, I'm perfect. Yeah, I don't either. Oh. I used to, and then I. How would you, you outgrow it? Did you use the, the nail stopped. polish? Or? Oh, I just stopped. I just went, I, I just tried using this. the nail polish, but then I got a taste for it. Yeah. Oh, Grace. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. The nail polish is this the self-harm you were talking about? <laughs> just a little whiff now and again, yeah. you know? Just have a little whiff. It's, it's a little treat for it's us. It's supposed to taste bad, so you don't bite your nails, but then I would just, like, power through it. <laughs> just Grace. Bite them. This is how lovely my wife's family is. So her mum, she used to bite her nails, my wife, and so her mum in her sleep would go in and put the stuff on her nails, and her mum still feels guilty for doing that. Like, whereas my family oh, was just, oh, beat me with the fucking kettle jug, like the the <laughs> as in like the cord that wait full or empty? <laughs> no, the cord that connected the kettle. Oh, okay. Which, I was thinking oh, okay. around the back of the legs. <laughs> for for biting nails or just in general? Just for being for asking more gruel <laughs> at dinner time. <laughs> <laughs> whereas and, and my parents like yeah, but you know, I, we had three boys had to do something, and so you had to do something. You know, some of, yeah, we we were, we were a, a headache. <laughs> That's well, it. Anyway. The weirdest punishment I had as a kid was my mum locked me in a chicken coop one time because mm. um, because we had chickens yep. and she w I threw a tantrum and then she um she locked me in a chicken coop for 20 minutes. But anyway, I, I, I alphaed them, so <laughs> jokes on them. <laughs> and now he, only, now he only eats by pecking. <laughs> right, next question, at Carpet Court Australia. So this was directed to Carpet Court Australia. Huh? I went to your court and I lost custody of my kids. Grace. <laughs> <laughs> Grace. Tim. Yes, it was Tim. Yes, put there for Grace. <laughs> uh, well, hope they're watching. Uh, uh, Daddy loves you. <laughs> Tim loves to lose custody of his fake kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as close as I'm going to get. Your online persona is kind of family court dad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yet. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's cultivated. You know. <laughs> Powerful. Yeah. yeah. Next question. At my funeral, please leave me to rot in a barrel and then after a while fling what remains at some oil executives. Tim. Yes, Tim. Grace? You would think so, but it's Michael Hing. That's Tim. Yeah. I would think so. Oh, that was that was because the Queen's funeral was on and ah. everyone was making a big hoo-ha about that and I, I was sort of 
trying to think of a, a joke, and that was mm. the you know that was what came out. It's too mainstream for Grace. I was obsessed with the queen, like the the way everyone was talking about the queen dying. Everyone was like so what? upset. They were like, <laughs> <laughs> they were like, oh my god, it's gone the, it's too. It's been soon. in the news. <laughs> like she's oh. ninety six. Oh. Like. Yeah. If you, if I get to that age, put a bullet in me. I can't imagine. Again, <laughs> yeah, don't say that as a person yeah. on the internet. What I, what I loved was everyone leaving like Paddington Bears and Marmalade Sandwiches. Oh, awesome! That was great. And I think if we had, like, say, we do become a republic and we have a king, mm. and we'd leave like or a queen, uh, no, president we'd be. Uh, we'd leave <laughs> like, like toy agros. And cruskets, and that would be Aussie. That would be yeah, leave that out for. Where them. they were like talking about Paddington Bear, like leading her into the afterlife, like implying <laughs> that she's like the Grim Reaper, <laughs> like the Paddington Bear is the English <laughs> version of like the, yeah, the ferryman of the River Styx, like. Uh. So being put into a marmalade sandwich and thrown down a river is how Grace would like to go. <laughs> That's much more up your alley, I yeah. think. All right, question nine. Hell is waking up every day with an email saying you have a new MyGov message. Emma. Oh, it's Emma. You. Yes, it was me. Yeah, point there for Emma. Yes. How did you guess that? Just hadn't been one for him in a while. Ooh. Oh, you met a game. Well, at Interesting. All. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is a bad thing, the MyGov message. Sometimes it's because Medicare's given you money. Mm. I got an email from MyGov this morning. They're asking, what are we? <laughs> <laughs> question nine. <laughs> Actually, question ten. Question ten. I'm flipping off the moon and the cops can't stop me. Tim. Yes, Tim. Emma? No, that was Grace. Put that for Grace. I thought that would be a you, Tim. Yeah. <laughs> well, I chose it. It does seem like it does have the energy of someone with two kids. <laughs> and yet it was a frustrated mum. Not a dad who legally can't see him. Oh, well. I also do not have kids. I don't want to be a part of your weird family court drama. Please, they could be watching my kids. <laughs> Dwayne, The Rock, Johnson. <laughs> I love my three little, little boys. <laughs> All right, at the end of the round, the scores are Michael Hing on two points. Woo! Tim Clark on two points. Woo! Grace Jarvis on three points. Also on three points, Emma Holland. Whoa. I need to reel it in. I get too competitive. Sometimes I forget to do jokes. Well, it's been an issue before. <laughs> on panel shows? or I'd rather not general. say. <laughs> that happened to me on a panel show. Did it? There was, um, you know, do you know the music show Spicks and Specs? No. Uh, well, never heard of it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was on the good version of that show. And... Uh, <laughs> Oh, there's a there's a game in it. You know the famous game it's where still they on TV. They can't. They yeah, can't. It's, yeah, it's yeah. on. It's it's, True. it's only like an hour and a half. They brought it back a second time. Well, we'll be done it. with this, right? Yeah, yeah we'll oh, be done. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they they obviously the the the, the famous is the, where they people sing out of the book. Yes. Yeah. And then they do the, the the lyrics from the, the the book, but the tune is from the song or whatever. It's called substitute. Yes, right. Well, not all of us hosted it, Josh. So yeah. <laughs> But, uh, Only two people in the world have hosted that show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one Only of one of them hosted it once, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, and but because my brain's all like music nerd, and I never listen to lyrics, I was like too good at that game. So they'd sing like a little bit, I'd get it, and then uh, and then that was not fun for anyone because no one enjoyed that because I was too good at it. Well, I was trying to win, and then they made us redo it again. <laughs> I was gonna say that's on the. Pre we would always tell them, don't buzz in, even if you know it. To oh. let them sing because this is their time to shine. Yeah, no, so. I maybe missed that bit of the briefing. I was just like, got it, uh, white stripes or whatever. Mm. <laughs> it was like, this isn't fun for anyone. <laughs> and if anyone goes on that show and sings, like when you when you watch it, if you're watching it and and they're singing like, oh, what's this? They've been trained. It's uh, it's <laughs> they've been given it a week in advance. So if they pretend they don't know the song or if they complain, I didn't I didn't sing well because I didn't know the song. No, you, you like, had you had plenty of time. quite bitter like, against this institution. Oh, I like, is that Josh? I like the show. I think it's great. I think it's okay. a really good thing. I just remember right. the time that we were at um, Splendor in the Grass. Everyone at home, yeah. please get up whatever video recording software you've got because this is going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> we were at Splendor in the Grass, and um, you were very drunk, and we'd. And Spicks and Specs had just been cancelled. Yeah. <laughs> what? No. First the Queen? It had been six weeks. Six weeks. Because my... And he was still drunk. My... Because I, I, we had a baby right. the day that they announced that it was cancelled. Oh, no. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> when, when they sent you the text or email uh, telling you that you lost your job, what song did you sing the email to? <laughs> <laughs> so, so this was six weeks. So uh, this is the first time I'd been away from... 
that kind of bubble. Mm. So I was... We were all tying one on. We were all... Yeah, it wasn't just me. Mucked out of our brains. I don't know if you're going to say something, but you, you tell... And well, I'll, I, I was, was going to say, you were... We were in sort of... I think it was Outcast. We were watching Outcast, maybe? Interpol were on Outcast. Interpol. I know where you're going with this, yeah. Yeah, and um, Josh Earl put his hands in the air and said, Specs and Specs! And then wet his pants. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I, did not, I did not wet my pants. I... I Okay. I pissed on the ground. Sounds like... <laughs> okay, oh, right, okay. okay. I looked down. <laughs> oh. You, you sipped backwards. <laughs> <laughs> because Outcast. Right, we had a great spot for a Outcast. A great spot. Sorry, yes. No, you, didn't uh, you pissed all over the spot. So what happened was, I, I pissed first. <laughs> so I knew I was doing the wrong <laughs> thing. <laughs> and then, <laughs> after I pissed... Piss and specs. Went, specs and specs. Because <laughs> I thought that would be very funny. <laughs> It was, it was a pretty great moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that rules. It was good. All right, <sighs> this round is called House Party. So in this round, it's a new round, same rules though. We go back and we talk about house parties. Okay. And today we're talking about a party that young Tim Clark went to. Now, when Tim was at uni, he went to a house party where the host Cat got out. Oh, no. The inside Cat got out. Oh, the ha- oh, I thought Cat was the name of the host. No, no, no. Oh, sorry, there was a cat at the house. Domesticated Cat. Adam is the name of the host. Okay. Tim being a nice person... <laughs> He went looking for the cat with a friend. And they knocked on the neighbour's door. But what did these neighbours make them do before they allowed them to leave and continue looking for the cat? Was it A, made them form a rugby scrum and any time your side lost, you had to do a beer bong. Tim faked an ankle injury and got his friend to carry him out. Was it B, the guys were stuck on a level of a computer game that Tim's friend knew how to complete. The guys in the house pretty much kidnapped Tim's friend and forced him to complete the level for them until they would let him leave. Ooh. Or C, they made Tim's friend enter the house like Kramer would enter Jerry's apartment in Seinfeld. They made him do this again and again and again, and because they were intimidating, they were too scared to refuse. Now, one of these is true. You can ask Tim as many questions as you want to, bear, to get the right answer. Bear in mind, question. you don't have to answer together. You, you're okay. individual in this game. Okay. Yeah. What was yeah, the- I've been to parties. <laughs> um, what was the name of the host? The name of the host of the party? Yeah. Do you know what? It was Adam, but now that I'm thinking about it, one of the people who was living there, because it was a share house, one of them was called Cat. <laughs> Catherine. Catherine. What was the cat's name? Oh, the cat's name. Uh, I can't remember. Uh, how was this uh, high school, university? How old were you? I was in the uni. So this is around, this is 2010. I right. want to say 2010, 20. Yeah, 20. You're in your early 20s or something. Early, I think 19 maybe. Right. Okay. Mm. It's 2010. Everyone's listened to Block Party. Interpol's <laughs> released their third album. I'm pissing on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> Specs and Specs is on TV. It'll never die. <laughs> And it won't. I'm going to see... Yeah, it won't. Right. <laughs> they, they can't stop making it. <laughs> yeah, they can't stop making Spicks and Specs. Oh, no, they can't stop making it. <laughs> <laughs> what was yep. the... Uh, do, are you good at computer games? Is that a thing? Well, it was uh, my friend who... They so first off they they were clearly in Actually, all three which stories. One is it? Which is this? <laughs> oh, uh, in all three stories, you have to imagine these guys, the neighboring house, share house, incredibly big units, big boys, okay. uh, incredibly high on drugs as well. Okay, yeah. So I don't know what it is. Maybe meth. A bit of e. I think they're doing meth. That's a big well. difference. <laughs> 19-year-olds doing meth in a share house. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, the neighbours. They're like mid-20s or so. Still? Yeah. 2010? Yeah. Goodness. Again, I wouldn't take any of that as gospel. <laughs> I, I did not drug test them. I <laughs> uh, wish I had. It's a scourge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was the game that they wanted you to... It was Braid. It was Braid. Hing? Do you remember Braid? You're a gamer guy. It's the one with the, the... It's Jonathan, the guy who made The Witness later on. It's the one with the little boy and then you can reverse time. Oh, it's very hard. Yeah, right. Okay. My friend knew um, it was the level he had to collect the little jigsaw pieces around. Josh doesn't know. He wasn't there. Yeah. Pax is on. Yeah. <laughs> the fucking nerds. You know what I'm talking about. You're watching a podcast on live stream. Evan's <laughs> nodding. <laughs> okay, in the rugby scrum then... Yeah. For the rugby scrum one, mm-hmm. you faked a broken ankle and got carried home. Yeah, so they, they carried you home. They pushed my friend, Dan, who was with me mm-hmm. from the party. We went to the neighbours. Um, and then when I was in there, they were clearly on drugs. They were watching rugby. They pushed everything aside and then they made us do a rugby scrum. How do you lose a rugby scrum? Uh, well, I didn't find out because I faked the injury and right. I left. Yeah. Did you did you say I had a pre-existing, or did or did you fall over and go, oh my ankle? I pretended like I knocked it on the side. Where as they were pushing the coffee table out of the way, I pretended I bumped it on the way in. I was like ah, and then Dan had to help me limp out. <laughs> what? Um... And compared to them, I look like the kind of guy who would. 
<laughs> hurt myself bumping it really hard How into the side the, of the coffee um, table. The Seinfeld thing come about. Like why? They're watching Seinfeld. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I'm out of ideas. So. <laughs> they're All watching right. Seinfeld. They said, I look like Jerry, so I had to be Jerry. All right, well, that's not true. <laughs> well, you should see Dan. He's a Kramer. <laughs> and then they, uh, then they told him to keep walking in and out of the door. Right. Yeah. So it was like an improv sketch. Yeah. Can you and according, to, according to them, he wasn't being Kramer enough. So they had to make him again. Uh-huh. We're, all do- we're, all <laughs> we're all not saying it. Yes. We're all going to joke about how Dan could be more like Kramer. Well, let's not go there. <laughs> he could oh, make sorry, a cologne that it. smells like the beach. <laughs> exactly. What he could do. And that's the end of that joke. (laughs) I'm going to go with rugby scrum. That's my answer. Hing's locking in, which is A. I reckon it's Kramer because I think that explains how you ended up this way. (laughs) (laughs) Emma, what do you think? Um, I guess just for the sake of variety, I'll go with B. You go with B. The guys are stuck on a computer game? Yeah, games. The correct answer was C, Kramer. Kramer, baby. That is insane. Yeah, it was scary. Scary. They were drugged up. They were huge. They were watching Seinfeld. They made me be Jerry, and then they made Dan keep walking out out of a cupboard. He had to keep going in and then walking back out in the hallway, and then he would just be like, Jerry. And then they'll say, that's not Kramer. And then they sent him back in. You had, you had to react every time? It cuts to you going, what is the deal with being yeah, kidnapped? Yeah, yeah. I was doing a great Jerry. Did he keep coming out of the cupboard with, like, Turkish delight around his lips? <laughs> It's so funny because you get that your comedy is <laughs> your comedy now is kind of like an ironic impression of Jerry Seinfeld. Thank you. Like it's like a it's what I'm going do, for. When you're doing a joke, you're sort of doing the patter of Jerry Seinfeld, but there's no discernible no joke lines <laughs> or whatever. It's just sort of okay, but I'm purposefully, yeah, yeah, purposefully. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not trying to. <laughs> you, you started with me breaking my ankle off a coffee table, and you're getting worse. Oh no! <laughs> Did you find the cat? Oh yeah, the cat got someone else found the cat. <laughs> he was busy being Jerry. Come on, come on. So you went on a side quest. Yeah, yeah. The B story and the A story wrapped up neatly towards the end. <laughs> All right. At the end of that round, the scores are: Hing, you're still on two points. Damn it. Emma, you're still on three points. Grace is now on four points. Also on four points, Tim. Woo. We're back, baby. All right. <laughs> this round is called Yeah, Nah, Yeah. In this round, I'll read out a fact about someone else on the panel. If everything's true, you'll say yeah. If everything's a lie, you'll say nah. You can ask them as many questions you want. Bear in mind, they want you to get it incorrect so they get your point. Oh. So, to Tim, first oh. up. When Michael was in year eight, his high school English teacher had something of a crisis of confidence. It was pretty severe as he broke down in the class and then asked each student individually if they hated him. <laughs> yeah or nah? Asking questions. Okay. All right. So year eight. What school was this at? Uh, this is a school in Sydney called Trinity. Oh, okay. It's a very bad school. Don't send your kids there. It's full of fuckwits. Oh, all right. Is it co-ed? No, it was a boys' school. Yeah, that checks out. And uh, the worst, some of the worst boys. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. worst boys. No, I went the to worst all- teachers. <laughs> I went to an all-girls school and uh, <laughs> single-sex education should be illegal. <laughs> yeah, it's the worst. Yes. Anyway, it was, uh, school called Trinity was very bad. Okay, dokie. Okay. And what was the teacher's name, if you can uh, His name was... Don't say his full name. Good, remember? Yes, good reminder. His name is uh, Mr. McGrath. Mr. Name? McGrath, okay. So go to Trinity College. <laughs> I imagine the name he... that's most different from Mr. McGrath, <laughs> that's the one we're talking about. What, what did he teach? Uh, English, English. Thank you. English, okay, pardon me. Uh, did you ever find out what was the the, uh, the, the crisis itself? What was the, the, the crux it's of he it? We, it's because he thought we hated him. Oh, that's it? Oh. oh. <laughs> I mean, I mean, follow up question. Did you hate him? <laughs> I didn't, but a lot of people in the class did. Right? How come? Were they v- verbally? Yeah. Did anyone say yes? I hate you, Mr. McGrath. Uh, I would say yeah. There was like four or five kids who were like, yeah, we hate you. And the rest <laughs> of you gaslit him, or? <laughs> uh, no, because he asked us individually, "Do you hate me?" Oh. Like he went to every single one. Wasn't it a note that says, "Do you hate me?" Yes. <laughs> no. Maybe. Like, please like, check. I, he, um, Got another teacher to give it to him. He was too nervous. Do you hate me? <laughs> <laughs> Pick a colour. Um, yeah, no, he just went around. He and uh, for some people, he made them come up to the desk and he asked them there. And others, he just he walked around to the desks one by one and said, "Do you hate me? Do you hate me? Do you hate me?" And um, yeah. Oh, so it was like a reverse goodwill hunting. <laughs> oh, okay, it's not your fault. <laughs> yeah, he said, "It is your fault. It is yeah. your fault. Yeah. It is your yeah. fault." What is it? My fault? No, wait, Dead Poet Society. I've con- oh, right. I've combined two movies about 
white men. Uh, sorry. A reverse goodwill hunting is him just going around just like, it is your fault. It is your fault. All right, they're getting molested. Yeah. Again. Janitor going okay, up sorry, to the no. white going, I don't know how to do these sums. All right. Uh. I was thinking of the, the scene where he's like, oh, captain, my captain, but it's you guys being like, fuck oh. this guy, actually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm the captain now. Um, I'm the captain now. Look at me. <laughs> look at me. <laughs> the issue was that uh, I think he'd given us some some work and we didn't want to do it or something and then because well, you're in year eight yeah and then he had he was sort of picking on some of the um more uh, the some of the louder boys he was picking on them and sort of was saying like oh you're always mucking around in the class and stuff and then one of them just said you know we fucking hate you whatever <laughs> and then he like got really upset <laughs> and then he went around the class and asked everyone if they hated him. One final question. Yeah. Where do you get your ideas from? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say, nah. You are incorrect. This is a true story. <gasps> a true Point story. there for Michael. Him. So sad. <laughs> that is some classic English teacher bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, I, I said nah? Because I thought it would have happened to you. Because that seems like uh, a Tasmanian oh, teacher kind of deal. I... I did a gig in Tassie and after the gig, because I talked about the school I went to and then this man came up to me afterwards and said, I taught at that school. Uh, when were you there? And it was like, Mr. Hin- Mr. Hindram, you were my English teacher. Like, you <laughs> taught me. You didn't even remember. You didn't remember me. I was like, you fucking, like, because I lot of kids. I, remember, I remember writing a poem. I remember writing a poem that said, my English teacher is big and fat. <laughs> <laughs> you talk? Year, <laughs> year seven. And he read that and went, all right. I mean, he was six foot eight. Oh. Seems yeah. big. And he was the first teacher I had in high school. So you go from primary school where it's all little, right. and then you get to a big, yeah. big school. And I walk in, and the first teacher is just a giant, and I felt so small. Mm. And then I don't know why I was so mean to him because he was a really nice teacher. I was a little shit. Napoleon syndrome. Deserved that fucking jug cord. Anyway, uh, <laughs> because it's true what they say. It takes all sorts in this crazy mixed up thing we call life. I once, I once did a like a practice, a practice English like where you have to like write a, a, uh, like a essay, essay, essay or yeah. yeah something is like a practice exam, and then my English teacher took a like a portion of that. And was like, this is a great sentence. We should. St- I really want to show this to the, to everyone else. Uh, and so she showed it to the entire year group. This this sentence that I'd written. And the sentence was essentially, I hate everybody here. You're all the worst. <laughs> all these girls are going to go back to their farms and fuck their most handsome cousins. Like I, <laughs> I, I was losing my mind. And this English teacher was like, great sentence structure. Chuck it on the board with my name on it. And I was like, cool. Like I'm not already getting the shit beaten out of me this is this is a direct attack <laughs> i guess it is true what they say it takes a whole lot of weirdos <laughs> to make up this crazy mixed up thing we call life stop it stop the world i want to get off interestingly that sounds like an emma holland tweet yeah. <laughs> all right to michael it's now very popular <laughs> to michael She's during liked. during adelaide fringe yes. a man who was clearly in his 30s tried to hit on emma holland in the artist bar <gasps> his big move was to tell emma that he was only 16 Emma responded by saying, really? Because you look shit. <laughs> yeah or nah? Ooh. <laughs> what year was this? Last year. 20, what's the year now? 20. 22. Oh, no, it was this year, 2022. 2020. So it's always oh, full like holes. Months ago, what it yeah, was yeah. Like earlier this year. Very okay. recent. Right. And what show were you doing in Adelaide? I was doing Give it a plug. show. Um, it's over now. Good riddance. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, I was... I was Previewing my show in Adelaide. Right. And did the run. a man in his third, an older man. Yeah. He's older than you? Yeah. Yeah. Hit on you and to get it over the line said, I'm 16. Yeah. So he thought that you were a pedophile. That's <laughs> <laughs> what happened here. Or he that- thought I was underage, which seems more likely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> I'm going to say not true. You are incorrect. This is a true story. Yeah, point there. That's one of those ones that Emma. midway through I thought wasn't true. And then at the end I'm like, oh, that did happen. I remember. <laughs> Why yeah. fucked? Did you? Why did he think him being 16 w- would turn things around? I don't know. Yeah. He, I think because I, I was dressed in quite like bright colours. And I think maybe he thought I was younger than I was. Ugh. And you kept dangling your keys in front of boys' faces. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said I'm 16. That probably Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, did, was he a... Was he a comedian? <laughs> no, he was just some like random British student. He was like, I really like your outfit. And I was like, was okay. Was <laughs> and then he started Britain, talking to me. An island of pedophiles. <laughs> yeah, just started talking to me. And um, then 
<laughs> yeah. Fuck. Was like, well, you know, I'm only 16. I went, really? Because you look like shit, Laura. <laughs> uh, and then that, that, that really like turned shit. it around. That uh, You look like shit, but that really did ring true as an Emma Holland mug. Yeah, I've really got a history of being quite blunt when men hit on me. Because I like to think I'm a nice person outside of that, but I just don't really have time. Like, do, do we have time for me to tell a quick Anytime. story? Okay, great. Um, when... My partner and I first started seeing each other. He was working at a bar and I used to go and just sit at the bar and hang out with him and like do work while he was working. And one time I was there and um, there was these two guys in like sweat pants and like hoodies. They were sitting over in the corner and this guy in a suit walks in, has a drink and then walks over the two guys in sweatpants and goes, fellas, let me tell you something. You got to dress for the job you want. And they started (laughs) laughing (laughs) and they just, they both. Just random guys? Just random guys. They start laughing and he just went, watch this and walks over to me. <laughs> and then <laughs> walks over to me and goes, uh, I was on my laptop. I was writing some comedy. <laughs> and he goes, what are you writing? And I just went, don't worry about it. <laughs> and, <then> he goes, <laughs> and he goes, he tries to have a look and I just pull my laptop down. And I'm like, what are you doing? And he goes, oh, well, if you don't want me to see it, it must be very good. And I'm like, it's not. <laughs> and I just sat in that with him. And then Duncan walked over, my partner, he walked over. And the guy looks at both of us and he goes, do you two know each other? And Duncan went, yep. And he went, just walked out of the bar. <laughs> and then we started talking to the guys in sweatshirts. And I was like, what was all that about? And they're like, I don't know, but we're both surgeons. And we just finished at the hospital. <laughs> 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 all right. So a point there to uh, Emma. So to Emma now. One night during the lockdown. Remember the lockdowns? What a time. Grace was in yes. her room when a mouse ran in, in front of her. Grace, True. <laughs> there's more to it. She summons animals. <laughs> Grace instinctively just reached out for it and, to her surprise, caught it in her bare hands. Freaking out with a little live mouse in her hand, she went into her flatmate's room, turned the light on and just said, I caught a mouse. Grace then walked the mouse outside and threw it at a tram. Yeah or nah? There's a fair bit to unpack. Was the tram moving? Yeah, I threw it in front of the tram and then it got squished. Why? Well, here's my <laughs> Why thinking. did you do that? I didn't want it to come back into my house um, and I needed it to be confused. And I wasn't allowed, it was like deep lockdown, like we weren't allowed to leave the house. So I like went to the edge of my property and then I sort of, you know, in the second Harry Potter book where they, they catch gnomes and they swing them around so, and throw them so they don't know where they came from? Sure. Yep. <laughs> I did that, but with the mouse. But then I threw the mouse and then the tram came out and hit it. Wait, so were you trying to throw it in front of a tram? No, I was mostly trying to throw it away from right. my house, but then unfortunately um, the tram hit it. That is strange because you seem like the type of person who would have like an army of mice creating <laughs> yeah, a magical yeah. dress for you. Well, that was the thing is that it was during the mouse. In your house that's shaped like you, a mushroom. <laughs> why didn't you put him on the spinning wheel to do his work? It was during the... <laughs> It was during the mouse plague, so I... We unionised, I see. <laughs> yeah, and I put poison out, but I put the poison out a far away from where our dog and our rabbit could eat the poison by accident. So I didn't want to poison any of the animals we had on purpose, but then also the mice were, like, eating my rabbit's food, and I was like, well, that's my fault. Like, it's rodent food. It's for you. I can't be mad at a mouse for eating rodent food. That's who it's for. Um, but I, 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 um, I didn't want the mouse, you know... To, to come back, <laughs> so I threw it. Were you really unimpressed by the movie We Bought a Zoo because it's practically your life? <laughs> <laughs> I did not watch it. <laughs> Stress me out. Who are you, most people? <laughs> you has got a question. Uh, Emma, may I ask a question on your behalf? Yeah, please. Was it an overarm or underarm throw when you pegged it That's at a good the, question. The, the tram? I think I overarm. You overarmed a mouse? <laughs> She yes. yeeted it. <laughs> you baseball pitched a mouse at a tram. Well, and also, I didn't expect... Did you point at the tram like Babe Ruth? <laughs> <laughs> There's a little boy in hospital. This is for you, Jimmy. <laughs> Squeak. I didn't expect to be able to catch the mouse because I've never caught a mouse before. They're too fast. But it, it ran out in the middle of my bedroom and I was like in my bed and I got up and I grabbed it. I didn't expect to be able to catch it. I didn't expect it to be in my hands. I think it must have had some po- some poison to slow it down. So you think it was a dopey mouse? Yes, but then I'm like, I don't want a dopey mouse around here because then if the dog eats the poison mouse, we're back to square one. So we'll Get a dock one in, a sneezy one, a sleepy one. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. um, I'm going to uh, – spoiler alert, I know this is true. You know, it's true. Because the other day I was at Grace's house and Grace lives quite close to a tram track and Grace just pointed out the tram track and said, I threw a mouse there once. <laughs> <laughs> so true. You are correct, Emma. Yes, it is a true story, yes. I told that story in Edinburgh at a gig. That's comedy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was not I was, in your defense when you know, Peter arrested you. <laughs> you know, Snort, they're like a New Zealand improv yeah, team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They get like comedians in the monologues and stuff to do monologues, and then they do improv about the monologues. And it was um, David O'Doherty, me, and Patty Harrison, hot lineup. I was like, I don't belong here. And I did, they, the, 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 the the thing they gave me to like the audience was like you give out a word and then prompt. they do a monologue yeah. about it and the prompt they gave me was rat poison which I think is oh. unfair but I was like luckily I have a rat poison story <laughs> you guys hear about the mouse plague they did it the northern hemisphere didn't hear about the mouse plague and I was like it was big news um, <laughs> and anyway I did the gig crushed it nailed it great gig and then I came off yeah, stage so take that hang it was funny <laughs> <laughs> it was great they did some great improv Sorry. and I came off stage and I was in the bar and I was standing next to David O'Doherty and Patty Harrison. I was standing between them, which is which is where I'd been on the lineup. I was standing exactly where I'd been in the lineup and a man came up to David to tell him how good he is and be like, oh, I loved it. Great show. And then he turned to me and he went, oh, did you watch the show? <laughs> I was like, I was fucking in it. <laughs> you just saw me on stage like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> did Dave and Patty come to your defense? Did they say, hey, she was in the show? Yeah. That's good. But it was truly just like... The damage was done at that yeah, just, yeah. Uh, Edinburgh was just a series of punches to my self-esteem. Um, <laughs> truly wild. All right, so, Emma, you got another point there. So, to Grace now. For me. <laughs> Tim. <gasps> That's me. It was at a gig when they found out that the Australian cricketer Phil Hughes had just died. The venue decided to honour him mid-gig with a minute silence. <laughs> Although 20 seconds into the silence, the DJ accidentally pressed a button and this song came over the speakers. I'll play it for you now. Quick Phil. Phil. <laughs> no. Phil Hughes. Great cricket player. R.I.P. Popped a googly to the skull. No. Ah, ah, ah. Pop fiction. Mm, whatever. Mizzaloo. This isn't the Black Eyed Peas. <laughs> <laughs> Louder! <laughs> so yes, yeah or nah? Did that come? Did that happen? Ask what questions. was the gig? It was uh, funny at the Brunny, which is the Brunswick Hotel on Sydney Road. Beautiful dive bar. They now long uh, longer exist. The one that got hit by a car. Yeah. <laughs> Someone mounted the curb and they hit like a fire hydrant or something like that, and then it, it leaked all the way through the uh, the hotel, and they found out it is not fit for human. Human consumption, and they've uh, and they've they've shut it down. Hasn't reopened. Oh. Shame. <laughs> so it's not running anymore. The gig's over. Gig's over. So I can't get on, or well, you can go to Funny near the Brunny, which is two <laughs> shops down, and it's still a pretty good gig. It's at the Bergie Seltzer on Sydney Road. What Check it out. Real? Funny that's near real? the Brunny. Funny near the Brunny. They've so kept funny. it going. That's the good. Brunny itself does no longer. No. Exist. The Brunny itself. The Brunny <laughs> is gone. Do not go to the Brunswick Hotel expecting a ten dollar jug on a Monday evening. But this gig is no. This gig is not near the Brunny then, because there's no Brunny. The Brunny, well, the Brunny building is still there. Okay, you can still so see the big Brunswick funny Hotel. If, if the Brunny used to be. No, it's funny. No, because funny near the Brunny, which is it's like two shops down. Well, kind of opposite. It's in a pub now. It's Sorry, in a pub. This, it's in a separate pub. This this pub's a lot thinner, but. They usually pack it in Monday night, 8.30. I'll be there in two weeks' time. And who do I, who do I contact? Yeah, who, 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 who runny funny with the brunny? When's <laughs> <Zen>. Near the brunny. <laughs> <laughs> Is it mummy? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Funny near the brunny. A gig I have no <laughs> professional yeah. connection with. Tim no longer get to see his sonny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love my beautiful sonnies. <laughs> What's the toilet situation there? Like the dunnies? The <laughs> <laughs> Do you have to pay to get in? How much money? I'm going to go with true. <laughs> yes, you are correct. It was it's true. correct. It's correct. Point there for Grace. Of course yeah. it is. Let's tell this story. So, what, so, yeah. so uh, cricketer Phil Hughes dies. That's not funny. No. But... How did he die? It could be a funny story. No, it's not. <laughs> okay. During a game. 
Oh, um, no. Yeah. What's not Grace? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> this is quite Comedy funny. Comedy-wise, nunny. <laughs> <laughs> so, it was the day... Yeah, he copped one in the head, went into a coma, passed away. Why are you telling us this bit? Oh, no. <laughs> Some context. So, it was the gig. It was a horrible day. I was on later. It was hosted by... Uh, posted by, like, a, a DJ off to the side who would not get on stage. She would just play music and then say, welcome to the stage, blah, blah, blah. It was about three acts in. It was three acts in before he mentioned it. He said, let's have a minute of silence. The next person on was going to do their first gig ever. <laughs> so he was sh shitting himself <laughs> up the back. Beautiful. <laughs> minute silence, three acts in, 20 seconds in, accidentally pushes a button or something. I think maybe we're trying to change the lights, but then... <laughs> yeah. Oh. And Lomas was there. He was having a he was having a whale of a time. Yeah, Shock and Century. Ben Lomas was laughing a lot. That's so awesome. <laughs> yeah, that rules. So uh, very good stuff. All right, the end of that round. The scores are Hing. You're on three points. Woo. Tim's on four points. Woo. Race is on five points. Emma also on five points. Oh. Well power. Very Women. close. All right, this is our final round. It's called Who 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 Who. In this round, I'll read out a bunch of questions. If you think you know who it's about, buzz in. You can't buzz in for own ones. Your name's your buzzers. You get a point if you get it right, mm -hmm. point off if you get it wrong. Only round, you're going to lose points. Okay. We, we, we have it all to play for. Here we go. Question, What's the prize at the end of this? Anything? You get to take these plants home. Hell yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> Evan's shaking his head. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. These they are just plants. moved in here. Don't take their plants. You just kicked the ground like a sad guy in a, <laughs> one of those cartoons. Oh, oh rats. <laughs> Question one. Who was at a party where a friend's baby cried every time they looked at them? It got so much for the parents that they just left. Emma. Yes, Emma. Tim. Yes, it is Tim. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He has a beard. I want my kids back. <laughs> it was because of the beard. Yeah. yeah. It was my friend um, Martin. He, ha he has got a beard. Doesn't look that much like me, but he's a white guy with a beard. Um, the kid was about six months old. Um, and yeah, every time it saw me, got very confused and started crying. Also, this is a Halloween party. So everyone else is like big knives sticking out of their heads and dresses monsters. So when, when Josh said they left, was it the parents left or you left? They left. They had to take the baby <laughs> home. <laughs> I'm not fucking going anywhere. I bought a six-pack. It's a Halloween party. I'm throwing one on. It's got a beard. <laughs> All right, next question. Who here once stayed in an Airbnb where the host told them she loved it when her dog humps her leg because it means he loves her? Tim. Yes, Tim. Grace. No, that was Emma Holland. <sighs> Point off, Tim. Sorry about that. <laughs> well, can't falter. <laughs> Humping. It's good. <laughs> Question three. <laughs> Tim Clark, humping, it's good. <laughs> hey, check it out. Pretty good. You heard about this? <laughs> Next question. Who as a teenager was quite a moody emo but still loved wearing Hawaiian shirts? <laughs> Grace? <laughs> yes, Grace. Hing? Yes, it was Hing. Yeah, point there for Grace. We all knew. <laughs> yeah. And a collection of black Hawaiian shirts that I would wear. <laughs> Sort of a goth, kind of um, aloha goth vibe. <laughs> like a vampire on holiday. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> so far, I was... My chemical bromance. <laughs> <laughs> I was too old for the emo thing, but I had sure. someone the other day say, oh, you, you would have been an emo, and like they remember me being an emo. I'm like, I never was. I was like... You just oh, depressed. you absolutely give off the vibe that you're a scene kid. Yeah, I can hundred percent you with eyeliner it's, right it's now. Also because for many years you had sort of a hair shield going on, yeah. a fringe shield yeah. head. Of yeah, him. and so I think that's sort of in the in the just common consciousness just about Josh. Trying to look like Nick Valenti from The Strokes <laughs> that's for so long. That is a gateway drug. <laughs> it, 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 what <laughs> emo is? <Yeah. laughs> Next question: Who was recently electrocuted because their pet was chewing on the cables? Tim. <laughs> yes, Tim. Grace. Yes, it was Grace. Yes. Oh, yeah. Animal mishap <laughs> had Jarvis all over it. Yes, yeah, yeah. Damn all rabbit. Over it. it causes you nothing but pain. <laughs> she wants me dead. My rabbit wants me dead. What and cable was she? The chewing? second time I've been electrocuted because of this. She was chewing on a, an extension cable, and I went to plug it in, <laughs> and I went like I got shocked backwards across the room. Goodness. And then the the paramedics were like. We don't get that many electrocutions. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, because you don't have that many <laughs> cursed Three rabbits. Three-legged rabbits. Three-legged rabbits that want you dead. What? Is the rabbit not in a cage or you let it roam, roam free in the house? Yeah, she's loose. <laughs> free range. Free range yeah. rabbit. She's like a third roommate that hates us. Do you know why rabbits chew the cables? Because their teeth don't um, stop growing. No, oh. it's something more sinister because it gives them... Tasty? No, this is uh, rats... 
do this as well. They quite often chew because it like gives them a tingle that they like. It sexually like oh. rouses. Oh, it's them. like a vibrator. Pretty much. Get a bit. Like, oh, I don't mind that. Chewing the chewing the, chewing the, chewing chewing the cables. Shot. Yeah. So oh. they get a bit. Ew, and then they're like, oh, that sounds good. And that's why. Yeah. I reckon that rats actually. and mice do it. It a lot. sounds like something you were told yes. as a joke at a box party. No, I was told because our internet kept on going out. It sounded like something that your mum told you when you were biting on the cable <laughs> as a child. <laughs> don't. That's for rats and rabbits. <laughs> I'll whip you with this cord. No, in in my last share house I had before I moved in with my wife, like we, uh, our internet kept on going off because our cable would go on the outside of the house and the rats would go and Oh, my God. Chew. My rabbit has chewed through the internet cable three times. Yeah. She does it when she's most mad at us. <laughs> or most horny, apparently. Yeah. yeah. Do you think that would work on humans? I'm looking for some new I, stuff I, to I, try. <laughs> Maybe. Like if I electrodes into the teeth, I guess I it's how you Oh, no. I that's think that's bad. Like lick a nine like volt like battery. Their nipples. Yeah, and yeah. That, yeah, is that makes sense because yeah. it's skin on whatever, but teeth. Do you like know. licking like batteries and stuff like that? Like, I haven't. I can't think of a time I've done it. Tongue on. It's pretty good. You just do that. Like, check if it was like flat or not. And you go, uh, and then if it's stung, you're like, uh, that's, that's got no, some. No, I saw There were weird kids who did that at school, yeah. but I was yeah. not one of them. Worst part is taking the battery out for dinner first before you suck it off. Growl one out, if you will. <laughs> Talk about a double D. I hate the phrase the camera. growl one out. It makes me picture a man chewing on a labia like a dog toy. <laughs> Don't let you do it. Hey. You know, a great dynamic that's coming out here is that... How else do I go wacko? When you have <laughs> Tim Clark on your podcast as a guest, it's like someone is badly auditioning for the role of host yeah, during yeah, the yeah. podcast. <laughs> I've many times been compared to a cancer. <laughs> Next question. Who at a gig had a woman get on stage and dance so vigorously that the woman's labia popped out of the shorts? <laughs> yes, Tim. Grace. Yes, it was Grace, yes. Put there for Tim. Yeah. It was on the Gold Coast. Oh, of course oh, it was. was. It? <laughs> and it was a lady and she was so drunk that she didn't <laughs> realise that what we were doing was not music. <laughs> and she was dancing up the front like she was in a mosh pit. You know how you do at a comedy show. Um, and then her labia fell out the side of her shorts and the whole crowd went, oh! <laughs> It's so funny when you have people at it gigs. It was completely so bald and completely tan. Tan? Um, tan? I know. It made me so nervous. I was like, I'm pretty sure she's like like tanning her vulva. Tanned as, as tanned as the rest of the body? As the or? rest of her. Oh, okay. Not just tanned on its own. No. Okay. <laughs> That's different. <laughs> You're okay. <laughs> she's had some batteries down there. <laughs> yeah, she goes the sunbaking in chaps. So just that. Bit <laughs> yeah. but it's funny when you have like very drunk people when you're doing stand-up comedy think that no, this is an opportunity for me to do. I had a gig in Launceston a few months ago, and a woman, I was telling stories about my life, and a woman just came up to the front, and went, "We need to talk about this," and went to grab my hands. And I'm like, "No, no, I, I am talking about." It. She goes, "No, no, <laughs> I'm doing my job right yeah, now." Yeah, we'll, we'll, let's talk about this. Let's talk through this. And I'm like, "Oh no, this is not a therapy session." And yeah, she's seen we need to talk about Kevin. <laughs> then, then she realised, oh, she what was the lab situation. Yeah, <laughs> tucked away. <laughs> but we never say lab again. <laughs> It was like she, in that moment, she sobered up and went, oh, fuck, I've done the wrong thing. Spun around, knocked over a drink and then kind of slipped and then took out a whole row of people. Oh, like, the as she, <laughs> like, as there she, you uh, go. Is yeah, this what, what you want? It was good. Is this what you want? <laughs> are you not entertained? <laughs> Next question. Who here believes they are the reason that swine flu entered Australia? <laughs> Grace. Yes, Grace. Emma. It was Emma. Yes, a point there for Grace. Yes. Oh, I am. Um, I maintain this. It was a lot more of a fun fact before COVID. <laughs> which which variation of swine flu? What year is this? 2009. Yeah, right. Yeah. And you brought it in from somewhere? Well, I was living in Indonesia at the time mm. and um, we had some visitors stay at our house and they all got really sick and then I got really sick. And then I was scheduled to go back to Australia for a visit and my dad was like, just don't, don't sign the form that says you're unwell. <laughs> um, and then I came here, was really like violently ill for like a week, spent the whole week I was here in bed and then the whole family I was staying in got sick as well. <laughs> and then um, swine flu was here. Rampant. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Patient zero. Okay. <laughs> Feels good. <laughs> you're probably immune to it now if you've had it. Oh, probably. Fuck as many pigs as you want. <laughs> <laughs> and I have been. Let me tell you. <laughs> and your final round. Bring them in. <laughs> Wheel them out. It shows difference since it went Patreon only. <laughs> it's like that Black Mirror episode. Okay. <laughs> Who here for a month would wake up every morning to the sound of their upstairs neighbour farting loudly at 5am? Emma. Yes, Emma. 
Tim Clark. It was Tim Clark, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it was dead on five for about a month. This was like earlier this year. I could hear him upstairs farting up a storm and it would wake me up every single time. <laughs> and I could hear nothing else. Do you think you were below their toilet or do you think they were doing it in bed? I, I think because it was... Like my toilet was right around the corner from my my room itself, so I think using your toilet. I think the toilet was directly above my toilet, right, okay. which is close to my bed. Huh. Uh -huh. Uh, and I don't know if there was shift worker or just had bad bowels. But it was every morning, five o'clock, <laughs> fart, 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 flush. That's the only thing I heard. <laughs> Hell yeah! Do you know uh, who? They, have you gone up to meet them? Uh, I did. I did eventually meet them. What category of person do you think? White. Oh, carefully. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. We're getting real. Uh, just a, <laughs> a squat white man. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like, I mean, it's weird to be farting at the exact same time every day. But in a way, I'm okay. like, that's impressive. Yeah. yeah. I really thought you were going to suggest another race that doesn't <laughs> <laughs> it's like, let's all do it. Go around. <laughs> the Inuits. It would, it would Have we seen one fart? It would be comforting to know exactly when you were going to do it, though. If you go, oh, I do this at 5 o'clock every morning. It's true. Did it's it get away from brand every day? Is there a chance that actually that was their 5 o'clock alarm? Yeah. It was just farts in a flush. <laughs> That's how they wake up every morning. They wake up to like a YouTube video of Mr. Methane. <laughs> <laughs> like, You've got to start the day with a laugh. <laughs> Pretty funny. <laughs> Uh, question nine, who here was once booked for an Irish charity gig and when they got there, the organisers made them dress like a leprechaun? Tim. Yes, Tim. <laughs> Hing? Yes, it was Hing, yes. Right. It was, <laughs> Tim. It was uh, a really wonderful charity that does really good work and were very misguided. They're f friends of my, my dad and they. Um, I just started doing comedy. I'd flown in from Adelaide Fringe. I turned up and the lady gave me some little green pants and a little green jacket and a big green hat. And she said, get on stage. Um, do, we have, do I have time to, yeah, quickly yeah. I'll tell this. So um, the guy before me was receiving a Lifetime Achievement Award. This is, it was a charity breakfast at an RSL. <laughs> It's like 600 Irish people in the audience. And um, they uh, and, and he was receiving a lifetime charity award for um, all the stuff he'd done through this organization. And he said, I, and he ended his speech, his acceptance, by saying, I just wish, what, wish my wife was here. She'd be so proud of me. Whole crowd was crying. Then the whole crowd gave him a standing ovation. And then the MC comes on and goes, well, next, we have some comedy from comedian Michael O'Hing. <laughs> <laughs> they've given me, uh, they've given me jokes. They've given me Irish jokes to tell, and they've asked me to pretend to be a leprechaun. And um, honestly, it's the hardest I've crushed in my entire life. <laughs> of course. Uh, bring it back. Oh. All right, and our final Hello, question for the game: Whose high school English teacher gave them a copy of One Floor of the Cuckoo's Nest and said, "It's about mental illness, so you'll relate." Emma. Yeah. Yes, Emma. Grace. Yes, it was Grace, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, a softball on the last question. <laughs> the T-ball machine. You're underhanding a mouse, a mouse into a tram. Yeah. Question 10, whose surname is Jarvis? <laughs> it was the most insane thing. Like, at the time, like, she just handed me a copy of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, and she was like, this is about mental illness. This will be relatable for you. And I was, like, standing there, like, stunned, like like, like a goldfish, like, with my mouth open, like, what? <laughs> Honestly, it was as soon as you said English teacher. Yeah. Like, it was was that you legally can't own a gas oven, right? Yeah. <laughs> But was, was that like... Not legally, but my parents had put that in writing. Uh, was it at a, at a time when you were sort of aware of whatever might be going on or were you... That was a diagnosis like, for you? Oh, was I was... you discovering that the people might have thought something might I was been? so depressed in high school, I didn't realise I was depressed until right. like five years later where right. everyone was like, we thought we were going to lose you. And I was like, oh, you were. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I stopped um, giving a shit and I just would fall asleep in the front row of my maths classroom and no one would say anything. Because they were like, well, at least she's here. <laughs> Turned up and she's sleeping. She's sleeping. Classic Jarvis. <laughs> she's sleeping, which means she's not dead. So great news. <laughs> we will what a way to end the podcast, everybody. <laughs> no, so, that's a real emo hing, okay? That's a real <laughs> yeah. one. All right. I got some shirts if you want them. <laughs> yeah. I was dressed like this the whole time, but just <laughs> so depressed. All right, at the end of the game, the scores are Michael Hing on three points. Go for Michael Hing, everyone. Yes. Yay. That sounds like I won, I think. Three points. Oh, my goodness. Tim Clark on six points. Yes, the Yay. thinking man's win. Grace Jarvis on seven points. So means our winner is Emma Holland on eight points. Yes. <laughs> she gets the plants. Three plants for Emma. 
Thank you. Thank because you. you win, what we normally do now is we do plugs. You got anything to plug? Oh, shit. No. Um, yeah, all right. Um, <laughs> there was Funny Near the Brunny. Funny Near the Brunny. Yeah. Beautiful gig. Check it out. <laughs> I, I guess I'll be doing a show next year. Keep it, keep an eye out. Follow follow me on Instagram, e.maholland. <laughs> E.mma Holland. Yeah. There you go. Excellent. Great. So you got anything to plug? Um, also, no. Um, I am also going to be doing a show next year. Uh, I've already put in some of the applications with the name, and now I regret the name, but I've already oh, done it. What's the name? Uh, it's called This is the Last Goldfish I'm Going to Eat for You. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's good. Are you going to eat a goldfish? Uh, no, but I should get a goldfish. Howard, <laughs> eat a goldfish. Eat a fucking I goldfish could, I reckon I could eat a goldfish. Uh, I wouldn't say that after the mouse incident. Yeah, that's Eater's going to come for you, you I think. Eat like a, not maybe for animal, animal, animal cruelty abuser. reasons. You don't eat a real one. Or if you do eat a real one, you vomit it back up or something. But... Would that be good for the fish, do you think? Oh, yeah. No, swallow the fish, then swallow like something like like sugar, and then bring up the fish, Yeah. And then bring up the sugar. Pe- people, people fly. fly. Well, they swallow it and then they bring it up again. Yeah. And it's still alive. But if you just if you're just eating live goldfish, I think the animal rights people might be up mad at you. That'd be an insane way to end your show because for three months beforehand you have to trial it. Yeah. <laughs> in different rooms around <laughs> Melbourne and just like, oh, can I jump up a catfish? I'm trying. I've got five I'm trying minutes. Some... I gotta practice eating <laughs> goldfish. <laughs> Honestly, I think it's um, yeah. <laughs> And yeah, so comedy fe- all the comedy festivals next year and um, my Twitter is at Grace Jarvis. Oh no. That's, that's my Instagram <laughs> also. Very on brand. <laughs> I love to tweet. Great. Tim Clark, where can people find you? Hey, th- uh, say, keep on <laughs> keep on surfing the great wide web out there in <laughs> cyberspace. You can find me in all the social medias at Mr. Timothy Clark. Also love to tweet. It's a bit of fun. Uh, also, we'll be doing a show next year tentatively titled Comedy is a Disease and I'm the Cure. <laughs> 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 Excellent. And Michael Hing? Uh, yes. On October the 27th, put it in your diaries. I imagine the people who listen to this podcast are probably, maybe they're in Australia, and they probably have access to a thing called ABC iView. On October the 27th, uh, my, my radio partner Lewis and I have a television show coming out. It's a one-hour thing called Australia's Best Competition Competition. Where we're running a competition to find the best competition in Australia. If you'd like to watch it, that would be uh, very much appreciated. Um, Excellent. October 27th. Make sure you do all that, people. Hey, if you want to support this po- podcast, go to patreon.com slash DYKWIA. That's where you'll hear the audio of this. And also, on the 24th of October, I'm doing a free gig at the Retreat Hotel. you be eating all kinds of goldfish. It's this podcast. Feel my shtick. <laughs> it's free. It's free. I get paid for every person who goes in by the bar. It's such a weird thing. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. You can go there and listen to another podcast. I don't care. Just be in there. <laughs> And we'll record it. So go to patreon.com slash DYKWIA for all the details there. Thank you so much. Thank you for everyone here at Studio Studios. Let's throw it over now to Al and Andy. That's been Don't You Know Who I Am. I've been Josh Hale. See you next time. Bye. Yes, that is how you do it. What, a, what an absolute thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yes, yes, yes. I mean, I'm... I'm a masterclass in, in, in podcasting. Mm, uh, from I mean, some true professionals. We've seen it from you know from uh, this morning when we were here, mm. and all the way through to now mm. while we, when we're still here. And it's been it's been it's been an absolute uh, ride. And all the people here today, we haven't been thanking enough all the hardworking people behind Hi. the scenes here. Uh, before we do that, though, let's talk to you. Um, just a credit, to the, credit to the boys. I just want to give it. Uh, we yeah. all put in 110% in that Daniel, podcast. I'm going to go stand over here. We took it. Uh, you yeah, know, it's just you know, it's just a credit. You, you know, you put in the work, and then you see the results of that. And so, yeah, I couldn't have done it without uh, Grace and Emma and Tim there and Michael. So, yeah, thanks everyone for coming out. It genuinely yeah. would have been tough. <laughs> would have been tough. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, that's incredible. You've done so good. Thank you. And and, and, you, Thank and you. this podcast was done for so many years, wasn't it? Five and a half, year, six years. Is that, I think. Is yeah. that yeah. it? Yeah. Five, it felt yeah. long. Longer, Maybe it was longer. It, but I feel like you, you, you know, you brought the comedy commu- community together. 2014 to 2022. So yeah, seven and a half. There you go. That's more. And when it came to getting the gang out of retirement for one last job, obviously yeah. all the people, you know, you had to get these these guys together. What were they yeah. all doing with their lives when you found them? I Picky was busy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Emma had just got out of prison, and so I met yeah. her there, and then she was eating in every scene. Yeah. And then, uh, I don't know any. I can't remember that film. That mm, no, no, no. What, not, what not film was it? Either. Ocean's Eleven. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, oh, so that was Brad Pitt was eating all the time? Yeah, every yeah. scene he eats. Yeah. Sometimes you got to make an, an, an actor's decision. Well, they, he said it was because 
people, you, people truly see who you are when you're eating. That yeah, was right. his thing. And so he wanted to reveal oh. real Brad Pitt. It's mm. very weird. Yeah. I mean, yeah. What, what, a, what a time and a place to do it in a movie like that. Yeah. To truly reveal who you truly are. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I guess he's also revealed who he truly is through a lot of what, what seems to be going on with yeah, these court now, cases. Yeah, I know. Selena Jolie. Up, yeah. um, mm. You know, you guys, yeah. you guys. Oh, you guys are in the shot. That's great. You hey guys everyone, looking? it's me and Emma. Emma yeah. and Tim, the I dynamic know. duo, once again flying high. Do you guys do some work together? Yeah, no. we're, we got a comedy no. duo. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. yes, and we're called Leno yeah. and Woodley too. <laughs> oh, that's great. You guys re re releasing because I know Woodley got his own TV show, but Lane what? never did. <laughs> Woodley, what? Right, w Woodley won. Woodley mm. won. Woodley won. Yeah. Colin yeah. Lane zero. Uh, Colin Lane hosted Ready Steady Cook. I'll have you know. I, I do so remember. That is I an amazing show. I have been unemployed uh, about, <laughs> about ten years ago, and so I do remember. I didn't. I didn't bring this up on the pod, but throughout all of lockdown, I was calling in tri Triple J and just telling stories that weren't true to Michael Hing. <laughs> 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 Out there. Is that real? Yeah. Was wow. it? Was that oh. in training for tonight's episode of uh, Don't You Know Who I Am with Josh? Earl? I guess I mean, in a way, but mostly it was just um, for fun. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a there's a few stories out there. Jess yeah. was in one. Of, Jess Perkins was on for one of them, and then she messed me up. She's like, "That wasn't you, was it?" I was like, "No." <laughs> uh, how many of your other relationships are built on lies? Oh, all of them. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Cool, yeah. Cool. Yeah. You should know that. As, as your comedy partner, <laughs> I should. <laughs> yeah. As Woodley too. <laughs> anyway, the, I'm off now. Thanks for having me. No, everyone. no problem. Bye, oh, everyone. So the studio nice. stinks of KFC. Stick yeah, around. It's no, going to be a beautiful time. Thank yeah. you so much. Um, I mean, it's. Uh, You've got a mic. Yeah. Are you, uh, <laughs> um, just letting your high pad. You know, a huge amount of responsibility holding that thing. Yeah. It has a power over you, and it's like and I guess it's like the the One Ring. In Lord of the Rings, where yeah. you know, like as soon as you have it in your hand, you're like, I want to put this on my finger. That's right. And Andy is very much like Gandalf or Merlin, whichever one is in there. <laughs> and uh, and he's in, and he, what he should be saying whenever somebody hands him the thing, he should be saying, Don't you hand that ring to me? But it's a microphone. And, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like I can't be trusted myself. He's too powerful. Mm. Andy is too powerful, mm. especially with talking. Andy can talk for long periods of time, loudly and interestingly. I mean, I don't know if that's been borne out by these interstitial sections that we've um, we've, be, we've been inflicting upon you uh, so far. I mean, this season. one at least we have a tiny little bit more control over. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, um, at that's this true. point now. Sometimes uh, you just got to step back and let the fire burn. You know, but but let's you know. That's why I was never employed as a fire fighter. Well, they they do I actually tried. they do actually put out fires by letting some fires burn. There you go. Maybe I'll, I'll resubmit my resume. Yeah, uh, as, a, as a firefighter. With that new information. It's probably one of the better things that you could be doing. Because um, that right. that's preventative burning. Mm, and then it stops sure. bigger They fires. don't do that for like houses and stuff, though. There's no, no back burning. They, they don't go down to any suburbs and say, like, some of these houses are around the outskirts. Yeah. Yeah. These, are, these, are, these are at risk. I so. mean, it would help probably the greater mm. community if it you would. did let the ones sure. that are closer to the trees burn. Mm. Mm. And, then, of, and then it would yeah. protect the other ones by yeah. creating a greater buffer. Yeah. Getting no. rid of that extra well, fuel. I think I look for, I'll, I'll put that in as a little, I don't know if they take suggestions at the fire station. The one fire station. Yeah, I think it'd be good to go down there and just say, look, guys, I've got some ideas. Yeah. And yeah. do they have a pole that goes up? Oh, like an, like an escalator pole. Mm. Yeah. That would be really nice. I mean, would it have hand holes? <clears throat> or um, is it just one you touch it? Or is it always going up? I think is it's it? always going up, right? So I don't know how they do like, it. But it, like, so it would be an S you would hold on. Mm. It's a s similar, yeah. Because I mean, you can climb a pole. Sure. So it's sure. The same. But you're a five. I mean, I, I guess, I guess when they get back from the fire, they've got time. Going down. <laughs> Yeah. Also, they can, <laughs> going down is fine because yeah. they're in a hurry. But when yeah. they get back, they slowly climb the pole back mm. up because there's no other way to get to the up to the sleeping quarters, carrying mm. all their stuff on their backs. Those um, all the know, all the mean? equipment, the oxygen mm. tanks and things like mm. that. They all they keep all the stuff to refill. All them up of there. it's up there. All of it's up there. Yes, all it's the axes. Tremendously, and things like that. <laughs> tremendously dangerous when you're sliding down from quite a big height mm. with sort of bladed the, instru sure, bladed instruments. Sure, bladed, bladed a blade. I, I would definitely call an axe a bladed instrument. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think there should be a a, a a dining axe. Yeah, like for for the plate. Like, yeah. I guess if you had a wood plate, it would make sense. There you go. You know? Maybe that's what a cleaver is. Well, yeah, I guess a, a cleaver is kind of, you know, axy. Mm. It's, it's wider. Mm. 
it, it, it exists on the spectrum but it would, between it would, it would require and a slightly longer hand length. Yes, I agree. <laughs> you know, so that like you know, what would you chop with a um, with my dining axe? Yeah, with your dining axe. I, I mean, I love the idea of being able to hack into a carrot or something like that, as as as, as mm. if it were a log. It would be good for splitting a cob of corn. That's actually a, a, a really good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, so often you've got kids, but you've only got so many cobs. Mm. But mm. With them, you with... don't want to buy any more cobs, and you've got more and more kids. That's so right. what do you do? You mm. split that cob using the dining axe. With our dining axe technology. Mm. Um, D-A-T. Removing lower numbers of co corn cobs mm. will no longer be a problem. Oh God, I'm not doing well here. <laughs> um, now let's think about some of our favorite parts of this festival so far. Festival so far. I mean, what um, a great time to look back you know, at the laughs and also the lows. The, we're, we're, and the lulls. The okay. laughs and, and the, the lulls. lulls. <laughs> well, we're currently in one of the lulls now. But... And there's been a couple of it's times... It's been a real lullapalooza here. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's been a few times where I think the podcasts that are waiting to start are like, yeah, you can let us start. But yeah. we're actually doing this to a timer so yeah, that people... Yeah, no, can... it's not that we think that any of this is valuable. Yeah, yeah, we're not, we're, we're not the ones going... God, I just gotta oh, say this. Before. Yeah, this you is know? this this bit uh, this bit about corn cobs and dining axes isn't gonna com isn't gonna riff itself. Yeah, we were like these people just need value for their money that mm. they spend on this thing. Mm. I will we'll give them some ideas for new uh, you know, kitchen chopping implements. You know what about this? A kitchen saw. Mm. Like, yes. You know, like like you know for. Or you know, or or a uh, you know a firefighting saw. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm taking us away from some of the highs and lows <laughs> of the today's episode. Uh, the today's. Uh, I, I, I really, I really found it very funny when um, Charlie and Pop Gaze uh, used the word "nussy" uh, to refer to his nostril. Mm. I thought well, that was hilarious. We were all laughing backstage in the green room, a yeah. lot um, throughout. We've been laughing a lot throughout the day. No, that's right. I uh, also learning a lot. Really enjoyed "Do Go On." At the beginning, mm. I enjoyed that story yeah, about that terrific. plane. <laughs> that you were paying attention to. Well, the keywords that I did pick up on, I enjoyed all of them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know why they don't make the whole report out of keywords. Mm. Well, you know, uh, that's, a good, that's a good bit. Thanks. Um, and, then, and then what was the second thing? Oh, it was uh, Can You Do It? What's, the, what's Matt's other podcast? Can You Do It? Can You Do with It? With Matthew Stewart. No, Stewart. Who Knew It? With Matt Stewart. Hugh, well, Hugh my new it favorite podcast. With Matt Stewart. I, I like it even more now that I've been on it. That's right. And there were some great names of spiders on there. Mm. I thought that was a highlight. You Thank almost you. got oh. a point. Somehow. Yeah, I did almost. I came very close and I got that pity point there. And then, of course, after that, you know, it was it was two in the think tank. Was No. Was that already no, two, in the think tank? two in the think tank? No, no. The pop gays were first. Oh, sure, sure. And then we had, we had the nussy comment. Mm. And then uh, and then we also found out about the bad Cinderella's. Yeah, yeah. And the, the idea that, it, it, that, that <laughs> in this day and age, plopping is a choice. You know, we have the, uh, the, the the technology with toilets now to sort of soften the blow with with pa putting filling it with paper and that sort of thing. Oh and, yeah, uh, I didn't know. I, I didn't hear that, that bit. I didn't hear that bit. But I, I've yeah. actually been doing it's that for years. One of the years. funniest things called, I've ever heard. I think it's called. It's called laying a splash laying a splash pad. I, I see. I didn't know about this at all, so it's going to change oh, you see, my life. I knew somebody gonna... who was considerate in high school. Mm, no. And then I learned from from that guy. Yeah. Well, I can care for the planet and nature's trees. Well, I think the planet would care about all that energy that you exert trying to scrub that toilet afterwards. Ah, well, see, I don't do that either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ever see, you ever look at the toilet brush and it's covered in toilet paper? I don't like that. Yeah, it's like somebody's been scrubbing while the paper's in there. Yeah, that's not and good. And it's, it's, all, it's all dried and accreted to the little bristles oh, and that sort I'm of thing. I'm having a really bad time. It's like, it's one of looking... like a shrimp catch, like a baleen whale yeah. catching shrimp. And you're like, uh, did you not think this through at yeah, all? But There's you know, an order of operations. Yeah, looking at a toilet brush is one of my least favorite experiences in my life. Oh, I love it. And, I love it. Uh, and I, and I, our, our toilet brush holder, which is like a full long tube, mm. is getting cracked, really cracked on many sides. Oh, and wow. And at one point, it will shatter yeah. and fall apart. Yeah, this is like when there's a, they got one of those dams in the, 
you know, and there's there's damage to the damage yeah. to the dam, I'm and it's of uh, above a village. The wall. I'm thinking of building a small village around the base of the. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So it's 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 a really a race against. Well, you and me. We'll see who succeeds first. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I a guess small, I could, I guess I vulnerable could, I village. Could use, I could use super glue on the outside and just try and see if that <laughs> binds it together. I'm really excited. I mean, the, I mean, there could be air. The picture from, this paints of your life. The air that could is in there so could be traumatic. <laughs> Oh, I'm just poisoning my children. Um, the toxic waste dump yeah. is uh, reaching critical mass. Um, and then, what's and exciting, then was, yeah. can I tell you something that's exciting about this upcoming podcast? Yeah. And indeed our it's final podcast of the since day. It's, since it's Kentucky been... Fried Chat, and it's been a very long time. And this is the moment at which the, um, the Stupid Old Pod Fest becomes the Stupid Old Pod Fest International. This is going to be where we breach the containment lines around Australia. Yeah. And We're opening out. the borders. Mm, that's right, digitally. Mm. We are digitally penetrating the borders. Stand aside, Josh Frydenberg. We're now making the decisions on who gets in and gets out. <laughs> <laughs> right? I hated that sentence so yeah. much. <laughs> um, but... But we, we, we've got an international guest coming up on here. International. You're seeing the, the, the screens lighting up the lines. Look at that. Oh, we can even give you a little hint. I, I, I'll tell you this about this podcast. I love this podcast, the upcoming Kentucky, Kentucky Fried Chat. And mm. I love it so much that I'm willing to excuse the fact that it contains my least favourite thing in the world, which is people eating close to a microphone. <laughs> I find it visceral. <laughs> I'm back <for> <laughs> I find it viscerally repulsive, mm. and I have ended friendships over over this this exact thing of, of mouth noise and the, the sound of people <laughs> eating, even not near a microphone, just near me. Yeah. I find it disgusting. But and that being said, yeah. I've listened to and enjoyed many episodes of Kentucky Fried Chat. Mm. Uh, has some of the funniest people in the country, and some of the. And I feel like most healthy food. It's them in their most natural environment. It is. You know? It's as close as podcasting gets to a nature documentary. Are we getting the rap? Oh my gosh, this is great. This is exciting. This is good for this I is, mean, it almost this seems is like, good news for everybody. I mean, it almost seems like we were perfectly building up to a crescendo here mm. where we can introduce them. No, we're getting good at this. Now. Uh, Finally, with an opportunity to see them in their most natural mm. element. Not just eating close to a microphone, but also chewing close to a camera. Yes. It's... Please welcome Beck Petraeus, Xavier Michaelides, and Peter, Peter Jones, Jones from Kentucky, Kentucky Fried Chatting! Hey. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. And can we hear Pete? No. no. Not in the room. <laughs> oh, oh, we can. Oh, we can. can you a little turn, louder, thank can you. Turn him up, everybody. Hey, hey. Hey, Pete. Everybody. Hey, Pete. Hey, guys. Yay. How are you both? Yay. Fuck Pete, yeah. Pete is in the UK. This is an international episode, as was previously hinted in the intro. Yeah, I, I often think of uh, the UK as KFC Central, uh, even though KFC's from Kentucky. I think the in the UK they do they do chicken shops better than anyone else. Is that right, Pete? Uh, they definitely do chicken shops more than anyone else. That's for <laughs> sure. And sometimes quantity is better than quality. That's right. That's what the KFC tagline should be. Yeah. <laughs> Ditch finger licking. Get rid of finger licking. <laughs> Look how much chicken you can fucking get. Yeah, yeah. It's also a good tagline. Does anyone else <laughs> serve their food by the bucket? No. Fuck you. Fuck you. You're getting a bucket's worth of food. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hey. Yeah. So this is Kentucky Fried Chat, and it's a podcast that hasn't been around for a bit. Yeah. We ate the whole KFC menu. Mm -hmm. We already achieved this. But now we're going to kind of do like a little best of. We're going to go back mm. to, uh, to our roots, taste some KFC, rate it out of fingers licked, and then see what we rated it as previously when we were different people before the world ended. Exactly. I, I think the <laughs> wisdom and what we've experienced is going to change our opinions of KFC. Not make us more positive about it or less. Also, Pete, you're in the UK and I think that's given you a whole new perspective on life. Do you think it's going to change your opinion yeah. of the KFC menu items? I mean, I think the fact that I had to buy this KFC yesterday because it's currently the morning and the KFCs aren't open right now <laughs> is really going to change my perspective. Ours 
Cars are from about, I want to say, half an hour ago. Yeah, and half an hour fresh. there is a... I don't know if Ooh, we can get this. Can we get this? We get this? Can 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 we get this? Need something to get this. Patrick's got this. Thank you, Patrick. Look there we this. go. Oh! Oh! <gasps> Look at that simple brand. He looks That's British. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's oh. finger <gasps> looking good. Oh, we've got finger that, but we've got good. it in a fancy font. Yeah, we've got it. See, that one looks like a better graphic design. Ours feels like a, an afterthought. Ours also, I think, hasn't changed since before the world ends. Isn't that yeah. interesting? Burgers made the Colonel's, Colonel's way. way. That doesn't sound... I don't... I don't agree with that. I worry about the burgers made the colonel's way. Oh, I'll show say you it. the bag though. Oh yeah. What? What the fuck? What the hell? What the fuck? All Are right, can sure? I just get? I'll just get the bag for comparison. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the movement we can get in the studio. Get no expense spared. No yeah? expense. Full print. Expense spared. Look at that. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. Can I ask, do you think that is the bag for that food? Or they were like, I think you need one of these for your face. And they were trying to kind of insult you. I don't know about the British. Is that the customs? They give you a paper bag, they go put it on your face? No, they were saying, oh, uh, it looks like you need a British hat. Too small. <laughs> that has Too improved small for my face. everything. <laughs> Maybe there's a low standing for eating KFC that like you, people can't know what you've got. Hide it. It's a brown bag situation. Oh, it's illegal to have illegal. it on the street. Yeah. Bring it home. No, no open. Oh, why did I put chicken. that on my head? <laughs> <laughs> chicken what a way to start. <laughs> yeah, chicken head in the morning. What a way to start. So we've already cracked open two drinks, by the way. If you if you're uh, eating along at home, yep, we're doing three menu items. Mm -hmm. Order it now. Now's the time we'll to arrive order it. after the. It's too late. Well, wait for a review and find out which one you're going to like. There we go. Yeah. Uh, and then at the end, we're bloody going to do our new format. A little teaser. There's a new format. Brand new bloody show. Yeah. I feel like this is a nice dessert to the end of Podfest, but the dessert is really salty and um, it makes your mouth feel greasy. Yeah, yeah. That's good. <laughs> All right, what do we start with? What should we start with? Pete, d do you have any re requests? I feel like I know what you'll go for. Uh... We should go with the classic, right? The original yeah. recipe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I also purchased some chips, and I got to say, Savior, please. I know these are cold, but please have a chip. Really? All right. What are we talking about? We weren't going to eat on the microphones, but let's do it. Just to spice. Just for old time's sake, everyone. Was eating a chip. That's well salted. That's the most well salted chip I've oh, ever eaten. God, that is well salted. You got a salty one? God, damn it! I didn't even get chips. <laughs> All right, let's go to the chicken. Let's do yeah, let's what, we can, what we can all do together. Now, I feel like, uh, I mean, should we crack it open in a close-up? Here, let me do this. Here we go. Is this good TV? Yeah, yeah, this is perfect TV. Crack and open the box. Oh. Oh, lighten the breading, if you can see it. Light on the breading and not enough drummies. Mm. Well, Pete, yours is looking I've picture perfect. Oh, my word. Yeah. They've done an amazing job. Did you request drumsticks? Very greasy. Mm. Um, no. if you also let us know in the chat, which uh, I don't know if we have accessible in this room currently. Have we got that iPad? Where's that iPad going? You no, know it really goes together well. KFC and iPads. <laughs> is that I'm your? Going to get these greasy that... digits all over the screen. Is this your Whoa. iPad, Evan? It is mine. Yeah, I'll, grease, I'll, I'll grease sacrifice it to KFC um, chatting. Do let us know what your favourite menu item is. And mm. how many fingers licked you give it? That sounds like something someone would ask. Grab it, grab a chicken, Beck. Let's let's do this. All right. Have you taken a bite yet, Pete? About to. No, no, I, I mean, I, I ate a little bit of skin. I'm a little guy. <laughs> All right. All right. Ready? And to the Colonel. And the Colonel's <laughs> way. Mmm. 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 Okay. <laughs> it's been a while. You know when you disassociate sometimes and then you come back to yourself? Mm. I feel like for three years I've just disassociated and I've come back to myself and I'm like, why are you eating a piece of chicken mm. Mm. on a live stream? Mm. What a weird <laughs> thing to do. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm uncomfortable eating in front of other people most of the time and I'm doing it on, on camera. Mm. But this is what this show is about. It's about challenging yourself <laughs> and doing what you don't think is possible, like eating chicken on camera. Pete, what do you think? Yeah, UK chicken, morning. what do you think? Look, I had some yesterday, fresh. It's worse. 
<laughs> okay. So it doesn't stay. This is better than later. that, though. This is better. Good. Is there a difference between UK and Australian chicken? This is what the people are begging to find it's out. It's better in the UK. Is that right? No. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Absolutely that was very not. Definitive. Why? I don't know. But whatever we're doing back home in Australia, the beautiful country, <laughs> they're nailing it. Is this enough to go back, Pete, to come back to the Australian shores just to enjoy the good tickets. old chicken? <laughs> You've got tickets <laughs> just to get out of here. My greasy little fingers got all over the booking form. <laughs> so, this is good. Yeah, this is real good. Some good stuff. I feel like maybe initially we didn't have some good stuff. This is good stuff. The breading is beautiful. The I, chicken is chicken. The chicken Ooh. is chicken. It's hard to fuck that up. It, it, I was worried because mine <laughs> had a big bit of breading missing. And I thought, uh-oh, do they know what they're doing? But no, I think they just fell off in the cooking because yeah. they have such a rapid boiling oil. Ooh. You don't know what's going to hold on. I was going to... Yes. This is the hardest one to eat on camera with one hand. Here's though, the thing. So. We have received only shit bits. <laughs> mm. And it does feel like they knew... Sometimes I think that the KFC near us does know because mm. for a while there I was going in of a Saturday yeah, and purchasing right. up to $60 worth of KFC <laughs> and I think they got on to us, you know? Didn't we inspire them to create some menu items? Didn't something we do then translate into... Yes, it was weird. Yeah. They, they stopped the crushes. We gave them a poor review. I'm so sorry if you love the crushes. We got rid of the crushes. We said, what is worse than we got having got rid of the fucking... salads, right? The shakers? We got rid of the salads because we were like, fuck the salads. I think the salads are back in a new form, by the way. We need to keep doing this just because we can change things in KFC and it's important. Mm. We, we're not, I'm not, I'm not over-exaggerating. We're, we're powerful beings right no. now. And what we can do in the world of KFC is huge. You can we change, need to, what it, to you can the change, KFC over here. Yeah, you'll make it better over there, Pete. What you just said then, yeah. like, we've got to get a fucking game together, mate. What the fuck are we doing over here? Do you hear what Pete said on KFC chatting? He hates it. So your uh, thoughts, Pete, have you shared your thoughts on just in, in general returning to these secret herbs and spices, any ideas on what they are? It, I, I don't know what they could be. This mm. feels like... I think that the difference between the KFC in Australia and the KFC over here is whenever I have KFC in Australia, the next day I'm thinking, get me KFC again. I need it. Yeah. Like yeah. I feel gross, but I just, it's like it's just there and it's, it's dazzling about, I'm bouncing all over my brain. <laughs> but this one, this tastes like chicken. Yeah. Interesting. Whereas wow. I am revitalized, I have lived again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also yesterday, I did have KFC because I had to pick something up and I didn't. I wanted to make sure it was in there because we got a delivery. And I have already. I ate this yesterday and I'm eating it again and I'll eat it again. I'll eat it every day. Don't you can't stop me. Who can stop me? I have a PayPal no account. One. I have access to Uber Eats. If Uber Eats cut me off, I can drive. If I lose my car, I can walk. You walk. If I can no longer walk. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. You got friends. Oh, I have friends. I I'll drop it round. Beck, yes. here's your chicken. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Just throw it at me as I wobble about the floor, sort of like, I guess, commando crawling. We'll build a pipe it. for you, a chicken pipe. <laughs> I would love a chicken next pipe. next to it and I just throw bits <gasps> of chicken A friend who there. gives me a chicken pipe? That's all I've ever asked That's for. what friends are for. Um, so if that's your vibe as well. Um, I haven't had KFC for a really long time and, mm. and, and I was sort of worried that I'd go back to it and go, you know what, it's, I've moved on, but I have not moved on. It's <laughs> just as good, God it damn it. It is. Yeah. So how many fingers licked? That's the question. What do we, what do we, Pete, you go first. You go first, Pete. Three. Three. Holy shit. Three fingers licked. And why, any reasoning in particular? It's just uh, pretty ordinary. Yeah. It doesn't really, it doesn't pop in the mouth like you really want a KFC yeah. uh, piece of original recipe too. Mm. Mm. All right, I'm going to go four. Mm. I would go five, but I just want to leave myself some room for the other things we're going to have. Ooh. I know it's coming up, and I always say this, you got to leave room for the other things. Uh. Right? But it could be five. I might go back and change my score later, but I'm going to say four. See, what I love doing is leaving no room, all full, indigestion, Gaviscon, five yep. fingers licked. Fuck yeah. <laughs> five fingers licked. Because it's the original is the best. And it reminds me of Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> because something's happened in my mind and I'm connecting that with Christmas. No connection at all. Did you ever have KFC on Christmas? I think so, but. But. I did. Pete did. Pete did. I'm sensing it for Pete. 
<laughs> and you're stealing Pete's memories. <laughs> so Pete's you're creating false memories from your friends. <laughs> so much from the power. I remember Christmas as well. Pete was there and you, we had KFC. <laughs> I was on a hot air balloon ride. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Do you want to know what we voted, what we said last time, which was at least three years ago? Wow, imagine it was exactly yeah. the same. No, Pete's will be different though, surely. You were eating pure Australian surely. KFC, surely. Um, well, I have to start first with Xavier mm. because Xavier said five fingers licked, all licked from the palm to the tip. Ooh. And then that really <laughs> d- that really got to us and we continued this, uh, as Pete said, the regular amount of my own fingers <laughs> were licked, which I imagine is five. Um, and then I said all the sweaty chicken fingers and everyone's in the restaurants as well. So mine was five plus. <laughs> wow. Mine is down. From previously. You were licking strangers' fingers. I wonder... That's how into it you were. So are you seeing the world... I don't know. What what does that mean if you've both rated them lower than last time? I don't know. I, I, I guess... Maybe maybe it is changing for me. Maybe I'm not mm. as into KFC as I, as I was previously. Wow. You know? Maybe... Maybe things are changing. <laughs> maybe I've moved on. <laughs> What? Not that much though. I've got one star down. Like I'm not walking away from it, but but I'm not like I do go to other things now. I go to Machnitz now and again. Mm. Whoa! You know, I get those mischews chicken bites with <gasps> the uh, chili ginger sauce. Ooh. And there are other. I've broadened my horizons. I don't know who you are I know, anymore. I know. I'm who a is person. this? Get out of here! <laughs> but different chicken man. Whereas I think I'm the same and nothing's changed, really. No, you've learned not to lick strangers' fingers around I the restaurant. that was the impact of COVID. Yes. <laughs> this was pre-COVID. <laughs> I was like, no, no longer doing that. No. Didn't even come to my mind. Mm. Even though there was all that previous talk of licking keyholes from mm. Michelle. Uh, I was going to also say, someone in the chat mentioned that Arnie Donner got on to... Um, uh, if Arnie Donner can reach them, KF chat. Oh, that was Lewis. Um, the day that Arnie Donner were eating all that KFC, I happened to be there. And I got so much KFC. Fuck yeah. I just wanted to interact with the chat. If anyone has... KFC on Christmas is a modern Japanese trend. That's true, Nick. And I know your name is Nick Ibis, but I'm reading it as IBS. Which I have. Pardon? I'm Japanese. Pete's Japanese. Pete's Japanese. (laughs) That's why he has KFC on Christmas. Peter Jones. Very traditionally Japanese. Traditional Japanese name. Um, Chips are hit and miss. True, Michaela. But these ones, all hit. All hit, even cold. They're still hit. So good. Uh, should we move on to our second menu item? I'll check the time. Eight oh one. Yeah, that's. Yeah, let's that's do good. it. You've now, got oh, a box. You got a box. Piece of shit. I don't know. You fucking cunt. <laughs> How dare you? Where the fuck did that come from? They're still doing boxes over there. Oh wow. That wow. looks nice. What the hell? Sorry, this is a zinger. We haven't introduced a zinger. Do you oh, want to? Yeah, do you want to introduce the zinger, Pete? I feel like you should. Um, the Zinger is my favourite menu item. This takes me back to my childhood. It takes me back to my dad getting the Zinger. The like, it, it just feels like KFC to me. The Zinger Burger is KFC in my mind. It's their flagship burger, like more so than the original recipe mm. burger, I think, because it's like Zinger took over. And they were the spiciest fast food in town for a while there. Prior to Nando's yeah. and stuff, it was like that was it. And Zinger was like, "I'm a bad boy. I'm eating Zingers." You know, it's dad. It's a it is, it's a dad burger. But a I, Zinger for dad, yeah. he can handle it. It's a Zinger for dad, but also you got to get that hot and spicy for dad. Hot and spicy for dad. Spicy for dad. I feel like a Zinger. I'm look. I'm going to step in here mm-hmm. as the woman and say a Zinger could also be for mum. Mum, mum needs a Zinger. <laughs> mum also needs a Zinger. <laughs> Why Anyone can't who a has a child <laughs> needs a zinger. Parents need Parents need zingers. zingers. Let's broaden it out, yeah. Um, Pete, is yours different in any way in the, in, in the UK? Is it still just pepper, mayo, yeah. spicy chicken and lettuce? It is. The bun's a little bit different to what you've got over there. Uh, yeah, it's got... quite small. Yeah. Mm. Um, Pete, can you compare that burger yeah, to your face? How big is it compared to your face? you got cheese in it? you got fucking cheese. No, 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 no. It's not cheese. That's the mayo. Okay. Um, what are they doing is, over there? And this is, of course, I don't think I've I don't think I've done this before. This will be a cold zinger burger. Ooh. Whoa! All right, all right. Pull on your fucking hats. Pull on your fucking hats. We're not fucking around here, right? This no is KFC hat. chatting. I don't care what podcast you've seen today. All right, I've got a man in the UK over here eating a cold zinger. All right, 
This is some yeah. serious shit. And I'm not 100% sure you can even hear me, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> we are really good at lip reading and reading body language. And I think we're doing an amazing job so far. All right. Should we do it? Let's do it. I just want to also show the the presentation of this zinger. I, I don't know if it's the best representation of what a zinger could be. Can you see that, Patrick? That looks like every zinger I've ever had, though. So it okay, seems well, pretty accurate. What about mine? You can't hear me, sorry. I lost mine. What if they kiss? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I feel, like I, I feel like I can't eat them because they kissed and now they're alive. <laughs> We've given them life. Right. I guess I, I'm gonna—they just fell in love. I'm gonna eat it now. Can't do that. Right. Oh, I don't like what just happened. I, I touched the mayo and it was rubbery. <laughs> That's not it. Looks like cheese. It's cheese, dude. But that's cheese, man. Yeah, it's not like. Oh, no, it's mayo, but it's not treating itself are like they, mayo. Are they doing? You don't have to eat it if you think it's gone bad. Are you doing it? He's doing it. Are they doing mayo in sheets over in Britain these days? <laughs> nice sheet of mayo, slice of mayo. Yeah, mayo singles. Mm. Yes, you are paying to watch some people eat some chicken, mm. but in my defence, I had to pay to get the chicken. It's a vicious cycle. Mm-hmm. Some, someone's paying somewhere. <laughs> That's all I always say. Someone's fucking paying. Someone's got to fucking pay for this. Right. Okay, so first up, Pete, did you leave it in the fridge overnight? Mm-hmm. I reckon the, the mayo in the fridge has changed forms. It's gone from a liquid to a solid. Science. Uh, second, this has literally zero spice. Mm. I remember the last time no it at least spice. had some spice. There's no zing here. It is zing free. There's no no no, no zing here either. No zing? Not even zang. I think it's zung. Yeah. And it's zong. <laughs> it's all zong. And it's not zung and back. No zong. Oh shit, actually no, wait. You found some? No. Yeah. No, I think okay. I've just I think my mouth is just No wait, there's I'm a tiny a, zing. I, yeah. I'm getting a touch of spice here too. Uh No, I'm getting zing. The zing is hit, but yeah, it's, it's late. There is zing. Thank you, Jack, for saying this is peak content. I'm too impressionable for this. Imagine having a Kentucky Fried Chicken podcast. You then have to edit after the fact. And a, a vicious cycle was created. Not doing this podcast for two years mm. has put another two years onto my life. <laughs> but now, <laughs> goodbye again. They're gone again. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm very disappointed right now in the zinger. It's not even that it's cold. I just, if there's no zing, there's no, the the lettuce is like, they've shredded the fuck out of this one. It's so shredded. Mm. I, I know it's supposed to be shredded, but it's like, this is like. Some of this sliced. is definitely cabbage as well. And I don't mind yeah, that. This cabbage the, has got the crunch. You got some yeah, cabbage? Okay. How's yours, No, no, Pete? no. We don't have a cabbage shortage. We don't have a lettuce shortage over here. <clears throat> We've just got a shortage of everything else. <laughs> <laughs> You're living like kings because you've got a shortage of queens. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm R.I.P. R.I.P. Liz. Oh, much respect to the monarchy. Well, I respect to the monarchy, you know. Podfest. That's the one thing here at Kentucky Pride Chat is we respect the fucking queen. Do you want to say gamey game? <laughs> Nearly. <laughs> I'm in the same studio and I'm, I'm the feeling the vibe. same. It's that vibe. It's I'm usually this angry during KFC chat. I'm usually a lot happy about it, but I'm getting that gamey game, game Long vibe. live the colonel. Long live, Long the, live colonel. the colonel. Long live the colonel. I, I'm going to say it. Mm-hmm. Maybe this is a zinger for the mummies. <laughs> this is a mummy zing. <laughs> and that's not to say that mummies can't handle their zing. But I really, I'm liking this. Yeah. I like this better, I think... I can't remember years ago what I thought of it, and I don't think I've had a zinger mm. since. I'm not a burger gal. I've had so much of this mm. stuff, but this is a this is a zinger for if you have a child. <laughs> I actually love the zinger. And you it's, don't it's a, the... and you don't identify as a daddy. Mm. Get on board. Get on down to KFC. They've got some mild burgers. They got mild burgers for your mum. <laughs> yeah, they've got like three pieces of shredded lettuce and praise mayonnaise. Like 100, percent definitely praise mayonnaise. Let me give it another one. Yeah, there's not even ma- pepper in the mayo. Is this supposed to be pepper mayo or am I thinking of the Twister? I might be thinking of the Twister. You're thinking of the Twister. The yeah. Twister's spicier than this, I'll say it. Yeah. There's more spice than a Twister. A good singer would have killed her. She was the whitest person to ever live. That's true. 
Thank you for recognizing that. I did um, come dressed as um the like uh the, yeah, the Hungry Jack's flame grill, <laughs> which I don't think exists. I see it in the ad. I thought it was an interpretation of Guy Fieri. Oh, thank you. Oh, either is such a compliment. I thought, I thought it was the Zinger flame. To be honest, it could have been the zinger flame, but I don't know if a zinger ever touches a flame. I think it mostly just touches a big thing of hot oil. Is there yeah. a flame? Is yeah. electricity heating that oil? Anyone know how that works? And it was it an feels element. Like Andy would know. Andy knows how meat is cooked. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um should we Wait. fingers lick? Is that too early to do that? Can I fingers lick first? No. Please do. Yeah, lick your fingers. One finger. Oh, whoa! <laughs> you zinger. You gonna get that, Evan? You wanna get that on the get that on the crane? On the Did crane. you get it on the crane and zoom in on the finger and then like do a big zoom out? Or would it make sense to go the other way? You know what? Finger, how many fingers I'm giving you licked? One finger lick, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and then go out, Evan. Oh, actually, Evan, do you know what? Do now that. play Lincoln Park. Juice by Joel Schumacher. No, Joel Brock. <laughs> Fuck. This is the problem with this podcast. Joel well. The more you fried chicken you eat, the dumber you get, man. Yeah. And you're at the end of yeah. a work day. I'm at I the worked end all of day. I'm He's just woken up. <laughs> Good morning. A, I got a from, whole day ahead of me. You got a whole day if you've just started eating chicken. Hilarious. And you can't get any sleep in the UK. All those crazy red brus- buses driving around and those. Slice mayo. <laughs> slice mayo and mm-hmm. fucking, you know. Oh. <laughs> There's Big Ben just donging away. Oh. Deep and Pete awake all night. Big Ben, Big Jeff, all the big guys. All the big guys are there. <laughs> Standing in Pete's bedroom going, dong. You can't sleep tonight, Pete. Um, no. Pete, fingers licked. Sorry. Two. Oh. oh. Fuck. Fuck the zinger. You ready? Yeah. And where's my Two camera? Fingers. Over here? Oh wait! Oh, reasoning, yeah. reasoning, Pete. Sorry. What? Why? 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 Uh, I mean, one, it was ice cold. Uh, oh, yeah. Two, uh, gross, bread. thick mayo. Uh, dry bun. Uh, no real spice. Uh, no, pass. From my favorite burger, too. It's hard to say, but pass. Isn't that heartbreaking that they've taken your favorite yep. burger and destroyed it? Mm-hmm. Should we try to ship yep. one to you? I put one in a little envelope. Yeah, is that possible? Yeah. Yep. They send okay. it fast enough. Yep. We, if oh, we do it like next day. Next day delivery. <laughs> next day delivery. Yeah. I'll get Uber Eats to do it. All right, is this my camera? You ready? Uh, give it three. Oh, three. What? <laughs> it was pretty good. <laughs> three. You're into it. I'm okay with it. I will have this. It tastes like a, just a nice sandwich. You converted. I've converted. I can't believe this. Wow. You <laughs> sip Pepsi at me, sir? Mm-hmm. Well, I, 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 I sip a zoop at you. I will say this about the the KFC over here. The one I've had it a few times. And what they do have, they have the Tower Burger. No, like all the time. That's standard over there. All Whoa. the time. They call it something different over there. They, they call it the call Big it Ben Tower Burger. Burger. Peter, you can. They call die. it Tower of London Burger. <laughs> <laughs> all right, can I get a Tower of London, please? That's what, that's what they say. I'm going to stop doing my British impressions. I think I'm offending a lot of friends, all my English friends. But they're enemies now, so Henry, you can keep Henry doing Henry VIII, it. he originally put the hash brown into the, the, the Tower of London. That's he did. That's why it's got one. <laughs> <laughs> and then he chopped, it, chopped its head off? Yeah. Off with the top bun. Off with the top, off with the top bun. Off with the top of the bun. Then he ate that. That's the story That's of history. Henry VIII. And now he's in a car park. Henry yeah. VIII. Henry VIII the burger. <laughs> this is a great bit. Uh, oh, oh! I'll check what we had last time. Sorry. What did we say last oh, time? Right. Um, last time. So this was episode seventeen. Zingerberger. Pete, five fingers. I'm so sorry. Oh my of goodness. Of I'm course. so sorry. Times have changed. Yeah. Xavier, <laughs> you said fine, three stars, and then you corrected and said no fingers, <laughs> and then you went, it's not worthy of the system. 
<laughs> so you really? Whoa! <laughs> it's not worthy to sit. Wow! Show. You were on it. Oh, no, I'm thinking back. I think it was either we done the twister, and then you guys shat on it. And the twister is my favourite. It's my favourite wine. Oh, I love right. it. Leaves yeah. you with a little little cup of of, of flatbread and, and mayo. <laughs> what a treat at the end! <laughs> the mayo cup at the end. Drink it, need it, delicious. And so I, I think I was either like going on Pete's favourite burger. Yep. A lot of spite there. I think was my decision. Yeah, that's fair. Whereas, guess what I gave it? One. Three. Three. Bingo, boingo, Pete, I gave it three. And oh. I said middle of the road. So I feel like now I'm like fingers half licked, you know, rather yeah, yeah, than you're, full. I, the, yeah. My perspective has changed. You're still oh, three, but you're like in a positive way. This yeah. is great. I love it. It's for mums. It's for mums. <laughs> I'm feeling good. But now, we now it's happening. Time. We know what's happening. So, in the first, it was the first season, I think. Of first season, first season one, season. the original. Uh, we decided we, we, you know, you have to review every menu item, mm. and one of the menu items is the KFC moist towelette. I will also tell you this about the United Kingdom. <gasps> what? No. That is it. They're wiping off chicken grease with just dry fucking paper towels? Good God, England. What is up? God. Maybe what is happening? Maybe some KFCs have them. KFC near my house <laughs> does not have them. Pete, are you saying not all KFCs? <laughs> not all KFCs. Okay. Good thing to put in there. Well, that's a shame. We'll do Hashtag. it. Hashtag. Not all KFC. Hashtag not all KFC. Wait, Pete, are you not going to be able to lick a moist towelette? I can lick uh, a paper napkin if you would like. Great. Okay, that'll be the same. All right, so we're going to tear open. <laughs> I think these have changed. So we've got that lemony fresh flavour. do? Mm. When does yours expire? Never. Mine ex- No. Okay, let me, let I don't me know in. if mine expires. It says TLDE 2204.12. Yeah, TLDD. 2204.12. What does that mean? Yeah, the, the, the 12th of April 2022. So it already has. The thing we discovered okay. last time we had these was that they taste like Mountain Dew, right? Yes. Yes. That the, was the big... A Mountain Dew flavoured. Mm. So that's, the, that's, that's what it's... It's not just random. Like, there's a whole thing here. Mountain Dew is 100% part of the KFC brand. Yeah, every... To the point mm-hmm. that you were cleaning yourself with it. Everything... In the KFC menu is used elsewhere in the KFC menu. It's part of the shared universe. Yes. It's the KFC. Yes. It's the it's the KFCU. I hope this isn't before its best before date. So do we just give it? I can't even remember what we did last time. You gonna? Do you just say nibble? You've stepped up. No, now you I lick it. To, now I have to also nibble it because if I don't nibble it, then it's not. Gr- but I feel like I got to give it a bite. Surely. You can't taste it as much if you take a bite. <laughs> Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> oh, no, 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 don't do this, everyone. <laughs> I, 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 don't I, I, do I, I, this. But you know what? <laughs> it's fucking, it's, it's better, it's better than that fucking zinger I just had. <laughs> I need 20 of these <laughs> over this dumb burger. <laughs> fucking bullshit. Is this Mine like, tastes like a paper Surely it towel. is because you, I always wipe my hand with a moist towelette and then proceed to continue to eat, eat chicken. And I'm not dead yet, Mid-wipe. but I, I am on this podcast and that's representative of something. Yeah, look, a little nibble's fine, this but could be heaven. Mm. Mm. How's the how's the dry paper towel, British style? It tastes like a paper towel. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Good to know. Um, Doesn't taste like anything. <laughs> this. Oh, it smells so fresh, though. Honestly, how could you? Like, you need the moist highlight with KFC. Like, like yeah. it washes away your yeah. sins. I think we said this last time. No matter how messy you get in that bucket, how far you get lost in it, mm-hmm. how much you're swimming through those chicken grease mm-hmm. oceans, this cleans it all away. Mm-hmm. You got nothing to worry about anymore. It, do you know what it, it reminds me of? It is an oasis in a yeah. KFC desert. Yeah, exactly. Yes. It reminds me of a summer's day. Because on summer's day, I crack open moist towelettes. Mm. I sit outside and I huff them. I huff them in the sun. I go to the beach. I go to the beach, take my moist towelettes, fling them down on the ground, on the sand. Yeah. Fly down. You got enough, then you got a nice wet towel. It smells like the cleaning products used at a, a, a stand-up comedy venue. Cleaning away all the yeah. vomit and blood and laughs. All the people who died there on stage. Yeah, exactly. God, it smells like a it smells like the, the uh, a bathroom at a petrol station. 
the servo. <laughs> and, and that's a that's an exclusive experience. That's an exclusive. You don't give experience. the key out to anyone. You got to buy something. No, that's a VIP experience. You've got to c- carry a key over and open a door. And what are you getting over there, Pete? Well, yeah, what journeys are you going it on with paper towel? Rotten. <laughs> Come on, you call this fried chicken? <laughs> Amazing. I'm, I'm. Peter's also is a master of writing in accents. That, is, that is. I knew that was a British accent immediately. Come on, you call this fried chicken? Genius. So what do you think? What is this? What oh, is this? Where are we? Who have we become? It's. It's other thing as well. It's like what is. If you just joined us, we're huffing <laughs> ether. Um, if you just joined us, why? Why? Why so late? Why? Now, <laughs> it's, you missed a whole pot fest. It's a whole pot fest. You paid $60. You paid $60 <laughs> to watch someone huff moist towelettes. You could have done, done this at the, the, the fucking train station for free, brother. Um, <laughs> Put it on the microphone. All right, I think I've sniffed it. Yeah, I've sniffed it's a lot. <laughs> I don't know what it smells like. It, We've explained it. It's Mountain Dew. It's it's it it's like Mountain Dew. and it's sort of citrusy, I guess. It smells like how Mountain Dew tastes. How Mountain Dew tastes. It's it smells like grapefruit, I guess. Is the closest thing I could say. Yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. I All right, how many fingers licked? Watching you <laughs> sniffing this, and I'll notice in the background my face just kind of goes into its resting spot. It's just like. <laughs> And your, your face is huge as well, which I love as well. Yeah, you've got to, it's so big. Got to, <laughs> here, Pete, hang on. I'll give you i got to be on, on always. Here we go. Have a big old whiff. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the future. That's the future. You, um, you'll be able to smell moist towelette from across the lands. Okay, and fingers, the fingers licked. What, what would you go? Um... D- oh. It's tough yeah. because it isn't something you should eat. No, no. And if no. you lick your fingers afterwards, it's not good. No. But I recognise that it has a function. And after smelling it for so long, it actually does smell pretty good. Yeah. I could keep smelling that. I could shove that up my nose, <laughs> keep that on a little journey. All day. All day, every day. Yeah. Mm. I think, I think even though it would be hard, I would do it because I respect it. And I say three fingers licked. That's amazing. Yeah. I'm going to go all the way up to five fingers licked. Oh, this moist towelette. I think because it's missing in another country and I'm feeling passionate about it. How dare you get rid of this? This is part of the chicken experience. Yep. How am I supposed to walk? How am I supposed to eat this out in public and then just leave and go to a meeting or, mm-hmm. you know, hold a, 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 a cat? There are things you can't do once you've eaten the chicken. You need that moist towelette. It's a part of the experience. Do not get rid of it. And I love that it smells like Mountain Dew. And I, I, I huffed it a lot and I'm feeling a little dizzy. <laughs> it's good stuff. Uh, we're not saying that you should go around huffing moist towelettes, though. But we're not saying not to that, do it. Maybe that's why they don't have them over here. Maybe too yeah. many people are having the moist towelettes. <laughs> hey, what do you give it? Just as a memory, as a, yeah, as a memory I want, score. you know, you've, I imagine you, you'd crave it because it's gone now. Yeah, like, my desire for one, a four. Wow. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <gasps> Absence makes the heart grow fonder. For I mean, you could, you could, you could say, "Can I have a Mountain Dew and a paper towel?" and then just make one yourself on the table. <laughs> True. And then when anyone questions you, you're like, "In Australia, this is not a weird thing to do. All right, <laughs> this is perfectly normal." We're different here, but in a good way. Yeah. And I'm allowed to call you cunt in Australia. It's true. Nothing wrong with it. Uh, do you want to know what we voted last time? They don't like if you call it that over here. Oh, really? Oh. Row up, England. <laughs> Row up. Uh, I so called the episode... guy at the KFC a cunt when he didn't give me a moist towelette and he <laughs> hated it. <laughs> uh, episode 14, moist mm. towelette. Pete. <laughs> Early. No fingers licked, but five fingers wiped. See, we were sensible. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a sensible yeah. Makes rating. Sense. Xavier, five fingers wiped, always appreciated, always liked it. <laughs> really? Like I was a loser back then. <laughs> always appreciated, always liked it. I was on a fucking podcast. Step up your game, old y- like you young Xavier. Be, you be a pick me bitch for a moist towel. You're no, like, what the come fuck? on. No, I've always appreciated it. I've always appreciated it. It's real good. No, be funny, Xavier. Don't just be <laughs> normal and sensible. <laughs> Fuck it hell. And I said, uh, two fingers wiped, not good to lick. Oh, we didn't even chew it. Oh, and we had a discussion about eating packing peanuts. 
and I was unhappy that we couldn't eat it. But I think we've proved uh, that wrong today. So that's yeah. – oh, wait, I said two. I just said three, didn't I? No, it was a two. Mm. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> all right. Well. Is that all KFC items done? I think that is. I mean, That's we've got KFC chips, and I'm 100% eating this afterwards. Yeah, this will not go to waste. Oh, this isn't going to waste. We're taking little bites now because we're going to go through things, and I also don't want to just be eating a whole burger on camera. That's insane. Yeah. Uh, it took all day, but we got a sea bomb. Has, no, has no one said that? Oh. <laughs> welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, all right. So now I'm we're going KFC to pivot. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is this is the podfest up late. Like this is when we get do- naughty, <laughs> dirty, uh, Now we're going to pivot mm. because in 2020, me, Pete, and Xavier recorded a follow up to this podcast, and it was called Food Fight. We discussed at length mm. how much we didn't want to keep eating KFC all the time. Over periods of how long we take, we take us two hours to yeah. shoot a bunch of episodes. Yeah. We had a whole bunch of KFC, and we felt like absolute shit afterwards. Yeah. And then I think we all talked about what what's a way that we could just eat different foods, healthier foods, or just any yeah. foods. Let's compare the classics. Compare, you know, I don't want to I don't want to say which ones because I don't want to give you it don't away. Spoil them. But, but there's a bunch of things, and I'm uploading them. The first episode is already up. It's up right now. It's on the Kentucky it's Fried right Channel. Right when they released Fallout 4 and there's yeah, like, it. and this mobile game's ready to play right oh, now. Oh, we should have got <laughs> it on the screen. Kevin, can you get it on the screen? And it's dropped now. Yeah. Release date. Super Mario movie. Chris Pratt. It's ready to go. Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt's in. Mario Pratt's with in no a, ass. It's me. ready to go. You can't stop him. Mario. What's with that? Mario. Mario. So listen to it now. Oh, Our first episode is... It's Red Rooster Chips versus KFC Chips. Very fitting. <laughs> it's very fitting. That's the thing. So we've, I think we've eased people in. Yeah. And We're not abandoning KFC. We're just no. going to compare it to other stuff. No. And because I'm a big Red Rooster fan, I think I say that in the podcast. You do, and I, I am as well. Mm. And Pete is also, look at him. Look how happy he is. He loves a rooster. I hate That's it. how red it is. No, look at him. He's <laughs> See, in Britain, when you... <laughs> you, the way your head goes is different. Oh, right, right. That's, that yeah, I love it. Yes. <laughs> so for this episode, can we introduce what we're going to do? Yes, so we're going to verse two foods off against each other. Mm-hmm. That's the food fight way. Two foods enter. And one the, food we decide is the better one. Exactly. And the foods have to be, we're not just comparing random things. No. They have to be like the same version, the, 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 the not even just biscuits, but the same type. So here we go. And I thought we would start with an international sort of UK vibe one because Pete. UK versus Australia. So what I have here is a Tim Tam. You know, you heard these? We've got Tim Tams. Yeah, I heard of them. Versus. Penguins. A ton of them. I was like, oh, it's going to be so hard to find these. Oh, that's the same. <gasps> yeah. Pete, we have like to open those ones. Same. Pete, it's like we're the same. It's been a long day. <laughs> we're the same. Me and Pete are the same. <laughs> this is upside down. Beck, no, hey, Beck stop saying that. <laughs> what does this say on it? It says, by appointment to Her Majesty the Queen. Yeah, so I, I think that's a thing where um, certain products become... <laughs> The what? Queen's products, like certain things are by appointment to Her Majesty the Queen. Biscuits and swans. Yeah, the swans are it hers. It doesn't say that on this Penguins one. and swans. Really? What the fuck? I think as well because they've already yeah. gotten rid of that in the UK, but these because we've, they've been sent oh, to like, yeah. a shop called Treats from Home or whatever or, you know, things you miss from home. Yeah. Then th- they'll be old. They're yeah, like it's a years. funny shop called Coles. Coles. <laughs> I, and this <laughs> penguin says, eat the rich. <laughs> This one says, say. Lizzie's in a box. What the fuck? Um, this one says, <laughs> down with the monarchy. What the, what the fuck? <laughs> All right. Well, That's okay. what they say. You can't get angry at us. We're just reading biscuit packets. <laughs> Can I just the penguins also... are saying it. Yeah, the penguins say it. Are yours individually wrapped? Is that what it says on your packet as well? Are they individually wrapped? Oh! Of course oh, they are. Crack, yeah, up? crack it open. Let's crack open the okay, same flavor. Okay, here we go. This, there you go. What the fuck is happening? Okay. This so is... you get less. You already get one, two, three, four, five, six. And in Tim Tams... Eight. It's get getting less. People on my 11. Discord have been keeping me updated with the number of Tim Tams that are in a packet. It continues to drop. <laughs> but they haven't changed the size of the packet or the price. All right, well, let's... Should we... 11 biscuits, actually, is real fucked. 11? 
Isn't that weird? That's a weird number. These biscuits go all the way up to 11. Um, Have you got a little <laughs> quiz on the back of yours? It yeah, what's yours say? How do penguins get around? How? On a bi- on a beast icicle. On a beast icicle. <laughs> Bicycle. Oh. How does a penguin make pancakes? Let me think of it. Um, in a uh, a blizzard. No, fuck. Mm. What is it? With its flippers. Fucking oh, fuck shit. you, penguin. Why was the penguin's head so cold? There's so. I mean, it's just a. It's it's environment. Why? Because he was wearing an ice cap. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Don't even bother next time. Oh my God. This is like Minties with those hilarious comics on them. <laughs> Everyone loves. I I get Minties just for the articles. <laughs> Right. Evan laughed. Evan never laughs at me. <laughs> you did it. And that's the power of food fight. Get into it. We make Evan laugh. <laughs> All right. Should we do it? Here we go. You've never heard of any of these. I had Tim Tams a couple months ago. They're definitely better. Well, we'll see, John. Here we go. Take a bite. They look the same. Cheers, oh, we'll Pete. See. Cheers, Pete. Cheers. What the fuck? Oh. Right. Ah. About the biscuits, way different. Uh. Yeah, it's crumbly. That's a digestive biscuit in there. It's a digestive biscuit. It's a digestive biscuit it in is. there. It is. It is. It is. Wait, I from, love. Um, not gonna move. Sorry. Wait. I'm so sorry in the control room. I've left the control room with people <clears> on audio, <throat> and I have not had to deal with people chewing into a microphone. Apologies. Now I love digestive biscuits. Don't get me wrong. I love them. McVitie's. Digestives, dark chocolate, amazing. Mm. But this is McVitie's. This yeah. is McVitie's. I love their work. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, it just doesn't work. You need something stronger in the Tim Tam. Mm. It's leaving it sort of like a weird, like it's the grittiness. The grittiness. It's a gritty meets smooth. Yeah, gritty meets no, smooth. No, that's not the right. No, thing. no. What you need is you need a gritty meeting, fluffy, crumbly. Crumbly. What you know? Smooth versus wet. Mm. So, <laughs> the chocolate's all right. But it's not as thick. It's thinner. Chocolate's okay. No, it's not as thick. It's not, not as thick. chocolatey. The In a biscuit, pinch, yeah, I the eat it. Just... I'm still eating it. I did it. I did it in a pinch. Like if I had to, if they were out there, yep. I had no other option. Sure, mm. but I wouldn't seek it out. No. Also, can people still How see us? I'm about... frozen on this screen, but I imagine that's just the iPad. Don't worry about it. Uh, it seems just to be working. It's working over there. Yeah, it's working over there. It's there it's Wait, Pete, what did you say? We're just worried the screen was screamed. Oh, that's okay. How I feel about the penguin is how I feel about a lot of your uh, your snacks or your fast foods here in the beautiful United Kingdom, mm. in that it's just like, oh, you, you try to recreate the thing that I like, but you, you, it's actually off. Yeah, and that's how I feel about all of them. It's the uncanny valley of of Tim Tams, you know. Yes. You just know something's yes. just not right. So here is is it because we've experienced the Tim Tam that we can't separate it? Could this be a good biscuit if we never knew any better? Yeah, but is that I good? I think it then? could be an... because if we never knew any better and we're still getting something bad, that's not good. Hmm. No, you just I... get tricked. Your yes. mind, the mind it speaks to you. Now you don't have the other flavors, do you, Pete? I no, found multiple I only have flavors. The original. I don't know how I managed this. What are the other flavors? Orange you've got? and orange. Mint. I, I've had the mint. You've had the mint. Okay, I want to crack these open because I, I love a mint biscuit. Same. I'm a big mint fan. I love mint. Mm -hmm. The the. <laughs> Thank you so much for elaborating. I love. I. Like Sorry. mint. Yeah, I love I'm a mint. mint. Fan. Okay. I love what it does. I love how it functions. Yeah. Um, mint's great. Oh boy, it is good. All right, should we try a mint should biscuit? I have a mint biscuit. There we go. Here we go. Does anyone at home want one? I am still going to finish this biscuit. It's not a bad biscuit. It's oh, just I not a nothing. It. Where's the good? Should I chuck it at the crane if I, if I wanted to send one to at home? Here we go. And that's yours. Did you catch it? You missed it. It's all right. I got a whole packet. Oh shit! Did I accidentally send? I threw one at the camera person. Now they get to eat. What a mistake! 
We don't feed you. Mint's good. Oh shit, you're already in it. Yeah. Sorry, I just went I just went it. Mint's better. I think the mint is better than the original. The mint is better. Smell it through the pack. Get rid of the original. Just go straight to mint. You've nailed it there. Mm -hmm. It sort of brings everything together, that flavour. You've, no, no, you've lost your mind. Really? You don't like it? <laughs> no, no. This is like, you know but the bad thing you had? What if another thing is on top of it? It's like uh, when there's like a, a bad smell and someone just sprays air freshener over the top and it makes it worse because now your nostrils open up. Yeah. It's like a shit sandwich and then you're like, what if there's also mint on it? Yeah, right. All right, let's cleanse the palate. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's important to remember, though, Xavier's a mint fan. I'm a he mint fan. Mint. mint fan. I'm already on the train. <laughs> I'm already looking for the mint. I, I kind of still want to hand. Now, sorry, I need to complete the the, sec, the trio just to see if there's orange. any improvement. All right. I need to. Next, gonna have an orange. Uh, do you want another one, chat? This is for you, orange. Yeah, I'll grab one. Ooh, that almost did get you. <laughs> Good thing you didn't oh. catch that. Wait, wait. Throw and it to me. Pete. Don't throw it. Oh, no, don't. It's an expensive screen. I'll slide it. <laughs> no, no, I know, I know. I'll do. <laughs> well, check this out. Oh, my God. Here you go, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> wait, my chance. Go to your Wait, wait, wait. No, do, do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Okay. All right. Here we go. <laughs> he got it. <laughs> He's definitely got it. It's in his head. That is wait, the wait, 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 do it again, but do it, do it, do it with a normal one. Do it a normal, with a normal one, normal one, one, normal one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Fuck, yeah, 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 fuck, what are we doing? Here we go. Yeah! yeah. Fuck like, yeah, brother! That's good shit. Yeah. All right. <laughs> this smells fucked. I'm so sorry if you're from the UK, but just... Look, it's okay, all right? We're not... It's just... There's a lot of great things we love about the UK. A lot of great fish and chips. <laughs> Pies. <laughs> uh, the sketch show Big Train. But then again, the creators oh, did yeah, go on no, to do some no, fuck no, shit. I, I always forget that's, that. No, that's not good anymore. Fucking. I, I will let you know that my uh, interactions with folks from the UK, they don't know this is bad and they don't care about what you've got. <laughs> Great. Right. All right, good. I don't that's give a thing. shit. We're not, you're, not, yeah, you're not fragile, <laughs> flowers at home, all sensitive, leave our biscuits alone. No. You're like, I don't give a shit, no, mate. That's Australians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You dare say anything about fucking Don't you dare. Yeah. Leave Tim Tams alone. We don't have a lot. Our dollar is not high, but our Tim Tams are good. All right, orange. <laughs> what do you reckon? Orange? This might be better because it's kind of like nestled. The orange flavour is nestling in there going, I'm just also here. That's what I thought with the mint. I thought it was nestling in there. It was like, hey, uh, I don't know. welcome to the party. I'm not going to try the orange. I'm not an orange. No? I like oranges, but I don't like uh, artificial orange and chocolate. Mm. This is pure artificial orange. Mm. What do we have in here? we got milk chockey, dried whey. Delicious. Butter oil. Mm. All supplies. I'm just doing this is just like a best of. Fat reduced cocoa powder. Natural flavoring. Natural orange flavoring. Fuck me. All right. Get fucked, um, Rebecca. Actually, because it's because it's English, it's pronounced dried. Way. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, here we go. <laughs> After you. I just caught me eating a biscuit, and Ooh, I loved that. I'm so jealous. So, Pete, you don't have any there. I'm so sorry. I will give you one. Yeah, Pete, I'll give you. Oh my God, it smells so good. <laughs> what about this energy? I just saw this. That's great. Is this good? That's a good energy. I like that. Actually, what about can you throw me a Tim Tam? Oh, yeah, sure. It looks exactly the same because it is the mm -hmm. Tim Tam. I threw one at you. All right. It smells unbelievable. There's no, there's, there's, I'm already saying it. There's no comparison. Good God. I've never been at someone to be like, Tim Tam's a good biscuit. <laughs> because it's a weird voice to use. It's a weird <laughs> thing to say. But also. What the next you saying that? <laughs> Tim Tam's a good biscuit. Tim Tam's a good biscuit. A good biscuit. <laughs> you hanging, on the, hanging out the aisle. Kids are going up to the biscuit. Hey, by the way, kids, Tim Tam's a good biscuit. In the vegetable aisle. <laughs> Ma'am, we've asked you to leave. 
I'm, I Get tw- out. 24-7, wandering around, Tim Tam's Good Biscuit. <laughs> Spreading the good no, word. Right. No one would disagree with you. That's the thing. Because I have seen the darkness that could be. Yeah. And also how much this is affecting Pete. Mm. Oh, it's like, I just want a Tim Tam. It's funny. It's <laughs> like you're in a box. You're stuck in a box and you can't get to the Tim Tams. <laughs> you need that genie, Pete. Why haven't Arnott's tried? Do have you reckon they've tried to sell them overseas and break open and make it a thing or it's just not worth it? Yeah, can you get you them over there? On? Does anyone in the chat I'm know? I'm sure I can get it somewhere. There's got to be somewhere there'd be, I can get it. Mm. There'd be an Australian version. They'd sell like Samboy chips and, yeah. you know, Schweppes yeah. Cola and, you know, all that sort of great stuff. Well, it'd Aussie be like stuff. ozfood.co.uk or something. <clears throat> yeah, 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 yeah. They're just, the chocolate's slightly thicker. Not as thick as I remember, actually, but the biscuit is, is perfect. Can't even tell, like, it's just an amazing thing. So, hands down, Tim Tam wins. Not even a surprise. And look, once again, Moist Towelette, usable in all situations. <laughs> what an amazing product that is. It doesn't feel right, but it is. Mixing chicken grease with Tim Tam chocolate. What's, mm. the, what's the strongest difference between the Tim Tam and the penguin? I think it's, it's good. And the biscuit. And the biscuit. <laughs> the, the, the crumbliness <laughs> and whatever is in the digestive of the penguin, it's, it just doesn't work while the strong mm. texture of that biscuit... Mm. It's an unbelievable thing. There's a cafe in Twickenham that sells Australian stuff, according to John. Oh. Are you near Twickenham? Let me let me have a look. Don't dox yourself, Pete. <laughs> well, I am Twickenham. currently in. <laughs> you yeah. got no, I live in that you can, store. I, if someone tells me where you are in in relation to Twickenham, I'll know exactly where you are. Biscuit Dragon has said you can get a Cooper's beer in the UK. Oh. Wow. And you can get Fosters everywhere. <laughs> That's our beer. Yeah. Do a penguin embar- slam. I'll tell you what, it is embarrassing ordering a Fosters when you're an Australian in this country. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I'll just have, when they've got no other beer, you're like, I'll have a, uh, a Fosters. <laughs> and they're like, oh, yeah, but you'd fucking love a Fosters, dickhead. <laughs> you love that, mate. You love a Fosters, wouldn't you? <laughs> Patrick, I know this is above and beyond, but... There is definitely milk just in the kitchenette. Could you get a milk? Because this is actually a good test. Could you get a milk? You're going to try to see if you can slam a penguin. I want to I wanna see oh. if it's possible. I don't think there is enough air gaps. But I do want to give it a go. Someone suggested it. And that's the beauty of the Tim Tam. You can do so many things. You can eat it. You can use it as a straw. I mean, it's just a, a, a great biscuit. And I know. think it's worth you know putting it through its yards. I wouldn't feel right unless yeah. we tested it to the extent that we know that Tim Tams can be used. They're a useful utility right. item. And, look, and also, right I just back. want to point out as well, I'm not a, like a, one of those, like, you know, Australian stuff is the best. No, it's the best. A lot of Australian stuff sucks. Yeah. There's a lot of shitty Australian stuff that we've got. We just don't get it right. We don't know what we're doing. Pete's gone. It's gone. He's going gonna, he's gonna, to he's gonna penguin slam. Mm. Uh, Hut. Patrick. Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you, Patrick. Also, Patrick is looking very official today. Oh, I think very official. official for this place. <laughs> What's happened here? All right. This is Australia's own, once again. A2. It too. So it contains uh, no A1 proteins, is that right? Yeah, free to feel good. That's the ad for A2. That's the ad for A2. Which I just found out the other day was a song. All right. Pete, are you going to go first? <laughs> I know it's a song. It's a real song. going to take a while to get set up, so let's watch oh, Pete do it. As well. Here Rush. we go. Spin around. Da, 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 da. Structure's good. Something is in this cup. Oh, no. Now there's milk everywhere. So this has gone bad. That Here is go. disgusting watching you pour that milk. <laughs> yeah, it, there's also something floating in this cup. Just go with it. Okay. Is Don't that... complain. That's not the Australian way. No, no, you got to bite the corners. Oh, so maybe i got to get a fresh one. I'm going to have a lot to eat after this. Can I have a freshie? Oh, my word. Here you go. All right. Here we go. I know this is... Oh, mm. Pete, did it work? Did it work? It works, but... <laughs> At Not as well. <laughs> oh, no. All right. Corners? I'm so sorry, Penguin. You're just not as good. <laughs> it does seem longer. Mm. What the fuck is mm. this in here? Oh, well. You're right. Good luck. I think there's a bug. There we go. <laughs> oh, no. Mm. Okay. Can you still judge it, or are you just mostly getting bug? Oh, the bug is still there. Yucko. This is like, um, it's really good. 
It's worse, right? It's worse. It works, but... At what cost? It's made me feel... There's so much... There's so much effort in there. Mm. Mm. But what is essentially... Mm. Um, yeah, it's like having to get a... <laughs> Like a thick shake rather it than a milkshake. It fell apart just then as well, and now it's in straw. there with the bug. Sorry, Pete, what were you saying? It's like a thick shake. You have to put much pressure and energy to get it up there. It should be easy. And then the taste that you get is not easy. a reward. No. It's not a reward. And taste the bi- the bite of the biscuit, the milk, the milk infused biscuit afterwards, mm. also no. not great. I don't think it would survive a hot drink either. I reckon it would completely fall apart. Can you um, tip tap slime through a chip? Of course you can. Has this been done? Here we go. Yeah, go for it. Is it possible? We're going to find out. Yuck. <laughs> How much were tickets? Work. Also, I just want to point out there's a seven up here and I chose the milk. <laughs> can Tim Tam slam through a chip? And do you know what? It's better than a as, fucking as penguin. If- as if 7-Up through a chip would be better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you idiot. It's 7-Up and chip, not milk and chip. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so do we need to even, even say this? It's Tim Tam, hands down. Yeah, it's Tim Tam. It's not even really a battle. I'm so sorry. What do you think, Pete, as someone who is currently in the UK and who could be killed at any second for... <laughs> yeah, did well, you say anything I positive about them? I met the penguin who created the penguins, and uh, he's a jerk. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't like. I think mm. that if they were side by side on a shelf, penguin would go out of business like that. Yep. Wow. Great. Wow. And we did rate them out of fingers licked as well. Oh. And I would say. Did we? <laughs> just to yeah, we did. We kept it going. I would say. Uh, Five fingers leaked for Tim Tams in a very obvious way. And then just ping pong directly back to zero fingers. The penguins are not enjoyable. Yeah. I would much rather a digestive because it, it feels like they're hiding. Like they put a little coat on and they're like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> <laughs> And then you eat it and you're like, oh, no. <laughs> I think I would still give it uh, five fingers definitely for the Tim Tam, five fingers leaked, but just um, still give it one for the penguin. I'd st- oh, no. Actually, I'd give it two. If it's around, oh. I'd eat it. Sure. I'm not going to say no to it. It's still chocolate. It's still a biscuit. I will eat all okay. these. <clears throat> but it's but it's not as good. No. Pete. Tim Tam, five. Great. <gasps> uh, penguin, two. Well, yeah. Wow. Same reason. Same reason. I, I would eat it. I'm going to eat this whole packet. I'm not going to throw it out. That's not yeah. a one. Yeah, no, I'm going to. Yeah. Yeah. You'd eat them. Yeah, and you know, in memory of a Tim Tam, you can think about Tim Tams as you eat them. Damn right. It's not. It's not not allowed. You You're not ping- cheating. Every penguin I've had, I've thought about a Tim Tam while eating it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell them that. <laughs> the locker room talk to end things. Hey, <laughs> this is it. This is it, everyone. This is the end of Podfest, and it doesn't go out with a whimper, but with a bunch of garbage yeah. strewn across the place. It's actually good we did this one last. With, I know. I, I, I feel like we're that being sucked because through a chip. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sucking milk through a chip. And I just, what more do you want? <laughs> this is it, right? Is this all? Evan's nodding and pointing at a camera. Do I talk to that one? Is that what that means? You can speak. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he said, yeah. So this is all. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for Podfest. Uh, can we have a uh, big thanks to Thank Peter you. Jones? Thank you, mate, for joining us and getting up at what is it, 5 a.m.? Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah. No, it's only, oh, it's 11. <laughs> oh. It's Big Pete. You're like Big Ben, but you're Big Pete. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> not really anything. Not even a joke. Um, anyway, this is this is all. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you to all of the podcasts who participated. Who did we have? We had Do Go On. Who knew it with Matt Stewart? Can I remember my own life? What else happened after that? That was one of the podcasts. Um, uh, Josh Earl did his podcast. <laughs> Can I remember us. my own life? <laughs> Pop huh? Gaze. Pop Gaze was next. Don't you know who I am? Confessions of the Idiots. Plumbing the Death Star, two in the think tank. That might be it. And then Kentucky Fried Chat and Food Fried. Yep. And thank you to everyone behind the scenes. We got Emma, we got Patrick, we got Evan Jam, mm-hmm. Matt Hoffman. Who else was behind the scenes? Anita, Anita's back there, and Tyson, the people I sat with all day. Yeah. I have no memories from this moment backwards since I. And uh, give it up for Beck, ladies and gentlemen. A round of applause. 
Yeah, I should have thought there's no oh. one else in here. It's completely empty. No, no, there's a hundred people in here and they are making no noise. <laughs> we have a full they fucking crowd all day. You. What an absolute bunch of deadbeats. <laughs> yeah, you heard me, you deadbeat losers. <laughs> Make noise next time. Anyway, this has just been like a little experiment to see how it goes. If you liked it, let us know. Do let us know. We might try it again, maybe next year. <laughs> don't know why I did it like that. Is there anyone still left in the green room who wants to come in and say goodbye? I doubt it. But if there are, come on in, everyone. Come on in. Here come they come. Here. here they come. The, the doors. The doors. Wow, it's slamming open. <laughs> no, there's no one here. There's no one here. Everyone's gone home. Is everyone gone? All right. <laughs> but you know what? Thanks. Any... <laughs> Evan's just inviting people oh, in. Oh, no, there are people there. Here we go. Oh, who's there? Who's stuck? Who's stuck? Take your time, guys. <laughs> don't worry about it. No, I don't think they want to. Well, that's Podfest, Good to everyone. See you all. Oh, there we go. Hey. hey! Did you guys just stick around to get a bit of chicken? Uh, we ordered our own KFC and ate it. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. Oh, yeah. We ate KFC while we were watching the KFC. Fuck yeah. Oh, look. What a oh, people. He used to be here. 60 cinema hey. experience. All right. I'll take Let's my do it. to the chicken. Um, thank you so much. Hello. Get in here, hey, Andy. Guys, we saved the studio. <laughs> we did it, everyone. <laughs> did it. it was all going We've to We've raised be. half a million dollars. <laughs> so well done, everybody. We've really done it today. No, we said that it was for sick kids, but, uh, you know, whoops, whoopsie doopsie. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's <laughs> comedy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's it from us. Thank you so much for watching SOS Podfest. Goodbye. Goodbye.